All right, we're live. Got me up. Piping hot cup of coffee here. Piping hot cup of coffee. Got the puppies here. I'm going to get the puppies fed. And um, start asking some of those hard questions here. That you should be asking yourself. What if? What if? Is that the wrong one asking? What if? So. Animals fed. Watch it, kid, then. What are we doing? We're getting the puppies fed here this morning. Got a piping up cup of coffee here. Biggest guy. Banner, come here, yes, your boy. Come here. Come here, you big old kitten. I know you don't like that blower fan, though. He don't like the. He don't like the bad. All right, come here, yes, your dad. Turn it off here. We're going to give this to the puppy. The other kittens are eating. Come on, boy. Come here, yes, your boy. Come here, boy. Come here, big guy. I know he's taking forever, isn't he? This, this big kitten right here is my boy. He was a big outdoor kitten, and he coming inside to eat because it was two degrees this morning out there. We hit the single, the single digit. So this is Yeshner boy. Yesher, Yesher boy. All right. Get up there and eat, buddy. Get up there and eat. All right, there you go. I know. Come on, hurry up. Give me my food. I'm a hungry big dog. There you go, big guy. There's my biggest Papa dogs. <clears throat> All right, we're almost. We almost got the lady situation. Sit up there for a minute. Oh, you yeah, actually get up there. Get up there and eat babies. Get up there and eat your babies. Get up there and eat your babies. You all done? You don't want babies? 
Get your breakfast, good boy. All right, you guys, here we're uh, 66 hours away from hitting that 3,000 view hours here. So we're getting close. 2,944 view watch hours. So go back and watch some more of these videos for you. It's getting real close. All right, got the animals outside here. Got the kitties fed, got the puppies fed. It's been in single digits this morning. All the way down to two degrees out here. Really kind of a cold snap out of nowhere. So um, it takes some time coming here. When we get into the teens here. Got a little bit of a stressful situation going here at the farm because normally by now I have all my land money already and well I did but uh, so you got that reminder hey we haven't received your land payments yet so I don't know again a little a little stress this morning but uh, he'll figure it out so I put some more more things on the internet today I'm gonna. I'm going to get out there and uh, 
of a large propane tank out there. I have a couple large propane tanks, so I think I'm going to pull the snow out from one of them and, and put that up on the internet. Maybe somebody will um, purchase that. So been trying to get that done out here. That's been my main focus is just get the land payments up so that I can get back to working on the cabin and doing the other things I need to do out here. Um, obviously the weather is not broken yet. So two degrees this morning, super, super uh, chilly out there right now. It's probably, it's five degrees. I looked before I came on the, the stream and it said that it was five degrees. So it's still chilly out there. Probably a little too cold for me to go out there and try to get anything done as of yet. So I thought I'd come in here and stoke the fire, maybe get a couple more hours or something like that. Do some work for the, put my treasure up in heaven. And I entitled it. What if, you know, are you asking yourself those questions? What if, what if, what if, do you always ask yourself those questions? What if game theory, do you ever game anything out? Or do you just sit around like a bump on the log and pay your taxes and don't, uh, don't ever ask yourself, what if, you know, what if the power went out? Do I have a backup plan? How long would you make it today? If the power went out, how long do you think you could make it? If you live in town, how long do you think you're going to be alive after uh, the power goes down? You know, they've done a projection in America. They say if the power goes down within the, the first couple of years, I believe 90% of the population, some ridiculous amount of number will be uh, unalived. So are you going to be one of those? Are you going to be one of those 90%? That means most of you, you know, if there was a hundred of us in here that, you know, Obviously, that would mean 90 of us are not going to make it, you know, so can you do anything right now to get yourself out of that position? Are you in that position? Ask yourself that right now. Am I one of those people that are, are not going to make it? Probably. I mean, probably the chances are stacked in your favor. You're not going to be here in a couple of few years from now. So <laughs> I don't think most people think of that. And not in fear. You do something to ease your fear. It's not fear gets you up off your rear end to do something about it, not to sit there with a bunch of, you know, doom and gloom. That's that's people who don't do anything about it. They sit around and throw shade on people when they don't have anything. And they're going to be the kind of people that are going to go out there and be a burden instead of a blessing to society. They pretty much already are. But again, these are the questions you should be asking yourself. We've already entered the sixth extinction event. We've hit the 12,000 year cycle. Um, there's no time like the present. It's actually pretty amazing that we're in an extinction cycle. We're four years into this extinction cycle. 99% of the world doesn't even know it. And you could be getting ready every day, just methodically, you know, and you could even be taking your time right now. That's what's pretty incredible. So um, again, what are you doing about it? You know, are you going to come try to take my stuff? Are you going to be one of those that's a, a burden and then end up, you know, on the wrong end? Because not everybody's just going to give up their stuff. Most people probably won't. And uh, not somebody who's taking the time to make sure their family's been provided for and they have the extra means. But um, lockstep, you see these governments slowly clamping down again on people's uh, freedoms. It's not just here in America. It's um, economically. I think there's the United States is is headed, you know, for some serious economic downturn, regardless what our our markets are in. Uh, the economy itself is in a free fall, but the market itself doesn't appear to be so. But they're manipulated numbers, and um, they do their consumer price index. They don't even count the the food cost or the, you know, housing or your fuel costs. So that, that was, they did that back in the eighties. I don't know if you know, John's Williams shadow stats, um, any of that stuff. Uh, but, um, they don't count the inflation rate of inflation like they used to. They don't count the things that we need. So you're really just getting a manipulated, uh, numbers. And so, um, but anybody who falls for that, you're probably going to succumb to the new system. That's what I see coming for most people. Um, maybe that many people 
maybe that won't pass and they'll take a lockstep top-down control. But um, there's something else that's going on in this country right now, and it already happened in Europe, and now it's happening here, and it, and it takes time. It's, you know, it's a, a logarithmic decay. Um, all right, you're definitely... Please don't come back here anymore, NM. I don't want you in this channel. Um, I'm removing your moderator status. Uh, you're, 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 I just, you're not, you're, I'm not in the same way and I'll keep company with Vipers. So I'm putting you back in time out. Every time I see you in this chat, the economy's in free fall. Okay. And uh, I won't take your lollipop uh, candy coated version of, of what's going on. So I'm going to put you in timeout for 24 hours. Please don't come back. Every time I see your channel, uh, you're out of here. Goodbye. I don't keep company with Vipers. I put him in timeout. Uh, he'd been on here before. All of a sudden, something switched with this. I don't know if it's a man or a woman, but the economy is not doing well. The economy is in free fall. It doesn't matter what the economic numbers say. They're manipulated. Um, they don't, again, they have the, the CP lie is what I call it. The CPI, the Consumer Price Index, and you know they don't even count for unemployment if you aren't even in the program. So if you just don't have a job, you're not counted as unemployed. <laughs> How about that for a bunch of nonsense? You have to be collecting unemployment to be considered as unemployed in this country. So that's a uh, you know anytime I see that NM, I'm going to time him out because he came out with some lollipop stuff about the Word of God, and that's more important to me than this silly economic uh, lies but um, actually the economy is tanking um, and has been tanking every time they print more trillions of dollars it takes them 100 days the economy is doing great but it takes them 100 days to print one trillion dollars real good there nm you don't know your tail the hole in the back end of your tail from a hole in the ground so um, i'm tired of this rose glasses type of uh, attitude that's why nothing's happening that's why you know, most people are the silent majority and uh, they will succumb and be that 90%. It leads right into, yeah, be rosy and don't do anything about it. And when you actually could be doing something about it and you're going to be a burden to society and you're going to become an opportunistic pe person. And that's what most people do when things get tough. They quit thinking with their head and they start thinking with their gut. And you don't think the same when you're thinking with your gut. So, oh, everything's rosy. I don't need to worry about it, you know. Um, no, I won't let you. I won't let you have a, a word in here because he tells me to not cast my pearls before swine. So I'm not gonna lay them down in front of you. Sorry, they're in him. I don't know what happened to that guy or girl or whatever. They were good for a minute, but uh, nope. Uh, so not gonna uh, continue to let him spew his his rose colored glasses attitude in here. Um, his or her, I don't. Uh, Difficult is the path that leads to eternal life. Easy is the easy is the gate. Easy peasy, wide, wide path, easy path. Everything's rosy is the path that leads to hell. Eternal life comes through tribulation, ellipsis, to be pinched down, pushed down on both sides, the lobo. Um, it comes with long suffering. It comes with um, endurance. You must endure to the end to be picked up and saved. Um, it doesn't mean that you, I'm not negative because I point this out and, but I'm not going to sit there and act like it's rosy, you know? So, um, take off your rose colored glasses and wake up. We're in a sixth extinction event. Um, it's taking them a hundred days to print $1 trillion. That's a free fall. <laughs> it's free fall. Um, they're ending the bank, um, the bank lending foot, uh, it's the BTLA. It's the been lending to these banks to keep them from going uh, insolvent. And that's going to end in just eight, nine, 10, 11 in three days. So we'll see what happens here in three days. Who knows? It doesn't matter. It's already in free fall. And I was going to say too, um, before somebody put on the rose colored glasses that, um, It's not just the United States that's crashing. It's the it's the greatest smelling, uh, dirty piece of laundry in in the dirty clothes hamper. 
you know, it, it's the best looking piece of dirty laundry or the best piece of poop in the poop basket of, of poop currencies, you know, paper currencies. And it's propped up by other currencies as well. It's not just the dollar itself. Most people have no idea how to deal uh, what economics are and that's okay. But if you remember, it's all of these banks that central banks that have been printing since the, uh, since they announced the coming of the antichrist to, to the world with their King crown, no, he says, let no man steal your crown. And they announced to the world that we're going to surround you like Nebuchadnezzar, or we're going to send the sword against you. We're going to put the sword against the world like he did to Israel. He said, okay, boom, let's have a worldwide scandemic. That way we can send the sword against the nations, just like in the days of Israel. And then we'll send the famine because that'll be supply chain shortages and, and the shutting off of, of ports and the turning sideways of the, uh, <clears throat> of the, uh, turning sideways of the, um, of the shipping container, you know, shipping the, and, and all this. And then, and that'll make disease. Oh, wait, it's a scam demic. We've got our pestilence and disease. Boy, this is feeling awful familiar to the four swords. Well, tell me it's the whole world. The whole world has been printing money since that time, since they announced, hey, our orgy sex Yule King is coming. Our orgy Jesus is coming. Our orgy Jesus, you know, the one the president has his house decorated with. You know, he we're, he's coming. We got to get we got to get your king to come with the key. Remember, so we got to do all the jots and all the tittles. We got to make sure they all happen. We can't change any of them, or it doesn't it won't work. You know, we got to do it all as it says in that by the script. Got to make sure it goes by the script, by the stars. We got to make sure this is all going exactly by that. That's why Mister, you know, Mister Pretendant, you know, hey. He knows I got to get got to get Jesus to come back to get my anti Jesus out of the pit because my my anti Jesus remember Mister Trump my anti Jesus is my house is decorated with my orgy Apollyon sex god Jesus yeah the one who's married to the sex god ah so they made it very clear the 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 if you ain't figured out what i just said the father is already sending the four swords against this world he does it every single time who we'll sit there and put on rose colored glasses with me did you hear what i just said a worldwide scam denim your enemy will surround you i will send the sword the famine the pestilence and the beast it's already happening brothers and sisters I don't know of another blogger out there that's put that together. And I've been telling you that for <clears throat> six months, at least six months. The crown, he says, let no man steal your crown. And they come out with a crown, you know, whack the nation. Remember, everybody got to roll up your sleever for the, the, you know, the crown virus, the crown vid bug, right? You've been plagued. Because you don't have no spirit in you, world. I'm talking to the world right now. Those that don't have that aletheia, the Ruach Hokadesh in them. The Father is already bringing judgments. We've already seen the rider on the white horse. I mean, in the White House. The one with the tox on. Right? And the bow. Right? The bow and the arrow. The tip. The, the, the arrow and the, the bow. The needle. The hollow needle. The one who brought you the, the fang. The tip, right? The Jabaduski, remember? And then you think it's any different? No. Now you got the bite in. Same thing. Still pushing the same hollow needle. Bam! You've been bit. Whether you got bit or not. So pay attention. God has already sent the sword, the famine, the pestilence. It's just a matter of before executive order 11004, YouTube. That was on this channel over 10 years ago, I said that. Relocate whole communities and put them into work camps, YouTube. Are you ready? Are you ready? That's when you're, the beast is when your enemy overtakes you. Get soon ready, the Alice symbol. The Alice symbol negates 
alpha negates in the Greek? Why do they take them seven years to put an A on the United States and foreshadow a false eclipse? A false eclipse, seven years from August 21st with the red dragon diagonal false fake go across the United States and cross seven Salem's, seven Jerusalem's and come out on the 33rd parallel blasphemy. It's all fakery. And if you had any spirit world, you'd be looking up right now and you would be not looking down at the ground at shadows. He never said in this book, look at the shadows. He said, look up. There will be signs in the stars and the sun and the moon. You would be seeing those things. You'd know that this is not. He was birthed between two celestial heavenly bodies eclipsing each other. This is not an eclipse. The October 23rd vertical eclipse. That's not how two bodies eclipse each other. That doesn't form the vesica Pisces. Be gone with you, you goats. You're blasphemous. You do the works of your father, the devil. You're looking at shadows on the ground. When you should be looking up, he said there would be signs in the stars and in the sun and in the moon. The birth of the king, the crown, the scepter sign. The scepter shall not depart from Judah until Shiloh returns. It's not in you. Be gone. Moderators, get him out of here. I don't keep company with vipers. I don't cast my pearls before swine. This is the truth, brothers and sisters. It's called the Aletheia. If you don't like it, you don't have to stay in here. You clicked on here, you can click out of here. Nobody made you come in here. Grow up. We're in the sixth extinction event right now. Everything that's still here made it through the last five because we did something about it. Those in the past, every there's still crickets and 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 oh, get ready for the uh, decay bug uh, bloom here. Come the old uh. A double. Mm, gee, I wonder. There's still rabbits and lions and tigers and bears. Oh, my. We're all still here because somebody did something about it before in the past. And you should be thankful. Uh, Mr. Noah, he didn't listen to nonsense on, on, on YouTube, on scoffers or those that like to throw shade, those whose lamp is filled with darkness. He shut up the world for over 126 years. They scoffed at him for decades, called him crazy, told him he needed to see a psychiatrist, told him he was nutbag out there, old man building a, a, a boat and never even rained on this earth. The truth is not in you. The Aletheia is not in you. <laughs> You're a moderator, first eye. You've got the wrench. So try it again. Um, this is the truth, brothers and sisters. We're already in this extinction event. You ain't doing nothing about it. That's your fault. Remember, Noah did something about it. He didn't listen to the world. He didn't listen to all those scoffers. And you should you should be quiet, just like I'm going to be quiet for just a minute and take a pause for the cause for Noah. Thank you, Noah, for not listening to these uh the idiocracy at the time because God was speaking into your head and you listened to it. You didn't listen to the scoffers. You didn't listen to people who were throwing shade on you. And we're still here today because of you, Noah. Oh. Got to take another moment of silence. Thank you, Noah, for not listening to these people. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, we're going to make it through this. Most people aren't, though. Look at the statistics. Look at history the further the more you want to know about what's going to happen in the future the further you need to look into the past okay this is not something that you should fear uh, and not do something about fear is good it gets you off your rear end and then you calm your fears it's a good thing fear is a good thing you don't live in it you do something about it so you don't have that fear anymore oh check it out wow Man, I think I'm going to have to wipe my butt with my hand. I better go to the store and get some toilet. I fear, oh, wow, I got up above my butt and did something. And now I've got, I got TP for my bunghole. What do you know? Act with some sense. Stop acting like a, a, um, a bump on a log. 
He said, I want to find your loins girded in my service when I return. Maranatha. That's right. He's the prize. He's which we should be running for. Not this worldly thing. So be wise or you're going to end up being a burden to other people and an opportunist. Do you understand? And and you're going to have brothers and sisters. Don't worry about these silly little poly, poly meaning many and tick meaning blood sucker or politicians, many blood suckers. Don't worry about these law enforcement officers. They're failures. They don't even know how to do their job. They don't even know the law. Not one law enforcement officer in America knows how to do their job. They're enforcing capital letter law. They're failures. And they'll all go home. I've called them out to their faces. Even a local sheriff in here, the elected sheriff, I can't even get the guy to come talk to me now for years. He has no backbone. Zero. And he's the only man who has any authority in this area over me because he can run the feds off. But I don't serve two masters. I serve God. And I'm a in opposition to this capital letter corporate law that's enforced on America. But I'm not concerned about that. I'm concerned about these people that don't have nothing, that come on TikTok and YouTube and Twitter and Rumble and throw shade on people, and then they're going to have to hurt people. And that's you, brothers and sisters. So don't worry about these politicians or these law enforcement officers. They're not going to do nothing. They're sellouts. They're government officials, private contractors. I know I used to be a sellout, a veteran, honorably discharged veteran. Do not thank a veteran ever again for their service. They're tyrants. We unalive women and children in other countries so America could be free. We have a president that can literally be a MAGA, a MAGA unaliver, you know, mass. And people are okay with that because he's the pretendant and he gets to do that. So you're condoning a mass. Yes, you are. You're paying with your taxes for money to be sent overseas. And you're paying to unallied people in other countries. If you filled out a W-2 in America this year and you sent money to, to Ukraine, whether you realized it or not, you are responsible. You have blood on your hands. They have just disappeared a whole a whole part of society over there the best the between 18 to 30 years old the average fighting age over there right now is 40 a whole nation gone and you paid for it with your w-2 money whether you got a vote on it or not you still support these politicians they voted to take your money and send it over there to unalive and the blood that's on your hands did you get a vote on that no you didn't did you Still support this system? Still support? Check out of this system, brothers and sisters, because who's going to be a burden is these people that don't do anything about it and the people who support these MAGA, red, blue team. That's a childish game we played as kids. That They want you to fight with each other. Fight with each other. Fight, fight, fight. Revolution, revolution. Get them. Yeah, they want you to fight. Red team, blue team, red team, blue team, red team. It's like a hamster going, oh, wait. Revolution is round. That's a round circle, right? Yeah, get on our hamster wheel and go nowhere fast, you silly rabbit. Tricks are for kids. You've been played. Evolve. Go around the system. Around it. If enough people go around the current system without throwing metal and unaliving anybody, we can make the current system obsolete. That's right. That's how evolution works. Not like growing another thumb or a kickstand. I'm not, if man evolved from apes, why are there still apes? Why don't we see anything in between in the ground? I've studied all the strat, all the silliness, guys. Stop participating in this system. They're not telling you that we've entered the sixth extinction event. They're spraying your skies with waffle fries. They're poisoning your food and you're eating it and your children are eating it. They won't even eat our food in other countries. It's banned in other countries. They're poisoning your water, fluoridated, chloridated, bromine, putting it in your in your in your meats, tenderizers, sugar at every every stop that you make. You go get you get a spark plug for your lawnmower or a two by four to build the deck, and either way, you're staring at poison, acid. Sugar makes you acidic. It makes you pH negative. 
acidic, not neutral or pH alkaline above, which make you alkaline above 7.0. Sugar everywhere we go. So you think these people care about you? Monsanto, can you remember Mr. Orange Agent, the Orange Agent over in Nam, another one of our, you know, that unalived a whole bunch of war doesn't decide who's right, brothers and sisters. These are politicians' wars. These are politicians' wars. Banksters' wars. And then they send, are you going to go send your child to be unalived for this country? It's getting quite ridiculous, guys. So that's what I'm saying. I, I won't stand here as a veteran and, uh, yeah, exactly. Even worse. Dent corn, dent corn, like we make ethanol and feed out of. That's what your GMO corn is. Thank you. Even worse, guys, they have passed now. Let's see what these dogs are barking up. Are you guys playing? Are you rolling around in the snow? Oh, you're barking at the coyotes. Okay. You guys are good boys. We have a show host as a person. Yeah, no, they're all related. June, let me take a, take a couple, build a couple questions, guys. Thanks for listening to me. Again, I'm a veteran who stood and, and stood in this disgusting, filthy uh, uniform and wore the army battle dress uniform. I served in the 90s, Desert Storm, Desert Shield, all this nonsense that we, you know, they never did find any uh, of mass distraction, did they, over there? Um, all right, let's get a couple of these. Bipartisan system run it. Okay. How the parents want to do that? I know you just keep the million don't dress bay by itself, so expensive. How do you expect to get out? We need a map out. It seems like you know the way out. I'm just asking. That. Well, I got the way out for you, June, July. Hold on. Not even. Oh, country came over here and everyone got obese and the same. Thank you. Look at pictures of people in the 70s. Thank you. Excellent question uh, see now there's you, you here's somebody you want to listen to listen to this comment not that i don't appreciate you guys comments people from my family's country came here and everyone got obese eating the same as they used to it's wild you don't listen to somebody in this country they've been here that's called bias you listen to somebody else who's had somebody come from another country to this country for like hey i came here to escape you know um Tyranny and look, it's just as tyrannical now. I came here with the food and this is what, that's who you want to listen to. Excellent comment. Thank you, Frosty. Listen to somebody who hasn't been in this country. When they're giving you advice like that, that's good, solid advice. They're saying that their family came from a different country and they're eating the same diet, but they're getting obese for eating the same thing. So high fructose corn syrup, soil, fluoride, water, toothpaste, sugar, sugar. yeah, exactly. It's part of, uh, we've never thought one time the government cares about us. Talk to some kids, man. No one thinks we're safe. Corn syrup taste, yeah. We had a show host our president. Yeah, cool. Good, good uh, voting is deciding which snake is going to bite you. Yeah, for your own overload, your own mass, thank you, Ross, but when you are saying it's 100% true, we need to, some ideas on how to get out of Making three thousand, paying fifteen hundred for rent. Cool. Well, I got your answers, June, July. <laughs> Bear knowingly gave. There we go. Exactly, and they know that. So did yeah. We trust these. The big farm guy. They're selling. Talks about it. Gold worm, desert and all the beans. Doritos boycott it. Right there you go. There you go. First, they're the powers in the in the people. Not buying, but I'm just starting. There you go, July. No time like the present. Okay, hold on. I'm, I'm trying to get to your comments, guys. At least it used to be a struggle keeping the weight off. Right. Trump wants to come grab her. That's right, Mr. Red Flag, Mr. Orange, Mr. Agent Orange. From now on, we're changing his name for at least this stream. When we talk about Mr. Trump here and talk about the pretendant, the one that's still the pretendant right now because they never inaugurated this current 
a uh, fakery guy that can't keep his hands off of a uh, Mr. P. Joe, right? Mr. P. Joe. Um, yeah, he's the double agent, okay? Playing for the double agent is Joe, and then uh, Agent Orange is Mr. Mr. Trump, okay? So never get that Mr. Agent Orange brought you the red flag pew pew law, right? He wants to take him first. I played that on the stream yesterday. He wants to take him first and ask questions later. So, mm -hmm. prosecute you later. But we're going to come. I'm a veteran. And I'm sitting in my garage and 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 I'm going through my collection and I'm oiling the barrels and I'm getting them all, you know, keeping them from rusting. And, you know, they're just they're there for to protect myself. I can't seek vengeance, but I, I, I have to, you know, I have to wait to protect my family. And then my neighbors all freaked out because they've never even done it picked up anything and they want to call now and now that you're at their door and they're taking them guys they're taking them from you mr agent orange wants to take them from you mr orange face son apollyon nimrod orgy sex jesus lover yeah oops i added a little bit to agent orange but he he's uh he wants to take them first remember he said he's going to send the national guard to your door never forget that to give you the jab to roll up your sleever in warp speed never forget he was the one who yep an executive order he had voted to bring the national guard to your door to give you the roll up your sleever yep and so you don't think he'll roll up the national guard to roll up to your house to give you a makes money roll oh it'd be like hurricane katrina hey we don't care if the water is way up here it's not going to be able to even get up here we're taking them and you're not going to get them back so that's who he is, um, and that's what he'll do as soon as he uh, <clears throat> takes office. I think what they're going to do is I think they're going to put him back in, guys, because he is the current MAGA. Uh, I told you the MAGA, MAGA death, you know, um, they never inaugurated this current actor. Um, and I encourage you to look up. Um, I told you to go see Casey on this platform from Enter the Stars and go watch his channel on the uh, the Reiki symbol. And Mr. Bidenstein, Mr. Double Agent is in cahoots. They do the hokey pokey and they turn themselves around and that's what it's all about with Mr. Agent Orange. They Their families go way back, guys. This is all being, uh, we're, talking, uh, we're talking about Mr. Agent Orange um, and I'm trying to ex expose that he's still the pretended. He's still the pretended. They never inaugurated the double agent, Joe. Just like it says in scripture, this is biblical, whether you understand it or not. So this is biblical. This is going by the script. I told you they have to make all the jots and all the tittles come to pass. They can't change any of it. It has to go by what it says in the basic instructions before leaving earth. It has to go by that. Okay, but he's still the pretendant. He's not he's not been unelected. He's still the pretendant. I told you that, guys. I'm not going to go by these lies. I will not allow this to happen on my watch. I won't. They put me in this position, and I'm going to tell you the facts. I'm not going to let them forward it and pervert it. I've told you why. Five, four went off at three seconds. That's how you inaugurate a president. You don't have four and shoot three off at 10 seconds. That's a that's an act. So he's not the pretendant. And that shows you that how e evil that Mr. Agent Orange is because he's standing down right now and he knows exactly that. You think he doesn't know what I'm telling you? So I have a sneaking suspicion that he can't run for a third term, remember? Neither can oh vomit's man shell, if you want to Reggie, the one that has an apple, right, and a banana. Right, remember Ellen on the or on that show, the hey, do the floppy puppet or with the white pants, you know. Same thing with Mr. Trump. Remember, Ivanka's got the floppy floppy too, right? So, um, yep, Mr. Uh, so he he's he's just an actor, just like it says in scripture. Remember that he'll stand down, he'll stand down, and Joseph will take over. Remember the king and then Joseph that I am the chosen one. You guys, this is all going by the script. I think if you were spiritual and I led you to some of this, some of this word, you'd go look this up and go, 
you know, Tracy's talking about something that nobody else is talking about right now. How, how is he picking the you guys? I do a lot of studying when I'm not on this platform. I told you if I could just get my, uh, I'm not reading into anything, Dory, the word of God's not in you. Everything parallels the script. They have to, uh, um, okay, bye. You're not going to hear anything else because I don't cast my pearls before swine. You don't get to hear anything else. Be gone with you. Put on your rose-colored glasses. So um, this is all going by exactly what the word of God says. i am already told you that we're into the third sword. All we need to see is to be carried in captivity. And right on time, Mr. O'Biden passed – oh, no, Mr. Obamit passed – 923 executive orders under the 44th administration executive order 11 0 0 4 allows them using the emergency management agency to relocate whole communities and put them into work camps that's why i've been freaking out on you guys for six months telling you stop putting that stupid smiley face you bring my ptsd up i'm a veteran don't you remember freedoms is what I thought that people, you know, whatever, and they already interned American citizens in, in America. The Waltons did. Walmart, you stupid smiley face that you guys keep using. I wish I could ban that emoji and the thumbs up. You know, I can't. Well, I appreciate you hitting the thumbs up, but remember, they took the thumbs down away. You guys, come on. I mean, seriously, the, the this is all going by the script. So. He says, I'm going to send the four swords against you. You don't agape me. You don't love me. You don't second John and six. You don't walk and follow in my commandments. You don't be meek, patient, kind, carry. I'm going to send the four swords. And he already is sent. When your enemy surrounds you, that's exactly what happened. So part of this being carried into captivity is the beast. And so I'll, I'll read into whatever I want. And I'll do whatever I want. But I'm already... You know, one horse into the apocalypse, the white horse, I've already seen that. I've already seen that. I already know I've seen, he says, I'll send the sword, the famine, the pestilence, and the beast, just like he did to the nation of Israel. Nebuchadnezzar's army surrounded. Nothing could get in, nothing could get out. That brought on famine and pestilence, lack of food, brought on disease. Then they overcame them and carried them into captivity, Remember? Wander the desert for 400 years. So it's happening already. That's why they announced to the world. To me, I have not ever heard one other blogger, one other brother and sister, and I have brothers and sisters in Christ, but tell them that the crown king virus is them declaring that Christ is coming back because they have to get Yahushua HaMashiach, the Mashiach, the Messiah, the Christ, Shiloh, I am. Yeshua, whatever name you want to give him. I don't fight about his name. He says, when I return, no one will know my name. I'll may have a new name. His name is I am. He said, before Abraham was, I am. He said, be comforted, I am. Well, we got they want to know what your name is. It's been 400 years since they've they knew you, they know your God. That what they want to know what your name is. What should we tell them? Members of the apostle, you tell them I am. Right? I am the Alpha. I am the Aleph. I am the truth. I am the Hados. I am the way. That Hados is the Greek word to be in the same narrow way as Christ, and we must go through an Aryan. That is the path that leads to eternal life. And there is Oligas, a puny number. Very few who find that path, brothers and sisters, the broad path, the wide, the easy path is the path that leads to hell. The abyss, no knowledge, the lake of fire, abyss. Busos, basos, knowledge. That's the word bis. Uh, negates. I am the aleph, uh, alpha. That negates the word in the Greek. Do your study and you'll see. He doesn't hide things uh, for the people who seek these things. He says, seeking you shall find, asking you shall receive. Knock and I will come sup with you. That's why I will not keep company with vipers. I will not sup with people in this chat that do their works of the father of the devil. They want to spit the Nimrod, other Jesus. There's two Jesuses in the Bible. You've been warned. The Apostle Paul said they will come preaching another gospel that I did not preach and speaking another Jesus. Boom, another Jesus right there.
He himself said, many will come in my name. It's no knowledge. The abyss. Bis is busos or bathos, John. We know that. The word A negates in the Greek. Very first letter of the alphabet. No. Bis is the word bathos or busos. B-U-S-O-S. B-A-T-H-O-S. Same word in the Greek, and that is the word for knowledge. And knowledge could be depth. Seven to be seven. I know you I know you know what I'm talking about, John. I know you know this. Um, but I'm trying to keep them to the definition, you know, the true, not, not, not been, you know, I'm not saying that depth is not, is forwarded or perverted, but it's knowledge is the word this by definition. If you leave the definition, you've left the truth. So um, the word this, it's one word. No, no, I know you're not, John. I know you're not. That's why I said, I see I have depth is that same to be seven, right? We know seven is the same as death, correct? <laughs> to be seven, to be mature, all the seven things he asks us to do. So I know you know that, bro, John. I know you know that. Thank you for coming in again. Um, bathos and busos is, is it's um, abyss is, is one word in English, okay? Um, I don't know, everybody cleared everybody out. We had about 56 people in there. I mean, I should start ranting again, going off. We were getting the room pretty full. But my brothers and sisters, I ain't here to keep company with vipers. I ain't here to sup with anybody but my brothers and sisters. He brings to this room who he chooses, not me. This ain't him doing it. It's it's uh, it's not me doing it. Excuse me. It's him. So he, he does it in me. He makes me do these things, whether I like it or not. I have to do what he tells me. He's my commander. So uh, we don't need to have... We had 70 some people, um, people like that. I guess they like that rant, but, um, anyways, they don't like the word of God, do they? Or we cleared them all out. We start talking about the things of the world. They'll all come back in here, watch, or he'll start sending all those eyes back in here. But, um, it's not up to me again. Thank you. Um, brother John, appreciate you always coming in here. You always have, uh, those narrow way comments and appreciate it. Depth is, to be seven brothers and sisters, seven people in the room right now, and that's to be matured. So absolutely, um, you're going to gain that knowledge, uh, and it's going to take time to get to that seven, uh, you know. So same thing with repentance, same thing with baptism, same thing with salvation. We all know um, I, they can report the channel all they want here first, I guess. I've been, uh, Yaya kicks about half the room out when he's in here. I'm always worried he's going to kick me out. <laughs> that I said something, remember Yaya, when he comes in here. So I don't know. I mean, I've been a little concerned about it, but I'm telling you, he throws half the room out. You know, when he's in this chat, he does for, he don't let anybody say anything. I have to told him, you got to slow down this moderating a little bit. <laughs> Yep, that's what happened in here, huh, John? <laughs> that's what happened. We were talking about the worldly stuff and all that. We had the room full of people. But as soon as we went into the word, <laughs> narrowed in. Boom, shakalaka. That's how you narrow the path. That's how you get to the body, to the bride. Eat, eat your mother, brothers and sisters. Eat your mother. <laughs> Somebody coming in, they've been like, what is this guy talking about? So, Hallelujah. Ooh, coffee is a little too hot this morning. Better take the lid off that. Almost burning the back of my throat. It was uh, two degrees out there. Probably is even colder. Um, the app I have seems to be a little bit off. I think we hit zero this morning. So um, definitely a chilly morning out here at the high desert Oregon Outback Silver Rock Ranch. Um, dying alone, <laughs> mad at the father, but yeah, I can moderate everybody on this platform and you just been given the, whether you like it or not there, John, <laughs> you don't have to moderate if you don't want to, but, uh, I trust, um, I really am trying to just only get the moderators moderated down to, I believe, people that are in the narrow way. I, I was moderating a few people at first because the channel was growing like, and I picked up, if you guys see, they have this channel on lockdown now. As soon as I started showing the overlay video, uh, oh yeah, 
yeah, we got we got snow yesterday. You know, we got. I called it though. I already called it. I mean, whatever. I pay attention to the cycles. I'm not a prophet. Remember, prophecy was nailed to the stake, nailed to the tree, nailed to the cross. I pay attention to the cycles. And so, uh, that's right. Eat your mother. Thank you so much, Ross. Eat of that, eat of that tree of knowledge, right? Careful of the, <laughs> the understanding, the instruction that he leads us on that path. So the narrowing, <laughs> if you will, but, um, I told people out here too, that it would be a mild, um, uh, if we uh, get a early, you know, a mild, you know, fall and, and winter out here on the front side, that we would get a heavier spring. And that's exactly what we're seeing. Um, that's part of that pineapple express. That's part of the cycle of the La Nina, El Nino in our oceans. Um, yeah, this is probably two cups in one. I say I have one cup, but... <laughs> It's not that big and it's all insulated. So it's not even that, you know, it's not a big old one of them. But I try to limit myself to one of these a day. Sometimes I'll have one at night and then I drink, go to bed, makes me go to sleep. So we're seeing that out here though. We're seeing the colder second end of the winter. And I, I, I told everybody, I think the winter will stand all the way out into April, May. Cause it's shifted. It's just a shift um the weather has shifted it has gone to um again the la nina and el nino is a cycle of our of our oceans and generally there's a lag between the seven year and the 11 year solar cycle so when it changes the 11 year solar cycle changes there's a drag in our oceans that takes a few years to catch up. And that's what causes change in, in the La Nina and El Nino. We just had and came out of three La Nina cycles. That's only ever happened one time in history before. One time in history where we had three La Nina cycles in a row. Now we've came out of that into an El Nino. That's what we're now. That's that weather that generally comes more out of the, uh, the uh, Pacific more towards the easterly side of, of uh, Pacific and comes across and over down more to the south. When we're in the El Nino, right, that's that warmer cycle picking up that band of, of moisture and the heat from the, from the lower equatorial regions of our oceans, okay? And then that brings in that warmth and it, and it brings it much of a more westerly when we're in an El Nino, right? La Nina and El Nino. So that La Nina cycle is the colder cycle. And that's when we see more of that weather coming down. And um, we were in that. We've seen that for the last, again, three cycles. You know, that's why that weather wasn't coming in so much from the West like it is now, dragging itself all the way across the U.S. And then we get that PNA, Pacific North uh, Decadal Oscillation, where it goes back and forth like a fan, oscillating, warmth, cold, warmth, cold. You know, about it's warm over here on the East Coast and cold over here on the West Coast or vice versa. And that is that, that's that cycle. And that's what's been pushing that polar vortex down lower and lower into the U.S., guys. So these are cycles, okay? Um, this isn't man doing this. This is the oceans. The oceans are, there's more water on our surface than there is land. And so if you want to really find the core temperature of this earth, you need to look at the oceans. <laughs> you know, they're a, they're a big part. Uh, hallelujah. Thanks for coming in, Frosty. Love the word. Appreciate it. Um, appreciate it. If you give me a subscription, if you're not following me already, I really have not gained any um, subscriptions because they got me on lockdown over here now. And that's okay. But um, if you like this truth and you like hovering over, I pay attention to cycles. I love history. I'm a history nut. I don't know everything. I'm always in a study mode, but I'm willing to share what I do know with people. Um, 
that are really doing something about things and, and to benefit. So I do, uh, outstanding appreciate. There we go. Appreciate it. Uh, try preaching to my friends that we have to dive into our shadows to eliminate our behaviors. We are unconscious to make it to heaven. If I was looked at, I was seeing their self after that. Yeah. Moon goon, you know, that's right. We need to cut off self. We need to cut off our, Remember the Apostle Paul said we have an outer man and an inner man and to cut it off, cut the flesh off, cut it off, circumcise your flesh, not literally, you know, not the male genitalia, but the, um, the outer man, the things of the, of the outer man. So, um, so, but anyways, um, this is all part of the cycle of the sun, you know, the S O N is controlling the S U N. It's not you. It's not CO2. It's the sun. <laughs> um, yeah, they don't know who the Beatles are. <laughs> talking, but choice. We're talking about cycles. I pay attention to the cycles. We're talking about the weather. We've been really, I'm just kind of hovering over the fact that the weather is affected by the um, top of the day to you there, Levette. Thank you so much for coming in. Pleasure to always have you in this chat. Um, thank you so much, sister. Much agape and, and blue. Uh, thank you for your time, always. Um, I was talking about the La Nina and the El Nino cycles of our oceans, and they they have a changing. Um, we just experienced three La Nina cycles in a row. That's only ever happened one time before um, in history, so it's kind of a rarity. Um, but it all is driven by the sun. The sun is what drives the climate on our Earth. And um, they've already shown that space weather can affect your heart, cardiac arrhythmia, how many beats per minute your heart beats. And so people who have heart uh, type, you know, um, conditions could be affected. Um, men's could, you know, performance in the bedroom, you know, the ED thing, the uh, echo delta, you know, honey, what's wrong with you? I don't know. I can't stand up, right? That can be caused by the sun, can affect that, can affect men. Um, so be healthy, guys. Protect yourself. You know, you want to, um, yeah, it can protect, it can affect your member. Um, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it, it can, it can, the sun is the driver of what's happening. Um, and pretty soon, I believe, uh, we're not going to be able to run away from what is going to happen here in on 10, 24, 24, where those four large gas giants form a square in our outer solar system, just like they did in 79 AD. And I encourage you to look what the weather was like on 79 AD on this earth. And you tell me what you think it's going to be like here in 200 days, what the weather's going to be like. If you'll do what I did and you go back in history and you see what was happening back then, you'll see that the weather was not good. <laughs> no, 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 no. Pompeii was covered in ashes. Uh, aluminum hats. <laughs> That's funny. Uses his, use, na use Jesus' name and aluminum hat in the same sentence. That's the person you need to worry about, guys. Listen to me. I appreciate you. That is a person. The person said Jesus and aluminum hats in the same sentence, guys. That's who you need to be concerned about. Not the government, not police officers, people. People, because they just are flooding what they're calling the newcomers, newcomers into this country right now who've been coming into this country for more than a decade. Remember, Mr. 45 was going to build the greatest wall ever that he never built. And we wouldn't be having this conversation if he built that greatest wall ever. But remember, this is an old problem. There's been aliens coming into our country for a long time. Yeah, we're live. So that's been happening for 15, 20 plus years, guys. This is not a news problem. And they changed the demographics. They changed the demographics of Europe, guys. So this is happening in this country. And it's been happening for a long time. And so I'm telling you to be concerned about people who don't have. 
They're making people entitled right now, very entitled. They're giving these people what they're not giving the American citizens, guys. I hope you see what they're doing. This ain't no time to sit there and play pansies or tiptoe through the tulips. This is a very serious thing that you need to be ready and and don't do this with um, – outstanding thank you jim appreciate it yeah we're live we're, we're i'm trying we're just speaking you know shooting from the hip and i'm talking about you know for the last nearly 20 years we've had aliens coming in here we called them illegals illegal aliens is what they were called something that is alien is foreign correct foreign and they're here illegally they're illegal aliens now they've changed the name of these people to migrants immigrants and now they're calling them newcomers, guys. They're calling them newcomers, okay? So um, try to remember the agape. That's what I have been pushing. I said I was going to go down to the border and pick some of them up and bring them out to my property because I can't get one American to come out here and join me. Not one apologize, but one lazy American will not get up off their tail and come out here when I have everything they need out here to not participate in this system. Are you still in here, Lucy? Lucy, you still in here? Lady Lucy? This is how you do it right here. This is how you do it off the grid. Check out of their system. Dorito the system. Bud Light it. Stop participating in it. This is how... You make yourself self-sufficient and not being dependent on an, an electromagnetic pulse. Outstanding, Jim. Thank you. Even though they're on the... Look at what's going on. Look at what's going You want to see people doing something about it? Look at those farmers in Poland. Look at those farmers in the UK. Look at those farmers over there. They said, twisted sister, we're not going to take it. And they're doing something about it peacefully, brothers and sisters. Listen up, Americans. They're spraying their politicians' buildings with manure. They're digging holes in the streets. They're, they're dumping out all this genetically modified, all this crops that are coming in to Europe right now. Anything that's not from that area, it gets dumped out on the ground. The power is in the people. And we see that peacefully agape over there with our farmers over there. You don't see it on the news not on the always broadcasting crap, the ABC and the NBC and the faux news and the MSLSD and all these fakery alphabet soup channels. They're not going to show you what's going on over there, guys. But those people are doing exactly what we should all be doing as nations, standing up and showing these governments, we have the power. We are the farmers. We grow the food. Let them eat cake, brothers and sisters. Let them eat cake. Otherwise, you're going to eat the bugs. They just passed this stuff, guys. This food labeling, it's getting quite ridiculous. Look, at, they ban our food in other countries, guys. They will not allow it here in America. How have we allowed this as long? We should stand up just for the food. Nice. So we, we don't need any other reason you got to stop poisoning our kids. We, we, we do not, we demand. And that's what they've done over there. They're, they're, they're telling their, their politicians, they figured out over there, guys. And you know, it can't happen here in America. Unfortunately, you guys, we are way too far from that. Because if you look over there, there's all these farmers. There you go. Can you do it? Can you live? I've lived without electricity, or without a power system for f five going on six years. I've done it longer, but I make my own power. That's my wind turbine. That's my so that's my charge controller. I watch the sun every day. If I know there's a solar flare coming, I'm taking in this stuff and I'm disconnecting it. So it doesn't affect it. And then I've got power and I'm the power company. I'm in power. Nobody's going to shut my power off. I'm not on no stupid meter. Let me ask yourself, are you hooked up to a smart meter? I don't think that's very smart if you ask me. So, much, much love, John. Thank you for coming in, brother. Thanks for having you. And it's always a pleasure to see you come in. Thank you, brother. Um, you guys, this is happening. 
in America and they're flooding people into this country. You'll shut my power off. How are you going to do that? How are you going to shut my power off? <laughs> there, see that? See tag? You're that's the person that's going to come try to take your stuff and unalive you guys. This is exactly what I want to make the point. You see these people with their snide, defiant comments and them not doing anything? That is a problem. Don't worry about these governments. I mean, do something about it, but that's not going to be your worry when the, when the time comes. It's all these people with their, with their unprepared. Uh, listen, they're going to be thinking with their stomach, not their head. Obviously, they have enough to go, oh, Defiant. I got to put Defiant here like a program. Android. They're like an Android. They go, oh, I have to do Defiant. Defiant's the new cool. But guys, they won't even have that brain anymore. That's the only cell they're thinking with when they come in here. They got one of them left, and it says opposition. Well, when that brain cell goes away, they go from hungry in about three or four hours to angry in about four to five, maybe six hours. In about seven to eight, eight hours, they're called what is called hangry. And so now they're not thinking with their head anymore. They're thinking with their stomach. This is what I'm trying to tell you. This is the most real information you're going to get right now. This is who you need to be concerned about. People who don't have anything and fail to prepare, fail to prepare. Failing to prepare is preparing to fail. And now these people are going to go have to unalive some, somebody just to feed themselves to their kids because they didn't do anything. They spent their time because they were in this cush, whatever they were, you know, this country that's been pampered to death that they couldn't even go out and feed themselves. Haven't you want to bet that the person, these people that make these comments can't feed themselves. They don't have any extra food storage put away. And so this is what you should be concerned about. Stay in the word. Keep covering the word of God. Hover over that. Be in the world, but not of it. There you go. He tells you right there. You got to be in it. I'm not going to let you out of here. You're going to have to endure to the end if you want to be picked up. You want to be my bride? Then you have to go through suffering. And he says, be wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove. So I'm not telling you to arm yourself to the teeth and fight. I'm telling you to stop, get away from these people. These are the people that are going to be coming for your things that you've tried to provide for your family. They come on TikToks. They come on rumbles. They just don't even do it here. They do it all over their program, like an Android. Literally been programmed to be defiant. Defiance is the new cool for this generation. So you can see they don't have any they're programmed. They're triggered to do that. They hear God. They hear anything pos positive. They've got to throw shade on it. They have to. Remember, it talks about this, guys, in Scripture, that there will be scoffers in that day. So it does not lead me astray. I stay on that narrowing. Oh, man. Oh, why am I doing You know, these guys are right. You know, these people are right. You know, but, oh, I should get a tinfoil. Do you want me to? Put, put a bunch of tinfoil around my hat here and we'll, we'll all, you know, maybe we'll do that for a stream. I'll go straight tinfoil with these people, right? Notice they said aluminum, guys. Aluminum doesn't do what tin does. Aluminum. Aluminum foil. That person said aluminum earlier. Aluminum does not have the same properties as tin. Hmm, something's already changed there, didn't it? So this is my concern for you, my brothers and sisters. The blotting out that I tell you, that can happen to his elect. No, you didn't trigger anybody, Kurt. Yo, I'm so triggered. Look at me here. I'm just going off. Huh? Oh my gosh. Don't, don't, don't let Kurt say something else. Let, let him put one more defiant comment and then put him up against the wall. <laughs> So go ahead, say something else in defiance. Okay, the love of Lucifer, get him out of here. I can't stand that LOL. That is such childish, the love of Lucifer. Good for you, laugh at somebody. See, 
they still have to be defiant. They they enjoy other people's pain. See what I'm saying? They see how tr- see how triggered they are. <laughs> They're triggered to laugh at other people. Defiance, and they laugh. I got him triggered. He's feeling bad. Ha ha ha! See, see, they can't control themselves, guys. They're goats. They're vessels of wrath fitted for destruction. See, he couldn't even help it. He or she or didn't Kurt. I think that's a man. You never know in this day and age, right? Could have been Katrina. They got them so defiant, they're taking pieces and putting them on other pieces. Putting on them other people. Taking pieces, the defiant generation. Ooh, we'll call them, we'll come up with a new name. They're the puzzle generation, right? They like to move pieces around like on a puzzle. You know, here, here. Let me give you a piece of my puzzle and put it on your puzzle. Hey, that doesn't fit all well. Check it out. I'm a barn. <laughs> and I got a piece of city. <laughs> Look at my antenna over here. Um, you want an antenna? You know, it's ridiculous, guys. Yeah. And Jim, you probably don't have it um, because you're on the other side of the drink over there. But here in America, we're set up on, and I'm pretty sure it's pretty similar, but it's different over there in Europe. I know I I, I probably need to go to Europe. I've really been thinking about just, I don't know, the timing. I want to feel like I could get out and go take a trip right now, but I can't get my finances in the right place. Uh, um, Let's see. Let me go back and look at your comment here. Jim said, can I ask why? They call Jesus the morning star. I know that he was the conjunction with Jupiter in the time of the birth. Right, because he's, because he, yeah, I'd love to go over there just for, just before things get too bad. But I don't think I have time, Jim. You know what I'm saying? I, I need to get my house in order after. I'm telling you guys, look it. If God's so willing, will push me through this time and get me through this. <laughs> Because this is difficult for me, and I know we're all experiencing a difficult time, but I will have my day in the sun. I feel that I'm going to reap what I sow. I feel like I put um, – I'll let your question here. Hold on one second. Anybody else want to make a comment to, to, to Finn about the morning star and why they call Christ the morning star? Um, and uh, – and give that a, I want to answer this um, real quick and I'll go back to that. That um, You know, I think I'll reap what I sow. Oh, don't worry. It's, I love questions. I apologize. I can't see them. I miss sometimes to get the whole overcome by the Holy Spirit, get talking about something that I can't. Um, I mean, that's what we're here for. Fan, I appreciate it. I got nobody else. I got nobody else to talk to. So just God. So I appreciate, especially if it's a brother or sister that's in the narrow way, they're, you're treasured to me. Uh, What's going on there, Jim? <laughs> uh, so, um, no, I, I really feel like I'll have my day. And I prepared for decades, guys, for this time. And we're here now. So I don't think the Father is going to make me. Uh, yes, I see that. Um, thank you. Dispersing weight. Appreciate it. Um, I'll get through this. You know, I'll get through this tough time that he has me in right now. And I'll, I'll be able to, I'm hoping to finish to prepare the things that he has me preparing that I've been working on for decades. I just didn't start this, you know, this dance or this rodeo or this buck, buck, you know, ride, this bumpy ride here, right? I mean, I've been on it for, for decades. So um, I, f- I feel like I've been, uh, um, that I will be able to provide. For people because I want to give you know like I know my son's in here and I'm not calling him out or whatever but man I wish I could have my son around me you know somebody around me one or two of you people here with me from the body you know from the from the church uh from 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 the people that know the Alethea Cause that's who I'd like to see here. I, I don't want to be, I don't want to have people here who don't believe the narrow way. So um, maybe that's why God is not 
provided the things that I have the things I need. Um, I just guess I don't have um, the things I want, you know, um, cause I want to share. I want, I want to be around other people. I hate being alone. I'm not weak just cause I want to be around other people. I want to share its community. We live in a time we live in an extinction event. Oh, I just want to sit here when we're an ex extinction uh, uh, event. I just want to sit here by myself in an extinction event. When I know I need a community to thrive, not survive, that's what I'm doing. So I don't feel bad for wanting what I want. I don't. Sometimes I'm so upset at God and this morning it hit me. I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, here we are another morning alone. You know, <sighs> it's hard. I spend so much time alone. I don't turn on music. I don't, it's so quiet out here. I don't, don't have neighbors. So um, maybe he'll provide that in the future. And, um, and I'll get through this. And because I feel like I've sowed good seeds on good soil and I didn't sow them on rocky soil. And I just need to just continue like Noah, you know, 126 years. He just kept going, going like the Energizer Bunny. He didn't stop, you know. Um, so hopefully I, I wish I could come see you guys before this day. But I believe that now's not the right time. I need to stay here and continue to prayer this ark, this place. Um I really wish people would would come here and be with me so that we can share this land. Lucifer was not the morning star. <laughs> so I don't mean to interrupt. I want to finish telling this, but Venus was the morning star. Um, Lucifer is not the morning star. Uh, Haleli, um, that's not, Lucifer is not the morning star. That's a perversion of uh of what people have done to the single one time only written in scripture the word lucifer just written one time never written twice but only once and not even a in the original scripture so no that's not what lucifer is but anyways guys after this time comes because i'm going to stand on what the father has shown me knowing that I don't need to sit here and convince anybody anymore. Again, I've been trying to show you that here recently in these last live streams that I've been doing. You don't need to wait for anybody to do anything. We've hit the 12,000 year extinction cycle. We've hit the sixth extinction event. You already see and have seen for well over uh, decades, you know, we've been in this magnetic excursion. You know, whales wash up on beaches, guys because they think they're in a different area. They use the magnetics of this earth, just like birds do, just like bees do. There are so many different animals that use the magnetics of our earth to migrate, like GPS, TomTom. -tom. That's not even always TomTom, -tom, well, whatever. You know, Google Maps, whatever you use to navigate, they use the magnetics. How many decades have we been seeing fish Walk up on shore, not starving, not the magnetics is off, guys, on this earth. So, um, yeah, but Lucifer is not, that's what I'm trying to tell you, but it's a perverted translation. It's not a literal, it's not a literal, that's not literal. You're, 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 anyways, I'm not. You guys do your own research. I don't even, I could say that's such a perversion. You got societies that believe they're Luciferian when it, it was not even, even written in scripture. The word was never there, never there. It's just an added word. You do, it's just like tooth fairy, you know, or Santa Claus. It's not real. The word Lucifer is not a real word. It doesn't even match the original definition. So you could just throw the whole thing out. Go to the word that was there before. Because that wasn't there. Find the word that was there before. No, I know. I want to explain this to you, and I want to go on and and please do your own research. Go see Brother Jim at Grace and Truth. He makes this very clear about who the Morning Star is and which star. Go see 
actually, I want you to go follow this. Finn, go see Brother Daniel Vallis, Daniel Vallis, at Informed, and I've already told you guys this 10 times. You could have already answered this question yourself, and that's fine. Keep them coming. Don't ever stop them. There's no such thing as a stupid question in my book, Finn, when it comes to edifying each other with the word. You're asking a question. I'm not shutting you down at all. Okay, this is not what this is. Go see Brother Daniel Vallis and inform Christians, and he'll tell you how these stars are mapped out as well. Might be a little harder to find the work, but between Brother Jim, who gives plenty of lessons on Lucifer and the Morning Star, I don't agree with a lot of Brother Jim's lessons on, this is the only part that I don't really agree with, with Brother Jim, is on his 23-point tilt and all this, you know, but it doesn't matter. Everything else he gives is golden because you didn't ask me that. You asked about Lucifer, so he'll give you the definition because it's in the definition, and it's in right there. It's in the definition. So people have forwarded, perverted the meaning of the morning star. There is more than one morning star. Like you said, you figured that out, and you want answers, and that's beautiful, Finn. Thank you, brother. He's calling you to seek this, and you want the answers, so you're going to get them. I guarantee you're going to get them. Asking you shall receive. Knock and I will come suck with you. Seeking ye shall find. So keep them coming. Again, this is probably the best place to get your answers. Um, or I'll lead you to where I can give you an even better answer and a more thorough answer that I can give you. Jesus was the morning star. And there was another morning star. I encourage you, there are two morning stars. So you're over it, man. Right over the target. So don't stop your flack. Is, yeah, you're over it. So keep... Stay over that target. Check out Daniel Vallis and Brother Jim at Grace and Truth. Between those two, you will have a better understanding of the circuit and why one raises at the time and why one is called the morning star. Jesus, actually, again, scratch at this point, scratch Brother Jim for that uh, first lesson. I want you to go to Daniel Vallis. Go to Daniel Vallis. Okay. And watch his, where he talks about those two stars and why one is called the morning and why one is, because one's up longer and one's up brighter and doesn't matter. Inform Christians. Vallis is his name. Look up the channel on YouTube. Daniel Vallis. With Vallis, like V-A-L-E-S, I believe. You know, I, um, Daniel Elijah at Brook Cherith, at the Brook Cherith um is what he calls his his property and he's an amazing his voice is very settling <laughs> and it's beautiful he uses the word rapture i don't agree in rapture that's the only thing with brother daniel Vellis. i don't agree with the word rapture you know our parpozo right a calling up he's the snare that lifts us out of here so there is but there's no getting out of here um planet venus is the morning star yes Yes, see, I, I say that all the time. It's written right there. Morning star. See that? And 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 Finn knew that too. He already knows that. He he already knows that. He already said that. Whoa. Ooh. What do we got there? What happened to our Zoom? No, there's no such thing as rapture. <laughs> there's another word that's made up. At least, at least, at least Lucifer was added to the text way later, way later, way later, way later, way later, way later, way later. I don't know about that. I don't, I don't know about that. No, I, don't, I think you might be seeing something there. I always make sure I mow my nose hairs. I don't see any nose hairs coming out of there. What are you talking about? I don't know how to touch. I think you're seeing things. <laughs> well, I can get some long nose hairs. You trust you me. If I let them grow, they'll grow right into my mustache. So, But I make sure I pluck those out. <laughs> um, anyways, so the word Lucifer was added to the text, just like the word used to say demon in your KJV Bible, but now it says devil. There's been so many additions 
to the to the text that you have to go back to the definition. You have to get a lexicon out, a dictionary. You have to get a concordance and need to read every time that word is said. Because like the word beast is written how many times in scripture? And it's not talking about one particular kind of beast. So the morning star is a great study, guys. It, it shows how much of a perversion, a forwarding, a twisting of the word that has happened. So excellent question, um, Finn. And I want you to get the right uh, answer. <laughs> so <laughs> um, check it out. Daniel Vallis at Informed Christians. And I'm not a Christian. Remember, I don't... Um, We'll give you the answer to that and then go see Brother Jim after you're done studying and you will have a hundred percent. You'll have no doubt in your mind because this deals with Lucifer as well, right? And the morning star. So they, they're both the same study, Brother Jim. Uh, yep. And you'll be like, whoa, thank you, Tracy. This is because Daniel Vallis will give you the visuals. Brother Jim is grace and truth. That's the whole backbone of this channel, Finn is predestination what i teach what i pastor on this channel is predestination god also did for know who he did predestine romans 8 and 29 the apostle paul who he did predestine he had foreknowledge of prognosco the greek word to have foreknowledge of right he also did foreknow who he did predestined conform to the image of christ i don't have any religion i don't claim religion religions 99 percent of religions are going to hell because they bring in tree and grove and owl and Moloch worship. They worship the traditions of men and they celebrate all these things that are not in scripture. I don't care what denomination it is, especially during the hella days, you'll see how pagan they are. Generally, he says, who shall ever come after me through his apostle Matthew, let them deny themselves, take up their cross daily and follow after me. So yes, we're supposed to have a relationship and we're supposed to never set our cross down. See, who shall ever come after me, let them deny themselves, take up their cross daily and follow after me. So what religion am I? Predestination. If I actually had to put a label on myself, which I will not do. I teach and I pastor predestination. I mirror Brother Jim's teaching at Grace and Truth Ministries. Obviously, I have my own way of teaching this word without perverting your definition, or, but I, I bring my own experiences into this. I bring things that Brother Jim does not teach. At Grace and Truth Ministries, he talks about the stars and the heavens, and I do my own ministry. I have my own. This is high desert Grace and Truth Ministries. It's a mirror channel of, I made this channel to drive people to Brother Jim. That's it, period. That's the only reason this channel was made. I talked with my teacher, my brother, my pastor. He's my pastor. I'm some people's pastor. He's their pastor. He, you know, he's the body's pastor. But I just mirror and teach Brother Jim the mirror teaching of the predestination. Through the aletheia, through the truth, through definition, horizo, pro horizo, predetermined, pornea in the Greek. The word predestination is the word pornea in the Greek, right? Idolatry, latrio, to serve, ido, to see, to serve what you see. Idolatry, by definition, distribute fortunes to self. So that's what I mirror on this channel. I mirror his teachings, and I've just... It doesn't matter if somebody calls me a pastor or not. I don't want the label, but I've been called that now, and I will take that name on because I spend three quarters of my day teaching. So if somebody wants to call me a pastor, that's up to them. I don't want a label. I don't want any label, okay? Um, I, want, I want people to learn, but I know that I have a teacher and a brother, and a pastor, and his name is Brother Jim Brown. He's my brother and my mother. And I bring people to graceandtruth.net on the internet so they can be a part of the body. 
And I had just uh, the just the most amazing day the other day in my hard life because two people came in to the live stream and guys, I, I was bubbling. I was bubbling over with joy because I had brought uh, two people that day over to the live stream. And it's success. I have 20 plus thousand followers on TikTok on that platform that I pastor and teach. Now I've shut that platform off and not off, but I won't pastor over there because people don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear it. I told them they got to come over here. So I don't even post over there anymore. And unless they lift their restriction because of my overlay video, which I don't believe they are. So I just mirror, if you want to call me teacher or brother, that's up to you. I am your brother and your mother and your sister and a son of God, right? Those that do the will of the Father are sons of God. Your brother and your sister and your mother are those that do the will of the Father. So I am all of those. If you choose to call me pastor, that's fine. And, and I will take on that. I don't like titles. God doesn't like titles. He doesn't like one in front of our name or after their name. But if you, again, I want to move on with this lesson. If you choose to call me pastor, I do have a ministry here. So you can call me teacher. And again, I don't want to be called teacher either. <laughs> I don't want that name, but I want to get back to the point that I mirror the teaching of my brother, Jim, and that I have my own ministry out here. Um, one day I may have my own, what brother Jim has been looking for. And I'm hoping maybe I could be successful that I can provide the funding that brother Jim needs to put, to get him into his own classroom. Because I have a building out here I can teach in. I have a 53 foot semi trailer. I have the ability if I can turn this property over to brother Jim doesn't own any land. I own 20 acres out here. I have 20 acres with a classroom on it already with all the materials. If I can just get the people out here to build it, it's here. We'll build the tabernacle, the place of study on the outside of the library and we'll sit out here and do it 10 hours a day. Hey, I'm going to make a mention. If you guys can help me out, I have a cash app. All my money got taken. Both my credit cards are in. I normally never stress out about this. I'm self-employed. I'm a horse trader. I buy, I sell, I trade. And I got robbed. I dropped my wallet. A guy picked it up immediately and went and spent all my money. Um, I normally don't rely on other people. This morning I checked, I didn't, you know, I put my generator up for sale. I have a 37 things after I'm done with this live stream. Um, I'm going to go and bury a propane tank, some of this preparedness stuff that I have and, um, try not to burden you guys at all. I think I will be able to make it through next month when the snow breaks out here, guys, I have things that I've already bought that I'm waiting for the spring line trimmers and, construction tools that I pulled out of people's storage and paid some money for, but now I fixed them up and they run and they're, I, that's how I make my way. So, um, I've just been shut down on the internet. Um, ever since my water overlay video guys, I, my TikTok live was shut down. I can't do TikTok down there anymore on the live. It's been shut down for almost 90 days or something. Now it's, it's, I don't know if it's ever going to come back up. There's 20,000 followers used to teach and pastor to over there. Um, I only made 20 bucks, $30 a month working on TikTok. So I don't have any other stream. Fortunately, I am an honorably discharged, tyrannical United States war machine train killer. Yes, I'm an honorably discharged veteran and I don't get veterans benefits because I actually fought with the military before I got out of the military. I have an honorable discharge. I have it on my driver's license, but go look at my channel. Go look at how many followers and how many hits were on those videos? 12,000, 15,000, 10,000 hits on each one of those videos up until the overlay video. And then it went down to I can't even get a thousand hits. The live stream was taken down. I've had 10 people on this chat when I was doing a late night stream leave and go over to TikTok and hit uh, follow me over there. And I went back over the same day and I only got one follower. So same thing that's happened with this channel, guys, go look at my analytics. <sighs> we crushed out 3000 plus followers in less than a month on this channel. And ever since I started showing you that water overlay video, cause I'm not afraid this channel has been shut down as well. 
I'm losing subscribers on this channel. If you pay attention and you're following me, I'm losing subscribers on this channel now. It's going backwards. I'll go in there and I'll be 10 or 15 subscribers down. This channel hasn't moved any. If you look at my analytics, so they got this channel too. I was going to show you the overlay video. I'll show it before the end of the day or the. Where did it go? Okay, I got the phone plugged in. But my overlay video, guys, that's what shut the channel down. So I'm paying for it, guys. Um, I haven't sold anything, guys. Nothing in two and a half months. My internet has been completely locked up. I make my living off the marketplace. I make my living off of Craigslist. I make my living off of advertising on the internet to sell the products that I have. I can I can try and sell things locally, but it's not, you know what I'm saying? So um, if you can help me in any way, I have a PayPal, I have a cash app. I'll get back to this, but uh, normally guys, I have the money and I did. I had the money guys in my account, but it was taken. And I've got a police report and I'm trying to get the, but it takes like I just yesterday, I just ordered my new cash app card because I couldn't dispute the charges until I got a new card. And then I've had to wait, you know, cause this has been a couple weeks, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, to, um, to get my new card. So I did got it yesterday and now I have to dispute the charges with cash app and I got to wait for weeks to get that one. So, um, yeah, but money in the bank is just numbers, Ace. But when I don't have enough to pay my land payments, um, then I, I need still need dollars. Uh, I'm invested, and that's what I might have to do. Uh, I don't want to do that. I might have to take my this silver bar right here that I was hoping to be someday. I can pay for all the gravel, the hundred loads of gravel that I need, and and if, you know, with this, <laughs> and I don't want to. I don't want to get rid of this. This was supposed to be traded, and it's that's the thing guys so if i have to i don't have i had all my silver stolen years ago okay i had my silver stolen already so even if it's physical it can be taken from you i tell you that guys i had all my physical but i've tried to get some back i don't have what i had before but if i have to take this liquid asset down to the to the coin shop i will i'm hoping i don't have to I have a generator. My Honda generator is up online for sale right now. So I'm not sitting here, not doing nothing, trying to grift the hell out of you guys. Okay. Um, I'm trying to find people maybe who has so many people. Some people have done okay through these last couple of years. People make money on the downside. People make money on the upside. So I'm going to be done talking about my finances, but it's just been a tough month for me, guys, because normally I have the money. Um, on the 8th, I get this notice every month. Hey, we haven't received your land payment yet. It's due by the 14th or you get a $50 late fee. Okay. And I have it sitting there either in the bank. Cause I don't pay it until the 14th. I don't, or I keep the money and then I go up in the town the day before and I hold on to it. I don't have extra money. And I'm always, I don't live in fear, but I always keep that money to the side because what if the bank shut down? Then I still have that money in my pocket, so to speak. And so I, I, I used to pay it on the first of the month, guys, just because that's the way I was. But now I try to keep it as a bank. What if I could keep, what if I go put it in the bank, you know, seven days earlier and I run across something that I can buy and sell, right? You know what I'm saying? In that week, oh my gosh, there's something that's reasonably priced. I know how to fix that. That's just needs a, a, a little diode or something. That's how I work guys. I'll fix it. I'll buy it in that weekend. I'll still sell it before the week's up. And now I made my, if I lock my money up in the bank, I couldn't have done that. See what I'm saying? So unfortunately I put my money in the bank this time. I put it in the bank instead of keeping it because I've been limited. My son brought um, this car over here and I've only driven it one time since it's been here, you know, and because I don't want to put the miles on his car, he's nice enough to let me, it got me out of the driveway the other day and I pushed snow around, you know, um, a little bit hit the bottom of the pan. If it would have snowed anymore, it would have been, you know, there have been pan marks all the way out, but, um, I didn't want to leave. So I, you know, I've been having vehicle issues. It's been snowing out here. So, um, 
I put all my land payments in the bank this month because I knew that I would, I needed to work here on the cabins and stop worrying about my stupid finances and get these cabins done so I can rent them out. I'm done horse trading. I don't ever want to do it again, guys. I'm trying to get away from buying and selling on the internet. It worked great. My son's in this room. I got to be at all his football games, parent teacher conferences. I was a single dad, both mom and dad, and I would never trade it for the world. It was super beneficial, but I haven't been shut down on the internet. Um, you know, I wasn't before like I am now. So they literally haven't sold anything in months. So long rant, but, you know, I, I've got police reports. The guy was charged with credit card fraud. Um, it will take some time to get my money. But, um, you know what I'm saying? It, it just, it's a process with everything. So, um, and some of the things like they're holding a bunch of this property as evidence. So I have to wait until it's released and, it's a nightmare, guys. I never wanted any of this. So I apologize to be a burden, but their links are in my description. A couple of my followers were dropping them. I appreciate it, LaVette. I appreciate you guys who've helped me out in the past. So um, I'm located in Silver Lake, Oregon. I'm going to say this, then I'm going to get off the finances. I have tried to give my land away to, to you guys for LaVette saw it on TikTok and invited just about anybody to come out here for free. And I was going to make sure that you had, you know, a wind turbine and a charge controller and something to power your, your little cabin with, and we'd build your cabin. And I never asked a dime from anybody guys, nothing. I was willing to give five people a free, you know, get to a cost free lifestyle to where you don't need any more dollars. And I'm going to get that way myself guys, where I don't need any dollars or I'm probably going to move out of the country. To be honest with you, I've already thought about this. So to bring this whole round robin, I will probably wait until after this event happens, the 10, 24, 24 event. And I'll probably wait into five of 25 after we're done. And after this event happens, guys, I'm I, it's everything I've ever worked for. I will have my. Um, I'll probably go see my my brothers and sisters in Australia first. I have more followers um, on the TikTok platform. A third of my followers from outside the country are from Aus Australia. Um, and um, I have quite a few Aussies that follow me over here. I don't know what it is, why, why I get so many Aussies that follow me, but so I will probably go see my Aussies first. Um, probably want to go to Russia. Um, I have a gentleman who wants to give me 40 acres in Russia. Um, he wants me to move out of the country and he wants me to move over there. Um, he said, I'll give you 40 acres over here. I've got, he has land like I have land. He wanted me to come over there. He's been, he was on the TikTok platform, but I don't want to go to Russia. I can't, you know, wanna, you know it was a beautiful offer, but um, I think I'll just go on the road because I've been doing this homestead for over 10 years. I came out here and tried to get people to come out here. So um, didn't work. And I'm not upset anybody. It's the father's will. And I'm not, uh, but this is the future. Um, you're going to get stuck in, in the cities. I see now so clearly, um, I might be wrong, but you're going to get locked in a city. You're going to get locked in a city. You're not going to get out of your city. You're never going to make it to where I'm at. You're not going to make it here. And if you do, you're going to have to unalive some people. But I've really been kind of shown here clear, clearly here in the last, you know, couple of weeks that, he wants me to stay here because I don't probably need to go to the, to the woods, which I'm still going to try to set up another place within 20 or 30 minutes from here. So I'm a busy man. I've got 15 years of land payments into the 65 acres that I have. I still pay on 45 acres of it. I've paid 20 of it off. I've been paying on this property for 10. I almost have the five acre parcel and I offered it to everybody. So I don't feel bad about asking and interrupting this stream because I have given my heart and my soul to try to give to the world. And just because somebody doesn't take it doesn't mean that I didn't give it hell and try my hardest to get somebody to come out here and not be alone. I had to wake up and get out of this bed this morning and go, here we go. Here's another day in it's worse than a prison. It's worse than a prison because in a prison, I could talk to other people. You understand? I could talk to other people. I don't have anybody to talk to. So that's why I come in here because I don't have anybody to talk to. So 
either way, today was the eighth. I got my notice and I was like, oh, man, I, I have always. And I said, well, get over it, Tracy. You always have the money by now. And then I was like, well, I did. It was in the bank account. You know, it was there. I thought I was going to make it through this month, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, this is a good place to grow, Dark Star. You can legally have four plants and um, I have four properties. So that'd be four, eight, 12, 16 medicinal plants out here that can be grown and you're not doing anything against the law and it's God's medicine. So um, God's medicine and God's money. So I, I don't do drugs. I don't put drugs in my body. I use cannabis, cannabis oils for the health problems, the stuff I have. Most people couldn't even walk um, with the conditions that I have, but um, cannabis hasn't cured my ailments, but um, it helps to give me a little bit more comfort in my daily regimen that I do. So sometimes I don't need it. Sometimes I do. Um, I've been a medicinal cannabis grower and a patient. So basically I'm my own doctor and you know, so the doctor says, uh, take as prescribed. I'm the doctor and I prescribe myself as needed. So um, kind of an, uh, a good thing, but, and this is a good place to do that. You probably have to do it <laughs> in a more controlled, uh, type outdoor in a, um, enclosed type of thing out here because we do get some colder, um, falls and whatnot, but, uh, I'm not against that. I don't, I really wish people would, uh, they're all against, you know, people, um, using some kind of medicine but the whole all these governments just did the roll up your sleever to the whole world and they want to point fingers at you that you're some kind of bad person but they didn't um yes i've already filed i've already went against social security i fought for seven years um and went to trial and not nothing after that and no i have had many VA people. Oh, get your case. I even tried it here with a local lady. Oh, I got you. I got you. I got, I got the paperwork right over there. If you want to see it. No. So just like I've got $20,000 worth of stuff sitting right here that got stolen from me, a car that got stolen from me, a whole estate that I bought, but I can't even get the local sheriff to go retrieve it for me. $20,000 worth of stuff that's sitting there that have already called the sheriff 50 times and try to get him involved in this now. They won't do nothing because they're afraid of me. They don't want anything involved with me. Just yesterday, uh, it was a day before a gentleman that I was talking to, um, he gets pulled over and harassed out here. He was, um, he's been through college and has a degree and, um, he's been a public or a, uh, paralegal for people and whatnot. He was there that day when I got pulled over. He made sure after those cops, you know, um, were harassed or, you know, harassing me that, you know, I was all right. He, you know, came over. He's the first person that came up after the traffic stop and, and came over and talked to me, but he came over here the other day cause they've been pulling him over still. And he messes with them. Like they've been pulling me over. And they said, you know, my name came out of their mouth multiple times you know, cause he jokes with them. I don't, I call them straight to their face and tell them they're tyrants and they need to turn in their badge and they failed the American public and they need to stand down. I'm the law in this town is what I tell them. That's the last time I had a interaction with the law here in this town. I told him, you remember, I'm not the bad guy in this town. I'm the man who stood up in this town when you wouldn't, when you law enforcement officers in this town stood down, I stood up. So I sold the sergeant in this town. I'm the law in this town. Don't you ever forget it. Because I told the bull when this stuff breaks down that you're going to go home and tuck your tail between your legs. And you did. I told you that before the virus ever happened. And what I said came to fruition. Because I made sure they had it recorded on there. You imagine all these interactions I have with the police guys out here. The sheriff and all these. They've probably got 50 of those docucams interaction with me. And every time I'm up, up, all up in there. You know what? I don't lick their boot. I don't do that. I stand in. I stood in for the American public during the during the vid. I, mean, I don't even think there was a dozen men that stood up during the vid. Not even a dozen in America stood up. Maybe 10. Maybe even less than you can count on your hands. I'm talking people who stood up to the law, to the elected sheriff to the government, to their governor, 
because nobody would. Everybody is afraid. Everybody's going to tell me I'm going to get locked up and I'm going to get thrown in prison. And this is a national security event. And I, I need it. This I this, you know, I understand that you stand up, Tracy, but this is no, 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 no. This is the perfect time to actually stand up. So nobody did. So that's why I'm bold enough to tell the law enforcement officers in this town, because I told them before ever this ever happened, I tried to warn the sheriff. I called him. I had an incident with somebody tearing up my driveway, but I took the time with the with the sergeant out here, and I said, "Hey, are you got that recorder thing on? Listen, because I know you'll listen to this later. Everybody in this town knows me and knows how I am since I've been coming to this town. I stand up to you. I stand up to the millionaire farmers. I stand up to everything in this town. And you are the sheriff in this town. They're going to call nine one one, and you are going to get the call." So all the problems are going to be funneled through you. So I have told everybody in this town, remember I said, hey, let me, I want to get your sergeant out here. Get your sergeant out here. Tom. Oh, hey, Tracy. Yeah, they know who I am by name. Call the district attorney. He knows who I am. Call the elected sheriff. They know who I am. Call the governor and they know who I am. I'm not just any guy out here. I'm not just any guy. Remember, they just pulled this guy over and they said, well, if if Tracy would just calm down a little bit and not stop ripping our butt so much, we wouldn't harass him so much. Two days ago, I was told this from the other guy, the paralegal out here. They've been bothering him and stuff because he's been standing up for the people out here, too. Got that lady off that uh, that they charged for stealing forty five hundred bucks worth of cash she found in the store. Two days later, she turns it over to the cops. Four months later, they come and arrest her. So I've been standing in and he's been helping her. So they, he's been having conversations with the sheriff and my name has been coming up out of their mouth. If Tracy would just joke with us and not be so stirred every time he sees us, he rips our butt. Da, 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 maybe he'd get what he needs from us, but we're not going to sit there and help him if he keeps ripping our butt. Can't get my $20,000 worth of stuff. Because the sheriff's a, a, a spineless wonder and doesn't have a backbone. He won't even come and see me if you don't believe so. Go on my TikTok platform and look at me trying to call the elected sheriff out to my house. That's why the two deputies came out to my house. What I told them, don't you dare send a deputy to my house. They show up to my house. I'll rip them a new one. I only want the elected sheriff out here. The one that can actually do something. Don't you send no public defendant out here. Don't send no some 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 deputy. They don't have any authority. I'll I'll tear them a new one. I, I said this on the phone multiple times. Don't you dare send a deputy out to my house. The elected sheriff or nothing. You send the deputies out here. I'm going to give them an earful. Do you think the elected sheriff came out? No, they sent the deputies. So go watch me rip them a new one. It was kind of ironic that I was doing a live stream about bootlicking and all the law and that there's corporate letter law. And then there's God's law, your fourth amendment, God's law, the right to be secure in your house's papers, sins and effects, the law that's upheld by the federal government, warrantless, unabated search and seizure. That's God's law. I don't care what religion you are. I don't do religion. That is the federal government is there to uphold your constitutional right in 2023. They did just that. So these cops are enforcing corporate letter law. Do you like going on dates with men? Do you follow mandates? I don't go on dates with men. I don't follow ordinances. It's not a law. I don't follow mandates. Not a law. The minute I got out here, Dark, I started pushing on the millionaire farmers out here. The millionaires. And so this is a Billy Bob system. I live in the poorest county in the state of Oregon, Lake County, the second largest county. And so I uncovered some of their funding. I found police corruption in the town that I live in. And so I don't take a dump in my backyard. I don't do that. And if somebody is, I point it out. And so I found that out. And so I started pointing that out long ago when I first came out here. So I got to live in this town and I don't want to run roughshod on the people out here. So I stand up for the people. 
for the people and the country. As again, less than 10 Americans stood up, men stood up against their governors, stood up against the president. Oh, yeah, I know Mr. Trump knew exactly what I was doing. I pointed out Mr. Trump. See, remember, I told the sheriff, I said, there's going to be something that goes down here very soon. I look and I watch this stuff. And I pay attention and you're the 911 call away. So they're going to call you, Tom, to come rescue them because you are the person that's supposed to be coming out there with your cherries and your blueberries, your lights and sirens, your code three. And these people are going to call you, Tom. But you know what I told everybody in this town? This is before the vid. This is before COVID ever happened. I told them this was going to happen. It's on their recorder. God saw me do it. I said, this is going to go down, this event, because I see it. I, I know what's doing my study. And I said, and I'm gonna, I told everybody in this town, Tom, you're going to stand down. And the hell are these people? Hold on, guys. I got somebody. No, I'm never really getting him to come down my driveway. They're inside the yard, you idiot. What are you doing? Come on. You went the wrong way, didn't you? Sorry, I apologize. I don't ever have people come down my driveway, but we've got some people. They don't know what to do. <laughs> Get him, boys! You have activated the four-legged alarm system. Sorry. This place looks like a... Uh, this place looks like an old movie set, guys. So sometimes, very seldom do people come down here, but they were looking at the UFO. They stopped in front of the UFO. I seen what they were doing. They parked in front of the UFO. They were, uh, um, they were looking at the UFO I built out here. So anyways, yeah. So you can't be the crazy guy in town and go against the law and go against the millionaires and not be the crazy guy and build a UFO. I, I, uh, I bought a piece of property just to, um, to build a UFO. So used to be sitting 45 feet in the air. Now it's, it crash landed. And so, um, we, I pulled it back over here to the civil rock ranch. So, um, <laughs> anyways, um, so during the COVID I stood up, I've stood up to these people. So I can't get the sheriff to cooperate with anybody. Um, I told him before this vid thing ever happened, you're going to stand down cause you're a failure and, um, you, um, you're not going to do anything for this community. And so I'm letting you know now before this happens, I want you recorded. I want this documented that you're going to stand down. And that's what I've told everybody in this town, Tom, is that you're going to stand down. You're going to tuck your tail. Or is that still record? Okay, it's still blinking. So when you guys go back and you watch this, you'll have it documented that I told you you're going to stand down. And that's exactly what they did during the vid, during the whole crown virus. So I was right. And ain't, oh, I'm right. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's what I don't do these. I do these things to document them, to make sure. So they know darn good and well when this event happened. That I like when they sent those silly little deputies out to my house. I told them, oh, your failures and told them, take off their, well, we didn't work during the COVID. We didn't work during the COVID. So you can't, yeah, but what are you doing to tell these officers are out there forcing this capital letter law? And why are you not on them for what they didn't do? You should be on their tails. You guys stood down during the vid. You let people just go around. As long as you didn't run somebody over, you could pretty much do anything you wanted in America. I well, didn't hurt anybody. You could run, do whatever you wanted for almost three plus years in this country. They did exactly what I said. They stood down. They didn't enforce nothing. They're failures. And now they still force capital letter law, which is illegal according to the Constitution. So... They're failures. And so when they brought those deputies out to my house, I said, oh, are you a are you an elected sheriff? No. Well, then you're a public servant. You serve me. Don't forget that. You don't uh, I don't answer questions. I, I don't know. I'm going to tell you how this can happen because you're a public servant and you're here to serve me. So stand down. What are these people doing? Now he's backing up. 
Hey, are you guys just out of your brains? All right. Oh, whatever. The dogs will keep them at bay. <laughs> no worries. If they pull up in the driveway, I'll hear the dogs are barking at them. Now they're backing up down the driveway. I don't know what's wrong. They probably had to roll up your sleever and been boosted three or four times, guys. People are just out of their mind. I don't know. The last time I had something like this happen years ago during the during the vid, I kept hearing cars a couple times and the land went for sale next to me. So I had to buy it because <laughs> I didn't want any neighbors. So what are you doing, Panda Boy? What are these people trying to do? Gosh, darn city folk, guys. What in the hell are you doing? You're going to get stuck right there, you knucklehead. You're going to tear up my driveway. Yep, you idiot. This guy's tearing up my driveway. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> it's an older man, too. They just don't know where they're going, I guess. And they're not going to fix it. This is what I hate out here, guys. Yep, he's going to get stuck. <laughs> I should film this and show you guys this. He's just tearing up my driveway in four-wheel drive. And now I'm going to have to go fix that. Damn, dude. People are so inconsiderate. Turn around in my driveway and just rip my driveway to pieces, man. No, I have a gate. I have, there's, I give access to my property because of the way the land is around the, one of these areas. And instead of going up and turning around, he turned around right where I have a dual, I actually have three driveways right there. Because I'm on 20 acres. I got a lot of room here. So I have what is used to be called the duck pond. It fills up with water. Then I put a driveway around that. He's sitting there going between these two driveways and turning. So I'm going to go out there and it's all going to be. Oh, it don't happen often, guys. Not too many people come out here. I live way out here. But um, laughing, your, laughing your ass off. Well, good for you. Good to laugh at people. It's nice to see people laugh at other people's woes. Good for you, uh, Shua. Um, you do the works of your father, the devil, laughing at people. Um, good for you. Um, you want to come out here and help me fix the driveway? You just want to laugh at me. You do the works of your father, the devil. So. So either way, they turned around. But now I'll, I'll just have to go and fix it. And this people are so inconsiderate. So. Um, you turn around down there where there's no driveway and you're not in front of my, I, there's, there's no houses out here, but he could have went up where there was no houses and turned around, right? Not screw up my driveway right in front of my house, right in front of my property. So yeah, I'm going to make a, I'm going to say something about it because it's, people are inconsiderate. He ain't going to come back and fix what he messed up. He ain't even from here, obviously, when he could have went up another 20 acres you know, I'm 80 acres back in here, so I'm quite a distance from the, but he could have went over to the next property and turned around. You know what I'm saying? So, um, wouldn't you know that, remember, I said somebody was tearing up my driveway? That's when I had the cops out here and told them, yeah, you're going to stand down. The same thing, somebody was tearing up my driveway. So, actually, he wouldn't stop doing it, and I told him to stop, and he just kept doing it, so... I called the sheriff and said, you know what? This guy is going to end up getting some metal thrown at his car. And then I'm going to call you because I told him. I told him. To stop. This is not a want road. This is you're tearing up my driveway and you're driving on my, the access road. You're driving on my land. I've given this extra room because I'm being nice. I don't have to. I could gate all that and make you drive through all that thick stuff, but I put a way around that, and you're tearing that up. Stop. And he pulled a gun on me. I said, told him, when he, oh, well, go ahead. Send it, buddy. Send it. You won't pull it. He'll shake his hands. So I had to call the law out here, which I didn't want to. Somebody pulled, a, a, pulled something on me. He couldn't even squeeze the trigger when I told him, when he put it in my face. He said, come on, go ahead. Take me out of this world. I don't even want to be here. You better stop tearing up my road. Or we're going to have a problem. But I used the law, guys. I didn't seek vengeance. 
I called the cops, which I didn't want to because he was tearing up my driveway. Same thing this guy was doing, but even worse. So that's when I called the law out here and told him, you're going to stand down. You're not going to do anything. And guess what? You don't have to believe anything I say. But guess what? Exactly what I said happened. The law stood down because that's why I told the law. If this guy does this again, he's coming on my property and he's tearing up my physical property. You've been told now. So if something happens, I've covered my basis. If he pulls that gun on me again, I'm going to have to protect myself. But I said, I told him, I don't even care about that. I'll take care of this myself. I'm more concerned about telling you you're a stand down because I know you won't do anything about this. They actually went out there and caught the guy this time. They went out there and told him, no, better not go down that guy's driveway again. <laughs> he ain't playing around. So um, they know that in this town. The law knows that. The sheriff knows that. If you don't believe me and you think I'm just talking out the side of my neck, I encourage you to go over my TikTok channel and and give me a, a, a follow on the predestined FOR light and the backup channel fours. So I can get a thousand, maybe I can go live on that backup channel and see a man in action. And you can see me telling them, hey, remember during the COVID when I stood up to you guys? So I'm not just talking crap out the side of my neck. Remember when I held a, a, a rally in front of your police station because you were stand down and you wouldn't stand up during the COVID for the community out here? You were letting them shut these small businesses down. And then I asked you to stand in and you wouldn't the elected sheriff and do something about what was happening out here in our little country town. And let's not let it happen. Let's be set apart. Let's set the example out here. And so when they wouldn't, guys, I stood in. I tried to get them to, to get OSHA to stand in to, to up against OSHA, not flatten the curve, and they wouldn't do anything. That's why I said I held rallies across from the police station. I brought out city council members. I got the community involved peacefully, used our voices. No violence. And so I don't know 10 men that I, I don't even know one or two men that stood up during the vid. Fighting with the governor over these, you know, dates with men or mandates, whatever they wanted to call them. Ordinances, codes, none of them were laws. And that's why I was trying to get the law out here to remind them, do you not know the, the authority that you hold? You not remember during the Bundy standoff? The elected sheriff came in and told the feds to kick sand, pound rocks, get out of here, get the flock out of Dodge. And they had to leave. Remember? Yes. They had to leave, huh? Because the elected sheriff holds more authority than all federal, all the federal elected alphabet soup agencies and anybody who carries some sort of title. So I tried to get this sheriff to stand in and they won't. So sheriffs are tyrants. Every sheriff in America needs to take off their clown shirt, turn in their badges, and stand down. And that's what I tell them to do when I see them. Stand down. You're a tyrant. No, you're like a crackhead who, who, who needs crack, but with ID. You just got to have it. Got to have it. I need your ID. Let me see your ID. I need to see your ID. I want to get hands on with you. I want to put my hands on you. Get out of your car. Let me see your ID. Doesn't that sound like most law enforcement officers today? Yes, they are. That's how they act pumped up on all this they're thugs they're gang members i know i used to be one not a gang a police officer myself so i can the shoe's been on the other foot and a tyrant trained killer a military police as well so i have the right you can't take my voice away you can't make me even though i hate that i was a veteran train me to be a veteran and tell me to defend this country against all enemies foreign and domestic and even if it says honorable discharge on my dd214 which ends my tour and service it never ends i will serve this country even though i hate it because i stand for the people in this country not the country if I had my way, I would abolish the federal government. I would bring home all our militaries. I'd put them on our borders, every single one of them, 800 military bases in 180 plus countries. Shut them down and bring them home. Navy on all our waters, including up there in, in Alaska. Marines on the front line. Separate five, hoorah! Army right behind them, with them, shoulder to shoulder. National Guard in every state, not at the border. We need them in the state that they're in. 
We have aliens that have been coming into this country for 20 years. 20 years. And these people just let them come across our borders, right? Give them five. You know, you get $20,000 worth of benefits in New York right now. If you have a family of four, up to $20,000 worth of benefits. And I don't get veterans benefits and I have an honorable discharge and I serve this country. I stood up during the vid and I serve this country because I don't end my tour service. It does not mean that I stop defending the people within the walls of this border. So I would abolish the federal government. I would go back to the Declaration and Independence, the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. That's it. That's the law in America. You don't like it, get out. You can leave. We don't have physical borders anymore. We're not going to build walls. We'll have men stand in and defend our borders. Oh, gee. Hmm. Solved that border crisis now, didn't we? Oh, we have a $1 trillion military budget. $1 trillion. Oh, that problem solved too, huh? If we don't have them fighting and policing the world, we can have them right here, huh? In our own borders. We could have the National Guard in each one of these states that they should be in, not down there at the border. I would be a better pretendant than the last 45 pretendants. You could put a, 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 a squirrel at the at the uh, at, at the yeah, a trillion dollars every year, our largest military budget in the world, more than all the armies combined, all the military forces. Combined, every year we spend $1 trillion on our military budget. It would take me, if I paid you $1 million a day, it would take me over $360,000 to pay you off. I could stack dollar bills end on end and go to the moon four times and back to equal $1 trillion. It's impossible to pay it back. So I would make sure that we stop spending this money on foreign wars, banksters' wars. And I would close the central bank. And I would make the money gold and silver again, just like it says in our Constitution, printed by the Treasury without interest. I wouldn't be a liar and, and, and like Mr. Um, Mr. Trump, Mr. Agent Orange, and say that I'm going to audit the Fed and then blow pal, I mean the bubble, uh, up for three and a half years and create the greatest economy ever using the emergency monetary policy that was still in play from Mr. 44, from Mr. Obama, remember? Mr. Barry, Mr. I saw lightning fall from heaven, Barack Obama. That's the Hebrew name for I saw lightning fall from heaven to earth, Barack Obama, remember? He more than doubled the national debt when he took office, all the presidents combined. Nine trillion dollars, Obama takes office. He leaves office ten trillion dollars. More than doubles the national debt. More than doubles the national debt, guys. That's the inflation you're seeing right now. You ain't seen the Mr. Agent Orange inflation yet, or Mr. I can't keep my hands off kids. You ain't seen the inflation from that yet. You don't understand the way economics work. Oh, yeah, things are expensive for Mr. 44. You ain't begun to see the greatest jabba dabba dooski ever, Operation Warp Speed inflation. Oh, yeah, Mr. Uh, Mr. Agent Orange spent more money than Mr. Mr. Obama did. Yes, he did. He spent 10 and he spent 8.8 .8 trillion. Well, that's not more, Tracy. He spent it in four years. He spent 10 and 8. He spent 8.8 .8 and 4. That's more money. And this one, current pretended who's not even the pretendant because they didn't select him. He wasn't inaugurated. Mr. 45 is still the pretendant. Mr. Agent Orange is still the pretendant of the United States of America. Oh, wait. The undivided states of America. Yes, he is. They never inaugurated Mr. Sniffer, Mr. Greatest Smelling Bee Ever. We're going to have smelling bees in America instead of spelling bees in our schools. Careful. People don't even care about that. Think about how lost this country is. This is the weakest nation in the world right now, guys. 
hands down the weakest nation. I don't care about our military. Uh, they probably give them pink BDUs right now, the battle dress uniforms and let them member because they let them in. It was don't ask, don't tell when I was in the military. Don't ask, don't tell is what they called it. Stoop. Oh, my goodness. So we're weak. We have a weak military. It's already Mr. Obama brought it down to World War One size anyways. Fired all the top commanders. You ain't been paying attention, but I have. We have less than one week of strategic oil. We couldn't fight a, a ground war like in Ukraine that's going on for less than a week right now. We got three days worth of strategic oil in our oil reserves. We are the weakest nation right now in the world. Whether you understand what's happening or not, we are the weakest nation. We just got ran rough shot by our governments. We're supposed to be the freest with the Second Amendment. And we stood down and nobody said anything. We let these police, you know, go back to doing their release the dogs. And now they're back out on the streets being their gangster thugs that they are going out extorting and harassing the public. Yeah, see, I, I can't stand the whole that's uh, he's not sleepy. Joe, are you working for Trump wonder? Are you a Trump supporter? Are you on that hopium? He's slamming that hopium and drinking the Kool-Aid. He's not sleepy. He's creepy. Stop calling him sleepy. He's not sleepy. There's nothing wrong with his mental facilities. You've been played. He is creepy. That's how weak it is. They've got you calling him sleepy when he's creepy and you won't even, you're talking about ice cream instead of in putting his hands on children. You've been played like a sucker, like a lollipop, like a dum-dum. Too sweet. Start answering the right questions. What if is the title. What if? Stop being played. You've been schooled. You sound like an android, like a program. Ice cream and sleepy. That's their vernacular. That's their dialectus. That's their tongue. And you've been programmed. If you were actually asking, you'd ask the question is, why is this creep who can't keep his heads off children in office right now? Because by my calculations, 81 million doesn't add up to me. This guy wouldn't even leave, didn't even leave his basement. Anyone? This guy was selling out sports arenas. Agent Orange, leaving people in the cold. And everybody has stood down. Weak Americans. Weak. You're weak. You are weak. I'm telling you, you better stand up and use your voice, not violence. I never said violence. I say go around the system. I never called for a revolution. Do you work for them? You want to fight. You do the works of your father, the devil. I'm not asking for, 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 he says, meek will inherit the earth. I'm not calling for violence. I'm calling for evolution. I am evolutionary. That's right. That's why they hate me so much. Because I tell people to go around Dorito the system. Bud Light it. Stop participating. If 20% of Americans would stop feeding this cattle, this cash cow to this feds that I sell, that I'm going to abolish, I become the pretended. 20% it takes, there's no more money to fund the, fund the federal government. They got to shut up their office. That's how weak you Americans are. Oh, wait, maybe 40% works for the government, don't you? Yes, you do. There's probably, there's a good chance that one of you 11 work for the government. You know that? You're a tyrant. You work for this B system. And I'm calling you out. Stand down. Turn in your clown suit, your badge for this government and go find a job. Somewhere. Become self-sufficient. Buy a piece of land. Get off the grid. Stop feeding this beast system. You're part of the problem. I know I was part of the problem as well. Meek, not weak. Don't be weak, but be meek. Use your voice. You the power. You have the power. It's in your hands. It's what you don't do. It's not so mad what you do. I don't care what you do and what you have. That could all be taken from you. You got a skill set? Because you can be a burden here soon to others. So this is what I'm talking about, guys. This is why America is what it is today. A bunch of weak Americans standing down. And then I feel sorry for these ladies who had to stand up. I see some strong ladies in this country. I really do. Probably a little more stronger than they should be. I warn you, ladies, you have a role when it comes to God. I encourage you to read the book of Deuteronomy and the book of Colossians. I'm not saying that you're not an equal. Never said that. But there's a role that women are supposed to play in God's you know, design here. Ladies, I understand these men have been just spineless wonders. 
And they haven't been that backbone that you ladies look up for a strong, a man of conviction, a man of morals, a man of values, a man that's not afraid to sacrifice himself for the cause, just like they did in this country. You know, um, men and women lost many gave up their lives willingly gave up their lives so we could have the uh the rights that we have today and and they did they paid a price so that we can have the rights you call it freedom i call it rights and they gave their lives and if you don't continue to pay that price then you're going to lose those rights and that's what we see so you brought it on yourself america you stood down. You don't care. You call the guy sleepy and nobody's made an issue that he's a creep. E smelling people's hair and, and God knows what he does behind closed doors. We know that he's an EpiPen Island boy, just along with Mr. Agent Orange. They're all on the same team. But that alone should have made everybody in America stand up and say, we're twisted sister. We're not going to take it. We're not going to take it. We're not allowing this creepy smelling peoples to be part of. Actually, we looked into it. They only used a three cannons and not four. So we know he's not the pretended. You didn't even inaugurate him. It's just an act. But we don't want Mr. 45. He worships Satan. Remember, his house is decorated with the orgy sex king, Jesus. And we know we're smart enough to have done our research to know that's the other Jesus, the Apollyon Jesus. And his whole house is decorated with that. And he calls himself a Christian. Stand him down. We need to put him in, in prison because he would he never locked up Billary. We figured out he's a hypocrite and a liar and a thief because he solicited the American public the whole time during his campaign saying he's going to have a special investigation and lock her up. And then she sat three bodies away from him at his inaugural dinner. Lock him up. He's a criminal and a thief and a liar. And his house is decorated with Satan. And we're not going to take it. These aren't things that are hard to figure out. These are things that a child could research, not even adult, an elementary age child, smarter than a fifth grader. Right? That's Americans. You don't. You, 81 of you people were so ignorant, you voted for a man who calls himself a Christian, but decorates his house with the orgy Jesus. That's pretty sickening. You are creepy too. You know that, America? 81 of you million people are just as creepy as Mr. Bidenstein. Because you voted for a man who decorates his house with the sun god, Satan, Nimrod, Apollyon, whatever name you want to give him, Lucifer. That No, not Lucifer. Lucifer is not Satan. Time to do some definition. But this guy decorates his house with Satan and calls himself a Christian. And you're still okay with that, Americans. You really are. Because you're not speaking up and calling this guy out. You're slamming the hopium and drinking the Kool-Aid whether you like it or not. You know? Born in what Queen Queens? They moved to Queens, right? Queens, the swamp. Drain the swamp. What's the name of that place? Flushing Meadows. Flushing Meadows. Interesting, Mister Drain the Swamp from Flushing Meadows. I hate to break it to you, you are the swamp. He added more people to his list. Did he not? Look at all the politicians and banksters that were put in place under the Agent Orange. Oh, and I'm going to audit the Fed. Remember, he blew pal. Bubble up. Remember? I'm going to audit the Fed. I'm going to have a special investigation. He never did audit the Fed, did he? So foolish Americans, he, instead of saying, Mr. Agent Orange says, I'm going to crash the dollar, America. People in America are so ignorant. They don't understand economics. When he says, the dollar is too strong compared to other, other currencies. We need to devalue it. He's telling you he's going to crash your dollar. And you're like, oh, my God, that's so wonderful. 
I love it. Oh, he's going to put Miller. Think about all the millions of dollars that entered into his account. I don't care if he didn't take a salary. How much money was made off of Hillary per prison, T-shirts, buttons, banners, stickers. My brothers are in graphic design and media arts. I have it as college in my background in college. Do you know how much money that was made on Locker Up, Hillary for Prison? How much money was made on that? That was a whole campaign. And she sits three bodies away from him at his inaugural dinner, and he praises the Clintons the very next day, all of them, not just her. He's a criminal, not for the silliness that he's on trial for, for these things that I'm telling you. He is a thugster and a criminal, and so is his island boy buddy, because they both do the hokey pokey and turn themselves around. That's what it's all about. They're EpiPen Island boys. And they're on the same team playing all the Americans. So I hate America. And most people in this country are weak and they have no education of their historical record or even what's happened in the last 12 to 15 years. They just stood by and, you know, blew the bubble too, right? Went along with the hopium, drank the Kool-Aid, believed that Mr. Believe the hope and change. How'd that work out for you? You ended up with a bunch of lint in your pocket, didn't you? Ten trillion dollars. Eight point eight trillion dollars. This one's spending more than the last one. They have to. The system will collapse. So guess what? It already is collapsing. America's in free fall. And NM got banned off of this channel. I'll never let him come back in here again, him or her, because he's all wearing the rosy glasses saying, oh, the economy's doing great this year. When they, they're printing $1 trillion every 100 days, guys. $1 trillion every 100 days. Still think this country's awesome? $1 trillion to fund all this. They're giving people checks, $5,000 gift cards, iPhones, and plane tickets into this country. You can get $20,000 worth of benefits for a family of four right now in the state of New York, one of these sanctuary cities. Isn't that ironic? Now they're trying to get those people out of there and bringing the cops in. Careful, these are the same people that voted to defund the police, guys. Voted in all these sanctuary cities. Now they're bringing the cops in at every one of these hotel rooms. We've got people up in Washington State break, busting down the city hall, you know, knocking, banging on the doors, insurrection, wanting these hotel rooms aren't good enough for us. We want houses. We need more money. These 5,000 gift cards are dollar gift cards. They had what? Did you see the statistics on how many people came in to California last month? I think something like 7,000 people came across. Um, there's more than that because there's the gotaways and there's all. It's insane the amount of people that are flooding into this country right now and have been. And, and, and the reason why we need to remember and never forget, like dropping three steel buildings with two airplanes, Agent Orange did that. He's the one who dropped three steel buildings with two airplanes. Mr. Agent Orange. Yeah, never forget that it, one of his campaign, Mr. Mr. You know, candidate Trump, right? Candidate Warp Speed, he, he said he was going to build the greatest wall ever, correct? Never forget that there was $500 million because it was already a problem for Mr. Obama that he had already passed $500 million to build that wall. Then Mr. Operation Warp Speed came in and solicited the American public and never even mentioned the $500 million to build the wall and solicited the American public for another $500 million. Still think he's not a criminal? What about the other five? And he never even added anything to the wall. Not an inch. I dare you to look it up. No, Mr. Trump didn't add anything to the wall and he never built nothing. He shored up what was already there and fixed some of the stuff, but he never added anything. Oh, there was designs on the kind of that he was going to add, but he didn't add an inch. So he never built anything. Nothing. No, I have land, Kane. I have a land and I have make my own power. What about you? What's your job? Do you have any way? Can you invite? Can you come on to my property right now? Can I got a house for you? I got a charger controller. I got solar panels. I got wind turbines. I got a cabin. I've got food. Kane, do you have anything for anybody else? Your name is Kane. 
You got anything to help anybody else? Are you going to be banging down somebody's door, unaliving them because you ain't got nothing? And you're going to be a burden and not a blessing to society because you come on here and throw shade on a, on a YouTube platform. I'm helping people. You come on here and do anything other than throw shade? Have you listened to anything that I'm saying here? I'm trying to help, not hurt. What are you doing coming in here? Throwing shade. You do the works of your father, the devil. You knew I was a snake before you let me in. I'm trying to help people see through this trickery, this visual and verbal voodoo. What are you doing? Do you have a channel there, Jans? Let me, do you have any content? Do you have any content? Do you have a, any content you've created? Do you stand against the vid? Did you stand up against your governor? Have you stood up to your elected sheriff? Do you stand up when you get pulled over? Do you give the cops a hard time and tell them you're not going to run that rough shot on me, buddy? You're not going to sit there and pull your tyrannical. No, you don't do anything. You come in here on a, on a, on a YouTube and cast shade. You're going to be hurting somebody just to feed yourself because you're not going to be using your head. You're going to be thinking with your belly. These are the kind of people you need to worry about, guys. This Fruit Loop thing, that's the person that's going to come and try to take your stuff. These are the people, guys, that will disappear. These are the, the, these are the people that will be disappearing over these next couple of years. So I live in Christmas Valley, Oregon. If you want to kind of try to come locate me, I'm very easy to find. All you have to do is call the elected sheriff. They know who exactly who I am. I don't run from anything. You want to challenge me. You want to call me out. Come out here and see if you can live a day with on my farm here. Don't don't try to come do anything nefarious. Come work for me with the day. I might put you up. See if you can hang with this old man at 50 years old that's got a six pack at 50 years old in the middle of the winter. You think you can hang with me out here? You think you can work side by side with me? No, you wouldn't make it a day out here. But you come on here like you're a big shot, like a keyboard warrior. I live at the icon of the valley. I have 100 reflectors at the end of my driveway to make sure you can't miss. I live at the icon of the valley. Look up Christmas Valley, and there's a plat table rock point in the middle. That's exactly where I live. If I can stand up to the sheriff and I can stand up to the federal government, you think I'm afraid of you and your, your keyboard warrior threats? You'll never leave your basement. You are just like Biden, Stein. You knew I was a snake. Before you let me in the hollow needle and now you got the bite in. You ain't going to hook your, your your fangs in me. I don't think so. You do your works to the father of the devil. I wear the armor of God. No weapon formed against me will prosper. No fiery darts will penetrate my armor. I don't live in fear. I've already done something about it. That's why I have security in my life. No, I don't have a job. I'm self-employed and I've been self-employed for 20 years. Can you offer 10 people to come live on your land right now? Do you get enough food for 10 people to stay on your land for two to three years if you shut the gates behind you? Do you have enough water storage? Do you have water to, to, to you know, you got a woman on, on your property and, and she's kind of got a wet spot. and She needs five gallons at least a day. Can you provide that for a lady to make sure she's got plenty of water every day? Do you have a well drilling kit? Can you drill somebody a well right now? How can, do you have a way to filter water? Do you have a backup filter if there's no power? You're probably on a smart meter, aren't you? How smart is that? You're dependent on the system. They'll shut your power off. I am the power company. Nobody shut my power off. Remember, I watch the sun every day. I'll know before that solar flare gets here. I'll disconnect my power company before any of it can get fried. I'll go stick it in my plasma shelter, my Faraday cage that I plan on protecting the word of God. So I'm not special, but I can help people. And that's what I've been trying to do. So go ahead and try to cast shade on this channel and see what happens. He said, you'd be better to have a millstone, a millstone tied around your neck and be cast into the sea than to hurt one hair on my children's head. That's what he says, right? The Great Millstone. There it is. Right there. Man, that's brighter than all get out. The Great Millstone. Man, look at that light. There it is.
There's that great millstone, guys. This is my reminder of my mistakes in life. He said, you'd be better have a millstone tied around your neck and to be cast into the sea than to hurt one hair. One hair on my children's head. Cause one of them to stumble. Good luck. Good luck. I'm a man of God. I'm a teacher. I teach this word. I bring people to God. No, I don't. He brings people to him. I show people where the word is at. It's for him to choose. So I'm not trying to change you goats because God made vessels of wrath fitted for destruction from the foundation. Hashtag from what part of the foundation of the world do you not understand? So I'm not going to try to change you into a sheep. But I got moderators in here that tell uh, that know that we do not cast our pearls before swine. And we do not keep company with vipers. So you'll be moderated out of here if you try to cast shade. And if you do your works to the father, the devil, the adversary, Satan, you ain't going to make it in here. We just won't allow it. It's not that time. Some of us are standing up peacefully. We're meek, not weak. No, 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 no. We're not weak. We don't use violence. Nope. We use the word of God, the armor of God. We put it on and we wear it and we edify each other with where there are two or three gathered in my name. There I will be in their midst like he's here with us right now. Good luck trying to cause some problems. He's here with us right now. Go ahead. Throw some fiery darts. See how that works out for you. So brothers and sisters, watch out for these people. Because, yeah, you know, I, I, I'll challenge any one of them. Again, remember, I didn't I didn't call for violence. I said, come on out here and, and see if you can. We'll dig some holes in the winter. I'll do it with you. Can you punch through that first frozen portion of the, you know, the hard freeze? We'll do it. Come on. I got multiple pulse host diggers out here. You wouldn't make it a day out here. You'd be griping at the first hole. You couldn't probably even penetrate through the hard freeze. So do something about it. I have. I've been doing it for decades. I can provide for others. So uh, can you? Because that's what I see as the future in my life is to try to help, not hurt, not cachet. I don't go on other people's TikToks, YouTubes. Oh, you're a tinfoil hat wearing. You're promoting fear. You're dick. No, I have my own channel and I try to help others. And and have even invited people to come out to my property for over five years. So my history speaks for itself. And uh, you guys, this is the future, whether you understand it or not. So, yep, beautiful. Thank you, Keely. The heavens, the ruling class. Your enemy will come against you one way and will flee seven ways. Thank you. Exactly. That was his promise <laughs> of the armor. So that's exactly what the heavens were, the, the nation of Israel. So um, I built my tabernacle out here, as you can see. It's on the map. I live at the icon of the valley. Anybody who is anybody in this town knows exactly who I am. Why? Because I'm the only man out here to stand up when nobody else did. I told you there was less than 10 men during the COVID that stood up peacefully, not violently. I didn't use violence. I used my voice. I used the word of God. I let him guide me. I was, it wasn't me doing it. It was him doing it. He made me do it. He said, you better stand up for these people. You know the law. You know you can't serve two masters, Tracy. And I gave you this information. And woe to you if you don't go out and tell somebody, whoa, I don't want to be on the other end of that woe, brothers and sisters. I do not want to be on the other end of that woe. And it's in his book. Read it. I'm going by his word, not what I want to do. He makes me do this. So good luck if you think you, you know what? I, again, I don't, I'm not saying that I'm above you in any way, no way whatsoever, but you can't hold a candle to somebody who has stood up and literally martyred their life because that's what I have done. I gave myself and joined the tyrannical military at 17 years old called the United States Army. I was already willing to give my life. 
at 17 as a child, I was willing to lose this flesh. Not for the right cause, but I already had that mentality. Here I am, 50 years old. I have probably a better physique today than I did when I joined the military. Yeah, I didn't have a six pack when I joined the military. I was very fit and very thin and did very well on all their tests, their physical tests. But I have a six pack today at 50 years old. So I'm in better shape than I was as a child physically. Oh, I shaved the gray beard off. I can get rid of a lot of this age. So that's what I'm saying. I challenge myself. I'm this physically fit because I take care of my body. It's a temple. I didn't always take care of my body. Obviously, I became a soldier. And they don't treat their bodies very good. Yeah, we physically, but we also destroy them. So... In short, I understand that you don't give a damn about the chat. Cool. Yep. Bye. So, yeah, I don't give a damn about the chat. No, I give a damn about no, somebody who can make enough uh, presence in my eyes that they might even be able to come out here. I don't give a damn about the chat. No, I give a damn about people coming out here to this property and stop being in the cities. Stop feeding the system. Get out of the cities. I rebuke everybody who lives in a city. You don't like it? You don't have to follow me. You don't have to subscribe to me. I'm not doing this for you. I'm doing it for my brothers and sisters that are in the narrow way. Wide and broad in the big city lights is the way that leads to hell. God hates capitalism. God hates walls and God hates borders. You trust you me. He does not like what he sees. So I rebuke all you people who live in cities. Come out of her, my people. Narrow is the path. Difficult is the path that leads to eternal life and straight is the gate. Go around this system, get out of these cities. They're filling them full of people and they're causing division right now. And pretty soon you're gonna be the second class citizen in America. Good stuff, Vanessa, this is the time to do it. Listen to your heart, you're gonna do the right thing. It will be right, become self-sufficient. I'm not trying to push you into anything. It's the right thing to do. Get out of your suburban home. Find a nice place out in the country. Two acres, three acres, four acres, five acres. Pay it off. Get your bills all paid off and sit there and have more time to study. Quality of life. We can smash your nose into that book. Please listen to a good song. What do you got there, raccoon? What kind of song? I enjoy music and I like all kinds of music. Nobody's going to tell me what I like in my mouth. And nobody's going to tell me what I like in my ear. So what do you got? I like all kinds of music. So, but brothers and sisters, this is the time. Dixon Dallas. Cool. I'll look that up after I'm all, all done on the stream. Uh, And Harvest been really learning my Bible, and it's so scary. Cool. There you go. You've been narrowed. <laughs> You've been narrowed. That's awesome. No, I can't listen. I'm on a live stream. I can't listen to one on a live stream. Uh, I'm doing a live. Um, keep going, right? Something's calling out, Vanessa. Um, something's calling out to you. Um, I don't know if you've seen my water overlay map, the thing that's got my channel. Um, cool. Good stuff, Taz. Stay on that path. Stay on that path, you guys. You know, he's calling some of us to do this. Folks, we've entered into the sixth extinction event. That's happened four years ago. We're four years into this event. So this is not new news. It's obviously some of you is calling out to your heart already. I think it's so amazing that we're four years into this 12,000-year extinction cycle, the sixth extinction cycle, and it's still so peaceful right now. I mean, everything is on sale. Did you guys get that thing on the internet? Am I the only one that got that notification? Did you guys get that notification? It was like one, not like an Amber Alert or whatever. That right now, everywhere in the world, everything is on sale. It's like something happened, something triggered or something. If you go to the store right now, everything is on sale. 
I didn't just get this here on my phone, right? You guys all got that notification. Good stuff. Good stuff, son. Keep stacking it. Keep stacking it. You know, God's money. Um, did you guys get that alert? I thought it was like a, a world thing. You know what I'm saying? Did you guys get that alert on your phones, on your laptops, on your cell phones, on your iPads, on your about the sale? I can't be the only one that got that. You guys didn't get it. Everything's on sale. Everything at the store right now, guys, it's, I don't know what happened, but everything is on sale. I can't be the only one who got this. I'm going to have to go back and look at that. Maybe I dreamt it or something. Or maybe it's, maybe it is on sale. Maybe everything that you can get is for sale right now. Right? Am I wrong? Is everything still on the shelf where you go? Is they got teepee? Is it for sale? They got paper plates? We know a lot of this stuff disappeared off the shelves, didn't it? Everything's on sale right now, brothers and sisters. It's not going to get cheaper. If you don't understand what inflation is, things are not going to get cheaper. Some things may get a little more cheaper because they're overinflated, but not your energy, not, not the things you need, not your daily essentials. So, yeah, everything's on sale right now. If you think about it, you can get every flavor of the rainbow. Red, blue, green, yellow, orange. Yes, everything is on sale, isn't it? Can you get toilet paper? It's on sale, isn't it? Better get out there and get the things you need, guys. It's pretty amazing that everything is still on sale. For sale. Get it? I didn't get no notification. I'm just kidding. But... I'm notifying you right now. You just got the notification that everything is on sale before the world figures it out. What are you waiting until there's no toilet paper to go get some again? Is that going to be when you go get some more teepee for my bunghole? When that's, there's none available, none for sale. That's right, Vanessa. That's right. We don't need a lot of things we need. So do you understand what I mean by everything's on sale, guys? I don't literally mean it's discounted, It's, but it kind of is. Are you waiting for long-term food storage, bags of rice, 50-town bags of rice to be more expensive? You guys, things or food is extremely expensive all over the world right now. If you haven't seen that, uh, yeah, they sell live straws. Amazon sells them, Walmart sells them, Cabela sells them, all the sports stores sell them, eBay sells them. Life straws are all over the place. And look at getting a Sawyer Mini. Look at getting a Sawyer Mini. Anybody want to help me out? Send me a Sawyer Mini to my P.O. box. If not, I'll get one when I get, I don't have one. Um, I got a big Berkey, but <laughs> um, somebody just want to send me something in the mail as a gift? Send me a Sawyer Mini. Um, uh but anyways, that's my next purchase, guys, that I'm going to, um, that's what I'm going to purchase next. I mean, I got lots of water filter. I picked this up for 50 cents the other day, guys. I guess when I lost my wallet, it'd be a good lead up story. I bought that for 50 cents. It was 99 cents and it was half off. This is a, this is like a little life straw, guys. I bought this for 50 cents at the Goodwill. And it filters 120 gallons of water. It's called the Frontier Plus. I didn't even looked it up. I don't even know what this costs. I need to look it up after I'm done. But I know it's a, it's a charcoal filter, so I know how this works. It's got the drink in right here. Let's pull it out and look at it. Fifty cents. It was ninety nine cents. It was a green tag. This is, I I should have never went in this. I lost all my money when I went into the Goodwill. I came out and dropped my wallet. Oh, it's sealed up. No, I can't. Okay. Anyways, it's like a life straw. I just said a, a Sawyer Mini. Get yourself one if you don't have one. Don't send me nothing, Keely, <laughs> or anybody. Uh, you could send. I actually just need cash app donations right now just to pay my land. I don't need any more material things. I don't need anything material right now. But I don't have a Sawyer Mini, and they filter a lot. 
the life straw filters a thousand gallons of water. This filters a thousand. This filters 120, but I'm pretty sure that the same filter. I got that for 50 cents at the Goodwill. I went to get, I bought these two things at the Goodwill. This is what I bought at the Goodwill that day when I dropped my wallet and all my land payment money was drained out of my accounts. These are the two things that I bought. I bought this and this. I walked out. They had me on camera, which I don't know how, putting my wallet in. The lady knows that I put it in my pocket and I, but you know, whatever. Somehow it came out of my pocket from 15 steps. And I lost my wallet. These two things ended up costing me everything. <laughs> everything. I went in there for these. I could have them, but this was a lid. I had a lid that didn't have a top. It was just a screw on. I wanted one that had some kind of lid. So I bought this lid. And I dropped this wallet. I don't know how to my top pocket. I did. I dropped it. Somebody immediately picked it up and drained all my money out of both of my cards that were in here. And that's the only reason I've had such a difficult time this month and have been talking quite a bit about, you know, this cash that I need to try to get my land payments paid, you know. And once I make it through this month, I'm sure I'll, I'll, I'll be okay. I've got spring. Well, hopefully it's going to come a little later. I know that. But um, I should be able to start advertising. Hopefully I'll be able to get that motorcycle back from that guy that I bought that motorcycle. He's supposed to be working on it. I was really hoping that motorcycle would be my padding for next month, guys. I already had all the, the bill money on this month paid, but it is what it is. So, um, but yeah, what a costly venture that was. I went for dog food and was supposed to get five bags of dog food. I wanted to go by the Goodwill and get that lid. That's all I went to town in a burrito that day. That's all I wanted to do. <laughs> so. I don't know if that's any better or not. Here, let me open this. Let me get a little more light on the subject. But little things like this, guys, if you had to go on and you had to leave your property and walk away, which you better plan on leaving, If you had if you had to leave your property, which you should plan on leaving everything you own, if you have to, why lose your life over possessions? But you could have this in your coat pocket or sleeve or, or anywhere and take this and find water and you're going to be able to filter water. So already this hands down is your first prep. I'm not sure if Lady Lucky or whatever Lady Lucy's still in here. I, I was hoping they'd stay. We'll see. Maybe they'll pop back in, but there are ways to do this, guys. What I want you to do is I want you to take a look at my overlay map on my TikTok. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to show it to you right now. For some of you guys who have been looking for a piece of land, um, this property out here in this valley is very affordable. If you don't mess with the police out here, they won't mess with you. <laughs> they don't want to do anything out here. This is the overlay map of the United States. The water is going to come all the way up to the Colorado, Colorado Rockies. In my opinion, this will happen before the year 25 or 5785 or 2025. If you live anywhere in this zone and you want to relocate over to this location, and you're a man of God or a woman of God. Now's the time. 
I believe that this event is going to happen. If you want to temporarily locate to over here to my property until after five of 25, I'll draw up paperwork with you. I'll draw up something that it's not a permanent thing. Um, we can work something out to where it's on paper so that you can go back if this event doesn't happen. If I'm wrong and it doesn't happen, then fine. And if it does, then look it. Now you've got land that's complete. This is exactly what happened, you guys, at the time of Christ. I hope you're paying attention. This is exactly what happened. He predicted, you know, again, the destroying of the temple. And three years later in 70 AD, the temple was destroyed. Nebuchadnezzar plowed salt into the land so nothing could grow there. Salt into the land. Salt into the land. You guys, the water is going to wash back out. The water is not going to stay at this location. Even if it does come up, it's going to come back out and drop down between 100 to 400 feet. So that means there'll be another 100 to 400 feet of coastline exposed. We got to get to this event first, guys. We've got to get to this event first. So if you're over here, you're going to get inundated with water. This is a mean map of the United States to show you that the government is very aware of this particular event, which I believe is going to happen. I'll show you again. We don't have a full room, but we hopefully we got one more ear in here. Somebody that's not heard this before. This is what got my channel taken down, guys. This is why my channel is dragging because I'm not afraid it's not about the numbers to me. It's about getting the message out. So um, let me show you here why the government knows this and they're preparing for this. I know you've not heard this anywhere. I'm the only person on the internet that's putting this out right now. Not this, this, what is about to come. You see the water washes all Now this is what the government knows. On both sides to the Colorado Rockies and in here, so. Here's what gets not that's not away. what's got me taken down. When I show you what's under that's what got that's me taken down Nevada. right there. That's it. That's what they don't want you to see. That's what got Tracy you know. taken down. There's not one other blogger on the internet putting this out right now. Not it's one other blogger. Look at California. This is what they purchased. The All the red land is federal land. Tell me they don't know this. This is what they know Why does it match? This They're not getting ready for this 10 years from now, guys. Red land, that's this is the land. event they've been planning for, and they Please know this is going to happen. They would not take over all this Please land over here right if they were here. not. Why don't they have any this land over here? here? Over this again. Exactly, Vanessa. Exactly. You're welcome, to Vanessa. You're welcome because you can put two and two together. That's the kind of people I want to be around. That's why the state capital was moved to Colorado underneath the Denver International Airport. Hello. They've been planning for this event, guys, for they've known about this. That's what I'm trying to explain. I don't care if I'm the only one on the Internet putting it out. And if I'm wrong, then so be it. But I don't think I'm wrong. If you look at these overlay maps, pretty close to what the why land do is those match? Maps. That's almost a perfect match. That's what they bought. It's so all the rest of this ocean out here. Gone. Underwater. All this. At the time of 79 AD, guys, the temple was destroyed. Look at all that lines up right there. Nebuchadnezzar's armies came in, destroyed every building, turned it into rubble, came in and, and plowed salt into the land so nothing could grow there for a, a whole lifetime. That's exactly what is happening now, guys. That's exactly what is happening. I'm going to show you this celestial alignment, and I'm going to show you that this is what I believe is going to push this water up onto the land. See that event right there? That's us right there in the middle of those four large gas giants. This is the same thing happened at the time of Christ, guys. In 79 AD, three years after Christ said the destroying of the temple, the temple was destroyed. This alignment is going to pin us magnetically and push on our planet. And I believe this will be the event that will push this water up onto the land as before. It's come up onto the land. And now there are literally cities 
sitting off our continents between 100 to 400 feet. You can take scuba diving trips and go see these cities under the ocean. They sit off our continents. This time the water is going to go down 400 to 400 feet, but it's going to have to come up onto the land, soak in, and then subside back down. And there's going to be 100 to 400 feet of coastline, much more land on this earth. Much, much, much more land. New harbors moving, new everything, guys. This whole world would be the reset. This is exactly what they've been talking about, the reset. They know exactly what I've been telling you. The one thing, again, that they can't, you know, if we get pinned in between that magnetism, see that dark spot? There's no magnetism. That's what I believe. No magnetism between those magnetic fields. That means gravity or magnetism will cancel. Gee, I don't think that the water is not going to come up onto the earth. Yes, it is. I'm pretty certain of this now, guys. Every every time we have a magnetic field, yeah, laugh your ass off, but you ain't going to do nothing about it. You're going to be the one that's going to be overtaken. Pretty funny you laugh at, at things and could do something about it, but instead you laugh your ass off. Good for you. You do the works of your father, the devil. There's the magnetic, magnetic field, guys. Imagine being pinned in between those interlooping magnetic fields. I'm the only blogger on the internet that's putting out this overlay map of the federal government right now. There's other bloggers that know about this cycle, but they haven't put out the, the map of the federal land in America. Now, I don't know if you're not from America, if you're in your country, that'd be like us getting pinned right here, guys, in this magnetism. You think we're going to fend well? You think our Earth's just going to stay 70 and the temperature's going to stay the same? You're sadly mistaken, brothers and sisters. That's not how this works. The magnetics of our Earth can affect our weather. The magnetics of our upper jet streams are affected by the weather. This is the other thing that I'm pointing out. There, I don't know of another blogger that's put this out, this seen this map, but we're right here. Right there. I don't know if you know what this is, the Maltese cross. These Each one of these represent a celestial age. Pisces, right? Aries, Pisces. This is coming back down this way, guys. We are sitting right here, right now, on this line. Four years ago, we hit this line. 1221-2020, we hit this 12,000-year extinction cycle. Every one of them has happened on the line. 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 These don't happen in the yellow. They don't happen in the gray. They only happen on the line. They've known about this for thousands of years, guys. This isn't when you have money, you're privileged information. Normally, men have to sell their soul to the devil. I gave my life to God over 30 years ago, and he put me on this path. That's why I have information that nobody else is putting out. I gave my life up a long time ago and I gave it to him and he took over. He drew me to him. I always wanted to be closer, but he showed me how to give up my life. So this is happening. No, how could we be living in a simulation when people die and people are displaced by weather, sometimes tens of thousands? What do you mean simulation? When you're getting blown over to the next town over in a tornado, is that a simulation? When you land on the ground, is that a simulation? When you cut yourself right now and you bleed all over the place, is that a simulation? This is reality. This just happened to be the devil's playground. No, we are in an extinction, Ninja. We are in the sixth extinction event. That's what this says right there. The 6,000 years ago was the half cycle. We're right here right now. On 1221... Of 2020, when Saturn, when this star right here, the largest star in our solar system, Saturn, on, let me get my light up so you can see this. When Saturn, Saturn conjuncted Jupiter, 
the great conjunction, Saturn marks time, Kronos, that's a time marker in the heavens. And when it conjuncted on 1221 of 2020, we entered into the new age. We entered to the age of Aquarius. We're not in the age of Pisces anymore. 99% of the world doesn't know that. Go ahead and give me a cash app for that because that's worth more money that's in your bank account right now. Yeah, nobody knows that. 99% of the world does not know that we've moved into the age of Aquarius. How about that for some valuable information? I'll go ahead and grift you right now. There's a predestined for light cash app. It's not required, but help a brother out. I'm giving you information that no other blogger is putting out. I have been financially shut down because of this. I am paying the price for showing this information that I'm showing you. There's not one other blogger on the internet that's showing you this map and then showing you the federal overlay and showing you all this other information, showing you that, okay, Tracy, that's nice. Are you just assuming? This is the celestial age that we were in in 79 AD. This is the same star alignment that we were in. We're going to be in it again. We're going to be, it's, I'm not predicting anything. This isn't a prediction. This is what is going to happen. And this is what the governments are getting ready. Exactly, Vanessa. That's why you, we see them digging in, in the last five to 10 years. They're getting ready for this event. When I show you this celestial wheel and it show you where you're at, do you have any idea? I just showed you where you're at. Celeste, you ever seen a map that says you are here? I just showed you where you're at on a celestial age. I just gave you information that 99% of the world is not aware of. So you don't have to give me anything, but if you have it, help me out. Come on. I just got robbed by, by, and I filed a police report and they're trying to get, you know, they caught the guy, but we're here. Look at these things happen. Every one of these times, that's a time that there was an extinction, cataclysmic or near civilization ending event. Get ready for the FBI. The FBI is the low man on the totem pole. They've already had a, a visit by the Department of Defense. What would I worry about the Federal Bureau of Imbeciles for? They're low man on the totem pole. They ain't got nothing on me. Mulan Lobby, FBI. Mulan Lobby, NSA. Mulan Lobby, DOD. I'll run you out of here like I did the deputies. You're deputy, FBI. You're not an elected official. You don't have any authority over me. I'm a man. I came from the dirt, from the land, and I'll go back to the dirt, the man of the land and soil. I possess God-given rights, and they're afraid of me. I can't even get the elected sheriff to come talk to me in two years, so I'm not worried about the FBI, the Federal Bureau of Imbeciles. So um, don't don't sit there and try to make your threats with your alphabet soup agencies. I'm not afraid of the government. They're, they're failures, and I tell people to boycott the government. Um, they're failures. They send your money over to kill women and children in other countries. So keep supporting that system and you will have the more blood on your hands. Did you fill out a W-2? Good for you. You are a killer, not by uh, by head, but by proxy. You paid to unalive women and children in other countries. So these happen on the line because I've been doing this for 30 years. This isn't my first rodeo. I have a I have a channel on here that's over a 10 years old that I was putting a lot of the same information out that I'm putting out now. The same information I was putting it out over years ago on this platform. On this platform. It's truth. It's America Never After. I have many channels on this platform. Okay. And that might I've been doing this for a long time. So this has happened. I'm giving you graphs. I'm giving you information, not opinions. I'm giving you facts. This is every cataclysm event documented throughout history for the last 130 years. I'm on all the watch list. You're never going to meet a man that's got more check marks in your life. I don't think you will. I honestly do not think you will. Find a man that has more red check marks for this or for that or for this or for that. I don't care about that. Did you stand up during the sheriff's office? Did you stand up to your governor? Did you stand up during the COVID? Did you get a red check mark? How many red check marks did you get during the COVID? 
Did you get any? So I don't I don't know of uh, five men that stood up during the governments. None of them. I don't know another man on this earth that stood up during the COVID and stood against their governor, stood against the elected sheriff and tried to get the elected sheriff to come run the 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 state and the OSHA and, and not go by this because it wasn't the feds that did this. This was done at a state level in case you had forgot your governors did it. Oh, yeah, Mr. Falsey and, and Mr. Trump there with the whatever that lady, whatever her name was. Yeah, it was a big puppet show, wasn't it? Greatest. Uh ventilators ever right i'm showing you proof that's proof right there you want proof that's proof right there if you don't know how to determine it that's your problem see that they're all documented every one of those have a date on them and every time there was a civilization a cataclysmic or a uh, you know uh ice age or an extinction level event there's been five of them you're sitting right here right now right there 6,000 years ago was the Noah cycle, the Noah event, the half cycle. You are here. Proof that this is a civil, we are already, look, you guys, I don't have to show you anything. You should do your own darn homework. I'm giving you more information than you can find on any other channel right now. Get off this thing and look up sixth extinction event. And you'll find out we've already entered the sixth extinction event. We've, it's been four years. We're four years into this. The age changed back here, guys, on 1221 of 2020. 1221 of 2020, when Saturn, Saturn conjuncted Jupiter, we left the age of Pisces. We came into the age of Aquarius. If you can't figure that out, then be gone. This is easy. A child, you could be you got to be smarter than a fifth grader here. Okay. I'm unhinged. Yeah, I stood up during the COVID. I'm tired of people standing down and being spineless wonders in America and all our countries. Our, uh, rights keep getting infringed on. Of course, I'm unhinged. Exactly. Oh, I just want them to keep sending all our money to Ukraine as I'm guilty and I've served as a military veteran, honorably discharged out of the military. And it's OK to keep sending all these 180 countries with over 800 military bases to keep paying to unalive people. I'm unhinged. You're darn right. I'm unhinged. I'm tired of our tax dollars being sent to unalive and kill women and children. They just wiped out. They just wiped out. I encourage you to go look over there to Ukraine and look at all the men that are between the ages of 18 to 30. Gone! Gone! Yeah, I'm hinged. You're damn right I am. You paid for it. You paid for it. The blood is on your hands. Stop it. Stop funding these people. There's facts out there and all you got to do is stop participating in their system. I don't call for violence. Yeah, you're still paying for it. I apologize. I'm just, yeah, I'm pissed. We could be doing something about it. They're doing something about it outside of this country. Peacefully, guys. I never call for fighting. I call you to come out here with me to the country. And be your own boss. Be your own power company. Grow your own food. Do you have a wind turbine? How many solar panels do you own? How many charger controllers do you have? Do you have a backup charger controller to give somebody? I do. I have more charger controllers. I have more power inverters. This is how you beat this system. You go around it. You guys, if enough of us check out of this current system, it makes the current system obsolete. Obsolete. If enough of us peacefully go around it, we said no more. We're not doing this. Okay, lock us up in jail, whatever. We'll, 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 we'll be the ones that put our neck out there. Just like I did during the COVID. Do you know how many people came to me? Oh, my God, the NSA is get you. All your little stupid threats. All your little threats, FBI, CIA. I people told me you're going to go to Guantanamo Bay, Tracy. They just declared a national emergency in all 50 states. This is not the one you need to stand up to. You need to stand down, Tracy. This is not the one. This is going to get you thrown in prison, Tracy. 
I didn't stop me. Not at all. Actually, it helped me to push further into the fact that, oh, my gosh, this is the time. This is the time. So we can go around this, guys, peacefully. Don't fight with each other. Don't go round and round. Red team, blue team, you guys fight with each other. Put, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Right? Like a revolver, like a hamster going round and around on the wheel. Okay? This is how you beat the system. I've got 40 acre parcel right here. I could have half this room come to my property and still have plenty of room. Oh, don't worry. I got another 20 acres up the road. I got another five up by the highway. If you don't want to be this side over towards the mountains over here, you want to be closer up to the highway so you can get closer to town or something. I've got five acres up there. Come on, let's do this. Stop messing around. Stop playing around. Get ready. We're four years into this extinction event already. Don't panic. It's insane how we can sit there. Um, yeah, you can check out of the system and still support your kids. I don't want to hear that. I was a single dad, both dad and mom. Mm, wrong. Mm, wrong. I know what the FBI is doing. Okay, cool. So um, do it, guys. What are you waiting for? The water to wash up onto the land? Or you you need somebody to show you more proof? No, it's not easy to do, Ninja. I have zero income. None. Zero dollars. And I was a single dad, both dad and mom, with zero child support. No Social Security. No benefits. No. Excuses is all I hear coming out of you, Ninja. You can do it. This is your first step. Do you have a life straw for any one of your kids? Do you have a life straw for every one of your kids? No, I'm not delusional, Micah. I had zero income and I have 45 acres of land out here. 65, actually, I have 45 I'm still paying on. I have 20 paid off. I've been paying on this for 10. It's called a land sale contract. Stop making excuses for yourself. Stop making other people act like they can't do it. You, you, you look weak. It's something called a land sale contract. It's a very small, uh, it's a very small amount of money you put down. And you could pay it off early. Yes, I have a, I have a shelter, but it's not, don't say the word Ron uh, Vaughn. Don't say that word, say shelter. Yes, I do. I have a 50 foot shelter. It took me four and a half years out here to dig it. I'm damn near homeless too, Joshua, but I did what I did because I work hard for what I have. I buy, I sell, I'm a horse trader. I don't make excuses. I don't say I can't do this. I make it happen. I don't wait for an opportunity. I make opportunities. I already know, look into Ruby Ridge. I already know what Ruby Ridge is. <laughs> so. You guys, this is how... This is how you survive what's coming, or you're going to get locked into one of these cities and you're going to become part of it. Okay. You said I'm delusional. Look at, look at Micah said, you're delusional. If you think every person in the working class can LARP in the woods and magically own 65 acres of land. Come on, man. I'm not LARPing in the woods, LARPing. Hello, I make my own power. I have a well drilling kit. I produce all my water. I have thousands of gallons of storage. I don't have a dime. I don't make any money. I have zero income coming in. Working class, that sounds like you got a job and you got money. What's your excuse? You got a job. I don't have a nine to five job. I didn't send any money to Ukraine. Micah, none. So yes, people can do this so they can sit around and lie and... Uh, I can't do nothing. I got nothing. I got, yes, you can go collect some soda cans. I live in a, in a state where they got a redemption excuses. You just making excuses, Micah LARPing in the woods. I paid on this land for 10 years. I, I, th I thought I had the money to pay it off, but the land next to me came av available and I bought it. So I own the 20 and have the deed to it next door. I bought 20 acres up the road for an investment. I bought the other five to build a UFO. I've been paying on it for four years and I don't have a job. 
And before I came on TikTok, I never made a dime off of any one of my channels. So stop being uh, so weak. You sound spineless. You really do. Um, you sound weak. Like you sound like every one of these Americans right now that didn't stand up. So I don't have a W-2 and I don't pay to kill women and children in another country. I've already been a veteran. I already have hand on my feet or, you know, on my hands. You know, I already have that issue. So, um, cool. so no worries. I just want to make it clear that I don't like people who put out weak uh, comments. I don't have any income. And I've still, been, five years ago, everything was taken from me. Everything on this property completely gone. Except for my Arctic tents in a pile in the back. And I have three cabins. I have three tractor trailers, a 53 foot tractor trailer that I could invite two of you to come out and build right now. Right now. You could come out here, Mike, and get off your fourth point of contact and stop acting like you can't. Was somebody, there are people, communities that will invite you in if you got a skill set. You're like, I can't, I can't. I can't. <laughs> Start doing something about it. You can move into this cabin right now and build it. All the material is sitting there right now. See, I make opportunities. I don't wait for things to fall in my lap. That's two houses right there for two people right now. I've got a cabin over here that I'm building right now. That I'm building. I live in this cabin. This is the guest cabin. This is my guest cabin. I'm not even don't want one, two, three, four. The fifth cabin back there, the rusty butterfly. That was an old travel trailer. Look at my channel. It's a travel trailer. It looks like a building that's been sitting there for 100 years. 200 years. Looks like it's off a movie set. I've got five buildings out here. They're not even for me. I plan on living under the ground in my underground house. I don't want to have to heat and cool my house. I'll just live below the frost line and my temperature of my house will be 60 degrees all the time. I'm, oh, 62 now. Hey, come in here and join me. You guys want some beans? We're going to give it up to 70. Stop making excuses. Stop being so weak. Start being strong. Make opportunity. Yeah, did you hear what I said? I've got five buildings that I could have people come live with me and present them an opportunity. There's material sitting out in front of all of these buildings to build. I'm actually building out this cabin right now because nobody would come join me. So I'm building it out and I'm going to rent it out. So stop being a weak. Uh, your tongue is weak. Stop being weak and start being strong. Let's stop saying people can't do anything and start showing people and being an example. I'm just showing you an example that I can. I can house 15 or 20 of you right now. 15 or 20 of you right now and put you in a storm shelter. Can you offer that, Micah? I didn't do that by sitting around asking people questions like you're asking. I did it. I did it. I made it happen. I couldn't afford a storm shelter. I could afford a tractor or a backhoe. So I dug for four years. I didn't make excuses. Who made my buckets that I pulled out? The, what a silly question. What a silly, silly, weak question. More weak questions. More weakness. What does it matter who made my tool? Who? What is that? Oh, who made your shovels that you dug? 100,000, half a million buckets 10 gallons at a time out the hole does that sound like you sit around and make excuses i it says that i okay exactly and guess what micah i don't cast my pearls before swine and anytime i see you in this platform again i'll ban you because you do the works of your father the devil you're weak and all you've done is make excuses you're out of here get them up against the wall <laughs> against the wall <laughs> you guys i'm trying to help people i would never help somebody like micah because he doesn't want to help himself vanessa on the other hand first has been bugging the crap out of me so i don't know what first is waiting for but first better first doing what you need to do push me hard enough i might consider it show me that you have some skill set i don't care what you have you don't need to have a thing Yeah, I just need 
I just read that in my mind. <laughs> Hallelujah, guys. Listen, you guys, the spirit should call you out to do what I'm doing out here. The cities are not, they're convenience. To grow your own food and your own vegetables. I shut down, I have a full farm out here, guys. I shut it down. Because after five years of being off the grid and nobody coming out here and trying for 10 years, it just it's too much for one person to do. Try raising um Try raising goats and sheep and pigs and chickens and rabbits and dogs and by yourself. It's hard to get up every morning, every day with nobody to help you, which normally takes three to four people to do a, a, a normal homestead. I'm off the grid. I carry all my own water. I do. I don't have to live like that. I don't have to live like that. I have power. I could dig power. We could put running water to every single cabin out here. You know what I'm saying? So I don't make excuses. I make opportunity for myself and others. I don't throw shade. I, I expose the darkness. And so, again, this is what a community is. What It's wholesome. It's wholesome, guys. We should not be eating this box food. God, please send me three or four people so I don't ever have to eat anything out of a box ever again. Please, Father, send me some people that want this opportunity, Father. Please send me the people that don't want to be a part of this system. They don't want to put this toxic food in their bodies anymore. It's about food. It's not about religion or politics. It's about being righteous and doing the righteous thing, getting away from convenience. Stop funding. Don't fill out a W-2. You don't need any money. I don't want any money from you. I don't want your money. If somebody can help me out right now, I got robbed. I will get through this month. I will make it through this month, God willing, or if this would be the first time in 10 years that I've paid my land payments on time. And this would have never happened if I didn't get robbed. So it got, the only reason I'm in this position, but I don't, I'm going to make it through this month. And I'm still going to be able to help people. Nothing's going to change. Even if I don't pay my land payments this month, or it's not going to get taken away from me. I, God willing, have enough to pay the five acres this month so far. So it won't get taken. That land is set up on a land payment. And if it gets late, it goes back to the company. So I can't make that land payment. Okay. And guess what? I have the money to cover that. I need to put 63 cents in there to cover the 150 for that. And then I have the two other land payments. I dropped my wallet. I dropped my wallet. So I didn't necessarily get robbed, but somebody immediately picked it up. And they spent all the money on both of my cards, on both of my credit card from my bank and my cash app card. Fortunately, I left my cash app card going and ching. Oh, there it's not lost. Somebody's got it. Not right after I drive, it was right after. And then they went to the bank and tried to pull out all the money out of my bank. They weren't unable. So they started a shopping spree with the other card. Then they went and spent both my cash app and my debit card to zero so otherwise i wouldn't even have to ask you guys for anything and i'm trying i have 37 things on the internet if i just wouldn't have put out the water video that i showed you i could sell everything i could sell everything that i have right now you know what i'm saying i don't have any problems i've been selling off the internet for 20 years it, it wasn't it wasn't until that i put the overlay map out guys that my channel got taken down on tiktok it's still up but there's there's no no growth to the channel just like this channel now. I picked up 3,000 subscribers in three weeks, guys. Three weeks. And then as soon as I showed you the water map, which I know I shouldn't have done, the channel is dead over here. So, cops caught him. I got my wallet back, but he drained all the money out of my accounts. So, yeah, help me out. I give all the time. I'm trying to give. I said, you come out here. I don't want your money. I don't want any money from you. I need people with a skill set. Hey, maybe you got a travel trailer or something. I got a 45 foot travel trailer over here too. You can stay in until we can build the cabins out. I wouldn't invite people out here if I didn't, you know, I stopped people from coming out here last spring. Because, or last fall, because I didn't want people coming out here in the winter and struggling. I mean, I had snow out here yesterday. It was two degrees out here this morning, but I got wood stoves. I got wood. 
You know what I'm saying? I, I have everything that I need. I don't. So um, I need to find people who don't want to fight. If you want to come here and you want to fight, I don't want to fight anybody for anything. You mess with me, I'll probably take your head off. I don't recommend doing that. But that's not what I want. I'm not a violent person. I never have been. You got to push me to get me to do something. But if I snap on you, you're probably going to feel the, you know, the other end of hopefully not wrath because he says let vengeance, you know, not vengeance. But, uh, you know, other than that, I'm a very peaceful, meek person, smart, wise. I, I don't call for violence. If I bring I have drama in my life and I bring that on myself, you could come out here and not. I'm telling you, you'd have a little protection being in my in my wing out here because they know I ain't no slouch. They know I don't mess around. When they pull me over, I harass them. Remember, I just told you the cops were pulling over this gentleman out here, and my name came out of their mouth more than one time. He's like, well, if you just stop giving them such a hard time all the time, they might help you out. Now you talk about being unhinged. What do you mean there, four horsemen? <clears throat> what do you mean unhinged? What, what do you mean now, now I'm unhinged? I was... My voice was raised and now I'm speaking in, are you like on some delayed timeline or something here? Is this what is unhinged? Yeah, people have a right to defend themselves, guys. You didn't, I didn't, he says, let vengeance be mine, saith the Lord, okay? You have the right to protect yourself, but you don't have the right to seek vengeance on somebody. So I said meek, not weak, okay? So, um, Yes, I own firearms. I have firearms. I, you know, I'm going to be able to protect this stuff. If there's people here, I'm going to protect it. If not, I'm not going to protect it, guys. I won't. I'll walk away from all of this. I'll figure out a hole to stick half of it in, and I won't even half it won't even be here. And I'll just let you take this half because I won't be here. So I don't plan on fighting nobody. You want to fight? This ain't the place to come. I actually want to find a bunch of people where we can actually shut the gate behind us. You know what I'm saying? We can shut the gate behind us and not to have a. You go up and down like somebody's not bounced. Okay, well, cool. Whatever. It's called. I'm not an android. I'm not a cop. Sir, let me see your license. You better act like a robot or they'll dump clips in you. I'm not an android. I have emotions. Yeah, they go up and down with the subject. I'm not an android. You can't program me. I didn't take the roll up your sleeve. I have been jabbed. I'm an emotional human being. I'm allowed to do that. You're allowed to talk like that. It's called emotion, passion. You call it unhinged, but you want me to be a Karen, right? Oh, he's being a Karen. Oh, he's being a dead. Ken, that's what you think, huh? No, this is called passion. There's a difference. Learn what it is, or you don't deserve that four horsemen title that you have on your name. Because God said, be not partakers and their unfruitful works of darkness, yet expose them. Correct? How about that for unhinged? So lick the boot, you boot licker horsemen. Give them your driver's license and go ahead and go along with the system. Keep feeding the system and don't speak up. Don't have any passion. I bet you get pulled over and you lick that boot, don't you? Yes, you do. I guarantee you unhinged what are you worried about my passion why don't you listen to the content what do you you can't decipher content from oh you're worried about the motions you're a feelings police aren't you just like the tyrants that enforce this corporate law you're the same thing are you a police officer for horsemen you act just like a cop you're in trying to enforce my feelings are you the feelings police in here See, you can't talk to a cop, can you, with any emotion? Or they'll dump clips in you. You're the problem, you see. You are the problem, horseman. You don't deserve the title that's on your name. I ain't playing around. I'm a veteran, and you can't tell me anything because I fought for you to have a First Amendment. And if you don't like my First Amendment, right, then leave. Nobody's forcing you to stay in here. Get out of here. I don't keep company with vipers. You say something stupid in here again, I'll moderate you and we'll get you out of here. I'll make sure that every time your name is very easy to remember. Do you have any idea that we've already seen the white horse of revelation 
Probably not, because your head is probably in the sand. So I'll point uh, to the tea kettle, and if the tea kettle's black, then I'll point to it. And I'm pointing to the fact that you throw in shade because you're worried about how my emotions are. Instead of taking notes and taking content and taking something, you don't know passion from anger. Because I'm not angry. I'm not angry at all. He needs police. You sound like a stupid police officer. Yep, that's what I do. I call it out. I call it like I see it. Somebody's acting like a weak, trying to cast shade on somebody who's actually trying to do something to help people. Yeah, I'll, I'll point the finger at you and show you where you're wrong. Because you are wrong. This is emotion. You, you, you're trying to, what do, you, what do you work for the big farm guy? You want to put me on some psychotropic drugs? No, there's no such thing as freedom. See, you're out of here. You did, you said something stupid. There's no such thing as freedom. I, I'm actually, I don't cast my pearls before swine, but before I get you out of here, I want to let you know, there's no such thing as freedom. No such thing as freedom. God did not create freedom. He created self-will and God's will. Look it up. Maybe I'll let you in here next time if you look it up and you actually say something that's worth a value. Otherwise, please don't come back to this chat. I don't want anything to do with you. You definitely do not understand the four horsemen of the apocalypse, right? Whoa. So I'm not going to sit here and let people um, come in this chat and worry about my feelings. If you have a problems with the feelings, then... Just leave now. Go ahead. Nobody's making you. You didn't. You clicked on here. You can click right back out of here. But if you don't like passion, if you don't like um, somebody who's saying, "Hey, this is this is how we got in this position," you're you're doing. Um, you you basically wokeism is what you're doing. You're cancel culture. You're doing the cancel culture. You 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 think you're you can't people can't have any feelings. No, I'm not a Christian. Christianity comes from paganism. The term Christ is a pagan term. Do I believe in Jesus Christ? Yahushua HaMashiach? Shiloh? I am? Yeshua? Yahushua? Absolutely. He's all I have in my life, but I would not put my, um, I would not put my name on a religion. Nope. All these, Christ Christianity is paganism. Uh, we're pointing out uh, vipers, Rusty. Anybody that does their works to the father, the devil, we point that out in here. And it's obvious to see people who throw shade and um, people who support feelings police. Think about it. You can't even explain to an officer right now. Yes, you can. Yes, you can if you know your rights. If you don't believe me, go watch my TikTok video and go look at me audit the police officers when they pull me over, when they come to my house, when I have interactions with the law. Look how I act. Look how I talk to them. Look who is the law when I have the, pub, the public servants in front of my face, when they're trying to extort my hard-earned wages, right, that I've worked so hard to get and not be taxed on. So I'm not going to sit here and uh, allow people to be weak. That's how we've gotten. Do I like the police? What a stupid question. You're out of here, James. You didn't even go look. You could have looked, James. You could have went and looked, but instead you asked a stupid question. So you're out of here. <clears throat> so the rider on the white horse was seen in the heavens. Okay, Vanessa, already. They do this all by the stars. Okay, everything is done by the celestial heavens. The markers that are left above our head so I'll pull a little research out here and show you remember the rider on the white horse is the one that comes back with the toxon and the bow yes i work out i have a six pack and i'm 50 years old so 
I take care of my body. I don't put drugs in my body and I work hard every day. Physical work. See here. Did you guys see that? There we go again. Here we go again, man. Yesterday and now stuff flying off the shelves out here, boys. <laughs> stuff fly. I don't believe in ghosts, but we got stuff flying off the shelves out here. I love it. Did you guys hear that? That thing just flew right off the edge of the um the refrigerator that's both propane and electric. Okay, come on, where's some of this imagery here? Cool, thank you guys, I appreciate it. I I'll stop talking to the trolls. I'll talk to you guys now. I won't the rest of this stream, I'll leave the trolls out of this, guys. I'll just start putting out more information. Thank you for letting me do this, guys. I have to do it. Remember, he says in Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, through the Apostle Paul, gave us the book of Ephesians. He said, be not partakers in their unfruitful works of darkness. We need to expose them, brothers and sisters. We need to expose this evil that's on our earth. We don't just stand by and allow it to happen. We don't go try to be violent. We use our voices. We use this power, principality, power, spiritual wickedness, the rulers of the darkness of this world. That's Ephesians 6. Yes, it, it is a... Um, It's both, it's both propane and, um, gosh, I don't have this on this. All the information that I have is on this other phone, okay? If what I want you to do, Vanessa, I want you to go look at informed Christians. I'll explain it to you, but the rider on the white horse is the one who brings back the toxon and the, he is the rider with the toxon and the bow, the bow and arrow, right? And comes with the crown. The writer who brings the corona, the corona, the writer on the White House, I mean, excuse me, the white horse, who brought you the crown, crown, he comes with a crown and a bow. Bow means toxon, T-O-X-O-N, and that would mean bow and arrow, okay? We've already entered the age of revelation, I'll stand up for you, Vanessa, just for you, Vanessa, just for you. Look, we entered into the age of Pisces after coming out of the age of Aquarius. No, Aries. Don't get ahead of yourself. So, when Christ was born... We left an age, but before Christ was born, we were in the age of fire. This is like that wheel that I showed you. Remember the wheel that I showed you? These are the 2,000 year slices that I'm showing you. Okay. This is the slice that was Aries. Aries the ram. David declared Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, or Aries the ram. Okay. When we saw the morning star conjunct conjunct the king star forming the vesica pisces the vesica pisces this is the matrix one of you used the term matrix and you used it incorrectly the matrix is not on this side the matrix is what we come through to get into this third dimension this is the woman's yes that is her yes that is called vesica Something smells a little fishy in here. Pisces. Apologize, guys. I'm trying to show you what's happening here. So when we saw this two celestial bodies, remember these wise men, these wise men were looking for a sign, for a sign in the heavens, in the stars, a sign in the stars, in the sun, and in the moon, they saw Jupiter. Remember? Jupiter conjunct with the morning star Venus, forming a star over a star, a little eclipse, if you will, right? 
a star over a star, forming what is known as the Star of David. Sorry, I'm out here in the desert and I don't... Look at that. There's a star upon a star. Two stars, a star over a star. That is this image right here. This is the Star of David or the Star of Bethlehem. When this happened... We left the age of Aries and we came into the age of deception, to the age of Pisces. So when the king was birthed through the Vesca Pisces, declaration of the coming of the king, this is the sign that the wise men were watching for. Again, they were watching this gas giant Jupiter. When it conjuncted with the morning star, it formed what is known Vesica Pisces. Or it's been around your whole life. It's MasterCard, CBS, Third Eye, Under Armour. It's just inverted. That's that same a twist of the camera, right? Roop, can't do that. No, but if you twist this here, this is the same image declaring the birth of the king through the Vesica Pisces. Through the birth of two celestial bodies birthing then... Jupiter moved to Leo, declaring the Shiloh sign that the scepter shall not depart from Judah until Judah, till Leo. Remember, it parked at the head of the lion. He was the lion king, the lion from the tribe of Judah. Correct? When Jupiter stopped at the head of the lion, this was what was known as the Shiloh sign. That's right. Remember, the second sign, not just the star of Bethlehem or the star of David, that the wise men knew declared the coming of the king. They saw a second sign. That's when Jupiter stopped at the head of Leo. Pointing to the king or the head of the church. We are the body. He is the king. So not just one sign. Two signs, bringing us into the new age of Pisces, the age of deception. This is where Constantine blended Christianity with paganism, the edict of toleration that he drew up in the 12th century, said, okay, we'll stop killing all these Christians. I'm killing them. I can't slaughter them quick enough. I think I'm going to lose my empire to these pagan tribes. So I'm going to take and put all these pagan tribes and Christian tribes Christian into one church and call it Roman Catholicism. Roman Catholicism. Christmas. Catholics. Pagans. They worship the Feast of the Yule, the Saturnalia, later to be called the Sacrament of the Mass. M-A-S-S-E is the eating of human flesh. They have a Mass every Sunday where they have their crackers and grape juice ritual, their communion where they commune with spirits, sacrifice, eating the flesh, the same festival that the pagans, that God divorced his bride for, now called Christmas, banned in America over 300 years ago. Yes, that's right. Christmas was banned in America when this country first started. They would throw you in jail and fine you for celebrating this orgy sex festival called the Feast of the Yule or the Feast of Saturn. They thought the sun was going away, so they prayed to Saturn, to try to slow the sun. Yes, they had their Saturnalia. It was a seven-day orgy sex festival from the 17th to the 24th called the Feast of the Yule. Remember, you throw your kids on the fire and you eat them to Moloch, the Al God. Crumpus ate his kids. The Feast of the Yule. The Yule Wheel, they thought there was a goddess of heaven spinning, the Big Dipper around the pole star, so they had their Saturn festival. Show us some evidence. Leave, outlaw. You do the works of your father, the devil. Obviously, if you don't know this, you are way behind the power curve, okay? You have the interweb. Go find your own proof. There's more than enough proof the heavens declare the passing of an age. What do you mean, find proof? What do you want me to take you back in history so you can witness this yourself? Pound sand. Tired of the nonsense. 
hey, outlaw, you probably don't even know what the word Satan means, and you're using that. Satan means adversary, the adversary to God. So hell the adversary is what outlaw Jack is saying. And I guarantee you, 99%, I bet on my eternal existence, you didn't even know what that meant before I gave it to you, and now you do. You don't even know what the word Satan means, and you're using it. It means adversary. Ha! Huh? Hell the adversary. Good for you. So we leave the age of Aries, the fire sign, and we come into the age. We, we come into the age of deception. Deception. Where the church puts all these religious holidays that are not in scripture. Christmas, the feast of the Yule, the Saturn. Remember, it was a seven-day orgy. Seven days. Here, let's do a little teaching on it. Why not? We're going to have to do it right here, guys. We'll have to do it in a small area. I'll teach you this. Time out anybody that's in opposition. Time out anybody that's a, a viper for me, guys. This is only meant for eyes to see that the Father wants to see. So this all starts just like this, guys. Let's, uh, let's do it right here. This is all how this starts, these pagans. Paganism is all about food, guys. Just like most of the scripture is about food as well. But most people don't know that because they don't have the word of God in them. They don't understand. Okay? Again, real quick. I looked into the definition of Satan. says so nothing I could find about adversary. Yeah. You, you need to look, see, you need to go in the original scripture. You can pull each word through a concordance. You can take them to a lexicon and the concordance. You're just not studying. You're, you, you, you're not, you don't, you're not studying with the right tools. So you got a perversion of uh, Satan means the adversary. I just gave you some really huge pointers there. I probably didn't have to do that, but I'll go ahead. So this is all how this starts, guys. It starts with this cross right here. And these are these pagan holidays that they celebrate because, again, yeah, paganism, paganism. Hey, wait a minute. I thought that was Nazi. What? Paganism. See, this is 323. This is 623. This is 923. And this is 1223. This is actually where the Big Dipper goes around the Pole Star. The Big Dipper around the Pole Star. These pagans thought there was a goddess of heaven spinning this. That's where the Big Dipper, the cup and the handle, that's where the cup and the handle point down, up, up. Where the cup is at on 923. You go out on 1223, and that's where the Big Dipper's handle and cup is pointed. You guys, they had a festival starting. There were eight pagan festivals. I'm not going to go through all of them. See? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This one starting on 923 is all your dark months. All these pagans were trying to do is get back to the spring over here in March. They wanted to get back over here to the spring. They thought that these goddesses of the underworld, these little D gods, DT gods, G, little G gods, were pulling, were pulling their crops into the underworld. The sap down from the vine down into the underworld. So they prayed to these goddesses or gods of the underworld, like Tammuz, the son of Satan, who was the fish god. He wears the fish hat like the Pope wears, the same thing. Christianity is paganism. Catholicism is paganism. They all worship this same festival. Yes, they do. They all bring this tree worship into their home and to their churches and their houses made by hands. Because remember, from the 17th to the 24th of December, they had what was called their Feast of the Yule. Because this is the Yule wheel. This is where you get your Christmas wreath from. That's the wreath or the fire wheel. That's why you decorate it with the lights all around it and turn it into a fire wheel. So, from 17th, the 17th to the 24th, they had their, what was called their Saturnalia. You might have called, called the Saturn, Saturnalia, or the Feast of Saturn is what it was called. Because, the guys, they prayed to the sun. They prayed to the sun because they thought the sun was going away. 
See, Saturn, Saturn, it has the slowest rotation around the sun. So they tried to pray to the sun. Well, Saturn, hence the term, the Feast of the Yule, the Saturnalia, to try to slow the sun from going away. Because they thought, again, that the crops were being pulled down into the vine. So they start their festival on 923. Starts all their Samhain or All Hallows' Eve. This was added to the church by the Catholic Church. And it's called All Hallows' Eve or Halloween. It's a dual pagan holiday. You see all these churches celebrated in America, even outside of America. They have their fall festivals. They're pagans. They might call themselves Christians, but they're pagans, 100% pagans. They might not know what they're doing, but they are pagans. Okay, so after this festival, they would come in here to the to the December months where they would pray and they would have a seven day from the 17th to the 24th. They would have a seven day orgy. You remember how Rome fell, guys? They were really into their we know what happened to Rome, obviously. Right. So they love their orgies. And so they had an orgy which was from the 17th to the 24th of December. This was a lead up to the birth of their sun god, Mithra, the sun god, Apollyon, or Nimrod, or Moth. All these are the same name for, it's Satan, okay? Like Mr. Adversary who came in, Mr. Jack came in and didn't even know probably what the word Satan meant. So um, the Saturnalia is the same festival, okay? This is the same festival, that was lead up to, to the 25th because their sun god Mithra was born on December 25th. Christ was not born on December 25th, brothers and sisters. Christ was born when the sheep are in the pasture. Okay. He was, he was born. He couldn't have been born in the month of December, November, or October, October, November, and December. The sheep are put up. I'm a sheep farmer. I don't have any sheep out here right now, but I've had sheep on this property and I have a very similar climate as in Israel. In the nation of Israel, the sheep get put up in the months of October, November, and December. So there's no way that Christ Jesus was born in the month of December, November, or October. Not even a possibility. But I can tell you that 100%, the Roman sun god, Satan, was born on December 25th and they would have a seven day orgy where they would appoint a king of the Saturnalia. They would appoint a king, the king of the Saturnalia. And this guy right here, boy, he was a happy camper. Let me tell you, he came from the peasants. He came from the peasants. He was a peasant, but they let him live like a king for seven days. He got to live just like the rich people. Okay. Seven days. And they would appoint a man from the from the peasants to live like a king. Now, this guy, he got to sleep with all the finest ladies, right? Um, he got to drink all the finest mead. He got to lay with all the finest sheep, right? He got to sleep with all the finest men. Oh, yeah, you guys, this was a man on men, men on women, animal on man, animal on women. This is an or the Romans were, you guys, you know how they went out, guys. So what they would do is they would have this massive orgy for seven days where again this king would get to be treated like he he came for the peasants and they, he got to be with all the, again drink all the finest mead lay with all the finest sheep and men and lady and man this guy look at this smile on his face he was a happy camper but unbeknown well i think they did know after the seven days they would actually kill him and 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 sacrifice him they sacrificed him and then they you guys, I don't think they had barbecue sauce like sweet baby rays or I don't know what kind of barbecue sauce, but maybe they had garlic. Maybe they put garlic on them. But anyways, they cut him up and they ate his body. They ate his body. And this is what is known as the Saturnalia because they made a sacrifice of the flesh to lead up to the birth of their son god, because after the seven-day festival, after they ate the king of the Saturnalia, they were celebrating the birth of their sun god on December 25th, Mithra. So this is Christmas, and this is Christianity. Whether you understand what it is or not, it doesn't matter. This is Christianity. Because 
Constantine, again, he thought he was going to lose his empire to the Vandals and the Goths and the Visigoths. All these were northern pagan tribes. And he they were slaughtering the Christians. Remember, the Catholics were slaughtering Christians too, guys. Remember, if you didn't go to their mass, the eating of the flesh, the human flesh, they would kill you. Don't you remember the Roman Inquisitions? The the red, the 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 red and the white with the the red cross. That was the Catholic Inquisitions. They were going out and slaughtering anybody that would not eat the body of Christ, the flesh, the mass. Not the body of Christ. They're trying to get you to eat the orgy sex king and tell you it's the body of Christ. Christ never said eat his body. Remember I said, he said, the scepter shall not depart from Judah until Shiloh, until Shiloh returns. Shiloh. This is the wise men. Remember, it pointed to the head of Leo, declaring that he is the head of the church. He is the king. He is the high priest of the church. We are the body. Christ never said, eat his body. Brothers and sisters, the Shiloh shine proof that we are the body of Christ. Your brothers, your sister, and your mother is the body of Christ. He is the head. The Catholic Church is trying to get you to eat the body of Christ. No. Crackers and grape juice ritual, they're trying to get you to eat this orgy sex king, guys. Eating the flesh is paganism. Sacrifice, paganism, Horcus corpus, Zopoli, this magically turns this cracker magic into the body of hocus pocus. Eat my body. Christ never said eat his body. Literal. He meant the body is your brothers and your sister and your mother. He never said to literally eat his body. Because the body of Christ, he is the king. The head of the church. We are are the body of Christ. Your brothers and your sister and your mother, according to the will of God, is those that do the will of the Father. Sons of God. That's right. You cannot be a son of God unless you're doing the will of the Father. So, Christ was not born on December 25th. December 25th is the birth of the Roman sun god, Mithra. After they had their seven-day sex orgy, they would slaughter the king of the festival the Saturnalia, the Feast of the Yule, the Sacrament of the Mass, Christmas. And that's why they banned Christmas in America. 1492, Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue. The Nina, the Pinta, the Santa Maria, they all tailed him coming to the Americas where they were fleeing the Roman Inquisitions because they were slaughtering anybody that would not go to their Mass. Hey, they called it the Sacrament of the Mass. The Sacrament of the Mass is Christmas, guys. Under a different name. It's Saturnalia. Under a different name. It's the Feast of the Yule. Under a different name. Christmas is paganism. Christianity is paganism. If you bring a tree into your house, for one, cut at the tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They bring it home. They deck it with silver and gold. They fasten it with nails and hammers so it move and stand upright. So it move not. It stand erect like Satan's panga after this seven day member. This led up to the birth of their, their queen, right? Or their goddess of heaven, right? Or their sex goddess or their fertility goddess, which was Ash, Ash star, star worship, lunar worship, star worship, star worship, Ishtar. Remember, there was a festival in between here, which was called the Lupercalia in February. Lupercalia is the, is the modern day Valentine's. Remember the Apollyon? He always had the, Satan always had the wolf, the dog with him. The wolf, you see Apollo, he has a wolf with him. That is this festival that they celebrate in February. It's their dog or wolf worship. But this is pagan. Valentine's Day is pagan leading up to their spring festival, because that's all they were trying to do. Remember, Tammuz down here was the son of Satan. Tammuz, remember the guy that wore the Dagon fish hat like the, like the Pope does? The pagan Pope? He's wearing the same hat 
that the son of Satan ward. That's right. Tammuz was the son of Satan. Remember when Satan died, Tammuz married his mom. Ashtar, Satan's wife, Samaramus. That's right. This is where you get your EpiPen Island boys from. That's why Donald McNugget McTrumpet, Miss, Mr. Agent Orange, is an island boy. Like, I'm an island boy. I'm a, yes, Mr. Biden Stein. And Mr. 45, Mr. Agent Orange, have been to the EpiPen Island. No, you don't understand. You don't, David. You're just, you've, you've been forwarded. I didn't, you, you don't, you didn't take the lesson. Christianity is pagan because they bring, learn not the ways of the, do I need to go over it with you again? Learn not the ways of the heathens. Be not dismayed at the signs in the heavens. Jeremiah 10, for the heathens are dismayed at them. Do not be dismayed because I'm showing you signs in the heavens. Don't, don't, don't cause that, don't, that to cause you alarm. For the traditions, the customs, the celebrations, is any of this in the Bible? Is any of this in the scripture? Is any of this in, 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 in your, does, do you see Christmas in the Bible? Do you see Lupercalia, Valentine's Day? Do you see Halloween in the Bible? No, this was all added by the Catholic Church because Christianity is paganism. Whether you understand it or not, see, Constantine thought he was going to lose. I said he was slaughtering Christians too. Yes, they were. The Catholic Church was slaughtering Christians. So were the pagan tribes that were north of Greece or Rome at the time. They thought they were no, you don't, obviously. <laughs> they, they thought that they were going to lose. Constantine thought he was going to lose his tribe, guys, his kingdom, his power to these northern Vandals. These were pagan tribes, Goths, Vandals, Visigoths. All these were the northern tribes. So what he did is he wrote up in the 12th century. No. Panda, listen to me. 99% of churches, Christian churches, bring this tradition. They celebrate the fall festivals. They celebrate Christmas. They celebrate Easter. And they celebrate Valentine's. So Christianity is paganism. Okay? Whether you understand it or not, it does not make it. So I'm going to tell you what you're worshiping, your Christianity, and where it came from historically. If you'll be quiet for a minute and stop making nonsensical comments that are blasphemy and not true— Constantine thought he was going to lose his empire to the Vandals. They were slaughtering the Christians. The Catholic Church was doing it at the same time. What he did is he wrote up what was called in the 12th century, he wrote up what was called the Edict of Toleration. The Edict of Toleration that says, all right, you pagan tribes, you Vandals, you Goths, you Visigoths, all you northern pagan tribes— if you stop slaughtering the Christians, we'll stop slaughtering the Christians and we'll all get along. This is wokeism, brothers and sisters, today. This is why people, I won't stand for this because this is what it got us into this to begin with. This is exactly with people coming in and saying, oh, no, no, no. It's called tolerance. Just like, yes, Easter Fool's Day. Thank you, Jesse. Just like Easter Fool's. That comes from First Eye. He, I took that from him. He's in the chat right now. Thank him. You guys, they bring in all of these traditions into the church because Constantine says, okay, listen, stop slaughtering the Christians and I'll stop slaughtering the Christians and we'll all come into one roof. You can bring all your pagan gods into the church with Christianity and we'll bind them together to make one religion. This is why you see the nook and Mary and their churches and the all their their uh, holy Mary, Mother of God, all their rosary and all that's all pe the manger scene. That's all added by the church. Halloween added by that's all added to the church. Okay, so what Constantine said 
is if you stop slaughtering the Christians, we'll stop slaughtering the Christians. We'll all come under one house. We'll all get along. That's why you see paganism smashed and loaded, loaded in the church of in the Christian churches. See what I'm saying? Because it was paganism and Christianity combined to make one Roman Catholicism, Christmas. And that's what Christmas is. Christmas is, remember, for, for be not learn the ways, the celebrations, the, for the customs of the traditions, they're, it's vanity. It's vain. Look that word up. It means it's worthless to God. He says, for one cutteth the tree, tree worship, throw your kids in the fire and eat them. You, you, baby, baby lamb, throw the baby lamb into the fire. Moloch, eat your kids, eat the baby lamb. Constantine, paganism, eat your kids, Krumpus, Christmas, Santa Claus. It's all Christmas. It's all the same thing. Every church in America around the world brings this festival into their churches and I rebuke them. They do their works of the father, the devil. I didn't brainwash myself. This is history. Get them out of here. So I don't follow religion because religion is paganism. And all these people follow the Pope. Remember the Pope? This guy here? Because all these churches follow the Pope, do they not? I don't care what their denomination is unless they just don't believe in any kind of Christianity. Remember this knucklehead right here, the Pope? This guy right here, he wears this daggone fish hat. That's your Pope. You mean Tom, Tom Ooze, the one who married his mom? Tom Ooze, the son of Satan? Yeah, the daggone fish god. That's why the Pope wears that hat, because he's, ha, ha, ha. This is what paganism is. That is Tom Ooze. Remember Tom Ooze? Remember after their festival of the Lupercalia, they came here to the spring where they worship star worship. Ashtar, Ishtar. Yeah, that's right. Satan's mom married her son, Tom Ooze, when Satan died. Then she scattered his body across the nations, blasphemy, and regathered his body parts. All 12, she had 12 pieces she cut him into, like the 12 tribes of Israel. Gee, I wonder what, what she was doing. She found all but one piece of his body. She only found 11 pieces. Do you have any idea what body part she couldn't find? What body part didn't she find? Oh, that's right. She married her son. Tammuz, the son of Satan. Ishtar, Ashtoreth, Samaramus. So she only found one, 11 parts. She was missing one, one piece of his body. Stand it upright. Like a tree. You mean like a Nimrod? Like a phallus? Like a panga? Oh, you mean the Washington Monument? The same thing that's sitting in front of the Vatican? Yeah. Satan's member. Nim his rod, if you will. So why do you think we see this on top of all these churches? Here's the church. Here's the steeple. Like a mistletoe. Exactly. So what is this? What is this? When you stand this up, you're standing at the birth in the rebirth of Nimrod, who was a mighty hunter, remember? Christmas tree, tree worship, Moloch, throw your kids in the fire and eat them. Crumpus ate his kids. Santa Claus, hello. Hello. So Christianity is phallic worship. 
phallic worship. So whether people want to believe this or not, brothers, sisters, I know there are you that we have this age now or this can't be hidden anymore. Bless you, brothers and sisters. If you know this, you've been gifted a very special gift. I'm letting you know that. Because again, back here, guys, we'll get back to the lesson. I'm going to sit back down. When we saw the conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter, Saturn and Jupiter. Yeah, that was for you, Vanessa. I stood up for you, sister. Okay, that was for you. And everybody else that had ears to hear. When Saturn, when this star conjuncted the morning star and the king, right? No, this wasn't that conjunction. This was the king star. It gets its name, the king, because it's out the, la the longest and it's the brightest. And it conjuncted with the star that has its rotation around the sun, Kronos or time. We left the age of Pisces in the age of deception. And we came into the age of Aquarius. That's right, the water bearer. This is an image of Christ Jesus, Pisces. Aries, the Lamb of God, a, a, a sign of Christ in the heavens. Pisces, a sign of Christ in the heavens, the water bearer. Aquarius, pouring his water out on the Fomahawk, the fish, another representation of Christ Jesus. So, you guys, back in 2020, we entered in what was called, let me show you this. Then I'm going to sit back down. In 2020, which I teach the parable of the fig tree sign off of this, he'll give us four years to produce fruit or he'll cut us off, correct? So, year zero, I told people back in 2012 about year zero. In 2012, I was telling people about year zero. So, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, and 2000, that's what we're in right now is 2024. The reset started back here, guys, in 2020 is year zero. This is what I was telling everybody, like, what are you talking about? I'm talking about they're going to reset the system, guys, and they're telling us because they know what I've been showing you. So year zero started in 2020. What did they bring you in year 2020? What happened in the year 2020? Anything stand out to you in 2020 that might have happened in this worldwide crown? Year zero. This is what they were telling you. They knew we were going to leave this age and go leave this age of deception. That's right. Good old roll up your sleever. So you got the greatest jab ever in year zero, right? Year one, 2021. Year two, 2022. Year three, 2023. And guess what? X marks the spot because X equals 24. The Omega event. I am the Alice and I am the Omega. 24 is the year four. The parable of the fig tree. I call this the fig tree sign, brothers and sisters. He says, after four years, if it does not produce fruit, cut it down. I call this the fig tree sign. I already knew back in year zero that this was going to start all back then because the heavens declared that we've entered into a new age. And then they're telling you the reset of the United States of America. I'm not going to go over this right now. You should watch this. I've done this over and over. The reset, the Aleth symbol, negates, which follows abyss, seven years. Do a quick brief. The sun goes the wrong way. The Alice symbol negates. You have your devil comet, your daemonion, the Draco comet, which will be seen at the eclipse. There it is in the Helio font logo with the eclipse. The eclipse went the wrong way, guys. I'm the only person on the in the I know in the whole world that in 2017 I freaked out on everybody in the world and said the sun doesn't go this way. It went the wrong way, and we saw a diagonal. This is an eclipse, horizontal. Not diagonal. So I've been on this for so long. 
that I decided, well, I think I'm going to go ahead and make a scene and go ahead and get the tattoo of the red dragon eclipse because there it is. And above it is that red dragon. See? The great red dragon eclipse. Do you know anybody else in the world that has this event marked on their body? Do you know anybody else that has this marked on their body? There isn't another man with this on their body. X, 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 triple X, 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 Va, 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 World Wide Web, Interweb, Internet, Unleash the Beast. Unleash the monster. Three X's. Va, va, va. Seven Salem's. The sun hits the the moon hits the side of the sun, and then forms a diagonal eclipse on 2017. Hits the side of the sun. Goes the wrong way across the United States from west to east, starting in Salem, Jerusalem, Oregon. Traversing through seven Salem's, coming out on the 33rd parallel. October 23rd, excuse me, October 14th, 2023, the sun goes the wrong way again, travels through Texas. X1, X2, triple X. Here it is, Mr. Musk declaring his. Yep, declaring the X. So here we go. We're days away, guys. The sub's going to go the wrong way again and make that third X. Is it going to go diagonal? Because remember, this second one went diagonal. No, it went vertical. And it did exactly that, didn't it? Just like I said it would. So, when we see on April 8th, are we going to see the Vesca Pisces again? I think they're on to me, guys. I think they're on to me. We've already seen a diagonal eclipse. That's not an eclipse. The sun doesn't go the wrong way across the United States. This is a shadow that's been left on the ground. They're foreshadowing what is to come of this nation, brothers and sisters. On April 8th, the sun is going to go the wrong way again. They've already declared a national emergency over here like they did in Oregon. They're going to do it again in Texas. And then it's going to cross seven Palestines. Seven Palestines and four Ninevehs. I call this the sign of Jonah. Yes, I'm the only man on the earth right now putting out this sign that I have seen. The sign of Jonah and the sign of Nineveh because it's going to cross four Ninevehs. The fig tree sign. Hello, brothers and sisters. I hope you see what I'm showing you. The Alice symbol negates, like in the word abyss. A cancels the word bis, which is knowledge, bathos or busos. No knowledge. Cancels. Took them seven years to draw the Aleth symbol. The Aleth. He said, I am the Aleth. The Aleth. The beginning and the omega. The end. X equals 24 because X is the 24th letter of the alphabet, brothers and sisters. So as Jonah was spit out onto the belly of the land to warn of the coming of the destruction in 40 days of Nineveh, this is the Nineveh sign. Okay. Four Ninevehs, seven Palestines, seven Jerusalems. X marks the spot. This is going to cross in Little Egypt. 
or Little Cairo, Illinois. Seven years it took. Seven is the number of completion. To be completed is to be sevened. Va, 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 X, X, X. They were going to unleash the new Antichrist system. It's not the end of the world, but I predict, I'm going to go ahead and make a prediction. And if I get it wrong, you come back and throw egg in my face. I'm going to predict that long, long after, because this is not an eclipse. This is an eclipse. This is not an eclipse. This is not an eclipse. And I'm sure this will not be an eclipse either. This is all lies, just like their Daemonion Comet, their Devil Comet, the one who distributes lies. Gee, I find it rather ironic that when we see this eclipse, you'll be able to see that Devil Comet, just like the Heliofont logo. So it took seven years, seven years to complete this Alice symbol. And it's all trash. That's right. It's all rubbish because this is not an eclipse and this is not an eclipse and it doesn't matter. You didn't, I don't think that the scamdemic was real, but you still had all the effects of it, didn't it? Because see, are you paying attention? Christ never said, Christ never said to pay attention to the ground, did he? He said, look up. There would be signs in the stars and in the sun and in the moon, right? That nobody knows the day or the hour of that seventh seal, that seventh trumpet. When that seventh trumpet will sound, that great and terrible day of the Lord. But the apostle Paul says, you will see the day approaching. So it's obvious this is not the end of the world. I think we're at least years away from the end of the world. I think years away. I am not predicting the end of the world. I am predicting the end of America as you know it. Not long after this. Not long. Because this is a shadow. Did Christ tell you to look at shadows on the ground or did he tell you to look up? Did he tell you to look up? I'm not calling for the end of the world. Stop writing in capital letters. You don't need to yell in here. Grow up. Use normal writing. This isn't a prediction for the end of the world. And uh, Brando, don't put um, vowels in the, his Hebrew name. You look foolish. You don't look like you've done any studying. So will this be the end of the world? No, we got a long time before that happens, brothers and sisters. Okay. We got a we got a ways before that. That's that's not. Remember, there'll be pestilence, wars, and rumors of wars. Nation will rise against nation. Right? What does he tell us? The end is not here yet, is it? So we're not in. This is not a prediction of the end of the world. This is them doing their false eclipses, marking an Alice symbol on the ground with a shadow foreshadowing what exactly what I believe is going to come to this nation called America. Yep. 40 days he was spit out onto the belly of the land, right? For the dis destruction, for the coming. No, we haven't been in Revelation's first eye for 2,000 years. We've only been in Revelation since 1221, 2020. Don't ever put that in the chat again. Don't ever put that in the chat again. This was 2,000 years of deception put on by the church. And on 1221 to 2020, we came out of the age of deception into the age of Aquarius, the one who pours out that living water. So we are not have not been in Revelation for 2,000 years. Incorrect. Absolutely blasphemy. Yes, 2,000 years of deception back here, but we're out of that age now. We're not in that age. That's why I won't allow it. We are, Revelation started on 12, 21, 21, when we came into the new age of Aquarius, the age of the lifting of the deception. Revelation means to reveal, to lift the veil, to remove the cover. Okay, no problems. Appreciate you being here. I just, I can correct you with the word, right? Okay. 
yeah, this man's insane, but you got no idea. You're going to be a burden to society and the word of God is not in you. So do whatever you want. You don't have to like it. So we started the age of Aquarius on 1221 to 2020. This was the lifting of this deception. Back in this age, people told me I was crazy. I don't care about the CIA, Chris, your threats with the CIA. Come on, CIA. Come on, NSA. Come on, government. You're just an alphabet soup. You don't, you don't have any authority over me, Chris. Your threats don't mean anything. I've already invited them to come out here. They won't come. I've already called them and told them about the sheriffs out here, tried to, and they won't do anything. I've called the government a while ago, and they won't even come see me. So FBI, CIA, NSA, CIA, Department of Defense. I've already had a visit from the Department of Defense, and that's one office below the president. So all your ones below that, they're low man on the totem pole. Yes, I've already had a visit many years ago from the Department of Defense. So I'm not afraid of these alphabet soup agencies. They're nothing. They have no authority over me. So I'm not afraid of them. I'll still do this every single day. They want to come take this and put me in Guantanamo Bay, charge me with terrorism, charge, do whatever you want. I'm going to be judged by God's law. And God will judge me. He said, you cannot serve two masters. You can't serve mammon and God. So whatever law I'm going by, I'm going by God's law. So this is the coming destruction of this country. This is the coming destruction of what is to foreshadow, I believe. Will the end of America be on April 8th? It could come a week early, guys. It could come a week early on their, on their uh, Easter Fool's Day. But I believe this is a foreshadow of the destruction of America where they're going to bring in their new beast system. Their beast system. The beast system. Va, va, va. It's been on your monster can forever. Unleash the beast on the triple X, triple va, va, va. We've seen X, X, X. There it is. Can I make it any clearer for you? X, X, X. Unleash the beast. The beast system, guys. Not, not, not the B system, the electronic age, the Antichrist will be AI, not artificial, but advanced. And that's how they're going to release. So I believe I'm a veteran, a tyrant. I served this beast system called America with their swift system where we force everybody to pay for our oil with the US dollar. And we've already seen them kick Rush off that system. We know they're gonna be bringing in this CBDC, right? CBDC. Correct, their central currency. They want people off of this dollar. And they're gonna move people into this. So it's not the end of the world. <laughs> That's what's funny, it's gonna go on and people are gonna throw shade and, you know, and the world is gonna keep going. I never said this is the end of the world. I didn't, I don't, I don't, I made a prediction. You know what I'm saying? I made a prediction of in the future because they're foreshadowing. They're leaving shadows, shadows on the ground. Yeah, that's right. That's right. This is the start only in America where it's going to start. I think you, you, right. Somebody's finally got it. Essie's got it. Okay. This is the foreshadowing of the coming destruction of this country. You know what I'm saying? I saw this guy on videos from January 6th. Cool, cool. Hey, you're still worried about January 6th, huh, Leo? Huh. Yeah, hey, go to the crap, crap hole. Never forget Agent Orange sent everybody to the crap hole. Mr. Drain the Swamp, remember? He sent everybody to the crap hole. He called him out and told him to go there, and then he pardoned his little Gemini buddy. Yeah, Mr. Trump, the Gemini, he pardoned little Wayne. He's never pardoned anybody from J6, did he? No, he didn't. He could have pardoned everybody from J6. He hunt trapped him, didn't he? What do you got there? So J6 was a honey trap by Mr. Mr. Trump, right? He's the one who told everybody to go there. I still have it saved in archive, guys, so they can't take it from me. Meet me at the crap hole. Crap hole, right? He's the one who sent everybody over there. And then he 
pardon little Wayne. He gave little Wayne a pardon. Who was a gem? I encourage you to look into that. Giannis, the January God, the Gemini, Two-Face, right? Two-Face says one thing but does something else, right? I'm going to take all that pork out of the bill, right? Take take all that X, Y, A, B, Z, L, G, B, T through R, 2, D, 2 out of the bill, and I'll vote for it, right? Take out the pork. The very next day he voted for it. The very next day he, he voted for it. Any pardon, Kodak Black? Thank you. Yes, first die. So the guy is a criminal. He's a criminal. And he's a, and he's a Gemini. And he represents Giannis. January, the January God. The Two-Face. That's why all his numbers are mirror. 66. He lives on the 66th penthouse floor. Right? 88. He's signaling the coming of the Antichrist. 88. 88 is HH. Heil Adolf. HH. That's why his house is littered with 88. That's why his number equals 828. 8828. 88. That's why he called himself the King of Israel. The King of Israel. Not Christians, the King of Israel. Hey, Brian Time, they were telling me that I was wearing a tinfoil hat 30 years ago, and I'm still talking. 30 years ago, they told people like me. I was going off on people on Y2K, telling them they were crazy. And I'm still talking. So your tinfoil hat thing doesn't work. Have you figured that out? You're going to throw shade, but it doesn't work. I'm still yapping. Yapping will get you banned out of this. If you want to be thrown out of this chat right now, just go ahead and say I'm yapping. And that's a word that's banned in predestined for life. You can't say that. So watch the opposition, guys. You'll see people have to do this. So if you want to get banned, go ahead and say yapping. Tell me I'm yapping and we'll throw you out of here. And I'll make sure I look at your name before you go. And we'll make sure you get out of here. So... Why would I like a guy that can't keep his hands off children? Why would you ask me if I like a guy who keeps his hands off children? Are you okay? Are you all right? Are you okay to ask me that I like a guy who can't keep his hands off children? Why would I ever begin to, oh, what's my choice? Oh, I either got a guy that can't keep his hands off children or a guy that decorates his house with Satan. That's what you get a choice of. A guy who can't keep his hands off Satan, right? And a guy who can't keep his hands off children. <laughs> Correct? Yes, Mr. Trump is an island boy. He's the same thing as Mr. Sleepy, not creepy. Bye-bye, <laughs> Johnny. You're out of here. So whenever we see Johnny Ryan, we know just to automatically ban that person. Every time he comes in here, get him out of here. So, Mr. Mr. 45, Mr. 45 is still the pretendant, just so you know. So, he can't run again, guys, just so you know. He can't run again. He's still the pretendant for all you uh, Trumpsters that love slamming your opium and drinking your Kool-Aid. You guys, I figured you guys, oh, sorry, Q-Laid. Okay, we got that you hate your dad. Get that person out of here. And that person too. That person's voting for somebody, the lesser of two evil. Hey, Brian Time, if you vote for the lesser of two evils, you are evil. You're just as evil. Not predicting anything. All I'm telling you is that's not long after this event that happens in America, I think their tech's going to go down. So stop voting for any of these clowns. That's what I'm telling you. I don't, when asked who my favorite pretendant is, he's a shill. RFK's a shill. And he's one of them. And he's related to the queen. Yes, he is. He's related to the queen. Yes, we can. We can form our own government. And you want to know how to become your own central bank? Right here. What do you contribute to society? I stood up, Tyrus, during the turn of the coronavirus. Did you stand up to your governor, sheriff? I'm an honorably discharged United States Army tyrant veteran. I'm a prior police officer. 
gang member, thug member. I've done plenty. I've been a school bus driver. I have a commercial license. I've offered many of things to this world. What are you talking about? You don't know me. You should do some homework and stock my profile, stock my channel. <laughs> so time to grow up and, and do some homework and do some studying before you just assume, <laughs> you know, you know what they say about assuming makes a what out of you and me, huh? So stop being a mule. So, and Luke Parker loves, loves, um, okay. Bye Tyrus. We'll get you out of here every time you do your works for the father of the devil. So if you want to follow somebody who, um, who follows after Satan and decorates his whole house with, with the antichrist, then go ahead and vote for Trump, but you're not going to get anywhere because he is still the current pretendant. And if you talk about the shape of the earth, you'll be banned too. So, and I hate the Walmart thing. So you're out of here. No, because you remind me of the, the laughing symbol reminds me of Walmart where they intern American citizens and put them in work camp. So you're never well, welcome back here. Nope. You're in opposition. I'll remember you every time. Goodbye. Oh, yeah. Yeah. in here now. I don't have to do no more moderating guys. Good luck. Now. Yeah. Yeah. in here. You can't say nothing anymore. He is fast on the trigger. So go ahead and say something uh, brutish in nature and you'll be out of here. Thank you. Yaya's in here. I'm worried about him even banning me, guys. So good luck. Him banning the host. <laughs> so good luck. Yaya's in here, guys, and he'll ban you for anything that you say that's cross. So go ahead. And he already has the list. Watch. He'll put on a list right now. What will get you banned off this channel? So if you want out of here, 170 people, do what Yaya says that's on the list and you'll be out of here. Yeah. And we don't teach Jennifer. We don't teach violence. We teach the opposite. So, <laughs> so anyways, all right, moving on guys. What if let's ask ourselves, what if, yep. See that gay as a word, cowboy, another Orient, will result in termination. Boom. See that. So there are certain things you can't say in here that will not allow. Um, you're just throwing shade and you're a scoffer. Um, so um, you'll be thrown out of here real quick. So um, we don't mind removing people because we will not keep uh, Trump satanic decoration. Yes, he has his house decorated with the polyon, the sun god. Uh, spinning out, sleep master, say, Christmas decoration. Yeah, so his house is decorated with a polyon. A polyon is the sun god. And so if you want to vote for somebody who follows after uh, the sun, God, go ahead, <laughs> you know, um, but I'm not going to, if I decorated my house with Satan, I had a bunch of, you know, pictures of the devil and, and yes, Trump is, is a satanic, his whole house is decorated with Satan, Austria, his house is decorated with Satan. Yep, Mithra, Apollyon, the bringer of the disease and the cure of the disease. Yes, Mr. Warp Speed. His whole house is decorated with Satan and you follow after him. You guys are slamming your uh, your hopium and drinking your Kool-Aid, aren't you? We see where who you're giving your authority to. Have you done any research? Why does it, hey, Nimrod's tower, Satan's tower, Satan's tower was 58 stories tall. Satan's tower. Get Luke out of here. He can't do his own research. Bye, Luke. Do your own research. Come back in 24 hours when you've done your own homework. We don't live in that age anymore. Get Astral out of here, too. They can't even do their own homework. <laughs> Go find it for yourself. This is all over, off and on the Internet. It's been in movies, guys. His house decorated with, with Satan has been in movies. Do you know how many blogs you can look up and find all this information? Show me proof. 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 Do your home homework, man. Come on. It's called discernment. Trump's tower is 58 stories. And Nimrod's tower was 58 stories. So you think that's by, by chance? 
you think that's by chance? Oh, it's just a mistake, huh? How is it that uh, his house is 58 stories, the tower is 58 stories, and yet he has 66 floors? He lives on the 66 penthouse floor of a 58-story tower. He decorates his house with Satan, Apollyon, the sun god. He paints his face orange like, like the sun god. His face looks like the sun. That's why he paints his face orange. That's why he is Agent Orange. So if he decorates his house with Satan, and I decorated my house with Satan, there was a bunch of pictures of the devil and pentagrams. And, and I said, oh, I'm a Christian. 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 Would you believe me? If I decorated my house with Satan, if I built a 58-story tower, Babylonian tower, you'd think that I was a believer in Christ? I call myself a Christian. Everything I do mirrors Satan. If you knew what he was doing, you'd realize everything he does mirror. What do you think his tennis shoes were? What do you think the tennis shoes were? What do you think the tennis shoes were? The golden shoes. What do you think the golden shoes represents? There's not one blog, another blogger, another brother and sister in Christ that put this information out. I have not seen one. Not one. What do you think his tennis shoes equal? What do you think the shoe is? He put out the red pair and the gold pair with the red, white, and blue. What do you think that is? He's mocking Christ. You know that? Mr. Drumpf? Because remember, he said he will come back. His head, right? Remember his heel was bruised? Was bruised? Was bruised by the serpent? Remember? His, his heel was bruised by the serpent. His heel, stool, footstool sign. Footstool sign? Remember what the footstool sign is? What did Christ say he would do? What's the first thing he said he would do when he stood up? He said he would be seated at the right hand of the Father, correct? What did he say that he was going to do when he came back? What did he say he was going to do? Remember, his heel was bruised by the serpent. What did he say he was going to do? First thing he's going to do, he's going to stand up. I do, I know. About four or five years ago, I still had a little bit of... <laughs> but it's all turned gray. Come on, guys. Nobody else is putting this out. You're not going to find this information anywhere else. I appreciate all those likes. Come on, guys. Get that up to 20 or 30 likes. You guys are... What are your fingers broken? <laughs> what do you say he's going to do? Where did he say? I'm going to go to where my father's at. I'm going to prepare a place. I'm going to come back and I'm going to receive you. Where is he at right now? He is seated at the right hand of the Father, correct? That's where he said he's at. Then he said he's going to come back and do what? How, what is he going to do? You guys, this is what Trump is telling you with these shoes. And there's not one other YouTuber or brother or sister in Christ or blogger that's put this information out. There's multiples here, guys. Some of this should be ringing out to your head. I hope it does. And if it doesn't, let me help you here. His heel was bruised by the serpent. He said he's going to come back and do what? First thing he's going to do, obviously, he's seated at the right hand of the Father. Is anybody going to get it? Come on. Yeah, I don't ever talk about that camera. I just said it. I just it's the first time I've mentioned it in five hours. First time I've asked you to hit the thumbs up button. So um come on, guys. It's in your head. It's written on your hearts. It's on your hearts. Let him reveal this to you. If not, I'll tell you, but I'm trying to give you hints. He said, remember, the heel was brushed. That's right. He said he's gonna come back and crush the head of the serpent. That was bruised by his heel. Heel. Foot. Footstool. The footstool sign. He said he would come back 
and make his enemies his footstool. Footstool. Get it? Tennis shoes, foot, golden calf, the golden calf, Daniel, the red and the white equal purple. The Canaanite, that's why it's red, blue, and then white. Red, blue, white. Red and blue make purple, make Canaanite. That's why it says red, white, and blue. So what else does he say about something under your feet? What does he say about your enemy? What does he say about the enemy, right? Your enemy be, will be what under your feet? <gasps> There's another foot sign. There's another foot sign right there, guys. Nobody else on the internet has put that out. He's revealed this to my heart. He's revealed this to me, and I want to share it with you. Can I make it any clearer? Christ didn't sin. That's blasphemy. He didn't sin. Christ can't sin, Charles. So, And he wasn't hung on a cross. He was hung on a tree. He didn't carry a cross. You're, you're, you're way off, man. You're way, way, way off. You walked into the truth. Don't end. You guys are sick, man. You guys are his footstool, right? And then he said, your enemies will be ashes under your feet. So how many more signs, how many more signs can I give you with Mr. Trump and his blasphemous tennis shoes? 399 pairs, right? He sold. So I hope you can see what Trump is declaring. He's mocking our father who art in heaven, seated at the right hand, Christ Jesus, Shiloh, the one who said he was going to leave this place. He was going to come back and redeem us, pick up his purchased possession. Well, the Quran doesn't believe in Jesus. Um, it mentions Jesus Christ, but um, the only way through the Father is through the Son. So I don't have to prove if the Bible is real or not. It's infallible. The devil knows that it's real. Why is it that the devil is doing everything on the other end of that book? You know, Christians have a hard time understanding Scripture, but the devil knows it like the back of his hand and makes every jot and tittle come to pass. So it's pretty funny how a lot of people want to throw shade as, you know, I'm a Christian or whatever, but doesn't, doesn't these silly people know that the devil knows the word of God better than 99% of Christians. And he's making every jot and tittle come to pass. Cause that's the only way that he can get the redeemer Christ Jesus to come back with a key to let out their antichrist. It's simple. Child can understand that. That's not politics and that's not religion. Sorry, Levit, I didn't boot you. I don't know. It's just probably the um, the stream. We've got a pretty good stream going here. So the devil knows this word better than you. Yes, he does. He doesn't come back and 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 be this. You know, uh, the devil doesn't come back wearing red lipstick. With, with pokey, you know, horns and, and, and got red leotards. He comes back looking just like this, just like this, just like this. Yep. Can you tell the difference? Can you tell? Is that, is that, is that him? Wait a minute. You'd have to know. You'd have to get a magnifying glass, huh? Cause he's going to mirror Christ. He's going to perform all the same wonders and miracles, not little red tights and the devil horn and a pokey tail. So many will come in my name saying they are Christ and they will be deceived. Bye bye, Beard. You'll never be welcome in here again. You'll be banned and I can remember your name. So is this Christ? Is this real or is this fake? Is this a real coin? Is this a real coin? Is this real or is this fake? Is this a copy? Is this a copy or is this real? Can you tell the difference? That's Satan, brothers and sisters. That's Satan. Satan doesn't come back wearing 
you know, tights and, 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 a, and a devil horn. This is what Satan looks like. And you would have to know exactly. Maybe there's just one little tiny, you have to get a microscope because he's going to perform all the same wonders and miracles. Get it? So stop looking for this devil with horns and a red suit and a pointy tail. You're not going to even see him. Unless you understand that he comes back mirroring Christ, looking just, many will come in my name, saying they are Christ, and they will be deceived. They'll say I'm in the desert. Don't go there. They'll say I'm in the secret chambers. Don't go there. So the devil is not your little kitty god with the red leotards, spandex, wearing a pointy uh, tail and and little devil horns. That's your your little gummy bear Jesus, you know, angel on one side and the devil on the other. That's children's play, children's child's play. So if you don't recognize the devil, you already probably been overcome by him, and you probably come in here and spit and throw shade and do the works of your father, the devil, Demonion, those that distribute lies, fortunes. That's what a devil is, a demon. The word devil is what replaced the word demon in scripture. It never did say devil. You got that watered down milky version that you read. Yep. He wants us to eat the meat, not the wa not the milk down, watered down milk gospel that all these other. The, the apostle Paul warned us of the other Jesus. Remember, many will come preaching another gospel. They will come preaching the gospel that I did not preach and speaking another Jesus. Oh, yes, there's more than one Jesus in Scripture, isn't there? And that's what 99% of the world worships, guys. So I don't have to try to change anybody. God already chose his bride. It was already chosen and bought from the foundation of the world. I'm not trying to change anybody. I made that mistake for 10 years, and I'm paying for it dearly. That's right. Hallelujah. Thank you for the babes. Milk's for the babes and meat's for his bride. Hallelujah. So you know what I'm talking about. Where'd that comment go? Did you just ban that person? Yeah, that person didn't say anything. Hold on now. It's not over, do it. Why did he get banned? Why do we ban witchy? Okay, thank you. All right, careful, guys. Yaya's high beyond the trigger. <laughs> hey, we got a full room. Thank you, Yaya. I appreciate it. So, look, guys, the devil is going to come back, and he's going to mirror Christ. He's going to look just like Christ. He's going to look just like Christ. Yeah, they are a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. You guys, easy on the moderation. Don't over-moderate, please. Don't over-moderate. The Raider gang, uh-oh. That's right, Laura. I'm not trying to change anybody. What do I read? Oh, I read a lot of things. I study out of the Texas Receptus. I use a concordance. I use a lexicon. There's my interlinear. I study the Greek and I study the Hebrew. If I'm going to study the Word of God, I'm going to study it in the original text it was written in. If I'm going to study the Old Testament, I'm going to study the Hebrew. I'm going to use a lexicon. That's a dictionary. I'm going to pull every word out one at a time. One at a time. And then I'm going to define it in its original text that it was written in Greek in the New Testament, Hebrew in the Old Testament. The lexicon is a dictionary. I'm going to take that word out. I'm going to pull it out. I'm going to define it in the original text. Then I'm going to take it to my concordance. Concordance. And the concordance is going to tell me everywhere that one word is written. If it's written five times, then I'm going to read that sentence five times. Actually, I use that concordance as a cheat code. I call it a cheat code. What I recommend you do is you don't, you know where it's at. It says, you know, it says it here in Ezekiel. It says it here in Daniel. It says it here in Revelation. So instead of using that concordance, which is a separate book that has all those sentences in it, I actually go back and read three or four chapters before that one sentence and three or four chapters after. See, I don't read the book. I did that when I was young in faith. You know what I'm saying? I, I thought I could read it like a book. 
But then I didn't get, it didn't make sense. And things were like all over the place. I'm like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. The devil's already here on earth. And Adam and Eve were, man and woman were born, but the devil was already here. How's that? It doesn't mention that in Genesis. Why don't I, and I got very confused. And then I was like, man, I'm not going to get this right. Right. And um, I might decipher this wrong. You know what I'm saying? So I went back and I started studying different. And I found out that I can take each word out one at a time. Because if I just read it like a book, see, Satan fell like lightning from the heavens to earth in the book of Revelation. The very last book, that book wasn't even written. Correct? That, that book isn't even written yet. And yet Satan had already entered into the garden in the book of Genesis. Does that make sense? So I knew something was, it wasn't written like chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four. You know what I'm saying? Because again, in the book of Revelation, we saw Satan fall like lightning to earth in the book of Revelation. That's the very last book, guys. So I got a little confused when I was young, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I and I and I was like, wait a minute, this isn't a book. <laughs> this is something going on here. This is not right. And that from a young age, I started figuring out that this isn't that way. And then I came into the, you know, where you need to pull all the words out at one time, just one word, and study that word, study that particular word in the original text it was written. Okay, in the original text, it was written in. And you can do that by getting a dictionary and find the original text it was written in and then study that word. Study the definition first and then take it wherever it's written in the Bible or in scripture. I don't use the term Bible. It sounds religious and I'm not religious. So study each word. Now you find it written three times. In your concordance, you can just read the concordance. Okay, Paul said it here, Peter said it here, Matthew said it here. But I recommend you don't cheat like that. You actually go and find where it's at. Use it as a cheat code. Okay, well, look, it's written 10 times. Here, 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 here. Take it out one at a time. Don't read through all the 10 sentences. You can read through all 10 sentences. But then go back to the first one and open up your book. Open up your book. And then read two or three chapters before that one sentence and read two or three chapters. And guys, you are not going to get the same meaning. Things will start coming to you. Remember, he says, asking, you shall receive, right? Seeking, you shall find. That's not about a job, a wife, a girlfriend, and a, you know, or that's about the, uh, the understanding. Beautiful. Thank you. If I here heard that guys it's worked it to me just so you know if hall 120 and just falls on deaf ears it's okay for, with me guys and i know some of you heard that so I, I seen one of you got it so this is the way you study guys and you don't have to know anything you don't have to know anything you don't know half i don't care if you don't know any of that word right now if he's called out to you he said if i did not seek out to their hearts right if i didn't call out to their hearts to seek after me that not one of them would so if he's calling you Seeking ye shall find. Obviously, he's given you just now the information through me on how to study. So it doesn't matter. I don't care what you know, brothers. It don't matter. You're probably going to, you know how much I had to go back and relearn? Probably about 70%, brothers and sisters, 70% of what I know now is because I had to go back and relearn what I had learned incorrectly. I was way, I was right way back then that I had learned incorrectly. So a lot of my studies for a lot of years was going back and correcting all the problems that I had you know what I'm saying? That I've made, you know, so we've all made them guys and it's okay. Um, this is what we do. We prove ourselves worthy by studying, Just putting our nose in that book and then edifying each other with other brothers and sisters. That's where I lack guys. That's why I come onto this platform and, uh, and try to help others because I've made mistakes and I learn a lot of what I know by going on the internet and looking what people made their mistakes and they're like, hey, I made this mistake. Don't make this. This is how you do it. I'm like, oh, well, thanks for saving me a bunch of time. Like somebody just said in the chat, I'm trying to save you time. We don't have a ton of time. It's not the end of the world. It's not, we're not close to that yet, guys. Please, you know, we're, we're, we're not there yet. 
we, we got a ways to go. Okay. We're, we're not the end of the world as we know it, that's already happened, so to speak, remember? So we're going to continue to see this. Um, oh, Pip J, appreciate it. I, this is all glory to the God, all glory to the Father. This is not me doing this, guys. He makes me come on and do this. I should be working on my worldly stuff right now, but I don't care because my brothers and sisters are way more important. You know what I'm saying? Way more important to me than than any of this fleshy stuff i came from the dirt everything that's on this property it's going to go back to the dirt this time that i'm spending with you cannot be taken away from me so i appreciate it you know um no i don't believe rapture was never written in scripture the word rapture was never even written in scripture so um that's just a man-made term uh, trying to learn how to read and understand what i'm reading yeah hey there we go all glory uh bootifalicious that's a that strange name bootifalicious oh it says bootifalicious but um all glory to the father you guys um i want to show you something else too since you guys are hitting on this i'll share some more stuff with you that i study look you guys this is amazing this will help you if you guys like that gem let me give you another gem look at these two books okay first of all let me show you this What a blessing you guys are. Thank you guys for, for staying in the room here. Let me show you how I study, okay? I want to show you how I study. You study however you want to study. I'm going to show you how I study. I'm not saying that um, whatever text you have to throw it away. Actually, keep all your texts. Keep all your Bibles, all your scripture, and all your so you have something to compare it to, so to speak. But if you want to get to where you're not wasting your time, and and go because I, I have the other books here, but I want to give you this gem. Okay. This is how all the this is what I study out of. Okay. I use what is called an interlinear, meaning interlinear. It's dual language. It's written both. Let's pull one open here. Let's go to the New Testament because a lot of us study out of the sorry, this book is it's getting hammered. I study out of this one a lot. So um this is the New Testament. Okay, see. This is the International Bible, so it is a King James Version, so it's not a text that you're not familiar with. This is the Hendrickson Version, okay? Hendrickson Version, and it is coded with the Strong's Concordance, okay? And so this is the canonized version of the New Testament. If you'll open this book up, you'll see on the inside that it's written in both Greek and Hebrew. And above each, each word, it has a number. It has a number. You can take that number out and you can get, I have over here, that's concordance. Right here is one of my concordances right there is concordance. Or it's telling you where it's got all the words in it, okay? That's going to teach you where that word is about. Right? You're going to get the lexicon, where you're going to get the definition, and then you're going to take it to the concordance. It's going to tell you where each one of those is written. So in this, in this scripture, every word has a number above it. Every word has a number above it. Okay? So you can take and pull out one word at a time and study it in the original. So these 66 books are the canonized I know there's other books. I have them. <laughs> I study them as well, but I would get my base off this Old Testament and the New Testament. So there's the original 66 books. It's a four volume set in the Old Testament. It's going to be written in the Hebrew, right? We'll pull one out. We'll pull out the first, you know, it's got Genesis and Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. This is the Hebrew as well as the English. Okay, and each one, same thing in this book. It has that number above it. So you can take that one word and then define it, okay? This book is about $80 for this four-volume set. That's about $20 a book. This particular set is very expensive. This is about $1,500 for this set or $1,200. Somebody sent this to the, to the ministry when I was actually um, – when I was um, – on TikTok, 
and I was asking for books to be sent out here to bury these books that I have out here. Somebody sent me the set, but they make this same set. It's going to have a beige cover on it, and it should have Hebrew writing on it, and it's $80 on Amazon and on some of the other websites. We sold a ton of them on the TikTok channel. I bet you sold a couple hundred sets of these. They were actually starting to sell out a little bit when that channel was was just popping over there. So this is the first volume of the three volumes, the first 53 books. Okay. So these are the canonized versions of the text, which means are these are the ones that don't have problems with the interpreting. And, and they took 22 books from the original Ethiopian text and the original text. I know that. Okay. That was taken out, okay, because they were had problems with the canonization. So there are other books, Enoch, Jasher, Lilith, all these other books. Okay, I don't talk about them very often from time to time, but I try to teach the 66. Okay, if God wanted there to be 67, there'd be 67. If God wanted there to be 65, there'd be 65. There are 66 books that have been canonized. Yeah, the original... 66 books in scripture. This is how I recommend that you study. This is how I study. One word at a time. And then not only that, I would recommend that you start getting some of this other, um, some of this other literature that you can get access to. That's very cheap right now. We're almost coming into the spring. I got, cust I got, uh, some of my followers that are from outside the country and it's warm in your part of the country right now. So I want you to go to, um, garage sales. In this case, I went to the Goodwill and I bought this. Look, this is from the Goodwill. It was $6 and 99 cents. This is called the Harper's dictionary Bible. I didn't buy this for the text guys. I bought this. This, this is a study you can study for years. I mean, there is so much, and he warned us about imagery. This is just loaded, just absolutely loaded with study. Pictures and, and, and look, I mean, some of this stuff is just, I paid $7 for this book. What I was going after, you need to not only study the word, you need to study the cultures at the time, because they didn't speak 2000 years ago, guys, like they do today. I would say, oh, my God, man, did you see that? That's flipping sick. If I said flipping sick, you'd probably know exactly what I talked saying. But if I went in, you know, 2000 years ago and I said that's flipping sick, they're probably going to get the, the 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 priest out there and sprinkle some holy water on me. Right. Think something's wrong with me. Right. So you need to study the cultures, the customs, the dialect and the history. OK, where I went after this book was because just for this, just for these. And then I got all the bonus. I paid $7 for this book, guys. Look at these maps. I recommend you study the maps. Because, for example, let me show you something. I heard somebody in here say something completely false. That's okay. I didn't answer them because I want to stay moving here. But if I use this, for example, like this. I could teach you. I could say, remember when I was talking about the Vandals and the Goths and the Visigoths? I could say, well, Constantine Empire was right here. Here's Israel. Here's the nation. When they went into the land of Anak, the Anunnaki, this is the land of the Anunnaki, the giants to the south. I, I could point out and use these maps to teach myself and others with. So I paid $7 for this book, seven bucks. I'd pay $7 for that map right there, just for that color map. That is worth, to me, that's worth 7 bucks. Look at this topographical map, guys. Look how beautiful this the, the, the image is in this. And we're warned about imagery, but I'm telling you, look at these, look at these maps. Just absolutely gorgeous. Just absolutely amazing. Um, Palestine, New Testament times. Look at this, guys. Palestine, New Testament times. 
under uh, Palestine under Maccabees. See, when you're reading in scripture, there were different times, guys. Correct? Borders always move around. <laughs> so this book to me is 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 priceless. Um, here is the uh, Assyrian Empire. Here is Judah after the fall of Israel. Here's Judah after the fall of Israel. So your borders are changing, guys. See what I'm saying? Brothers and sisters, this is, is uh, here's the empire of David and Solomon. Okay, see that? Yeah, this has got tons and tons and tons and tons of information. Um, this is earlier Israelite settlement in Canaan. Come on, guys. When you're reading this scripture and you're able to look through this stuff and understand these maps, it gives you a whole lot different kind of understanding of what you're reading, okay? And again, um, let me flip over to this one. $7, $6.99 at the Goodwill. I looked this book up online. It was about 60 bucks, I think, is what this one cost originally. This is a Holy Bible, red pictorial Bible. Again, I went after this Bible because I wanted the maps. I wanted the maps. Remember that same map I showed you in the back? Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. Same map again. Okay. What does this say? This says the Judah and Benjamin. Judah and Benjamin. These are the two southern tribes. Right? What is this? This is the Palestine in Christ's time. I paid five bucks for this book, guys. Five bucks for this book. This is the Assyrian and the Babylonian powers. Okay. I want to show you another here. Look at this is the, the here's the Exodus routes, guys. Here's all the Exodus routes that they took. In red, all the Exodus routes. Come on. Five bucks? Get out of here. That's cheap, man. Sometimes, guys, you can pick these up at garage sales for a quarter. Most of your Christian friends that never read these, never look these, never even open them up, they buy them and they set them on the shelf and they go to church on Sunday and that's good enough for them. And you'll end up seeing some of these at their garage sales. Okay. This book right here is insanely fabulous, guys. This is just amazing because if you go through this, you'll see that there's a lot of imagery in here of the time. Like, let me show you this here. This is, this is the pool of Bethsaida, right? You ever read that in scripture? You ever heard that term? There it is. There's an actual image of it, not a drawing, but an actual image. So when you're looking through and you're studying again, let's move this over here. <laughs> This is, what do we got here? Right, my eyes are not too good. Um, this is the place of Calvary, right? This is Calvary. Ever read about Calvary in the, in, in the scripture? When you get this images in your head of the original, where this stuff is talking, you get a whole different look. You understand what I'm saying? When you're reading about, you go through here and you're reading, let's see what this is. Um, the village of Nyan, right? You ever read about that? There it is. See that? So why I encourage you guys with some of this stuff is on this, some of this stuff, you cannot find this imagery on the internet anywhere. These are old images. And some of these only exist in these books, right? What is this? This is the Garden of 
I can't read that. Oh, so my eyes are. Okay, here is the. Uh, here's Bethlehem, right? It's talking about Bethlehem. At the time, look. Now you can see Bethlehem closer to the time of Christ, a much more biblical type of image. So when you're reading through and it talks about Bethlehem, see what I'm saying? Now you can look at this and you get a better understanding with these old, old images. As you're reading through, you're going to be able to see um, Here's the entrance to Nazareth. The entrance to Nazareth. See what I'm saying, guys? So I paid $5 for this book. I paid five bucks. And it's just loaded with different, you know, um, this here. Some It does have some imagery in it. The enemy sows terrors. We've heard that. The enemy came and sowed tares. Just an image, not an actual, but, right? The enemy came when we were sleeping and sowed tares amongst the wheat. We all know that parable, right? That. Okay? So I really recommend we're coming into the springtime, guys. And there's going to be a ton of garage sales. And guys, I don't mean to to like take advantage of people, but people have been really hammered really hard over the last couple of years. And people are going to be selling stuff, guys, like no tomorrow at their garage shelves. I bet you they won't even look. They'll just pull that whole stack of books out. And if you could probably buy the whole stack for a buck. Hey, I'll buy that whole box from you for five bucks. There's one book in there that you know you want. You know, I'll buy that whole box for five bucks. Guys, this is a good time to pick this stuff back up. We're coming into the spring. So um, this is just, a, there's just a number image here. This says King jo Josiah, no, Jehosha, not Josiah. That's King Jehosha shoots the arrow. So you can get an idea what you think Jehosha looks like. See what I'm saying? So this stuff right here to me is priceless, guys. So not only should you be studying the word, you should be studying all this, these um, cultures and the customs and the idioms because the Bible is full of idioms. Here, let me give you a proof. There's a buck 35 in here. Um, Lot's wife, in scripture, it tells us Lot's wife was turned to a pillar of salt. She was turned to a pillar of salt in scripture. Put sodium in the chat. Put sodium or salt in the chat. If you, if Lot's wife was turned to salt. We see images of, of Lot. He said, the angel came and visited, said, all right, I'm going to destroy this place. God said, stop doing the hokey pokey and turning yourself around. That's what it's all about. Why did you, uh, why did that person get, why did that person just get uh, banned there, Yaya? They just said that they eat chicken and they want to try to stop eating chicken. Why was they, why would you ban them for that? Uh, Yaya, you got to slow down a little bit, bud. These, that's just a question. That's just a question. So let's let's not over moderate, man. Please, 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 do not over moderate. I want moderation. I do. I don't want nastiness and filthiness in here because it comes in here, especially when we get the numbers that we're getting now. But um, let's see if I can, you know, let's let let's people ask some questions if they can. Um, what is your question, DJ? So. Please be on the lookout. Go to all your goodwills. Go to all your garage sales and go to um, every, every kind of place that's got, and I don't care what it is, get a Quran. You know, they mentioned Jesus Christ in the Quran, correct? They don't consider him to be anointed. 
right? He's not the Hamashiach. He's not the anointed. He's not the Christ. They consider him a prophet, just like Matthew or Peter. So I recommend reading the Quran. I recommend reading outside of the scripture. Discern all things. But until you've got those 66 books down, 66 books down, then I wouldn't recommend reading anything else. It's not necessary. The gospel is what you need to know. That's the most important thing. Okay? So get the original text down and then read the other the other text afterwards. The reason why I recommend, like, go through these 66 books first. Get these down to where you can almost say them in your sleep. Okay? Where you can say them in your sleep. Then go read Enoch. And it'll make so much more sense to you. Remember I told you, it doesn't read like a book. <laughs> It doesn't read like a book. We see lightning, you know, Satan fall like lightning in the book of Revelation, and he was already entered in the garden in the book of Genesis. It happened in the very last book that wasn't even written yet. So how would people know during the Old Testament how Satan entered into the garden? That's why we do need to read a lot of the other texts as well. But what I'm asking you, and this is only a recommendation, is to read these 66 books first, the canonized text, then read Enoch, then read Jasher, then read Lilith, then start reading some of these other books and you'd be like, holy crap. I am getting, this isn't even what I thought it meant the last time I read it. That's how I've learned out of Enoch. That's how I've learned out of Jasher. That's how I've learned. I have the other books right there. They're sitting right I have more. There's all there's all the lost texts and book that's got Enoch one, two, all of, you know, I have them in some more individually, but there's all the remaining books that were taken out the Dead Sea Scrolls. I have all that text, but I'm going to tell you what. It's not necessary. You don't need the 22 books taken out of scripture. You don't need them. Whoa, what happened there? What is my phone doing? You don't need them. You need the gospel. You need to know how to get to the fire. I find very few things in the 22 books that were taken out. What you need to know is you need to know the gospel of Christ Jesus. You need to know how to carry your cross. You need to know how to get a cross. He tells us, who shall ever come after me? Let them deny themselves. Take up your cross daily. Daily. Not just on Sunday. You can't set it down ever. You have to pick it up and carry it until you die. Who shall ever come after me? Let them deny themselves, take up their cross daily and follow after me. I don't see anything in the book of Jasher that tells me how to get across. I don't see much scripture in Lilith or, or that tells me how to get across. I'm asking 112 of you right now. Nobody answered my question about being turned to a pillar of salt. Was Lot's wife turned to a pillar of salt? If she was turned to a pillar of salt, put salt in the chat. Don't answer it. If you know the question or whatever, just put a, was Lot, Lot's was told, that it was visited by the angel to told him to get your wife and get out of town. I'm going to bring the fire. Right? I'm going to bring the fire. I'm going to destroy this place with fire. Right? That's what, ask your priest and your pastor and your deacon and your reverend. And hey, was Lot's wife turned to a pillar of salt? It says right here in this book, she was turned to a pillar of salt. But brothers and sisters, Lot's wife was not turned to a pillar of salt. There was zero fault of sodium involved. Okay? No salt involved. None. That was an idiom. Hold on. I got a frog in my throat. Let me take a drink here. Oh, yeah, coffee. Hold on. Wait a minute. Aren't they keeping chat logs here? Won't you be able to go back and read this chat log 100 years from now? And if you read the text and I said I had a frog in my throat, 
Did I literally have a frog in my throat? No, you didn't literally hear it from the horse's mouth. That term, turned to a pillar of salt, brothers and sisters, meant to succumb to your death. It meant to succumb to your death. There was zero sodium involved with Lot's wife. She was not turned to a pillar of salt. No, not at all. Zero sodium involved. It was an idiom. The book is full of them, guys. So you got to study the idioms. That's why I tell you study the cultures, study the customs and study the idioms. Because like I said, if I said, man, did you just see that car drove by that hot rod? That thing was flipping sick, you know, or did you see that person, that outfit they were wearing? They were flipping sick. Oh my God, that's flipping sick. And if I said that 2000 years ago, at the time of Christ, they're probably going to go get the pastor or the priester and sprinkle holy water on you. Think you got a demon, right? Oh my God, he's living sick. Get the priest, get the pastor, get the holy water. Hold him down, right? <laughs> it doesn't mean what it means back then, guys. So that's why I really want you to understand. You don't need to know all this stuff that people don't be religious or you ain't going to get it. You're going to believe all this nonsense that these religions believe. Study the word of God. You're supposed to have a relationship with the father. Talk to him every single day. Just talk to him. That's what he wants you to do. Talk to him. Thank him when things are bad and thank him when things are good. Thank him for all things. That's what we're supposed to do. Oh my God. I just drove out of the parking lot. I got that brand new car and bam, I got wrecked into. Thank you, God. <laughs> Hell, I don't know what I'm going to do, God, but thank you, God. <laughs> Times are down. Times are bad. I woke up this morning. Oh, my God, I'm alone again. God, why do you do this to me? Thank you, God. This is what you want for me. And I said, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Jesus Christ. How is it that I can say that in public? Jesus Christ. And that's okay with society. But I go into town and I start talking about this word and people tell me to get a church. Well, we don't, we're not supposed to talk about that. It's not Sunday, Tracy. So how can I say Jesus Christ and it be okay in society accepted, but I can't speak about God. So don't sit there and try to throw shade on me. Cause I said, Oh my God, God is a title, not his name. That's not taking the Lord's name in vain. Grow up. <laughs> You lollipop, cotton candy, gummy bear, Christian. There ain't no Christians in here. None that I am. I'm not a Christian, just so you know. I believe in the Ruach Hokadesh, the Holy Spirit, not this other Jesus that you've fallen for. Your Jesus Christ, your Christmas Jesus, your other Jesus that you are worn. He himself said, Many will come in my name, saying they are Christ, and they will be deceived. So how is it that somebody's going to get all upset about so oh my he said oh my god God is a title that's not his name What are you freaking out about It's not what goes in a man that defiles him it's what comes out of him Is that what you're worried about What about my tattoos Oh you're going to hell Milky God said it it be it's an abomination for a man to lie with another man and I'm righteously judging you so Turn from your ways. Come out of her, my people. He said, uh, remember the promise of the rainbow, okay? Remember the promise of the rainbow. If you don't stop doing the hokey pokey and turn yourself around, I'm going to send the fire. Remember? Perfectly on time. So God said that a man is not to put on another man's woman's clothing. It is an abomination to God. A woman is not to lie with another woman. It is an abomination to, to God. A, a man is not to lie with another man. That is abomination to God. So you're going to hell. So according to the word of God, because God does not allow people to lie with other people, right? A man can't lie with a man. That's an abomination to God. Okay. So, um, a man is not to put on woman's clothing. A woman is not to put on man's clothing. So that's the word of God, and I'm judging you righteously. According to the word of God, you're going to hell. So that's God's word. Don't shoot the messenger. Take it up with God. I'm just telling you what his word says. So.
Well, good. Don't worry about that, Caden. He's got a place for you. You're a vessel of wrath fitted for destruction from the foundation of the world, and God has a place for you. It's called a place of no knowledge. Okay? So I'm not trying to turn any goats into sheep here, brothers and sisters, so no worries. You're coming for me, boys. I live in Christmas Valley, Oregon. I have a marker at the end of my driveway. Just call the sheriff's office. My name is Tracy Werner. They'll tell you right where I live. They won't come down my driveway, but maybe you maybe you can get them to show you where I'm at. You want to come out here and dig some holes with me? No, his name is I Am. God is not his name. God is a title. That's never even... <laughs> God is a title, okay? I'm a military veteran. That's a rank or a title. His name is not God. His name is I am. He said before Abraham was, I am. Before Abraham was, I am. You should shape your hat. Is it felt? No, it's not felt. Well, you want me to shape it like this? Are you better now? Are you happy now? Is that better for you? You should shape my hat. Don't tell me what to do with my hat. There's three things you don't mess with. A man's woman, a man's hat, and a man's money. Don't tell me what to do with my hat. <laughs> this hat shapes itself. Is that better for you? Are you happy now? Talk about my hat. This hat gets its shape all on its own. It takes shape by itself. You don't think so? Let me show you the newer version of it. It takes getting stepped on, pooped on. Can you do this with your cowboy hat? Tell me what to do with my hat. This hat takes its own shape. I can stuff that hat in the back of my pocket. That's a working man's hat. That hat's got doo-doo on it. That's right, that hat's got doo-doo on it. Poop. It's been run over, stepped on, pooped on, put in my back pocket. You wouldn't know a good hat if you had a hat sitting on top of your head, would you? That's my hat. It takes shape all by itself. Don't tell me what to do with my hat. Don't tell me what to do with my money. And don't tell me what to do with my wife. There we go. Look at that. See? Just takes it all. The man's nuts! Grab him! <laughs> oh, is that loud in your ear? <laughs> no don't do that remember God said it's an abomination for a man to lie with another man so don't do that All right. pull it back out here just kind of shapes itself God. boom there we go see it just takes shape all in its own yeah it's a real hat and I'm a real cowboy I live on a ranch so if you don't like it too bad I don't care not about that every man's got to have a good hat yeah, did you just see I watered that hat into a ball? And would you look at it now? Woo! -hoo. Yeah, I told you it's probably got some poop on it too. Been run over, stepped on. <laughs> so, you want to see what again? There you go. This one's a little bit newer. I haven't run over. This one hasn't been run over yet. Oh. It's been stepped on. It's been stepped on already a couple times. So, if you're wondering what hat this is, this is a Mintonka, the same company that makes uh, moccasins. The moccasin company. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's a good hat. If you guys need a good hat, Every man should have a good hat. Let's see if you can see that there. Mintonka, the leather company. No, God is not his name. God is a title. Okay, I'm going to say that to you again. His name is I am. Self-existent Jehovah God. His name is Shiloh. But God is a title. You're using a translation. God is a title and not his name. So he said, remember, they hadn't worshipped him. Let's get to the bottom of this. 
They hadn't worshipped him in over 400 years. Remember, they had wandered the desert. They wanted a place of worship. They wanted a place of worship. So God gave them the rabbis and the synagogues. And then a nice hat for, for 70 bucks. Okay. They hadn't, they knew he was God. His apostles were sitting there. Remember, there's all the crowds out there. And they asked. They want to know what your name is. They knew he was God in the flesh. And he asked him, they said, they're wanting to know what your name is. What do we tell him your name is? And what did he say? My name is what? He didn't say my name is God. That's a title. That's not what he said. He said, you tell them my name is what? Not God. God is a title. He said, you tell them my name is... No, not Muhammad. He was a pedophile. His name is I am. That's what he said. I am. You tell them my name is I am, not God. Okay. His name is not God. That is a title. I'm going to leave it alone. His name is not God. His name is I am self-existent Jehovah God. Okay, I understand, but you're still just speaking translation and you haven't, you don't probably have a inner linear Texas receptus. He said, I am the Aleph. I am the Hados. I am the Aletheia. I am the Horizo. Before Abraham was, I am. You tell them, I am. Be comforted. I am. <laughs> His name is not God. That is a translation. Start getting, you have an interlinear Bible. Do you have a concordance? Right, you're out of here. I'm tired of your nonsense. Don't ever come back. You know it because you've been put in time out. If you come back, I'll remove you every single time. Bye, see ya. His name is I am. He said, when I return, no one will know my name. He said, when I return, no one will know my name. I will have a new name. <gasps> Ooh, the great I am. I am. I am what I am. I am the Alethea. I am the... You're, you're an ignorant fool, Mark. Thank you for getting them out of here. You're ignorant. So, that's how you study. You study it one word at a time. You don't study translation because translation has been what he said, forwarded or perverted. You're perverted. You're perverting his word is what you're doing. You are perverting his word. That is the word forward. You are a perverting his word. So that's what you're doing. And you're, you're, you're taking and you're using Translation. There's a difference between translation and transliteration. Transliteration means there's no literal change to the text. You're translating it. So you're speaking a translation like you're going to try to tell me the word devil. The word devil was not in the original text. It was not in the original text. The word demonion or demon is what it said in the original text. But in your milky, watered down, milky, you know, Bible, it says what? That doesn't say the same thing, does it? So I recommend that you study the original text in the original versions that it was written in, the canonized version, right? Because the word daemonion was replaced with the word devil. So it never said devil in the original scripture, but you say devil because that's what you right. It's a milky Bible. Exactly. I just showed you a Bible that's meat and told you how to get the meat. <laughs> so. Cool.
I studied, I am ex-Muslim. Cool. Then you figured it out, mad about you would say, holy second, wait a minute. He said, the only way to the father is through the son. I read in my Quran here that he's only a prophet. Wait a minute. I can't get to. So that means all my buddies who believe in Muhammad are going to go to hell because they don't, they're not going through the new Testament. The only way, you guys listen, the only way to the Father is through the New Testament. We're not under the Old Testament. Eye for an eye. That's Islam. That's Islam. Yep. They don't believe in Christ Jesus. He's the Hamashiach. The Anointed One. Messiah. Mashiach, Messiah, Yahushua, Jesus Christ, the anointed, Hamashiach, the Messiah, they don't believe in him. No, I have plenty of information about Islam. Muhammad, the pedophile, infidels, I've read the Quran. What do you mean I don't know about Islam? I'm telling you and giving you a simple version. They don't believe in Jesus Christ as the Messiah. So they're going to hell. All Islamic people are going to hell because they don't go through the New Testament. The only way through the Father is through the Son. There's no other way. And that is the New Testament. He sent his only begotten Son to pay the bride price. We love being gay. So... All Islamic people, according to the word of God, are going to go to hell because they're not going through the New Testament. So, I've read the Quran. What do you mean I don't know about Islam? I know that they're a bunch of pedophiles, a lot of them, and they do horrible, terrible things. If you read history, they believe in pedophilia. They don't believe in the, in the Messiah, so they're going to hell, according to the word of God. You have to go through the New Testament. He says, let vengeance be mine, saith the Lord. It's not an eye for an eye anymore. And that's what Islamic faith is. It's, it's old Pharisee Testament. Basically, I mean, they don't even believe in the Mashiach, the Messiah. They still believe in an eye for an eye and infidels and all. Sickening. So, but. Um, Oh, okay, hold on. About your God? What do you mean, your your pedophile God there? AIM, the one who doesn't believe in, in, in the Mashiach? Do you think it's okay to lay with children? Do you think it's okay to lay with children? Because I sure know that your, uh, your God says that's okay. That's sickening, just so you know. See, remember I told you they're pagans. They used to eat their kids. They used to do horrible things to their kids, the pagans. So, your Muhammad God um, believes it's okay to do horrible things to children. And so, you're probably going to, you keep continuing on that faith. Don't worry, I won't even try to change you. Oh, 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 so now you're going to justify laying with kids. You hear this crap, guys? Watch this. Watch this stuff. This, 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 uh, foes AIM. Look at this question that they just asked. They're trying to justify pedophilia. Look at that. Look at what they're doing. You're trying to justify pedophilia. You're sick. You're absolutely sick. You're sick. You're filthy, dirty. You're sickening. You justify laying with children. You're sickening, and so does your God. And your God is my God is pulling your God string anyways. Your God is just a little G God. Deity. My God is pulling your God string. Remember, there's only one thing that exists without darkness, and that is the most high. Everything else has darkness in it. Your Muhammad has darkness in it. Your God tells you not to judge. No, my God does not tell me not to judge. My God tells me to judge with righteous judgment and do not condemn. You're a lollipop Christian. The same thing all you lollipop Christians say. Oh, you're not supposed to judge. Yep.
there you go. Another law, not judgmental. It's facts. Now we're supposed to judge Vanessa. We are supposed to judge with righteous judgment. Okay. Do not condemn a man. Judge that shall be judged. Judge somebody like you want to be judged. So that's what the word of God says. The word of God does not tell us not to judge somebody. You're a blasphemer. And you do the works of your father, the devil, by going around. You're a demon because you're distributing lies, fortunes to others. You're a deity, a little G God, a demon. No, you don't have to believe the way I believe. You don't have to believe anything. But that's what the word of God says. You need to believe his word and stop forwarding it and perverting it and twisting it and telling people, oh, you don't, you can't judge somebody. You can't judge somebody. Where does it say in the word of God that you cannot judge somebody? As a matter of fact, it says the complete opposite. You do the works of your father, the devil. You're a demon and you're going around distributing lies. There's multiple places in scripture that it tells us to judge our brothers and sisters. So stop with your lies. You're going around and you're a demon spreading lies because a demon is one who distributes fortunes. So you're acting like a demon. You are. If you go around telling people not to judge people, you are demonic. Because a demon is one who distributes fortunes or lies. So judge not, let less shall be judged. There you go. Don't judge somebody the way that you don't want to be judged. So you judge somebody righteously. Do you even know what you're, you know? So do you understand that, Nash, what you just said? You judge somebody the way you want to be judged. Righteously. It doesn't say do not judge. Does it? Nope. So, stop with your lollipop, cotton candy, Christian. You probably don't even know what a stoning is, do you, Nash? Can you explain a stoning for me? Nash is, everybody look at Nash. Everybody look at Nash. Nash is talking to about throwing stones. We explain to the classroom here. What, what, what Nash, what was a stoning? Can you tell me, explain in just a little detail? What's a stoning? How did that work? No, that's not what that says. <laughs> Come on, Nash. This floor is yours. Tell us what a stoning is. Tell us the very first thing they did when they stoned somebody. Otherwise, get out of here because you're pitching that dumb, dumb, sucker, lollipop, Christian crap in here, and I rebuke it. So tell us what a stoning is, Nash, or leave. Because you said it. Tell us what a stoning is. Okay, so you don't know what a stoning is, so don't, so leave. Or get him out of here. Get Nash out. I don't want him in here. He's pushing that lollipop, Christian crap, and I can't stand it. Difficult is the path that leads to eternal life. Straight is the gate. Narrow is the way. You're supposed to be hated by the world, not loved by the world. You need to go out there and judge the world righteously. We are supposed to judge people righteously. Judge, that shall be judged. He said, don't throw the first stone. Do you even know what a stoning is? You know that 99% of Christians that I talk to have no idea what a stoning is? They don't even have any idea what they did to the Apostle Paul. Because a stoning wasn't just throwing little river rocks at you. That wasn't a stoning. And I guarantee you, Nash had no idea what it was like to be stoned at the time of Christ. And I'm not talking about doing drugs. I'm talking about literally stoned to death. A stoning did not involve little rocks. That's not how it started. It started, they would take you to the high precipice in the land, the highest point in the land, or a building. And they would throw you off of that building or cliff. Precipice is what it was called. Twenty or thirty feet. If that didn't break your neck, then they break out the rocks. You know, not these little stones like this. If that didn't kill you, 
then they would toss those down at you from 20, 30 feet. If you were still moving, then they'd get the boulders like, you know, like the size of bowling balls. And then they would throw those down at you to finish you off. That was a stoning. Not this little, he without sin cast the first stone. That wasn't a stoning. Yes, thank you. 20, that's what they did to the Apostle Paul. That's what they did to the Apostle Paul. They stoned him, threw him off a precipice, threw 20 kilogram stones down at him. Nearly broke every bone in his body. He looked like he was on a camel going 150 miles an hour, hit the side of a palace wall. Yep, got up, 80 years old, got 30 plus years on this old man and stood up and said, we must, you got to imagine every bone in his body was broken, guys, or nearly every bone was in his body. The most high, the father gave him the strength. He stood up and told us we must go through much tribulation to be with the father. We must go through tribulation. Christ himself told us we must endure to the end to be picked up. I bought you from the foundation of the world. I paid the bride price in the flesh for you. I'm going to come back. I'm going to tarry like a bride did. I'm going to go to where my father's at. I'm going to return and I'm going to come back and redeem you. Pick up what I purchased from the foundation of the world. I bought my bride one time. Before any of this started, I, bought, I purchased my bride. Before I ever came in the flesh. I already bought my bride. It's a one-time purchase. There's no such thing as being saved. You cannot be saved. You cannot accept Christ. Christ, the Most High says, if I did not call out to their hearts to seek after me, there are such idolaters that not one of them would. So you are not coming to Christ. He is pulling you to Christ. He is pulling you to him. He chose who he is going to take as his bride from the foundation of the world. And he's going to come back and says, you must endure to the end to be saved. Endure. Endure. Suffering. Long suffering is what the word of God says. So, we must go through tribulation. There will be scoffers. There will be people who will throw shade. There will be people who come preaching another lollipop. You can't judge. I'm going to be raptured. Everybody, God loves everybody. God doesn't love everybody. God hates most people and he's sending them to hell. You don't read the word at all, do you? You must fall for that talking head telling you that God loves everybody and the church is going to get raptured. That's all blasphemy. There's nowhere in the scripture does it ever say that. Not even one time. Doesn't even say the word rapture. Not one single time. And God said that he so loved Jacob who he gave the inheritance, the kingdom, he called Israel. He hated Esau before they were born or either one of them ever done anything on this earth. So don't tell me God loves everybody. You're being blasphemous and you're a demon. Go around telling people that God loves everybody. You're being a demon. You're distributing lies. God does not love everybody. There's nowhere in the word does it say rapture. Nobody's getting out of here early. You'll be changed in the twinkling of an eye. Believe. Hey, listen, you lollipop Christian. Look, look at this. Look at this. It says, hey, God says if you believe, you're, being, you're a false teacher. Do you know that believe is not a thought in your head? Do you know that believe is not a thought in your head? That person used 316, no, believe. Oh, well, he said, if you believe, you think it's what you think, don't you? Have you ever studied the Babylonian, the text, the phonics of any of this stuff? You don't. You do the works of your father, the devil. You have forwarded the word of God. You perverted it. You're giving it your own spin. I'm telling you what the word says. I'm telling you what the definitions are. I give you the Greek definitions. I give you the Hebrew definitions.
So God doesn't love everybody. God hates most people and he's sending them to hell, the place of no knowledge. So just sit around and don't do anything when God tells you be not partakers in their unfruitful works of darkness, yet expose them, rebuke them. So I'm not going to sit there and let people throw the word of God, pervert it. Well, I, I, you don't have to agree with what I'm saying. It's in his scripture. He says, enter through the straight gate. For wide is the path and broad is the way. Broad is the way. This is in the book of Matthew. That leads to hell. No, Brad, cannabis is God's medicine. So he's not going to, if you overuse it, just like anything, moderation. Cannabis is God's medicine. This is God's money and cannabinoids. You have cannabinoids in your body, even if you do not use cannabis. How's that a possible? How is that even possible? So don't throw shade on God's medicine either, please. It's not what goes in a man that defiles a man. It's what comes out of him. So. Well, Michael, I'm not, a, I'm not advocating any drug usage, but that was used widely used for 40 plus years in this country before they made cannabis illegal. It was in the soda for crying out loud. They described it for everything, everything. Headaches, nausea, woman had uh, menstrual pains. They, they subscribe that to you. It's the cut that hurts people, guys. And I'm not advocating any drug usage. I don't put drugs in my body. Oh, wait. Caffeine. That's a drug. Okay, so somebody said... Okay, so then I've been lied to about being saved. So how do I actually get saved? Okay, good question, Shadon. Shadon, there's no such thing as being saved. I will answer that question. You're saved from the foundation of the world. One time possession. One time. God purchased his bride from the foundation of the world. Before any of this was ever written, he already knew his bride, who they would be. He already knew there'd be an Old Testament. He already knew they would mess that up. He already knew he would come back in the flesh for all the sins of the world to save all flesh, not everybody. Because remember, it was only the house of Aaron and the Levites. That's it. You weren't even entered into the temple. The law didn't apply to you if you were a Gentile. That's like King Charles and his first, you know, that's actually the opposite, but his, his begotten, one begotten, his first cousin. That's it. That's only the people that let God into his church. Otherwise, you were a Gentile and you could pound sand, kick rocks. God did not let you in and you were not saved by salvation. Right? Because he had not come back in the flesh. No, hey, Ewok, dispersing weight's fine. That's my brother. Uh, I'm not sure. I wasn't reading. Saved is a process of being delivered. Imagine this lifeguard swimming out to save your drowning butt. So, yeah, don't, don't. Uh, yeah, no, dispersing weight is fine. He, yeah, he's fine. Hey, Ewok, son, just let him, let him, let, he's, he's a brother from Grace and Truth Ministries, okay? Um Dispersing weight is, he can, he's not going to say anything. Dispersing weight, Elijah's not going to put anything in this chat. I'm not concerned about anything that he puts. He is from Grace and Truth Ministries, and he's a little fired up like me right now because he understands, you know, what I'm, uh, what I'm explaining here. So the word saved. Okay, what, just let him say whatever he wants. He can put a million, I won't over, he can even spam the chat because nothing he says is not going to be from Brother Jim 
or from in the Hados. It'll be in the same narrow way. So I appreciate it. That's fine. Um, so um, dispersing weight has been a big, huge. This channel would not even be going right now, Elijah, if it wasn't for dispersing weight. It wouldn't. I wouldn't even be online right now. He paid for my phone bill this month. So we're live right now because of dispersing weight and his gift. And when he sent that gift, he said it was from God. So thank you, Ewok. I appreciate it. Keep doing your thing. Appreciate it. Okay. Saved is the word sozo. Okay. And that it means to be carried from a beginning point to an ending point. Okay. Beginning point to an ending point. To be saved, he tells us we must endure to the end to be saved. So you you can't be saved anywhere along your life because you are already purchased from the foundation of the world. It was a one-time purchase. One-time purchase. Through the apostle Romans 8 and 29, he tells us, I also did foreknow. I also did foreknow. That is the Greek word for prognosko. Prognosko is the word foreknow. Okay? So he said, I also did foreknow who I did predestine, the ones that I pulled from the darkness. The word predestine is the word proharizo. In the Greek, that means to be in prison and to be pulled into the horizon. The channel name is predestined for light. Light. They would call the light came up from the horizon. The sun would rise. And it was so he said, I also did foreknow who I did predestined to conform to the image of Christ. He's going to pull us from our sin to be the division of day and night, dark and light, dark and light. I'm going to pull those that are from darkness into the horizon. Into the horizon, into the light. So he said, I also did foreknow who I did predestine to conform to the image of Christ. So I already knew who would conform to my image. Those are the ones that love me. Remember, he was asking Peter, Peter. Or he was telling Peter, he wasn't asking. Remember, he told Peter, he said, I'm not asking you if you phileo me, Peter. Do you love me? Do you got me? Are you walking and following in my commandments? Second John and six, are you doing what I ask you? Are you carrying your cross? Are you being condemned by the world? Are you being hated by the world? I'm not asking you if you, you're fond of, of, of this or that, or you like Coke and you like Pepsi, or you like Ford and you like Chevy, or you like baptism and you like... Presbyterian, I'm not asking you what your preference is, what you have an affection for, Peter. That's the word phileo. I'm not asking you if you phileo me, Peter. Do you love me? Do you agape me, Peter? Are you walking and following in my commandments? So God is not this other easy peasy, other jeezy. The word believe is not a thought in your head, but an actual verb. It is a noun. So all these gummy bear, lollipop, you know, well, I believe, well, I believe, um, hold on. I believe too. Hold on here. Hold on a second here. I believe. See, I, I bought this Jesus here. I bought this Jesus 20 years ago. Hold on. Let me dust that off. I put it, I bought C 20 years ago. I believe. See that? I believe I bought some Jesus 20 years ago. Is this belief? No, a belief is actual uh, a verb. So it's not a thought in your head. So when John 6, 316 says, if you believe, you'll be saved. If you believe, not if you believe. Faith without works is dead. Right? So we have to put legs on our faith. It's not our works that get us to heaven. It is the faith but we have to put legs on faith. So faith without works is dead. So do you 316 Jesus? My 316 Jesus, huh? Piss on that Jesus, eh? Piss on him. Blasphemy Jesus. Hold on. I believe, see? Get out of here. That's not Jesus. Jesus said, who shall ever come after me? Let them deny themselves. Take up your cross daily daily cross and follow after me 
conform to my image. You must endure to the end to be saved. I also did foreknow who I did predestine to conform to the image of Christ Jesus. Every day, Jesus, every day, Sabbath. I don't ever not do this. This is what I've done for decades. I said, you can't set down your cross. Who shall ever come after me? Stop being an idolater. Ito latrio, latrio to serve, ito to see. Serve self, idolatry. Who shall ever come after me? Let them deny themselves. Take up your cross daily. You can't set it down. Take up your cross daily and follow after me. Follow. You must conform to the image of Christ. You must endure to the end. The Apostle Paul said we must go through much tribulation to be with the Father. Suffering. Long-suffering. Long-suffering. Pain. You must be hated by the world. Not loved by the world. Hated. If you are loved by the world, you'll be hated by my Father. You cannot be loved by this world. He said it'd be easier for a rich man or a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than a rich man through the gates of heaven. So good luck going after the things of this world. Be in the world, but be not of this world. Oh, you still have to be here, but you got to endure to the end to be picked up. See, the word salvation is, is the word saved. Saved is the word sozo in the Greek. I recommend you study the text. In the original text, it was written to find the definition. If you leave the definition, you leave the truth. The definition of sozo or saved is to be carried from a beginning point to an ending point. You must endure to the end to be saved. You are already bought. Nobody can be saved. Nobody's saving anybody. I can't save anybody. Priests, pastors, deacons, reverends are not saving anybody. That's blasphemy. If I can call out anyone that's one of these preachers or pastors that's saving, I would call them out to right to their face and tell them, you do the works of your father, the devil. You are sitting there telling people that they can be saved. Like they came to Christ and they were saved because they accepted Christ. There's no such thing as accepting Christ. You cannot accept Christ. That's blasphemy. That's more of this modern day Babylonian new mystery religion. God says, if I did not call out to their hearts to seek after me, they are such idolaters that not one of them would. Not one of them. So he calls us to him. See? No such thing as being saved. You were purchased. At, if you put money in a bank and it's there later, you come back and pick up that money, you saved it. A child can understand that. You're a purchased possession from the foundation of the world. He said he created vessels of wrath fitted for destruction, goats, from the foundation of the world and vessels of mercy. The ones he chose from the foundation of the world. And he would come back and he would pick up his purchase possession. He paid the bride price for all flesh. Used to just be the house of Aaron and the Levites. Now he doesn't care if you're a murderer. A mass murderer. Christ does not care if you're a mass murderer. He covered your sins. He doesn't care if you're a Pharisee. A tax collector. Wait a minute. What did he just say? Yeah. He doesn't care if you're a mass murderer. He rebukes. Remember Paul on the road to Damascus? Rebuked his heart, huh? And he was a Pharisee and a mass murderer of Christians. Probably the worst thing you could do is be a tax collector. Remember he went into the church? Oh, you've turned my father's house into a den of thieves. Fastened the cord and started whipping people. Got physical over that. Right? Got physical over that. So does that sound like the other easy peasy, you can do whatever you want, Jeezy, that's not Christ? We must conform to his image. We must point out people who are doing the... uh you know, the works of, of this other, I believe, one-stop shop. You cannot come off this cross, brothers and sisters, 
You must bear this cross daily. Who shall ever come after me? Let them deny themselves, take up their cross, follow after me in the book of Luke, in the book of, or excuse me, in the book of Matthew. In the book of Luke, it says, who shall ever be my disciple? You can't be his disciple if you cannot learn this gospel and you're not walking and following his commandments. You're not his disciple. So God chose who he wanted from the foundation of the world. Because again, it used to be, used to be the house of Aaron and the Levites, but he came back to pay the price for all flesh and cover all sins for his bride. Not the people he's sending to hell. He doesn't love them. They don't love him. He doesn't love them. He hates them. Just like Esau, who he didn't give the inheritance and he gave Jacob, who later became Israel, he gave the inheritance. And proof that your works don't mean anything in this life because Esau was a man going after God. Look at Esau's life. Look at Jacob. He was a poop stick and hard to deal with for God. But he gave him the inheritance in Israel, didn't he? Who he later called Israel. So I guess it doesn't matter. Your works are not going to get you there, are they? Faith, brothers and sisters, we must have undying faith, like Daniel in the lion's den. Faith without works is dead. God only chose the house of Aaron and the Levites in the Old Testament, but he came back to cover all flesh, brothers and sisters, because one white, one black, one brown, and one red, and one yellow meant all flesh. But not everybody. Oh, yes, brothers, that's the good news of the coming of the king. He came back with the New Testament. He said, let vengeance be mine, saith the Lord. The meek will inherit the earth. He must be wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove. Meek, not weak, meek will inherit the earth. Jacob, who later became Israel, he gave the inheritance. So God does not love everybody. God only loves his bride, the ones he chose for the foundation of the world, the ones he will call out. He said, I created those of mercy from the foundation of the world, and I will call their names out in the book of life, the ones that I paid the price for. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the path. Wide is the path. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the path and broad is the way that leads to hell. Eternal damnation, eternal destruction. And there are many, most who enter by that gate, the ones that God hates. For straight is the gate and narrow is the path. Difficult is the path that leads to eternal life. And there are only gods, just like tells us in the book of Luke, fear not, only gods flock, little teeny tiny puny flock. God's bride is a small bride, a small flock. Most people are going to hell. According to God. If you don't like what I'm telling you, read the, the book in the book of Matthew. Most people go to hell. That's right. It'd be easier for a camel, a camel. There's camel. There's a wise men riding a camel. It'd be easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than the rich man through the gates of heaven. So you cannot be loved by this world. You must be carrying your cross every single day. Every single day. You must take up your cross daily. You can't set it down and follow after me. And you get your cross by being hated by the world, by preaching this gospel that I'm preaching and teaching you now. Yeah, tattoos. Yeehaw! You have any tattoos you can minister with? He said there would be signs in the stars and in the sun. And in the moon, these tattoos aren't for me. These tattoos I teach with the most high, the most high. He is not dwell in temples made by hands. Correct. So these tattoos that I've chose to mark my body with, I teach. It's not what goes in a man that defiles a man or a woman. It's what comes. It's what comes out of them. So go ahead and throw shade, but guarantee you ain't going to get anywhere. The most high knows exactly what I've done with these tattoos. So I teach with them. So what kind of tattoos do you have? Kevin, stop spelling Christ's name in the Hebrew with vowels because you look very ignorant. Okay. You look really ignorant. If you were to spell his name in Hebrew with a Y, don't put any vowels. There's no A, E, I, O's, or U's in Scripture. Okay? Just so you know. So, Because I, I don't know who you're referring to. Uh, I just said, like I said, there's no vowels in Hebrew. So if you study the Hebrew, I got it right here. I got it here. 
Hebrew. Notice no vowels. No vowels in the Hebrew. No e, i's, or u's. None. So don't don't put his name as Yeshua, Yahushua, Yahweh. That's not biblically even correct. There is some understanding and learning, but <laughs> you know, um, I'm just trying to explain. You know, you, you, you threw one thing out there, but if you really want to throw and, and use some judgment, use the original because I don't have any problems with you judging anybody. Righteously judge people. Come in here and judge everybody in here righteously. You know what I'm saying? So that's not, uh, that's not, uh, it's not wrong to judge people. Okay. So you can judge me, but um, please use the correct biblical terms. If you want to try to teach somebody something, it would probably be better to actually use the correct biblical text. So if you're going to use Hebrew, his Hebrew name, I would recommend. So you might gain a little more validity if you'd actually leave those vowels out because they weren't even written in scripture. Okay. Hopefully that'll help you. So, um, all right, guys, give me a minute here. I'm gonna go check on my puppies. My fire went out. Darn it. I let the fire go out. I've been on here for six and a half hours. You guys are awesome. 151 people, man. 29 likes. I appreciate it guys. Um, just so you know, um, I'm not trying to change any of you at all i'm not trying to change a goat into a sheep or a sheep into a goat so don't think i'm trying to change you god is going to already chose he already chose who he wants he chose that from the foundation of the world so i'm not trying to make you go anywhere or influence you in any way you take this the way you want it and you discern all things because he says believe no man right believe no man no believe no man that's not righteous if you didn't believe the no man, then we wouldn't have the Apostle Paul. And how many books would we not have in Scripture? Cool. Rob D., come back. You know, if you can, I'll, I always keep going over the same thing. I go over this map. I go over the, the pagan festivals, all the rituals, the history. Obviously, been studied in the historical and biblical record. I don't know everything. That's why I still have books. That's why I still study every day. Where's my Bible? There's a stack of them right there, sitting right next to me. What are you talking about? <laughs> is that by? Is that what you're studying out of? I've been I've been streaming every day. There we go. When I return, no one will know my name. I will have a new name. Hallelujah. Well, no, it's right here. I don't need it. It's written on my heart. And so I know the scripture. I don't need to. I have it right here, but I. it's written on my heart. So, um, and I'm still, he's still revealing more and more to me every day. I'm always in a study mode, brothers and sisters. Just because I know these things doesn't mean that I cannot go and recruit the word. We always are supposed to go back and study the word over and over again. And it, it can be corrected. Correct? The word of God can be corrected. So, Josh, do do I agape Yahweh, Shiloh in the flesh? I don't know. I walk and follow in his commandments. Yeah, I have tattoos, lots of tattoos, many tattoos. Yes, I do. What's your point? Am I going to go to hell because I have tattoos? Because I've marked my body or cut my body? Is that what you're telling me? That these tattoos, I have no validity because I have tattoos? Do you have any idea what these tattoos are? Probably not, huh? You're just judging me by my cover, aren't you? And he tells us not to judge a man by their outerly appearance, correct? <gasps> Boom, shakalaka. You just got absolutely pummeled with the word of God. It just crumbled you, didn't it? Like ashes under my feet. I'll make you my footstool. If you try to come against this word, I'll reprove it with the word of God. I won't give you my opinion. I'll give you what the word of God says. Oh, yeah. 
no weapon formed against you will prosper. Go ahead and spring your fiery darts at me. So I use my tattoos to teach, okay? I have spent a lot of money and a lot of time so that I can teach. So it's not what that goes in a man that defiles him. It's what comes out of him, okay? We're not under that covenant. You sound like the Old Testament. You sound like a Pharisee. Um, so we're not under that covenant. He fulfilled the law and he made a New Testament. We're under the New Testament, the New Covenant. The New Testament. He was the will. He he wrote that he was the testor of that will, was he not? He's the one who wrote that will. Yes, he did. He made amendments to that Old Testament. Can you go kill if somebody comes and kills your sister right now? Could you go kill their sister back? Is it can you go steal from somebody? Oh, he didn't abolish the law. He fulfilled the law. He made amendments. He made a New Testament. A New Testament. A living will. He was the testor of the will, and he made amendments to that Old Testament. Used to be an eye for an eye, and now he says, let vengeance be mine, saith the Lord. Correct? Let vengeance be mine, saith the Lord. Right? We're under a new covenant. The meek covenant will inherit the earth. Wise as a serpent, gentle as a dove. All flesh is saved, brothers and sisters, those that will walk and follow in his commandments. He said through his apostle, who shall ever be my disciple, Luke, take up your cross and follow after me. We're supposed to die daily, every single day, Carson. Every day, spiritual death. That's right. No, I'm not a Calvinist. Calvinists think children go to hell. Just because I teach predestination doesn't mean I'm a Calvinist. I am no denomination. Yep, we're all we're all filthy rags. I call myself a believer in the Aletheia, in the Ruach Hokadesh. I believe in the Word of God by definition. I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross on a stake. You disagree with the fact that we're predestined. Well, cool. That's all right. Then you're a vessel of wrath fitted for destruction from the foundation of the world. And you're going to go to hell. It doesn't matter what you think or you believe because believe is not a thought in your head. It's a verb. So it doesn't matter what you believe. Thanks but for your opinion, but opinions are like this hole that I got my backside. Everybody's got one. Belief is a verb. Not a thought in your head. So let's correct that real quick. And then that hole in your uh, backside might close up. He said through his apostle Paul, I also did for know who I did predestined to conform to the image of Christ. So I won't cast my pearls before swine. If you don't believe in predestination, then you don't believe in God. And you do the works of your father, the devil, because everything he said in that book is the Aletheia through definition. So if he said through his apostle Paul that he predestined his elect and you don't believe that, then you're a goat. You're a vessel of wrath fitted for destruction. You will not fit through the narrow gate. And he said, I also believe I also did foreknow who I did predestine to con conform to my image. So you're probably not conforming to his image. You're probably not taking up your cross daily. Who shall ever come after me? Let them deny themselves, take up their cross daily and follow after me. That's probably not you. Who shall ever be my disciple? You ain't willing to learn predestination. You're a vessel of wrath fitted for destruction from the foundation of the world, and you're going to hell. Because if you don't believe in predestination, only those that he predestined are the ones he's going to call out in the book of life, that Lamb's book of life. Those are the ones he predestined. What do you mean you don't believe in predestination? Good for you. That's nice. I don't care what you believe. Believe is not a thought in your head. Belief is not a noun. It's a verb. You're very confused, very, very perverted and twisted, or Christ would say forwarded. And if you don't get this and you don't listen to this and you don't come out of her, my people, you don't, you don't believe in predestination, then I rebuke you. I only have to tell you two times and I don't have to tell you anymore. I've done my job. I love my enemy like I love my neighbor. I'm judging you with righteous judgment. 
I'm not condemning you. I'm telling you what he said. God created vessels of wrath and vessels of mercy from the foundation of the world. Vessels of wrath are fitted for destruction and they will go to the abyss. His predestined, the ones he, if you don't believe in predestination, you don't even know what it means. How about this? How about you define what the word predestination means? Give me the Greek meaning of it first. Give me the Greek definition of it. Give, give me the definition of predestination. If you don't believe in predestination, it's what I teach. It's the name of the channel. So if you don't believe in it, why did you even click on it? Pretty interesting, you know? How about, how about what is the definition of predestination? Maybe if you listen to the definition, you might understand what he means, what predestination means. Prohorizo is the Greek word for predestination. And it means to be predetermined for the horizon or the light. Prohorizo. Horizo is the horizon. Those that he predetermined, he pulled them from prison. The division of day and night, dark and light. Those he pulls from darkness into the horizo, into the light. Those he chooses to pull from their sins into his light. Prohorizo. Yes, everybody sends themselves to hell. God gives people self-will, not free will, self-will to choose not to follow in his commandments, and they send themselves to hell. Exactly. Beautiful. Probably didn't even know what you're saying. I came because I believe you're a false teacher who could be sending people to eternal death. Cool. That's fine. Uh, you can believe whatever you want, Fizzy. Um, but do you believe in predestination, Fizzy? You believe I'm a false teacher because I'm teaching people predestination and bringing them to the New Testament? Is it me doing it or is God doing it? Am I doing this or are you doing it? Did you do this in this thing? You came in here or did God bring you in here? God brought you in here. Oh, because predestination is false. Okay, get him out of here, guys. <laughs> get him out of here. Bye, Fizzy. Don't ever come back here. You remind me of soda, which is toxic. And uh, every time I see you with your bubbly little Jesus in here, I'll make sure that we get you out of here. Um, you're, sp you're spitting milky Jesus is what you are. Milky watered down Jesus. Oh, God loves everybody. We're going to get raptured out of here. I went to church on Sunday. See, my friend saw me. I believe. John 3, 16. I believe. I believe in Jesus. That's not Christ. It's not who Christ is. Christ said we must go through suffering. We must go through long suffering. We must go through tribulation. We must be narrowed. Who shall ever come after me? Let them deny themselves. Does that sound like the easy peasy other Jeezy? No, that's a denying yourself. The things that you want to do in this world. Does that sound like you get to do what you want? Oh, he's so merciful and... You don't even know how to teach the gospel. You wouldn't even know historical or biblical record and you spew out venom. Could you even explain how God is merciful and he covered all sin? No, you can't. No, you can't. You can't teach it. You don't know it. It's not in your heart. He didn't reveal it to you. I can make it simple. The house of Aaron and the Levites. Otherwise, you're a Gentile and you could pound sand, kick rocks, talk to the hand. You weren't coming in my church. Right? Yeah. If you were not related to the house of Aaron or Levite, you couldn't even enter in the temple. The 613 law statutes commandments didn't even apply to you. You could eat what you want. Grow your land as long as you want. You didn't need to keep the sabbatical years. You weren't entering the church. You were not saved by grace or salvation because he hadn't come back to save all flesh. You were under the 613 law statutes commandments the house of Aaron and the Levites, the coming of the good news. That's right, that Christ came back to save all flesh, not just the house of Aaron and Levites. Jews, Gentiles, man, woman, devil, black, white, red, brown, yellow, it doesn't matter, all flesh, but just a little bit of all flesh this time. That's the good news, and people can't even teach that. That is the good news of the coming of the king, that he came back to save all flesh. That's right, one black white, one brown, one red, and one yellow meant all flesh. There's 12 eggs to one dozen, correct? To the whole, all flesh was saved by Christ. Hallelujah. But not everybody. 
Remember, it just used to be the house of Aaron and the Levites. It's not even that hard. A child can understand it. A child can understand what I'm saying. But you with your bills and your ex-wife or your ex-boyfriend, it's that or the other. It's, it's, it's tough, I know. we got a whole head full of stuff and it makes it hard. But if you're going to be his disciple, as he says in the book of Luke, you have to learn these things and you have to do these things. Nobody's angry. You don't know the difference between passion and anger. Pound sand with your little easy peasy cotton candy sex orgy Jesus. Your Christmas orgy Jesus, okay? That's the Jesus that most people on this rock worship. The orgy Jesus, the Mithra Jesus. So, <laughs> well, he repents us though. So this is the this is the this is not the other Jesus. The Apostle Paul warned, many will come in my name. Right? No, that's Christ Himself oh, saying they are Christ, and they'll be deceived. Even Christ himself warned you of another Jesus, didn't he? They'll say, I'm in the desert. Don't go there. They'll say, I'm in the secret chambers. Don't go there. You were warned. The apostle Paul said, they will come preaching another gospel that I did not preach and speaking the orgy sex King Jesus. Yep. The blasphemy, mass A crackers and grapefruit Jesus, the Christian Jesus. Yes, the Christian sex orgy Jesus. I rebuke the Christian Jesus. He does his works of the father, the devil, the demonion. He distributes lies and fortunes to others. Yes, he does. He, because the orgy Jesus sets there and mimics Christ and does all the same wonders and performs all the same miracles has salvation, has houses made by hands, has saved, has baptized. Oh, it looks just like Christ, doesn't it? He warned you of that Christ. But that's not the Christ of the, of, of the Old Testament who came back to save all flesh. The Aleph, the one that said, Lot, get your wife and get out of town. I'm bringing the fire. Now, I've seen enough of the hokey pokey turn yourself around. Uh-uh. Get out of Dodge. He came back, brothers and sisters, to save all flesh. But not everybody. Not everybody. Yeah, but see, well, there you go with your lollipop Jesus there. But all those who believe, would you like to say... What the word believe is? See, you think believe is a thought in your head there, uh, Sassin. But guess what, Sassin? Believe is not a thought in your head. Nope. Belief is not a thought in your head, is it? No, it's not. It's a verb. <gasps> you stand corrected. You stand corrected. See, belief isn't a thought in your head, is it? Better study the phonics. So that's your John 3.16 Jesus, okay? Just so you know, that's the John 3.16 Jesus. Everybody, but, oh, well, I, I was saved and this pastor saved me and, uh, and I accepted Christ and I got baptized in water. That's not baptism. Baptism is not in water. Baptism is in blood, pitch, stain, or a dye. Water baptism is not real baptism. That's Christ baptized John and John baptized Christ so they would go by their halakha. They'd have to listen to him because he went by their, their oral law. But baptism, by definition, is not in water. I encourage you to look up the word baptism. You're not going to find water in it. There's no such thing as a water baptism. So if you've been water baptized, well, guess what? You ain't been baptized because that's not a baptism. It's like repentance or salvation. It's a process. You must be completely overcome. That's right. You have to be baptized in the fire. It's spiritual now, so it doesn't even matter if it's blood or water. Neither of those are. That was all nailed to the tree. Cursed he who hanged it from the tree when they took him down from the tree after they crucified him. Yoked him and then nailed him to a, to a, a stake. 
when they took him down from the tree. So that's not the other Jesus, guys. The I believe in Jesus and I bought uh, I bought some belief 20 years ago and see, I believe I put it on a shelf there. That is not Christ Jesus. No, it's not by water. That's not the definition. You're not looking up. You're looking up the new definition. It's to be, the word is bapto or baptizo. You didn't look that up, did you? You just looked up the translation. You didn't go back to the lexicon, did you? No, you didn't. You looked up a translation, didn't you? Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Because you're not going to find water in the original. Bapto or baptizo is the word in the original text, huh? <gasps> You didn't look that one up, did you? Nope. I'd encourage you to look things up in the original text, guys, because translation is just absolutely uh, forwarded and perverted the word of God. So if you'll look it up in its original text, bapto or baptizo is to be covered with a pitch stain, red dye, or blood. It doesn't say water. And you must be completely overcome. So you can't just dip yourself in water and be baptized. You must be completely overcome. And let me give an example. A cucumber. Doom, 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 doom. Ba -do -do -do. Oh. Is that been baptized? Is that cucumber turned into a pickle yet? Is it been completely overcome? Is it a pickle? Oh, let's try that again. Well, let's go get you double baptized in water. Let's do this every day. Are you going to turn into a pickle? If I leave you down there for a couple minutes every day, you can get baptized in water every single day, can't you? <gasps> oh, my God. I love baptism so much. I just love it. I love it. That's not a baptism. You have to be completely overcome to be baptized. It's like repentance. Or salvation, you must endure to the end. It's a process. It's not just a dipping. That's not a that's not a baptism. A baptism is to be completely overcome. You must stay in the fiery trials, long suffering, hated by the world. Carry your cross. To, oh, we're starting to get somewhere now, huh? We just didn't pull you back out of the old no cucumber back out of the. Well, we left you down there in the fiery trials and the suffering and the daily cross and the well now that's actually starting to penetrate that skin huh right oh yeah we're gonna keep you down there no coming out of there yet the only way you can be baptized in water is to drown to drown literally to drown to death that would be a water baptism because you were completely overcome that's what they call the baptism. So if I hold you down in the brine, does anybody still make pickles any, anymore? Or we all just go to the store and buy the blastics, you know, the crunch. Anybody make pickles? Because you must, you must be pushed down into the fiery trials, into the tribulation, into the suffering into the brine it's a process it, it's probably at least two to three weeks to make a pickle before it out the over skin becomes overcome the brine becomes overcome it starts it penetrating the inside of that cucumber all the way down completely overcome now i pulled you out pickle Hey, Pickle. Hey, psst. Hey, Pickle, I'm talking to you. It's, I, I know it's tough. No, there's no going back to being a cucumber anymore. You're a pickle now. No, I'm sorry. There is no going back to being a cucumber. You have been overcome. Welcome to being a pickle. That's a baptism, brothers and sisters. That would be an example or a parable of a true baptism. You must be completely overcome. And once you become a pickle, there's no going back to being a cucumber. Sorry, pickle. I know it's a little intimidating, but you went through the trials and the fire. Welcome, my pickles.
So you weren't baptized because you were baptized in water. So you weren't baptized and you hate God. That's so, so what you, God created you as a vessel wrath fitted for destruction. Good for you. So do we understand what baptism is now? Baptism was, 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 a uh, the tradition of dipping a water before they would enter into the church. The Pharisees took this tradition like you had to offer two turtle doves at the altar. You had to be circumcised to the flesh and you had to be dipped in water. That was how to get into the nation of Israel. That was their vetting process like Ellis Island. Right? Before you came into America, there was a vetting process. Well, they created their halakha, their halakha, which was their oral law and their Haggadah, their, their written law, their traditionary law. And in their Halakha, they perverted baptism. This hand dipping of water and perverted that into what we know is, is water baptism. But that's not a baptism by definition. Oh, but John baptized Jesus in the water and Jesus baptized John, Tracy. I know. Do you know why? Have you ever looked into why they why he baptized him? So they would go by the halakha, so they'd have to listen to him. So they'd have to listen to Christ. Christ is very smart. Cool, the pickle analogy doesn't work here. Okay, bye. See ya. I can't believe I just cast my pearls before swine, but I'll make sure I don't do that again. So... No such thing as baptism in water. No such thing as free will. No such thing as accepting Christ. You can't accept Christ. You cannot be saved. Nobody can save you. No priest, no pastor, no deacon, no reverend, no teacher, no man. You can't save yourself. There's no such thing as accepting Christ. All this is blasphemy. And all this is this modern day gummy bear. You know, I call them lollipop Christians, right? They, they, it's sweet. You put it in their mouth. And, and it's sweet. And then they don't ask any questions, right? They don't ask any questions. Get that sweet lollipop in their mouth. And then I'm like, hey, don't worry about it, dumb dumb. <laughs> I got another one for you. When this runs out, hey, sucker, don't worry about it. I got plenty of sweet things for you. Stick in your mouth and don't discern anything. That's what most of these Christians are in this day and age. Presbyterians, Baptists. I don't care what they call their denomination. They're all pagans. They believe in all these fallacies. And 99% of all these denominations bring tree and grove and owl worship into their houses made by hands and into their homes. So they're pagans. 99% of religions are pagan already showed you up on the board how they are so they do their works of the father the devil the devil they do the works of the father the devil daemonion remember it didn't say devil it said the word demon oh but you're reading that milky watered down kjv version aren't you from your motel six you got there so this is not the watered down version brothers and sisters this is the meat this is the meat that he wants us to eat from. Malachi, not the other watered down version of scripture. So everybody will scoff and throw shade at me, but guys, it doesn't matter. I'm not, I'm not going to come off. These can't change this gospel. Through definition, it cannot be. It can't be changed. It's infallible. So the trolls don't hurt me. They don't bother me at all. I know that everybody comes in here that's throwing shade. God already has a path for them. I'm not going to try to change a single one of them. God already chose the path for everybody from the foundation of the world. And if you believe anything else, I rebuke you. You're a demon and you're an idolater. Well, you're an idolater because you're distributing lies to yourself in opposition. You're an antichrist because you're either with Christ and you either agape. Remember, I'm not asking you if you phileo me, Peter. Do you love me? Are you walking and following in my commandments? You're either with Christ or you're an antichrist. Or you're lukewarm. You've been drunk, punched drunk in the spirit because you believe this sweet doctrine, the other Jesus and the other gospel. 
and you mix that with your sin, you become punch drunk on the cares of this world. That's what he said. I'm going to throw the lukewarm Christians into the lake of fire with the hypocrites and the unbelievers. That's right. Yep. So you can know everything in that scripture. You can say every book, you can quote every scripture, but if you ain't living it, then you're just a hip hop. That's a hypocrite, right? Not even an unbeliever. So most people believe that other Jesus, unfortunately, and they've fallen under this great delusion, the great falling away that it says in scripture, there'll be a great falling away from my word. And unfortunately, most people worship the other Jesus, the apostle Paul warned us of. So it's not easy, guys. They will scoff at you for teaching this gospel. Yeah, you believe you're eating pizza, Taylor Swift, but you think belief is a, is a thought in your head. And it's not a thought in your head. It's an actual verb. So it's not what you think. You have been perverted and your mind is in some other place because you think belief is something that's in your head. It's not in your head. <laughs> verb, not noun. Never go back and study the phonics it's called babble for a reason. <laughs> so. Forgive them for they know what they do. Okay, cool. That's right, though, Jake. But I can't bring anybody to, Jake, I can't bring anybody to Jesus. I can't change anybody. I'm not in here trying to change anybody. I'm just in here teaching you the gospel, showing you what the other Jesus is, showing you the difference between the two. Most people that call themselves Christians do not know I can walk up to 98% of Christians, Presbyterians, Mormons, Baptists, Southern Baptists, I don't care which denomination you put on them, and tell them there's two Jesuses in the Bible, and they'll look at me like I'm crazy. I can say, hey, did you know there's two Jesuses in the Bible? Really? 98% of Christians do not know about the other Jesus. They don't. I don't care what their denomination is, right? Make sense? That's right. Planting the seeds. Proud Indian Chinese. Yeah, I'm just here doing, I'm here taking up my cross, Ryan. I'm just doing what he tells me to do. Who shall ever come after me? Let them deny themselves, take up your cross and follow after me. Right? Be not Ephesians, the book of Ephesians 5. Be not partakers in their unfruitful works of darkness, yet expose them. That's what I'm here doing. I'm exposing the other Jesus that people don't even know exist. That most people, the other Jesus is the one that they celebrate, the Christmas Jesus, the orgy sex Jesus, the one they celebrate his birth date on December 25th, when Christ was born, when the sheep were in the pasture, there's no way Christ was born in December. He tells us in the book of Cleastic 7 and 1 not to celebrate birth dates. He'd actually tell us it'd be better to celebrate our death than our birth. There was only two birth dates in all of scripture. Two birth dates in all of scripture. One of them was King Herod. He was trying to kill Christ. So that's the other Jesus that we were warned about. The, all, all you God loves everybody. That's the other Jesus. God does not love everybody. God only loves his bride, and he's sending most people to hell. Spitting that God loves everybody is the other Jesus. The other Jesus goes around and tells people not to judge people. You're not supposed to judge anybody. That's the other Jesus. The Christmas Jesus. No. Christ was, was born in December 2001. That's sickening. I'm just going to get you out of here because I ain't going to say anything else to you. You're a freaking Pharisee and a, you works your father of the devil. So now that that person is done splitting their blasphemies, he was born in Bethlehem. 
But there's no disputing where he was born. He was born as David was born in Bethlehem. David declared him the Lamb of God. David was born in Bethlehem. He was born when the sheep were in the pasture. See ya, pound sand, kick rocks, adios, arrivederci, burrito. If you study Israel and find out that in the, in the nation of Israel, because that's where Christ was born, he was born of Bethlehem, not of Nazareth, declared the Lamb of God. David declared him the Lamb of God. Aries the Ram. From the house of, he came from the house of David, right? He sprang out of Judah, the lion from the tribe of Judah. So if you'll study Israel, I'm a sheep farmer. I'm a sheep farmer. I raise sheep. I have had sheep. I don't have any here. I raise sheep. This is a very similar climate to Israel. I live in a very similar climate to, to Israel. The sheep get put up in the months of October, November, and December because of the rains and the mold that they can get on their skin and the, the wool. So there's no way Christ Jesus was born in the month of October, November, or December. There's no way. It's not possible. He was born when the sheep were in the pasture. Okay? So I don't care when he was born. It doesn't matter. We're not even supposed to celebrate his birth. He tells us in the book of Ecclesiastes 7 and 1, it'd be better to celebrate our death than our birth. So we're not supposed to celebrate birthdays at all. They didn't have birth dates at the time of Christ. The only birth date that I can think that's mentioned would be the birth of the Mithra sun god after the seven-day orgy. The seven-day sex festival from the 17th to the 24th where they ate the king of the Saturnalia, sacrificed him, and ate him. That led up to December 25th, which was the birth of their sun god, Mithra, the one that Donald Trump has his whole house decorated with. Satan. Yes, Donald Trump has his house decorated with Satan. Yes, we don't celebrate birth dates. We don't celebrate the birth of Christ. He tells us it'd be better to celebrate our death than our birth. And so the birth date of their orgy sex, King Jesus, Mithra, the sun god, I don't have one activated, Elijah. So there's no way he was born on December 25th. But I can 100% assure you that the orgy sex god, Mithra, was born on December 25th, following from the 17th to the 24th. 17th to the 24th was the Saturnalia, the Feast of the Yule, the Feast of Saturn. It was a celebration. It was an orgy. They appointed a king uh, from the peasants, and they called him the king of the Saturnalia. And he got to sleep with all the men and lay with all the sheep. And all the, the the and drink all the finest wine and and be with all the finest women and drink all the finest mead. He got treated like a king, but after seven days they slaughtered him and barbecued him and ate him. Yes, they did. That happened on the twenty fourth. It was a lead up to the sacrifice they made for their their Mithra, Apollo, the birth of the sun god. On December 25th. So on December 25th, the sun god was born. What? What? Oh, Fizzy's back. Fizzy's back. Got another. You got another. Man, that didn't work out very long. Oh, boom. Gone. <laughs> out of here. <clears throat> That's right. So, so the sun god was born on December 25th. And you're celebrating the birth of Christ on the birth of the sun god, right? And then you're out banging pots and pans one week later, celebrating the new year in the middle of winter. Really? Really? You're celebrating the new year in January? In the middle of the winter? Pretty interesting. 
Sounds like you've been perverted. Sounds like you're going by that lunar calendar and you follow lunar worship. You do. That's the lunar calendar was combined with a pagan calendar to make which is known as the Gregorian calendar. And there's that's not in scripture. You're not going to find Christmas. Easter is in, is, is in scripture. It's, it's written one time. One time. Just once. And it's actually a translation and a horrible translation at that of the word Passover. Yep. There were men facing the east 500 years before Christ had ever risen, worshiping the rising sun. And you're going to tell me that Christ Easter is about Jesus Christ? No, it's not. Christmas has nothing to do with Christ. Easter has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. Passover, they didn't eat crackers and grape juice, brothers and sisters. They ate the Passover lamb at the Last Supper. Tom Uz, the son of Satan, he loved rabbits, by the way. So it's all perverted. It's all been forwarded. All these holidays are not in your text, if you notice that. You don't find Halloween. That's Samhain. All Hallows Eve, a dual pagan holiday. Dual pagan holiday. Added by the Catholic Church, Halloween. And they celebrate Halloween at all these Christian churches and all these Baptist churches and all these Presbyterian and all these Southern Baptists and all these Church of Christ. They all worship these same vain customs and traditions of men and their pagans. So I don't. I'm not condemning them. I'm judging them with righteous judgment like God tells me to do. This God said, do not celebrate births. He tells us in the book of Jeremiah, learn not the ways of the heathens. Be not dismayed at the signs of the heavens, for the heathens are dismayed at them. For the customs, the traditions, their holidays, their celebrations, their celebrations on their Yule wheel, on their fire wheel, your Christmas wreath, their celebrations are vanity, is what he says, or vain in your newer text. If you'll look up vain or vanity, that means worthless. Their celebrations are worthless. Their customs, for, for one cut at the tree, tree worship, for one cut at the tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the ax. They bring it home. They decorate it with silver and gold. They fasten it with nails and hammers so it move not. So it stand upright, just like rebirth of Nimrod. Remember Tom Ooze, when Sam died, she married her mom. Or he married his mom. She married her son. This is where they can't keep it in the pants, keep it in the family comes from. EpiPen Island, boys. E EpiPen Island. You know what island that is, right? Mr. Bidenstein, Mr. Drumpf. They both are island boys. Yes, wedding bands are pagan, Chris. That's your that's your serpent eating its own tail, the Ouroboros, the halo. Absolutely demonic, not, not of Christ. You know, so anytime you see somebody with a halo over their head in a picture, that's demonic. That's the Ouroboros. That's the serpent eating its own tail. Well, Trump can come back in, but remember, he can't run for pretendant again. He's currently the pretendant right now, but he's standing down. He's such a liar and a thief and a mass and a MAGA murderer that um, he's lying right now and not telling the world that Joe Biden is not the pretendant. They never inaugurated Mr. O. Biden. They never inaugurated him. They didn't have an inauguration. Do you have, I was a police officer. I was a veteran. I was a military police officer. I served during the 90s, Desert Storm, Desert Shield. I've done a lot of garrison duty. Understand the difference. When you inaugurate a president, there's five cannons. Four of them shoot off at a three-second interval. One, two, three, one. This one's here just in case these ones jam. One, two, uh-oh. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Three-second interval. Four cannons at a three-second interval is how you inaugurate an incoming president. Look at every single inauguration of every president ever inaugurated into the United States of America. How come Mr. Bidenstein only has four? 
not five, and they only shot off three at a 10 second interval. This is a wreath ceremony, not an inauguration. Joe pretendant, Mr. Creepy, is not the pretendant. No, he's not. They never inaugurated him. So for all you people slamming your hopium and drinking your Kool-Aid, he cannot be the pretendant. Regular Army, 95 Bravo, military police, mud puppy. So Biden is not the pretendant. To inaugurate an incoming president or an incoming dignitary, a very special, what is called a five cannon salute. Not four. That is a wreath ceremony. So he's not the pretendant, and you cannot run for a third term in America. You can only run for two terms. See? Do you understand what I'm saying? I would know this, guys. I was a tyrant veteran who served this horrible, disgusting beast system where we go around and unalive women and children so you could be free here in America. Oh, yeah, by the millions. Think about when I served Desert Storm, Desert Shield. Was that what years are those? How many Iraqi women and children? Not, not men of fighting age, 18 to 30, but women and children lost their life in those two operations. Millions. Never wore a battle dress uniform. Never wore BDUs. Never wore a military fatigue. And yet their lives were lost because of you having freedoms. We're a tyrant. We go around and we police the world. And I'm tired of everybody supporting this. Do not thank a veteran for their service. You rip off that scab. If they have a heart and they've thought about what they've done, don't thank a veteran for their service because you're ripping open an old wound. Oh, Fizzy's back, huh? Trolls. So please don't thank a veteran for their service. We're tyrants. We're trained killers. We kill women and children in other countries. Great. Real nice. And then the pretendant gets to be a MAGA murderer and get away with it, and then people revel after him. But don't sit there and tell me that uh, Mr. Bidenstein is the pretendant because I know these things. I was a military police in the service. Cool. I dealt with the medics. I understand. Not every, but we still serve the beast system, Jake. So I think you understand what I'm saying. So I'm very aware of what the garrison duty is, as well as the military police are the very first people to come into combat. Very first one in the battle and the last ones to leave are the MPs. Nobody spends more time in war than the military police. We're the most heavily armed four-man team in the military. Yeah, and we have more field missions than any other MOS in the military. Nine field missions in the military. More during garrison. Fizzy, get out of here. Pound sand, you keep coming back, you troll. You must work for the government. How many times do you try to come back in here? You do the works of your father, the devil. Every time you come in here, you'll be banned. Look how many profiles this guy's already made. So please do not thank a veteran for their service. We're trained killers. We kill, we unalive women and children in other countries so you can be free and you all stand down in America with no backbone. You didn't stand up during the COVID. You didn't make a big deal about all these people standing on the X wearing a mask? Did you try to stand in with your sheriff and stand against the sheriff and, hey, wait a minute, we don't want these businesses shutting down. We don't want these businesses shut down. We're, we're, no, 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 no. The last time you guys did this, you you flattened the curve. Nearly two to three million small businesses never shutter their doors and never open it again. Did you stand up? Well, good, because not too many people did. Stop being rude. It's horrible. Oh, okay. Stop telling you the truth. 
So you don't like the fact that uh, that uh, some of us had to wear a mask over our face for 12 to 15 hours in the hot desert. So you don't have to wear a mask. You should have had a choice. You should have never been made to wear that. If the mask worked that properly, nobody should have ever been worried that was wearing one, correct? If the mask did its job, you should just shut that up and not worry about it, right? So us veterans, we wore a mask that covered our eyes and uh, donned a full mask because this is not caught. This doesn't stop in a nuclear or biological chemical environment. You have to cover your eyes and your ears too. It was all a sham. It was all a scam. If that thing was so bad, why are they sticking stuff up people's noses? One, two, three, four, five. Why well, don't care? Leave Indiana. Get out of here. Don't ever come back here again. I don't want you in here. I don't cast my pearls before swine. So leave. You don't have to be here. So... Don't want you in here. Don't want any part of what you're doing. Don't want any part of people who won't do something about it, who will not stand up and say, hey, we are the tyrant. America is the bad guy. America is the bad guy. Can you name any other nation that taxes the snot out of their citizens and gives their money to another country? Is there one other country that just, yeah, taxes them and piss out of their country and sends it to another country? Name it. What, what, who are you sending it to? So this is, well, Canada is America pretty much. You know, they're the same. They're on the NAFTA and the same crap. But uh, no, I don't do drugs. Start advocating drugs. Stop advocating drug usage in here. Or you'll be removed, Hunter. These are grown-ups in here. You can do what you want in your own time, but don't come spread your venom in here. Spew it somewhere else. I use cannabis oil for my back, for my nerve pain. I don't put drugs in my body. Grow up. Stop pushing your filth and disgust. So America is the bad guy. There you go again in it, it, talking about your, I've never done methamphetamines in my life. I've never even touched it there, uh, Hunter. So you're sick. Yeah, we send it to Ukraine. So when you fund these wars, when you fund these wars, you're sending your money over there. So whether you like it or not, you have blood on your hands right now. If you're an American, and you have a job you paid to kill women and children in, in Ukraine, Syria, all over. We've got 800 military bases around the world in over 180 countries. So I, I'm not going to advocate this B system called the military industrial complex. And I cannot believe that I serve this B system. Now, I was a child when I joined the military, 17 years old, legally a child. That's been decades ago. But I'm not going to sit here and condone 800 military bases in 180 countries as we go around and force the whole world to pay for our oil with the U.S. dollar. So don't thank me for my service. We're trained killers. We go kill women and children in other countries so you could be free and you don't even act free. So how do you think that feels for a veteran to go kill women and children in another country and come home to this country and see what happened over the last four years? Stop thanking veterans for their service. We shouldn't be thanked. You should call veterans out and say, you know what? It must be hard to live with what you've done. I feel for you. I know that it must be hard. I know that all veterans are put in that position, but you're part of the system.
and that would be a lot better at trust you or you just have somebody that's full of pride 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 oh i'm glad that i went over there and killed women and children yeah that's real that's something to be proud of isn't it so let me ask you this if that's what we did in other countries and we come home as veterans and we see people standing on the x you know, over there in Iraq and Iran, they have what is called Sharia law, where the women's veil their faces, where the women's veil their cover their faces. Sharia law. And I come home and it's Sharia law in America. Yeah, now the men have their faces covered. What in the world is going on here? What? Why are guys covering and their this is full blown? Yeah. So it was very hard during the vid to sit there and watch people veil their faces when veterans have to wear a mask for 13, 15, 16 hours and get an outer respiratory infection. An outer respiratory infection from covering their face for extended periods of time and bringing and breathing in their own carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. Now, like a cold weather injury, I was in Alaska. I stationed in Alaska. If you get a cold, you get frostbite in your thumb, you're going to get that again easier. If you get a heat stroke, I was stationed in, in Alabama. Fort McClellan, Alabama. You get heat stroke, you can get heat stroke again. Easier. So somebody who gets an outer respiratory infection is more prone to get an outer respiratory infection. An outer respiratory infection. So not every person during the virus could wear a mask. There are people who could not wear one. Physically, people with COPD don't, don't, uh, Un undo Vanessa. Please put Vanessa back in here. Whoever just, uh, I don't know what Vanessa said, but put Vanessa back in there. Un, un block her, please. She's been in here for hours. So, and I haven't seen anything she said. So, you know what was really hard to file? What, what was really hard to, to, to look at? Knowing that after they had crucified Shiloh, ripped his beard out of his face, shoved a crown of thorns into his skull, nailed his feet and his hands, nailed his feet back. The only way they could get a breath of air was to raise up on the balls of his feet because those lungs were stretched so far back. The only way you could get air is to raise up on the balls of your feet. And then they stuck him like a pig, right? All this information that most people have no idea what they did. And then they veiled his face. Then they covered his face. They veiled him. Yeah, Shiloh, Christ Jesus. The scepter shall depart from Judah until Shiloh returns. That's Christ Jesus. That's his name, Shiloh. So they veiled his face. They veiled him. I was the only person. Maybe it's because my grandmother was Jewish. Maybe I know the traditionary laws better than some people. Doesn't make me better than anybody, but I know the Jewish law. My grandmother was a Jew, a practicing Jew. Okay. I have, my family is got that in their background. I've watched it. A Jewish servant would sit in those shadows waiting for the master. If he was eating and he had a napkin and if the master was going to be done with his meal, he'd wad it up and throw it on top of his plate. And if the master was going to go maybe take a break with one of his winches or something like that and is going to come back, he would neatly accordion fold that napkin showing the servant that he was going to return and he was not done with his meal. I'm the only person that I've ever heard say that during the spandemic, all these people wearing this folded mask on their face was exactly the veil that was left by Christ Jesus, Shiloh, Yahushua HaMashiach. I am. He left that veil folded. 
neatly showing that he would return, just like he did in the tomb. And I not ever heard one other person say that. Not ever one. This was the condition that Christ left the veil that they veiled his face with. Accordion folded. Showing he was going to return. Not one other brother and sister in Christ have ever heard say that during the COVID. Even recognize that. I'm walking around as a military veteran, obviously, and see people with this folded blue mask. I don't even know why I talk to you guys. I love you, but I was so upset during the coronavirus because I never heard anybody say that. Never once did I ever hear anybody say, hey, look at these masks. Remember, Christ left his veil after they veiled his face. He left that veil folded accordion style. You're welcome. Do you know anybody else that talked about that during the COVID? Do you know anybody who remembered that Christ left that veil? Not just in a pile, but neatly accordion folded, just like the, true, the Jewish tradition. I'm glad that I have the Jewish tradition in my background. Because I would have never known that, brothers and sisters. This is only because God chose this for my life and my grandmother and whatever. And so I knew these traditionary customs. And so the whole time I had to walk around during the COVID, I knew what I was fighting, guys. That's why I stood up against this government. I stood up against the sheriff. I stood up against the governor. Because I remember that neatly folded accordion mask when I was walking around and seeing everybody with their face folded. It was so hard, guys. There was times I would come home and cry at night because I was so hurt. Yes, I'm a man and I cried. Tears. Knowing that nobody else sees this, Father, why did you show this to me? This is killing me inside. And I go everywhere I go, people don't even care. They are veiled their faces just like they veiled yours. So it's very personal to me. It's been very personal to me since day one. Man, this house is making so many different noises. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, guys, I'm getting cold in here. Let me see how what the, it was seven degrees. My cabin is, oh, hey, it's not too bad in here. Hey, my cabin is nice and warm. What am I talking about? Just my feet, guys. Give me a minute. I'm going to start a fire. We'll go back at this. Let's take a pause for the cause if we could. Um, cool. Cool, Vanessa. Thank you. I appreciate it. I hope this is edifying, you guys. Take what you want from this. Chew what you want. Chew off the meat and spit out the bones. Please. Take what you want. Chew with the meat that's good for you and spit out what you don't want. You don't have to believe anything I'm saying. So yeah, I cried. Grown man. 50 years old. Bawled my eyes out knowing that nobody cared about what was going on. It was so hard to see people cover their faces. When as a veteran, I'm like, what the heck? I thought we fought for people's freedom. I thought this is what we did horrible things to other people in other country for. So this country could be free. Why is everybody standing on these X's? You know, I thought it was 15 feet. First it was 25, then it was 15. All this talk, 15 feet, 15 feet, 15 feet, 15, 25, 15, 25, 15, 15 25, 15. Stand on the X. Stand on the X, 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 six, six, six. I'm like... What is going on? Nobody sees what's happening here. Well, Father, what is happening? Why? So it was hard to sit there and know these things. And, you know, you guys, if you're going to, if you're in a nuclear, biological, chemical environment, biological, vid, whatever you want to call it, you ever notice, you ever seen anybody who's, in a, in a nuclear, biological, chemical environment. First of all, you wear a full charcoal outfit. Charcoal from top to bottom. Charcoal pants, charcoal top, charcoal suit, charcoal, everything charcoal. You have to completely cover your hands so nothing can get up inside of your hands. 
Okay, your boots have to be bloused and over the top so nothing could get inside of your pants. Then I couldn't have a beard in the military. You can't have beards in the military. You can't have facial hair in the military. Because if you don a mask, it makes a seal around your face. And if you had this facial hair, it would not make a seal. See, you, you take the mask out. Gas, 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 gas. That's the signal for gas, guys. Signal that you're in a nuclear, biological, chemical environment. This is the signal for gas. Gas, gas, gas. I take, I pull the case out. I put the mask on. I pull it over my face. I blow out. And then, and then that sucks that to my face. Now I have formed a seal around my face. So my eyes and my nose and my mouth are covered. Now, I still have ears exposed and my ears are wet. I clean my ears often, so nothing in my ears, but my ears are wet. So if you notice, I have to pull the hood all the way over my ears. So now I have a seal around my eyes, my nose, my mouth, and my ears. That's how you protect yourself in a nuclear, biological, chemical environment. The decontamination procedures for being subject to a nuclear, biological, chemical environment is a very thorough process to decontaminate yourself from a nuclear, biological, chemical environment. So this not covering your ears and not covering your eyes and people wearing their masks like this, which doesn't, it didn't, that doesn't have anything to do. You didn't protect yourself at all. Your eyes are wet. The whole time you walked around with wet eyes, with your face covered, I'm like, are these people just that ignorant? They don't even look and see what their military's nuclear, biological... Nobody did any proper decontamination procedures, not one. If this was a real nuclear, biological, chemical, there would be NBC drop-offs in different locations throughout your state and city to drop all that, those masks that caught all that supposed nuclearological bio. We saw none of that. We saw nothing of the sort. So, you know, it's pretty sad. The whole time, people's faces veiled, not covering their eyes, not decontaminating properly. And if I had to do some science behind it, I would say, what are you doing, kitten? What are you doing, kitty? Kitten girl, what are you doing? Come here, kitten girl. Come here, CP. I didn't know you were in here. Come here, CP. Come here, CP. Come say hi. Come say hi to everybody. Come here, PP. Come here, little girl. This is my girl. This is my sweet little girl. She's my juniper girl. She's the desert kitty. Say hi, juniper. Say hi. Say hi. You're so pretty girl. Show them your green eyes. There's our pretty green eyes. She's a sweet pea. She's the only girl here on the property. Everybody else is males. Yeah, she's a sweet pea. Do you love the dad? Do you love your dad? Do you love... Hey. Yes, you do. You... <laughs> You're such a sweet pea. She's so sweet. <laughs> she's a sweetheart. She's the only girl I have out here. Everybody else, she's the only... All boys. All boys, except for her. <laughs> so, um... Yep, there we go. Yep. No, I don't need a girlfriend. I don't want a loner girlfriend. I don't do girlfriends. I need a wife. I need a wife that will equally yoke with me. So not only she could be with me in this lifetime so that we could be kings. Because I'm going to be a king in my new body if, if he'll give me the inheritance that he promised me. If I walk and follow in his commandments. If he chose me from the foundation of the world. I have nothing to do with it then I will be a king in my new body. 
<clears throat> and I want a wife, a wife, an eternal wife. I'm eternal. This is just a temporary meat suit. I'll be leaving this soon. I don't need a loner wife. I need somebody I can yoke with for the rest of my days forever and in my new body, not just in this body. So I'm not just looking for a loner wife. So that's probably why I'm single. Yeah, this dude needs a girlfriend. No, I don't want a girlfriend. No, thank you. And I don't spread myself thin. So I've only been with two women in 15 years. So and I've only been dating for about three of those 15 years. So I'm a, a little reserved, if you will. I, I don't just spread myself around like, you know, <laughs> oh. Oh, for the, okay. Oh, hey, for the kitty. No, we got to keep the animals fixed. We don't want more kittens out here. But hey, if any of you ladies are looking for a man of God, it will be of God, not me doing it. So um, you want a real man of God? You want a man of God like it tells you, you know, a, a, a son of God? Or are you a son of God? So that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a, for a woman that will equally yoke with me, wants to sit down and read the book of uh, Deuteronomy and, 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 and the book of Corinthians. So that's what I'm looking for. I want a woman who might be able to look past that I'm 50 years old and, and my looks don't look like when I was 20. Okay. But I still have the physique of a 20 year old. My body looks better than most people half my age because I take care of myself. I don't destroy my body. So um, I did a pretty good job of that growing up. So I'd like to find a woman that can be uh, equally yoked with me and I would treat her body like I treat the church, but a woman that will let me correct her when it comes to the word of God. No, honey, we're not celebrating birth dates. We're not celebrating birth dates. He tells us it'd be better to celebrate. See, honey, where it says right here in the book of Ecclesiastes 7 and 1, it said we're not to celebrate birth dates. It'd be better to celebrate our death than our birth. And I know your family's going to give you a hard time, honey, but we just, we're not going to do it anymore. This is not pleasing to God. This is vanity. So you treat a woman's body like you treat the church. A woman is to be subservient to a man when it comes to the church. To the teaching of God. Otherwise, he treats a woman's body like he treats himself or like he treats the church. So if you men pervert the word of God and you tell your woman to do something, you're wrong. If it doesn't have anything to do with that word that's in that book, you perverted the word of God and you forwarded it. That's not what God meant by a woman being subservient to her man. It's because when I go out to work or to war for long periods of time, I don't want you teaching the children paganism. Next thing I know, you got the children celebrating Christmas and Easter. Honey, what the heck are you doing here? I said, we don't do that. That's a man of God. Plus, I know the word and studied it for 30 years. So that's how a woman is to be subservient to her man. Okay, honey, I see. Okay, cool. I, I totally got this. Now I understand. God doesn't want us to, to learn this Jezebel spirit like when Ahab married Jezebel, right? Ahab married Jezebel. She was a woman of men, and she taught the children Baal worship, Baal worship. So then when Ahab came home, the children couldn't speak the agape, the 613 law, statutes, commandments. That's what it means. And I don't know any Christian men that know that. Not one. Maybe my brothers and sisters in Christ know that, but not one Christian do I know that. They forward it and they pervert it. Oh, honey, go get me a beer. God said you're supposed to be subservient to me. And that's not what he said. That's not at all what he said. You're forwarding, you're perverting his word. So, oh, what did I just tear up? Oh, I don't know. I don't care whether it's just paperwork. So. Go make me food. Yeah, go make me some dinner, honey. <laughs> Thank you. Exactly. Well, let me let in these puppies, guys. You guys want to come in with the dad? Come on with the dad. Come inside. Big dog. Biggest guy. 
guy. Oh, John O'Brien, you go back in there, John O'Brien. Tanner boy, here my boy Tanner. Boy, it's starting to warm up out here. Do you come inside, Banner? Do you come inside, boy? You stand here. It's nice out here, huh? Ooh, the sun is shining. The sun is shining. It's nice out there. I just went open the front door. Do you even know what love is there, Pink? You probably don't even know what love is, do you? You're using a word you don't even know what's coming out of your mouth. Pretty silly. Just spew the venom. Spew it all over the place. <laughs> Come on. If you leave definition, you leave the truth, just so you know. And you're not speaking the definition. You're speaking translation. So you're literally speaking out the side of your neck. You can eat whatever you want. We're not under that covenant. Have I dated before? I'm 50 years old. No, I never dated anybody in my life. I don't have no kids. I don't have nothing. A silly question. I don't go on mandates. I can tell you that. I don't follow codes or ordinances either. Darn it. This fire, what's it doing here? What's it doing here? I just let out all that smoke. Smoke, smoke. Uh, could do it again, in it? Oh, we got some smoke in here now. I opened up that thing and I didn't have the uh there is the ladder. It's dead. Uh oh. Where did the ladder go? Where is the ladder? Hey, appreciate you guys hanging out with me. I hope you guys are learning something here. Hope you're taking something from this lesson. I've been on here seven hours. I hope you've been able to write one thing down. Hope this will help you out. Take from it what you want. Spit out what you don't. Trying to get the fire going again here, guys. Let the fire burn out. I had pizza on there, but I didn't eat it. I had some pizza. I went up to town. I got some pizza. You can eat pork. I don't eat pork, but you can eat pork. You're not under that covenant. You're not under. You can eat whatever you want. You can eat whatever you want. Pork only applied to the two houses. The house of Israel. Okay. Which was the Jews, right? Which was the house of Aaron and the Levites. So it didn't apply to the Gentiles. And we're not under that covenant anymore. It only applied to the house of Aaron and the Levites. Now God tells us it's not what goes in a man that defiles him or a woman. It's what comes out of him. 
And if you put it on this earth, it's here for us to consume. So we're not under that covenant. You can eat all the pork you want. I don't eat it. That stuff's nasty. It's a low energy meat. I don't want it in my body. But you can eat it. If it doesn't affect you, awesome. It does affect some people. I know pork affects me. When I eat it, I feel the difference. If I eat pork, I get tired early in the day. It wears me out. It just, it wears on my body. So, um, how do I feel about companies like Walmart? Walmart, the tax exempt corporation and Jeff Bezos. Um, they're filthy. They're disgusting. Um, you want to know why I hate Walmart? Because I'm a veteran. And if I remember correctly, Walmart, when they first started out, remember it was nothing but American made products, right? All American made, mostly American made products, right? Remember? And then two years later, bam, they pulled the rug out from underneath your feet and as much of Chinese crap, huh? So I hate Walmart. They're liars and they're thieves. And uh, they're in cahoots with the Department of Homeland Security and they are a government subsidized corporation. Government subsidized corporation. That means they are the government. Walmart is the government. So, so I hate Walmart. And then they use that stupid smiley face sign. Remember, they Walmart, Sam Walton interned American citizens during World War II. That's right, the Waltons. They were in charge of camps. Concentration. You need to concentrate and get in the camp. Re-education. Re-education. We're going to relearn you in our camp. So they interned American citizens during World War II. American citizens from America, guys. I don't care if they were of Japanese descent, and not every person was of Japanese descent. So they're horrible. And they're liars because they changed all their product, all their product over to Chinese crap in like the third or fourth year. They didn't even keep all their American. They hardly have anything from America at the Walmart. So I despise Walmart. I think every one of them should be burnt to the ground, but I'm not advocating doing that. I just don't think, um, that would be better for the future of America because that's where everybody's going to run. That's where everybody's going to run. And we already know what those things are. Don't you remember they closed eight of those places? Eight of them were shut down. And then they said because of plumbing and they never linked any of the plumbing. They never pulled any permits to fix the plumbing. Hmm. Pretty sickening, huh? Yeah, they're thieves and they're liars. Um, that's right. First I know, we know exactly what they did. All you have to do is look at where all the uh, where all the where all the underground places were and where they led to, right exactly over each one of these WalMarts. So I wonder what they were doing underneath those WalMarts, huh? Hmm. Yeah. So go to the Walmart when it all breaks down, guys. That's probably going to be the last place you want to find yourself is near any Walmart. I would stay as far clear from the Walmart as I could. So. You want to go outside? I'm going to take you to the way. You want to come in? Come on in, dear daughter better. Come on in there, big old kitty kitty boy. My big old kitty boy. My big kitty boy. You're the biggest kitten I have, you big guy. You're such a big kitty boy. Sorry, my big guys, and he came in here. You want some more food? I'll give you a little more food, guy. He didn't eat very much earlier. Hold on, I'll get you some food, kiddo. Just wait a second there, buddy. Sorry, my, my oldest cat's in the house here. He's He wants something to eat. He didn't stay in the house too long earlier. Man, I am absolutely filling this house away. I don't know what's going on with this.
Hold on there, Tita Boy. I'll get you some food. Hold on, Tita Boy. You're such a good boy. You're my best big kitten I ever had. I'm just smoking this house out. I'll get you some food, buddy. Watch out, Pots. Watch out, Yatter Boy. There you go, big kitten. You guys already had breakfast. Go on. You already had breakfast. You guys already had breakfast. You only had a couple bites and then you got back. Then just spilt that paper all over the face. Give me one second. I have to. I got to sweep in here. I had a paper that was shredded. I'm in the cabin, in the rusty cowboy, in the rusty cowboy. So I think we're going to hit the 3,000 hours, guys, here pretty soon. I'm pretty stoked about that. I appreciate all you guys just staying in here for long periods of time. Um, gosh, some of you guys stay in here for three, four, five hours. Some of you guys definitely, brothers and sisters, are in here for the long haul. And I do appreciate that. We're very close to monetization. And I could use a couple extra bucks. All right. I'm going to eat my pizza here. So, anybody wants to help me out? They're doing well. You got a couple extra bucks. You can. This will be the time you can help me out. It's not required. I've been on here for eight hours. In nine minutes, I've been on here for eight hours. That's a full day's work. Full day. So, not required. I'm uh, not gonna. As long as you don't say stupid stuff or ignorant things, I you don't have to. Do anything. Okay? So, I'll keep no charge. But if you can help me, I have a cash app. So, hopefully spring will hit here out here soon. But it was 7 degrees, 3 degrees. 2 degrees probably out here earlier. Might even hit 0. So, hopefully spring will break here in the next month. And I'll be able to sell. I have... Um, I could take you outside and show you some of the stuff that I've got ready for the springtime. I've got a jumping jack and I've got a much agape. Um, and I've got a plate compactor that I bought for a couple hundred bucks a piece and I've fixed them up and got them both running. They sat for a long time, um, uh, a couple years and, um, I got to run in tip top again and I'll sell those closer to the spring time. So I'm hoping um, next month won't be so tough for me. And I remember guys, uh, brothers, and sisters, I, I gotten all my money stolen. I got dropped my wallet and somebody immediately picked it up and went and spent all my money out of both my accounts. So if that wouldn't happen, I wouldn't even have to ask you guys. So um, I'm only asking it's not a requirement. If I didn't get any donations, I'd still come in here and stay on here for another eight hours. So I don't want a handout. I'm not asking for, you know, for somebody can help me. That's all I'm asking. So if you have the ability, and I know there isn't very many people who do right now. So it's, I'm not really, I don't expect anything. I'm just asking. Giving the puppets the pizza bones. No, I'm not still on asking for money. That's the only time I... So, don't come in here and spit your shade. That's not... I've been on here for eight hours. I might have spent 
two minutes asking for a gift, three minutes in eight hours, get out of here. You're a tyrant and, and you're casting shade. I just gave eight hours and I gave a lot of information. It's not required and you need to come on here and say that. You haven't even been in here before. I have to recognize your name. Fish, I think so. The Cash App is in my description. It's predestined for light with the dollar sign in front of it, guys. This stream right now, since all my money got taken from me out of my Cash App card and my bank card, this stream is brought to you by Dispersing Weight, DSW. In this platform, he's my brother in Christ. and I'm part of the Grace and Truth Ministries, the body of Christ. And this actual live stream is brought to you by Dispersing Weight. I dropped my wallet. I dropped my wallet. I went to the Goodwill. I was going to get dog food. I went into town. Somebody gave me a ride in town because I didn't have any extra money this month. It's a little lean for me. It's okay. I dropped this. Somebody immediately picked up and spent all the money on both of my cars. On my Cash App card, which I've ordered a new one. Now I have another one. And my bank card. So I had the money to pay my bills, but it's all got taken from me. So thank you, Father. <laughs> That's all I could do. I thanked him that day. It's, I don't know what you're doing, but thank you. So it's been a pretty tough, tough month for me here. So. Please think dispersing weight because hearing me speak because of him. Otherwise, I wouldn't have the money to pay my phone bill this month. It all got taken from me. Oh. All my bill money, all my land payments all disappeared one day. I was lucky enough that I always carry one or two pieces of silver on me. And I gave the gentleman who gave me a ride into town a piece of silver and he gave me 40 bucks so I can get a thing of dog food. Otherwise I'd have been out of luck because again, all my money got disappeared. So you don't have any idea how that works space duck. God beats the piss out of his people. He loves and he uses men and he uses the devil and animals in the sun to beat his people he loves. You have no idea how God works at all. Zero. You do not have any idea what how the how the Father works. So I'm not your bud, okay? So thank you, dispersing weight, for this live stream. Thank you again, brother. Much appreciated. You look like you're about 156 years old and you're about to turn to dust. Does that look like 156 years old to you? Get out of here. That ain't no 156 year old body. That's a 50-year-old man that's strong as an ox. Don't tell me that I, I look low 156 years old. That looks like fat, huh? Zero body fat. <laughs> Zero body fat. I don't have any body fat. And this is the winter time, guy. This is winter. I get a lot more cut than this in the summertime. <laughs> Looks like a stack of eight. I don't even have six. I have eight muscles in my gut. Oh, tell me. This is my winter gut. You should see me. What is this all about? Your whiteboard is deceiving. What do we talk about, Levette? 
Did somebody hijack Levette's account here? Oh, they got this account a lot, guys. Darn it. I'm going to have to shut the stream off, guys. I can't even get the thing to... Levette, what are you talking about? What happened there, Levette? Did somebody hijack Levette's account? Levette Carter, your whiteboard is deceiving, Tracy. What are we talking about, Levette? What do you mean, Levette? Your whiteboard's deceiving. I don't think that's her. No, I don't have any pride. You're wrong. Pride is a sin. I'm just showing you that I, I don't do drugs. This body doesn't, you don't get a body like that doing drugs and, and being the way that all these people come in here. I'm strong because I take care of myself. I take care of my body. My body's a temple. So you want to cast shade? I'll show you. I'm not the kind of person to sit there. I take life very seriously. Um, pride is a sin. So I don't know what you're talking about, pride. Um, what is wrong with these people about asking about that? Why would you ask that? You're, you do the works of your father, the devil. Why do all you people, you're programmed... Why would you say the whiteboard's deceiving, Levitt? What are we talking about? I don't think that's even you. That's crazy. What's going on here? What's going on with Levitt? Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm like, oh, what do you mean? Um, go, anyways. Stop talking about drugs in my channel and stop talking about being a homosexual, please. Or gay. I don't want any of that talking in my chat. I, you'll be removed from the chat if you talk about homosexuality. Um, or you talk about... Uh, Cool. I got it. Thank you. Um, <laughs> if I shave off my beard, I don't look like I'm 50 years old, guys. I can put what if, Elijah's my son's in here. How old do I look when I shave my beard? Probably look like I'm in my 30s. I don't look 50. Because if you notice, my mustache, I haven't gotten any gray in it yet. So <laughs> the beard definitely obviously has gray. In it. It's okay. Um, like I said, this is, this is my, um, well, I'm trying to cope with Louvis and everything. Is that why I can offer 65 acres to somebody losing everything? Oh, I'm losing everything, huh? Can you offer any, can you offer somebody to come stay on your property right now? How about 15 people? How about 20 people? Do you have enough land to house 20 people and have food? No, you don't. Just be quiet. You're just, you do the works of your father, the devil. You're not doing anything but spit and venom. So once again, I can see you by your, your fruit. No. Nope. Oh, I'm so mad, huh, Steve? Oh my God, I'm so mad. Look at me. I'm getting all, oh, mm, so mad. Mm, mm. He's so mad. <laughs> You love gray? <laughs> awesome, Vanessa. Thank you. I'd probably eat some copper and take it away. You know, copper, gray, gray is a copper deficiency. Is a copper deficiency. Our hair shouldn't turn gray. If we had enough copper in our body, if I took colloidal copper, I could turn all this back to, to dark. That's what gray hair is. It's a copper deficiency. So I've studied nutrition, but I like my gray beard. So <laughs> people call me Santa, but that's, I don't like that. So what's the karate guy that's in shape? Karate guy that's in shape. 
can't remember it, so. But anyways, I try to take care of myself, guys. I really do. I didn't always take care of myself. I was a veteran, and um, I've broken my back a couple times. Uh, recently, bleak, I broke my hip out here <laughs> a couple few a couple months ago. Um, but here I am, standing six feet tall, ten toe. Um, every day, I'm ready for people to come out here, and um, hopefully, some people to start getting themselves out of the city, getting themselves away from this D system, and becoming their own boss. Yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Our body is uh, a temple. Yeah, I exercise every day. <laughs> I work out. I work. I carry. I do more than most people do before. For I was up, I went to bed last night at what, 9.30 and I was up at three o'clock in the morning, you know, taking care of the animals, four o'clock. I was outside doing stuff outside. So, what's your well water? Nice, yeah. I have access to a 1200 foot well, guys. All my well water comes from 1200 feet. This a deep water, one of the deeper wells in this valley, so. All my tanks are completely filled with, with water that's excellent. And then I filter every single bit of my water. I don't filter any water or drink. All my water is filtered. Don't you beg. This is my breakfast I didn't eat, guys. I don't even know what time it is. Four o'clock in the afternoon. Breakfast. Man, I've been up all day. Like I said, I got up at 3.30. I was out of bed. Well, I live in Oregon. I was born and raised in Los Angeles, California. I was born in the valley. In the concrete jungle. Until my father died. And I was forced to leave the state of California because they were trying to put me in foster care. And put me in a... I didn't have a... A guardian. I was 16 years old living on the streets of Los Angeles. And eventually I had to come up to Oregon where my mom was at so I can have some kind of guardian so they wouldn't put me in, you know, whatever child services, LAPD was trying to come put me in, whatever. They came to my school when I was still trying to go to school. After my dad had died, I still went to school anyways. I didn't need a, a guardian to know that I needed to finish school. So, um, but I didn't have anybody, a guardian, and so I had to leave the state of California and come up here to Oregon, where my mom was at. And so, probably almost every one of them. I'm almost all every one of them. So, um, that's why I live up here in Oregon now. That's I wasn't born here, but I've been to all 50 states in the United States of America. I've lived in Alaska. I've lived in Hawaii. I've been to every major city in the U.S., been to every, I mean, I traveled outside the U.S. I have a passport, so I haven't seen all the world or whatever, but um, I've seen every, lived in Hawaii with my son. He was afraid of volcanoes, so I took him to live on a volcano. Lived in Alaska, <laughs> you know, so I, I've had my share of, of seeing this country and seeing all the cities and I've talked with people in every state. Um, I have my my hand on the, you know, my thumb on the, right there. Um, Kona, yeah. 
Kona is pretty awesome. We lived in Malii, Malii in Ocean View. We went from Ocean View over to Malii and uh, lived down there in Hollywood. <laughs> you lived on the island, on the big island. You know what I'm talking about. You know what Malii is? That's the original fishing village on, in Hawaii of the big island. If you really want to experience Hawaii, guys, you need to go to the big island. It's not a, a it's not like, um, it's not like the other islands. It's very, uh, they don't like white people on the big island. They call you Hollies or anybody who comes to the island and tries to take. Oh, nice. Yeah. I mean, I went over to Hilo and uh, spent some time over there. Actually, almost moved over to the, the Pahoa district, but I got moved over to Malii, um, where we were staying in Ocean View. And uh, we stayed there off grid. Well, everything's off grid almost over there, but in Hollywood, a lot of stuff is hooked up there to the grid in, in Malii. So we stayed there um, until we left the island as that's where we lived until we left the island, me and my son. So um, what a neat experience. Uh, the island is, I've been to all 50 states and I have never seen anything remotely close to where the island is. Over there, it's not the US. It's not. I don't care if people say it's the US. Yep. Yeah. So you know what I'm talking about, Miss Cupcake. You know what I'm saying? It's pretty funny when my son, I don't have, I have a very olive skin. I don't have light colored skin. So, um, and my stomach gets very dark and my back gets very dark. I have, uh, I can get very, very tan. <laughs> and, um, my son gets very tan too, but I remember when we first moved there, um, he didn't get no fights or anything, but I'd take him down to, uh, to the beach at, um, oh, it wasn't, uh, I can't remember. Are you in here, son? Where are you at? Uh, starts with an H. <laughs> not Hannah, not. Not, not uh, oh gosh, can't remember it off uh, the name, but we used to take him down there to the beach. It'll come to me if I don't think about it. Uh, Hokana. We used to take him down to Hokana. And um, we used to go to the barbecue every Wednesday. They had a barbecue down there. And um, we go down there other days. But uh, when he first got there, he wasn't super light skinned, but he was a little lighter than the locals. And uh, you can tell, you know, um, all the kikis, right? They don't even, they don't call anything the same in, in Hawaii, guys. Everything's different. Everything has a different name. But uh, they called the kids kikis, and the, and the kikis call everybody uncle. Uncle. So, um, yeah, I have a son. He's in here on the chat. He's 25 years old. But um, I used to take him down there when he was young. This is a long time ago when he's a little guy. And, um, God, it's been a long time. So, wow, time has gone by so fast. But he used to go down there and play on the beach. When I went to Hokana, we'd go down there and take him to Hokana to get away from the mosquitoes. Because <laughs> there's a lot of mosquitoes on the big island. But they're not down near the beach, down, down near the water. Um, but after about two or three weeks, um, yep, yep. So Miss Cupcakes knows what I what I'm talking about. Um, I never knew you did YouTube. I left TikTok. Cool. I had to go. They shut my uh, they shut my TikTok down over there for doing the water overlay video. So, but you guys, after about two or three weeks, about a month of taking him down to the beach, I'm telling you, he was dark. He was so dark. You know, he looked like my hat dark. He got real dark. My son gets dark like me. His mom. Um, has darker skin. I have a little bit darker skin. So he gets really dark. And guys, I couldn't tell who my son was. After about a month from the locals, he looked just like any one of the other little kikis down there playing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, thanks for coming in. Here we go again. I'm not sure what your TikTok name is, but I uh, appreciate you following me over here. If you, or what, if you just ran into me by chance, I guess. But um, very different, guys. Um, the children down there, if a child comes up to you in Hawaii, they don't. They're very respectful. The children in Hawaii are different. Um, they call you uncle, uncle. Anybody that's an elder is an uncle. 
And so they treat, um, the kids are different in Hawaii. They don't act like they act like here on the main island or the main, uh, the mainland, the main island, the mainland. Uh, Cause that's what they call, um, that's what they call, what is the lower 48 in Alaska? If you live in Alaska, they call it the lower 48. If you live in Hawaii, they call it the mainland. But it's not like America. They don't live like America over there. They don't talk like America. They don't, you know, they don't, it's very different. You know, the police over there on the big island, they don't drive around with cars with like red, white, and, you know, red and blue. They have a little blue light. They put it on top of their personal vehicle and harass you. <laughs> and and they're different and they extort all the, the, the tourists and stuff. On the big island, guys, if your car gets parked on the side of the road in less than an hour, <laughs> The wheels would be missing off of it, you know, and you come back in two hours, it probably might not have any doors on it by then. They're going to start pulling parts off of it. Three or four hours, it's sitting up on blocks and it's, uh, <laughs> it, the Big Island's very different, guys, very, very different. And, um, but if you want to experience Hawaii, you need to experience the Big Island because to live aloha, to truly live aloha, um, you can't experience that on the other islands. I've been to the other islands, some of the other islands, and I'm telling you, it's, you're not going to get the experience like you get on the big island. That is the real Hawaii. That is the real deal, you know. Um, hitchhiking is a way of life over there. This is not like, a, not a, you know, this is a form of transportation. <laughs> so, uh, but... Um, it was pretty neat to be there for a couple, couple, after I was there for a couple months, um, I couldn't tell my son from the locals. We'd go down to the beach. He was so dark and he loved being down at the beach because the mosquitoes would just eat the crap out of him. He just ate too much sweets before he got to the island and they just loved his body, man. They would just eat him to shreds. He looked like a little leopard there for, for the first month till I'd take him down in the ocean and he'd soak all his, uh, his mosquito bites in the ocean and, um, after a couple months, they weren't so bad. After we lived there for, you know, for a little while, he got used to it. And he, we don't eat half, you know, red hot dogs. Remember, they've got red hot dogs. <laughs> no AC, no insulation in the walls, open, open, you know. Um, the walls are all open with no insulation in them. You can see all the open cells. Um, but the people are very different over there. Um, and... Uh, respectful but very opportunistic <laughs> very opportunistic um uh, yeah you, i'm sure i forget what the name of those red hot dogs um my son just absolutely loved those we used to go up there to the um oh that was in between kona captain cook remember a little store in captain cook a little store there they had hot dogs the hot dogs or whatever in the little machine there. And uh, he loved those hot dogs, man. He loved those Hawaiian red hot dogs and, and Captain Cook. I used to take them up there. Um, but Hawaii is a very neat place. If you want to experience what it's like to, uh, I know the exact one, right? And Captain Cook, right? So, yeah, I know. We've been there. I've been in, <laughs> as I said, Miss Cupcake, you know what I'm saying? Being on the island, guys, is a very unique experience. Um Actually, I had somebody tried to kill me and my son when I was there. Um, it was a guy that I knew from high school. He lured me out to go over there. Um, I got out there, and uh, he tried to shove me in a puka, <laughs> tried to shove me in a hole, me and my son, and tried to steal all my stuff that was coming in the mail. And um, the island took care of that for me. <laughs> a couple of seats, a couple um, – a couple of people tried to, uh, or a couple of people saw what he tried to do to me. And, uh, they made sure after this happened, um, yeah, uh, the Island took care of me at that point. You know what I'm saying? I had to move out from where I was at because I was living with this gentleman and he was a threat to me and my son. I, I knew what he was trying to do. He was trying to whack us both there and steal all our stuff. Um, so he actually tried to 
take me out in front of my son, tried to swing on me and, and all that stuff. But um, yeah, after making a couple phone calls and um, that's when we went from Ocean View to Mali'i and we got to live there in, in Mali'i in Hollywood. And we lived in a beautiful off grid spread over there. Um, and my son got to go behind the wall <laughs> and we got to go behind the wall and eat fresh lao lao, you know, out of the ground. <laughs> so, um, but, uh, after that happened, um, we were put up in a, in a very nice place, an off grid cabin on the Island. And, um, yeah, we got to live Aloha after that. Because after the uh, people from the island found out what would happen, um, I was able to relocate into Mali'i. And, you know, when I first went down there, um, I remember the people told me, do not go behind that wall. If you're going to go to the Black Sand Beach, you pass around the original fishing village. Do not go on the other side of that wall. They will, you won't make it over there. Mm -hmm. They got their own law on the other side of the law over there. So we'd gone over there several times. You know, I'd taken him to um, Black Sands Beach and we go walk around the wall to go all the way down to Black Sand Beach. I'm sure Miss Cupcake's probably been once or twice. You know, you got to walk in front of the fishing village in in E. So, um, yeah, so, you know, I'm talking, you go to walk in front of the wall. You don't go on the other side of the wall. That's the original fishing village back there, right? And they'll unalive you if you go back there, if you're a Holly. So, um, but after that happened, after that happened to me, because I didn't swing on the guy, I didn't get crazy and I didn't act all crazy. I was trying to live aloha, so to speak. And um, so after they had found out what had happened to us, me and my son, uh, we got an invite. <laughs> we got an invite to go into the fishing village. This is crazy. I, I talked to people who've been on the island for like 20 or 30 years. And they're like this, I've never, I cannot believe what you just got to experience. You know, I've been here 20 years. So in Hawaii guys, they take and they cook pork, they cook pork and they cook it in uh, banana leaves and they put it in the ground and they put seasoning and it's called lao lao. And they put it in a puka in a hole. And they, they cook it in the coals and it's called Lao Lao. And it's very sought after on the island. Um, it, it's steeped in the, in the banana leaves. And uh, when I went over on the other side of the fishing village, they took Lao Lao out of the ground and I got to eat Lao Lao <laughs> out of the ground. I've had no people that have been there for 20, 30 years. They're like, look, I've never eaten Lao Lao, like from, we get it later, but I've never eaten Lao Lao out of the ground. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That, that is, you went on the other side of the village and they gave you Lao Lao out of the ground. Whoa. You, the island definitely loves you, brother, <laughs> because I've been here 20 years and I had never had been on the other side of that island. I've lived here 20 years. I've never been on the other side and I've only ever had it out of the ground in a, you know, to go contain, I can make it my own, but I can't make it like they make it, you know? So what an experience, you know what I'm saying? Um, allow out of the ground on the other side of the wall, you know, wow. I never would have thought that that would ever, you know what I'm saying? So I got to live you guys, you don't do this in Hawaii. <laughs> You don't look at your clock at your watch in Hawaii. That's rude. That's very rude to look at your watch in time. They don't look at time. They actually, people like myself that work eight hours a day, they don't like people like this over there. They all get a little, which is called a lasagna lot or a spaghetti lot, which is very thin and narrow on the island. There's spaghetti lots. And most of the native people that are from the island, true islanders, Hawaiians, they get, most of them get a little strip of land, either a spaghetti lot or a lasagna lot or a couple spaghetti lots to make a lasagna lot. And they get that. They own that lot. As a child, it's given to them. So um, most of them own their own land. 
and they've got a little, you know, a little cabin, a little spread, something very, that they don't, most of the time they don't stay in their cabin or their house. Most of the time they're outside their house or they're down at the beach. So a guy like me who comes and works eight hours a day, we make them look kind of bad. <laughs> they don't want to work eight hours a day. <laughs> they work a couple hours and they're like, hey, we're going to go to the beach, bro. Don't worry about it, man. Let's just go to the beach, man. We'll go out and smoke some poco lolo and uh, drink a couple beers. Or They don't call cannabis weed over there, guys, or pot, or they call it poco lolo is what they call cannabis. It's called poco lolo. So you guys, even the... Even like the mayor over there in, in, in Hawaii would go down to Hokana Beach, <laughs> these government officials, and they would be smoking the pokalolo, you know. Um, these are government officials. <laughs> so <laughs> um, very different culture, guys. Very, very, very different culture. Um, and so a lot of the times they work for about three or four hours and they're done for the day. And they're like, all right, bro, let's go down to the beach now. Let's go hang out. You know, and like I said, we'll drink a couple of beers. We'll go jump in the water, smoke a little poker lolo, and we'll have a barbecue. And we'll make sure everybody's good, bro. Don't worry about it. It's, oh, don't look, no, it's rude to look at your time in Hawaii. It's rude. You don't want to look at your watch. <laughs> that They don't like that because um, they're on a different tour. They're on Hawaii time. And and so, brother, what are you looking at your watch for, bro? We got all day, man. Don't you worry, bro. It's, it's no problem, man. It's, it's no problem. We got you. Use no worries. You know, we come. Actually, we'll send a couple of my brothers. We'll come over here. We'll help you finish that up tomorrow. You come on today. We're gonna go down to the beach. You guys, there's nowhere in Hawaii you cannot starve in Hawaii. <laughs> it's nearly impossible to starve in Hawaii. There's a lot of um, parks there, like in Ocean View. There's a couple parks in Ocean View. Every park that you go to will have a cooler that will have like ice in it or it will have like those um pads or whatever and there'll be food inside that cooler food inside that cooler you're not to take the cooler you're not to take the ice in it but whatever's in that cooler if you're hungry you can eat it if you come back next time and you bring something to put in the cooler so it's pretty hard to go hungry in Hawaii, even though food's very expensive over there. Very expensive. Mm -hmm. Stop it. I'm going to put you back outside if you whine. You want to go back outside? Stop whining. So most people don't know that, but in Hawaii, they don't. Every park I went to, there was always a cooler there with food in it. So they'll take care of people there. Um, people are very opportunistic and they'll take advantage of that. But if you're hungry and you look hungry, somebody will feed you. <laughs> it's not like that. There's a lot of the times they love to party and have luau's and, and eat and drink and, and they work too. Not that some don't work, but a lot of them don't work a full eight hour day and they have a couple people help them and they work for four or five hours and then they, they go to the beach and they smoke poco lolo and they drink and they hang out and they eat and they enjoy their life. They're not worried about a clock and time. Like I said, it's actually very rude to look at your watch in, in Hawaii. So a very different lifestyle, guys. If you've never lived like that, um, it is quite the different lifestyle. Because again, not saying that Hawaiians don't have work ethic, but They'd rather have more quality of life. They'd rather live life. Just live life, bro. It's, it's okay, man. It's, we'll get it done. It's not a problem. We have time. Don't worry about it. Let's just go to the beach. <laughs> Let's go surfing. So um, pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. Uh, yeah, always. You know what I'm saying then, Miss Cupcake? If you're hungry, oh, bro, you're hungry. You come over here, bro. It's, you know, Miss Cupcake, don't worry, sister. You come over here. We got food. We got some barbecue going over here. You want a beer? Hey, come over here. Come And that's the way they'll treat you in Hawaii, guys. It's, it's, it is very, it's lovely. It's amazing, guys. It's really, really, um, 
it's neat to see that they don't care about how much money they will make and how big their house is or they care about living life over there, enjoying life. That is Aloha. So many people never get to experience what Aloha is. Aloha is a lifestyle. It's not a word. It's a lifestyle. And to live Aloha is an experience. And it takes time to understand what Aloha is. And only, only gas, very few get to experience Aloha. People who come to the island that are not from the island know what it's like to not only hear the word, see it, but live Aloha. So I got to live Aloha, which was amazing. And I'm telling you what, I've, like I said, I've been to all 50 states. I've lived in Hawaii, I've lived in Alaska. Lived in, I'm telling you what, that state is something else. <laughs> um, right. But you see what I'm saying? You guys, it's an amazing place where people are more concerned about quality of life than their bills, which is I've never seen that in any other state I've ever been to. I've never seen people just put off life and not care, you know, like, don't worry about it, bro. We'll go get some help for you tomorrow. Okay, bro. Don't worry about it. It's not a problem. Don't worry about you stressing us out, man. Come on. Let's just go to the beach. <laughs> so it's beautiful because they help each other out, guys. They'll also be very opportunistic and invite you to their house for two years and then rob you blind <laughs> two years later. So, um, But remember, Miss Cupcake, it means hello, and aloha means, right? Aloha means hello, aloha means goodbye, means love you, but lyrics, but living aloha <laughs> and experiencing aloha is not anything like any word can put on it or any description. You have to live. And I know you know what I'm talking about. You have to live. You know what I'm saying? You have to live aloha. You have to let go of your watch, throw it away, <laughs> squat worrying about the time. Don't worry about the position you're in. Everything is okay. We'll take care of you. Everything is okay. Everything's going to be all right, bro. I don't want you to worry about it. <laughs> so I love that. You know, don't worry. Don't worry. Happy. They're very happy people, very content. Um, and they love to live life and work later. <laughs> so there are some very hardworking people on the island. Don't get me wrong, but um, the Islanders, the Islanders, they, the true Aloha, the true people who were born and raised, they don't care about time. They don't care about time. They have all the time in the world. So it gets done today, it gets tomorrow, whenever. It's okay. It's all right. It's not a big deal. <laughs> so I love that. I just love, never seen that on any other but I'll tell you what, on the big island too, there is a dark energy on that island that I've never experienced anywhere. Old too, old energy, um, old energy, different kind of energy than anywhere in the lower 48 or the mainland. A little bit of old energy here, but a very negative energy in Hawaii. I mean, so dark, it will send chills down your spine, kind of dark. I mean, you ask about it and they'll tell you stories that you don't want to hear. And you go, oh, that's why I can feel that energy coming from that place. Holy crap. <laughs> that is it. Does some darks. So don't ask. You learn to feel and sense that and steer clear of those areas, <laughs> you know, uh, Many things like church today. Learn how to climb coconut trees and live there too. So I'm sure you'll agree with me on the big island. If you live there, you know that the uh um there is energy there darker than any place I've ever been, and I've been to all 50 states. And I'm telling you, it's so strong that you can feel it. You drive and you can oh I can feel this is very, very dark. <laughs> I've never felt that anywhere else, guys. Not like that. Not like I did on the Big Island. Um, so what I was learned and taught from the locals is just stay out of those areas. Just stay away from them. If it's native, don't go there. You obviously understand, don't go there. <laughs> so um, it is a, there's not another place like the island. So it's not America. It's not America. 
it is not even close to America. So they don't act like Americans. They don't even call themselves Americans. Uh, they call it the mainland. Uh, there you go. You know exactly like all the categories exactly. That's what I'm saying. There's some spaces over there in Kona. In Oh, man, it's dark in Kona. Not too many. Definitely over there in Hilo, though. You know, there's some in the Pahoa district and stuff, some places over there. I was like, whoa, there is some bad stuff that's been going on here. You know, I could feel it. I can just, whoa, steer clear of it. So uh, always give her one. Yep. Don't, don't turn down a cigarette. When somebody asks for a cigarette in Hawaii, if you got one, you give them one. Don't say, don't tell her no. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. What an amazing place though, guys. What a unique place, Phil. Um, I would live there, but it's just too dependent. Everything on the island is brought in pretty much, other than what's grown there, you know, is brought in. So uh, they're not going to fend well when things break down. They're too close to China, um, and they're totally dependent on everything being brought into the island. It's not like there's not hope. There's not things that are grown there on the island. You know, pineapples. You ain't never eaten an avocado <laughs> until you've been to the Big Island. Yep. You guys, they have. They have avocados over there that are this big you can eat one avocado all day you can make that a whole day's meal and when you cut them open they're not they're not green they're like a like a yellow the avocados are not green they're yellow and i found out that the more yellow they are the better taste they taste like they got butter on them and those trees are all over the island. Cool. You need to get out of New York, Miss Cupcake. Get out of there, please. If you can, leave that place. That is probably the worst city to be in, hands down. Even worse than California right now. And California's second to New York. But I would not want to. And do whatever you feel. You have been. You know how to take care of yourself, I'm sure. If you lived on the island, you were born and raised, I ain't got to tell you how to take care of yourself. You know how to take care of yourself, but. I don't think I want to be anywhere near New York City right now. I don't even care if it's up. But you can literally get avocados that are this big. And you can eat them as a meal. You can make that one avocado last all day. They're that big. And like I said, the, I was I was taught that the more yellow that they are. I thought there was something wrong. The first time I was like, Whoa, what's wrong with this? They're like, Oh, that's a good one, bro. That's a good one right there. I was like, why is it this color? And they're like, the more yellow that it is, the more flavor it will have. And boy, when I tried that, I didn't even need any salt. I love putting a little bit of like Lowry's or something. You know what I'm saying? On, on that. I didn't even need any salt. Didn't need any salt at all. Didn't need any, it, you know, it tasted just um, amazing. <laughs> so they're absolutely um, very unique over there. But I don't think they'll fend very well if things break down because there's limited resources on all of the islands. And um, it's not that they can't because most people live off the grid. So it's not like they can't been... Um, it's not like they can't uh, fend for themselves because they're very independent, very self-sufficient people. And uh, they don't really rely on anybody other than themselves. But uh, I don't think as things transition that that's where I'd want to be. Um, and I do believe the island will be covered. Um, you know, a lot of the other islands. Now, Kona, you are, he are excuse me, <laughs> the big island, you're fine. You know, you guys, the Big Island is the only place that I know that you could go, you could go snowboarding. 
You could be in the snow at the top of the summit on the big island and take a couple hour trip to get back down to the beach and be snowboarding and surfing on the same day. <laughs> surfing <laughs> and 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 in the snow on a snowboard in the same day. Only on the big island. <laughs> I don't know where anywhere else you can do that. That is pretty amazing if you ask me. Um, what a cool place. Um, Hilo is amazing too, guys. Uh, Hilo is a really neat city. Um, very dark city, though. I tell you what, there is some crazy energy in the city of Hilo. Kona is a much more uppity, um, more positive energy, but totally different cities, completely like night and day. One's dark and one's light or one's um, – Hilo is very forested on that side of the island. Um, that's in the Bahoa district in the um, – very jungle-like, you know what I'm saying? Very jungle-like. And then Kona was all built. Everything that is in Kona has been brought in there. It, it, it's not like Hilo, you know, that a lot of the stuff was in that area because that's, it's more, but everything in Kona is brought into that area. So it's a lot newer too. Um, and there's a really neat energy Um Yep, that's what I'm saying. The island, the island it kind of reminds me of Oregon. Miss Cupcake, I found a lot of people from Hawaii, either from Oregon or Alaska. Those two states, I ran into more people from these two states, Hawaii and Alaska in, on the big island than anything else. Oregon, definitely not the same, but has all those similar features. That's why I love Oregon. I live in the high desert. I can be in the woods in 15 minutes. I can see the woods from my house. We've got the ocean over there. We've got peaks. We got, you know, very similar, but much, much larger in, in Oregon. Um, but uh, what a place. I don't know of any other place in the world where you could be snowboarding in the same day. Two hours later, you could be down on the beach surfing. <laughs> it's pretty crazy, man. Um, but uh, love the big island. Yep. Oh, yeah. I swim right through with all the... Um, then let me tell you another neat story too about about um, Hokana Beach, guys. Um, Hokana is one of the main areas. It's all, it's in between Kona and Hilo. It's between Ocean View and Captain Cook. It's a beach called Hokana, and it's down there, all the way down at the bottom of you know down there at the bottom of the hill. And uh, they have spinner dolphins spinner spinner dolphins you know what those are the ones that come out and they spin out of the air those dolphins protect the people at that beach if there's a shark in the area those dolphins will come in <sighs> i don't know what just happened there guys but uh i've never had that happen the stream just disconnected so Let's end it at that, guys. I'm not sure. I don't think I, I'm not sure. We're just talking about Hawaii. So I don't know how that did that. I've never had the stream go down like that. Um, I don't know what just happened. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I've never had it. Just screen went white on me. Um, I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> there goes this channel. So, um, but let me, uh, let me take a fiver here, guys. I've been on here for nine hours. <laughs> nine hours okay i love you guys i appreciate it it gets pretty lonely out here um let's take you outside real quick we'll show you real quick tour of the cabin there's the cabin that i live in boy there's my teaching um shot at the end. this is the waterless my bathroom here behind here sits there's my bedroom here behind here with a lofted bed sits up here so the heat i have a stand-up uh, tile slate shower here um, here's the wood stove that i've been told you that i got to get get going let's check the fire here oh yeah we got the fire ripping fans going why does this thing keep doing that? one second here something just happened yeah liam something happened there i don't know what that was but never had my stream do that i was a little worried i was like uh oh I know what that means on TikTok. That means no more streaming for Tracy. <laughs> so. 
I'm going to throw another shrimp on the barbie here. All right. Let's go outside real quick, guys. All kinds of different stuff. The beam. This beam holds all the pots along this backside, all my cast iron. I've got all kinds of things, different things hanging from the ceiling out here. The backside of the kitchen's all done in, well, that was a, all done in beams, very large, large beams. I got pinstriping, so um, we'll let the dogs out here. We'll take you outside and show you what it looks like. No, we got animals out here, puppies coming outside. So this is the rusty cowboy cabin that I stay in for now until I can get that underground house built. This is the rusty cowboy cabin. I will be renting out this cabin and I'll also be giving a free night stay or two inside of this cabin when I get the rusty dragon done and I move to the back. So plan on coming out here this spring and we'll, I don't know, we'll draw, put name in this cowboy hat or something. I'll figure out a way to draw names and I'll invite a couple of you guys to come out here and stay a couple nights. This property, this one here is off the grid. Here's my wind turbine. I obviously have a wood stove. Solar panels are here behind me. Uh, this is where we have all our kennels. This is where all the sheep, cows, chickens, goats, and rabbits. The hog pins are in the back. I actually tore the hog pins down because I'm not raising any more pork out here. So this is where I raise all my rabbits. And this is the, um... oh, you knuckleheads. Oh, give me one second. I don't know where the puppies got that. I'm really adamant about trash on my property. So looks like one of the puppies got a an egg cart and chewed it up. So let's take you over here and show you the, the Rancho Pollo. This is where we keep all the... Um, hey, cut it out, Pants. This is where we house all the chickens. Pants, cut it out. What are you doing, Tuggy? But this is the Rancho Pollo. We well, can't already see out here because of the glare. But this is how we, we keep all the ladies' hen houses there. That's where they nest. That's where they are nest. That's where they sleep. And this is where I keep all the rabbit cages and kennels inside. And this is the entrance inside of the... Um, oh, look at here. Little kitten's coming up there. You want to say hi? You want to say hi? There's the front of this building here. Is this Sean and that? Yeah, it's all I'm on an Android phone. So, Android, I don't have an iPhone. So, this is the kennels that where I keep all the sheep and the goats inside of this kennel. This is all the kennel again for the sheep and the goats. Obviously, we've got lots of water out here, got plenty of storage water tanks. Um, you guys stay in the yard. I'll take you over there to the Rusty Dragon here, real quick. And I'll walk back and uh, you guys stay. Stay in the yard. Stay. So, hey, be quiet. Pants. Hey, stop squeaking. Stop it. All done. All done. Go lay down if you're going to bark. It's just me. Sorry. He's, uh, he's doing his job. So. <laughs> Anybody comes in and out of the gate, he's supposed to bark. So he's doing exactly what he's supposed to do. <laughs> this is the car that my son lent me here so I could make it out of the driveway. This is uh, the truck that caught on fire one day after I bought it. <laughs> so. I do have one vehicle left out here, which is this diesel flatbed. I have it up for sale right now. I don't want to sell it, but... Um, it's a turbo diesel flatbed with the tilt on it. It's a pretty nice, uh, pretty nice unit. But I needed to get another four-wheel drive unit out here. So, <sighs> pants, be quiet over there. I'm headed over to the Rusty Dragon right now. So here's a shot of the 
the rusty cowboy from here over there there's where the ufo i don't know if you can see that there's a ufo sitting over there that i built i told you i built out a ufo that's it right there i don't know man that's one of the first fords i've ever owned it's a nice truck really was a super nice truck ran really good um i don't mean to say this but it was an old man pickup he took really good care of it the inside is just super just you can tell it's in really good shape but um yeah i don't know what i uh the bottom of the transmission plug came off and it it that transmission fluid got on the exhaust and it caught on fire so it's probably not that bad i just don't know enough about ford so okay come on boy getting should have put my boots on i'm walking in the in my slipper in my sorrel slippers in the in the snow here but this is the rusty dragon this was supposed to be for somebody who came out here i was going to give this to them i'm on 40 acres right here i have 20 acres up the road and another five but this is the rusty dragon that i have been building out here get off of these and step on these bricks we'll go inside but this is the building that i build out that i'm going to rent rent out okay and this is a single lofted cabin it's pretty tall inside i'll take you inside and show you the inside of this here but um i built there's the there's the dragon over there. there's a rusty dragon it's called the rusty dragon because there's the dragon Yeah, I don't know which engine it is first. It's a V8. I know it's a V8. So I think it's the Windsor. I think it's got a Windsor in it is what it is. So, but anyways, this is all built out of repurposed material. This whole build like the Rusty Cowboy. There's nothing new on this build. It's all old material. It's all barn ends and mill ends and, and all that. So I'll take you inside. I've got a 1200 foot well that I sourced from another five acre property that I have out here. So all my water and I have a well drilling kit. So I'll be drilling a well out here. I can't drill the well by myself. I need a second person to drill the well, but this is what I'm talking about. Somebody could come out to this land and you could build something just like this building that I'm building out right here. And you could rent this building out for between 125, 150 a night. I haven't done this side of the building yet. I'm still working on this side, but I'll take you inside and show you. This is what it looked like obviously before. And this is what it looks like after I'm, after I'm done doing what I do to it. So let's go inside. I'll show you what I got going inside. So you can do this out here, guys. Somebody like this, as soon as that's what I've been working on, because I'm tired of people stealing everything from, from me on the internet. And it's really hard to deal with people since the, the beer bug. They're just really hard to deal with. So I've got to come up with a way to make money since I don't have a stream of income. And this is the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to rent out these cabins. There's another cabin back here. And this is called the Rusty Butterfly. Where is this one at? There's the Rusty Butterfly back there another cabin that I built out. It's got a big, like the storefront on it or whatever there. But there's another cabin. I'll be renting that one out for 125 a night, 100 to 125 a night. That one has very low ceilings in it. This one has uh, higher ceilings as well as the, you've seen that the Rusty Cowboy. So let's go inside here and I'll take you inside and show you the inside of this building. So walking in here, this is the back south wall. Starting on this side here, oh, we got, this is what I chose to do to use this rusty tin, to do this tin. And then the bottom is all done with the wood. And obviously as it goes all the way up to the ceiling and each one of those panels is like that. So this is the bedroom or this will be the bedroom up here. It'll be lofted bedroom, okay? And then if I turn around here, this is the fireplace that I've been building out. I built the hearth and all the flooring. This is an old um, 
workbench with old pavers and rock. And then this is all repurposed rock that I got from another job that was taken out of another building. I put the fireplace hearth and I'm going to go ahead and probably run this all the way up this way. I was working on this the other day. What are you doing, girl? Get out of there. I think one of the kitties came in here. Huh. So this is what I was working on the other day and I had to give it up because this I could not get this up here by myself. I will, but I'm going to string this old chain up inside this cell. So this cell, I, I left these open like this, like Hawaii. <laughs> so this one has the window in it. Jibba, you're, you're trash. You're rubbish, Jibba. You're absolute rubbish. What's wrong with these people? So this will get the same rock in this cell. This one's completed. This one's done. It's got the wood with the tin on the top with the wood. Same thing here. That's the beam that I hurt myself on really bad. I dropped that beam. I was over on that end, lifting it up there. It didn't fit over that top plate over there and I had to slide it over and I dropped it and I, I hurt my back really bad a few months ago. And I mean bad, worse than I've ever heard it in a long time, but I'm doing better now. But here is the inside of these. Each one of these cells is completely insulated. As you can see, that's finished and I still need to run the tin in there. So I'm going to finish this wall. It's got a lot of stuff on it right now, but there's an old wood stove, cook stove under here. All this is the kitchen area. I'm storing everything in here. All the insulation is my work area, windows, and looks a little cluttery in here right now, but it'll look really nice once it's all, all done out here. But let me give you a shot of what it looks like from back here. But here is the entrance that I did with all the slate I can't even hardly see there we go all the slate tile from the entrance way that's all slate and again I did some extra little I've got hooks these are all metal hooks inside of the the concrete here there's some more stuff over here and there's like here's got a metal Whoa, that chain just came down, almost got me. Whoa, that was close. Almost just got taken out by that chain. Look at that. That's very heavy. That chain probably weighs uh, close to 100 pounds, <laughs> the chain. So anyways, this is the building that I'm building out right now. This is how I'm going to be able to pay my bills out here, okay? So a man's got to do something, and I'm tired of working on the internet, and I'm tired of dealing with people because people are just really hard to deal with after the COVID, so... But it will have a full wood stove in it as well. Full fireplace, hearth going up the back. And this was just a building, you know, regular shotgun building when I moved in here. So come on, girl. We're going outside. But a little shelving or stuff to set, you know, set stuff on there. But a little different. This must be the cats climbing up on the outside. Make your own mead with lemon. Oh, interesting. I've made some alcohol before, but just a couple times. I'm not a big, I don't drink alcohol, so kind of not my thing, but nothing wrong with having a drink every once in a while or nothing like that. I, ain't, I don't have any issues with people who drink just moderately. Do whatever you want moderately. I don't care what people do. Do whatever you want in your own time. So, yeah, you've seen, oh, there's Levette. She's the one who's who helped me out here. I still haven't been, I haven't worked in a little while here, obviously, Levette, but each one of them has its own little shelf. And obviously, thank you, Levette. Haven't used it yet, but I'm going to, I'm going to get to it. Levette made me a cash app donation, guys. And this is what I bought with the money she gave me. Okay. If you see up in here, you can see all these, the light showing through up here. I have to do what would be called like bird blocking or fire blocking up here on these. And so I did the one over here. 
So you can see how you can't see anything in this cell because there's a two by four. So I have to run a two by four stringer up and behind that. And then I'll insulate it and I'll put 100% silicone. But it's the, the opening is like this big. <laughs> and to swing a hammer, to try to get the hammer back in here and here is almost nearly impossible. It took me about 25 minutes to get this block in right here. So Levette gave me a donation and I got this palm nailer. So that palm nailer is air. So just be able to take the nail and go and just push it right in with an air. So thank you, Levette, because I'll be able to take all this, all these areas here and fill all those up with the two by four. I'll insulate behind it and then I'll put the two by four in and then I'll silicone all around it. And then I'll put another piece of insulation. <laughs> so it'll be super, super, none of that, none of it. You can see how all those need done. So, you know, 30 minutes, an hour, hour and a half, two hours, two and a half hours, three hours, four hours, five, six. It's going to take me almost all day to do those blocking because it's just not easy to do. Two to three minutes, one win. I can drive a nail like this in with that palm nailer. <laughs> so that's not, I'm not putting this big of nails in there. That's the one that goes through the door. But um, thank you again, Levette. I want you guys to know that your cash apps that you give me, I don't waste this money. Okay. I don't waste this money. I spend this money wisely. So it's different first eye. It's very different. It's all repurposed. Everything, you know, like look at this beautiful board that I'm going to use. Look at that sexy board right there. Woo I've had this board for years and I never knew what I was going to do with it. Actually, I was going to use this as the, is the mantle that I have here. It just came out a little too far and it wouldn't have cleared the stove. So I decided to go with this style. I'll also be putting a couple more of these up, you know, maybe one or two more. I'll string another one here, not all the way across. And then one of their not all the way across. So as you can see, this one doesn't go. I didn't want it to go all the way across on this one because I want to bring this up to here, continue up, and then that will come from here and I'll come up and then I'll have maybe one or two. I do weird things a little different. <laughs> so, but anyways, here's all the slate tile. Come on, kitten girl. Come on, girl. Kitten girl. That's going outside. Psst, psst, psst. Kitten, you're going to get locked in here. You have to stay the night in here. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. Huh? You're going to get locked in here. Come on, girl. All right. Enjoy your night. I'll come back and get you later. No, I don't have a creek on this property. But, hey, get out of here. Get out of here, girl. Go. Get out of here. Get out of here. <sighs> Silly little girl. So, all right, let me shut this up, guys. Thanks for taking a little tour out here. But right here is the mountains. There's a body of water that sits right there. There's a body of water in town that sits over here. There's two lakes over right over here by that mountain. Right on the other side of this hill right here. You drop over it and that's, um, there's a reservoir, Summer Lake, and the largest second lake in the state of Oregon sits right over here. So I'm near water. A lot of people think just because I, I don't live like a lot of this stuff here. I could put two or three houses right here. That's sit up there, but I could put another house behind that ravine right there. And you would not be able to see it. The shelter sits 28 feet from right there. That, that ground, the storm shelter back there sits 28 feet down in the ground back there. The 50 foot storm shelter. So <clears throat> these are all the materials. It's all covered with snow. That's why I can't work right now. All my material has been covered with snow. All my tin, all this tin under here. You guys see there's tin under there. 
What are you doing there, Tiddy boy? Tiddy boy, you coming over to be with the dad? You coming over to say hi to the dad? So, um, it's a good spot. It really is. It's super, like I said, a lot of people, I'm surrounded by mountains. I've got all the mountains right over here. So, I've got one of the better spots in this valley. I did a lot of research before I came out here, and I just didn't move out here real quickly. I, I, I researched this area, and I made sure that I was in a in a good spot. Um, this area has the highest value in all the valley out here. Um, obviously, I told everybody that was going to happen, and they said, oh, you're crazy. You don't know what you're talking about. But um, the 20-acre parcel next to me, Probably you could buy it for about 40000 45000 right now for that parcel over on this side of the valley because we're near all the mountains and Table Rock and all the – we've got the best spot out here. The school is right there. The school is right over there off North Lake School. So the school's not too far from where I'm at. If you got kiddos, so this is the better place. The 20-acre parcel I have is three miles that way. It's actually not too much further than the other side of that that hill right there. It's that's about three miles away um, over that way. So I'm surrounded by hills. Um, the Black Hills are right here. These are the Black Hills. Those are the Black Hills right there. All this is lifted up here. And then on the other side of this mountain, it goes down, way down. And they're actually in a completely different grow climate down there. On the other side of that mountain is in a completely different grow zone. Oh, I just heard my dog bark. Get over here! Did they get out of the gate? I just swore I thought I saw my dog walk across or go across the. Where are you guys at? Boys. Maybe that was a coyote. What do you see, Pants? I just saw that. Was a coyote out there? Did you see a coyote? <laughs> I think he must have seen a coyote. But uh, anyways, okay, so here's the... Here is the rusty dragon. So this is what I recommend. Again, this building was supposed to be for somebody else. This is what um, this is what I invited people to come out and build this cabin out. All the material was sitting in here, so this wasn't even supposed to be for me. This cabin was supposed to be for somebody else, um, and that. But nobody came out here, so I'm going to build it out myself and uh, rent it out. But I've got them up here, guys. There's there's a material right here between your city and all these piles. They're, they're all covered with snow. I could build probably another two cabins out here just with the material that's sitting right here. I've got more stacks of it in the back. I've got a 53 foot tractor trailer over there and there is a ton of wood out there, a ton of mill ends to build out there. So I've got five cabins out here as of right now and the material to build all of them out and then i probably got another material to build out another three to five cabins so i could possibly have 10 cabins out here that i could rent out you know um and this is what i people can do whatever they want out here but this is what i'm doing i call them the moonshine cabin i haven't done this side as well so um this is how I'm going to earn my keep out here so I can get myself off of the internet and stop working on the internet. It's just driving me mad. People are just hard to deal with. And um, ever since the COVID, uh, people just seem to want everything delivered. So I don't hear. Let me show. Hey, stop barking. Don't bark unless there's somebody here. It's me. I'm outside the gate. It's me. I live here. Thank you for doing your job. All done. So, here was this pickup that I was telling you. It's pretty nice. It's real clean. It was a nice pickup. Super clean truck. Not beat up. 
I can't even remember the miles on it. But again, let me pop the trunk. I'll show you what happened here. Again, the transmission thing came off, off the bottom of the tranny. I've never owned a Ford, so, um, or not this Ford. I've had a couple of them, but not this one. Okay. So I think what happened, it's not too bad. It happened. It's transmission. There's a plug in the transmission and it came off. I don't know how. I think the transmission got hot. I only drove it for know, like 20 minutes and pulled the drag with it. Just one trip around to pull the drag for the driveway. It came in, walked away from the truck. I looked back and I noticed there was some what I thought was a little bit of smoke coming out between the hood. Open up the hood and <laughs> that gave it a bunch of oxygen. That was, <laughs> that opened it up. So this is all I believe that happened though, is it melted some of these lines and I've never dealt with this before. So I think these are air lines. I thought this was all electric, but I talked with somebody and they told me that this is all air. These are all different air lines. So I found somebody else that has one of these Fords and he's going to, he's going to let me pick some parts off of it. So it does have a push bar, push button start and that melted the push button start. Some of this wiring, I might have to replace this wiring. That's for the starter. Um, but th I think that's all it did to it. So I'm pretty sure if I just replace these air lines and the cap and the transmission, this truck will go right back at it again. Um, after I talked to somebody, he said that um, because I was getting a little bit of a hard shift in the tranny, and he said there was must have been something wrong with that plug because there's something about that plug that actuates. I'm just not familiar with, with Fords. But he said, I bet you your seal, whatever that plug, wasn't in there correctly, and that's why it blew the plug out. <laughs> it blew the plug out. And it leaked on to the, to the exhaust, and that's what caught on fire. I got it out almost immediately. So I'm pretty sure I'm hoping that uh, – I just – I'm not familiar with this. If I replace this, I don't know what it, I don't know what it is, <laughs> but I think it's all air. You know, I think it has to do with vacuum and vacuum advance. So motor right there. Uh, what does it say? By 58. Is that what that says? I don't know. EFI. 5853? Five, 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 three? Five, three. Not 7.253 is what this is. So this is a 5.3. So probably won't take too much to get this thing repaired. I just don't have the extra cash for it right now. <laughs> I was hoping after I got all the land payments paid this month that I could take the extra money and start working on this thing and try to get another full drive going out here. But um, I'm going to turn this into a wood hauler. Um, if I can get this pickup running again, this is 100% going to turn into a wood hauler to go get wood. So if you're thinking about coming out this way, no, it's not diesel, it's gas. Um, this, I'm probably going to be doing cutting wood this year. I'll probably be going to the woods and stacking 50 to 100 cords of wood on this property because it's just getting more and more expensive for wood and it's um wood to me is like having cash in the bank you understand like having cash in the bank um so i'll probably be cutting uh doing wood this year as well as the the cabin so there's a living out there for somebody right here they can come straight up to the woods the woods are right there um I mean, like if, if first I came out here, first I can, we could be up in the woods. Here, I'll come through this gate here. This is the entrance to the property here. Here is a look at the the rusty cowboy there. But if, if first I came out here, we could go, we could go cut wood. And I could say, all right, well, um, 
I get 50 cords, you get 50 cords, <laughs> you know, we'll split it. If we do 50, I'll go drop the first one, one on by your cabin, one by my cabin, or we could whatever, you know what I'm saying? Or we could put it all in one and put a separator in or something. But I believe that I could get by the time fall, by the time that I can cut wood for next year, next season, I'm hoping to have 50 cords of wood stacked on this property. And I'm hoping that I can find another gentleman or a woman. It don't matter. I don't care. Ladies work hard to cut wood. There's, there's ladies who cut wood in this town. Um, I buy and then what I get, I get from a, from a lady and her husband and they're really good wood cutters. They have got the, some of the best wood in the Valley, but that's money. Okay. To me, wood is money in the bank. It's going to get colder next spring or next fall. And it's going to be a colder winter. I don't care what people think. I know the cycle. So wood will be a lot more expensive. It ran about $300 a cord out here for Ponderosa pine and lodgepole pine on an average, 250 to 300. I think it'll be at least 300 next year, 300 across the board. Gas is four or five bucks a gallon across the board, even more for your, you know, for your, um, For your non-ethanol, and I don't run anything unless it's non-ethanol in my small engine. So, um, again, just wanted to give you a little view. Out the driveway. So, right there is where I cut wood. 15, 20 minutes. 15 minutes, 20 minutes, we can cut, be cutting wood. Ponderosa and Lodgepole Pine. Um, go a little bit further over in the marsh and I can get access to Madrone. Got to go a little bit further, about an hour away to get the Madrone. Really hard, hard, hard wood. Um, other other different kinds of um. You guys want to go inside, kittens? But there's other kinds of wood out here. Um, hey, you just ran over my kitty. You just ran over my kitty. Sorry, Panner boy. The puppies just ran over the kitty going in the door. Poor boy. Poor kitten boy. Let's see how our fire is doing over here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Ooh, oh, we're letting out all the smoke. What is going on with this thing? I don't know why it seems to be um I might have to go up and clean that top portion there huh rather interesting there I'm not sure why it's doing that might just be um I don't know interesting strange strange clouds oh If I can plug you in, I'll leave you plugged in. If not, I'm going to go ahead and end the stream because this phone is weird. Bless me as soon as you said you ran over my kitty. No, that's off. Ran over my kitty. No, no, no. The, the puppies ran over my kitten. <laughs> they they walked in the door. They're not, they're not supposed to dart in or out the door. Um, they know that. No darting in or out of the door. I don't think it plugged in. Darn it. I don't think it plugged in, guys. Oh. Okay. Hold on one second. What's going on here? Okay. Well. I just I had to check this message. I didn't see. My, my son just sent me a couple messages. Very nice. Show me a picture of his collection of his precious metals. Precious metals. Do not take that from that cat. Whew. 
So that's a little cabin tour there to show you what I got out here. Again, I've got multiple buildings out here. I'm hoping that by springtime, I'll have all these cabins built out and then I can rent, rent them out during the um, springtime. And I'll have a good source of income out here. Won't have to worry too much about buying and selling and trading as much as I have done in the last, you know, 15, 20 years. Tango, go, go, please. You're just standing there right in the middle. And that's what I would encourage anybody. Um, nice, Alaska. Part of Alaska you in. Um, but uh, this is what I'm hoping to have ready by springtime, guys. And I think that anybody else could come out to this valley where I'm at and do the same exact thing. I call my cabins moonshine cabins. But I think anybody can come out here. I choose to do an older style as you can see from what I have here. But I think people could do modern cabins. Like you could do shipping containers. And um, do them all modern. You know, all, all glass, all glass in the ceilings, make them all modern. It doesn't have to be, um, it doesn't have to be old like mine is. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, um, I like old stuff. I don't like anything new. <laughs> As you can see, everything, um, oh, well, there's all kinds of, you work on a tractor and you can make 125 bucks an hour out here working on tractors, a hundred bucks an hour. Um, you can drive a swather, um, and cut fields and do, um, haying. And, uh, the farms are always hiring out here. There's farmers who work year round out here who raise cattle. And so they don't just, you know, they don't just grow during the, you know, the spring to fall. They, they work year round. So there's year round work out here. Um, plenty of farm work. If you're a mechanic, um, sure. You can get a truck driving job. You can drive hay out of this Valley and stay local and just take it to, um, just within the state, you don't even have to leave the state and some people don't even leave the state. So plenty of truck driving jobs. I have a CDL. I don't use it, but I have a CDL. Um, the trust plant down here is always hiring. They'll hire truck drivers down there. Um, all these farmers hire for hay to drive the hay out of the Valley. Um, some of them will just, some of them will actually pay you to stay on their land work their farm and drive hay into like Prineville or switch them around the valley here. Um, they all do pretty well. Um, if you're a subcontractor and you can do, yeah, you don't need a CDL for a farming though. You can get a farmers and, and, and a lot of these farmers will actually pay for you to get your CDL. They'll pay for you to get your CDL. They'll cover that um, if you'll drive for them. A lot of them, you don't need a CDL as a farmer though, because you're driving a farm vehicle. You don't need a commercial vehicle. It's not that they have a whole different license for, for people who drive for the farm. You do not need a CDL um, to drive some of these hay trucks, which is unbelievable, but that's the farming. That's the way farming works. I mean, eventually I'd like to try to register some of this property. It's an agriculture property an AG2 property. That way I can put farm vehicles on all my uh, plates on all my farm vehicles and I wouldn't have to pay to register them ever again. And um, it's like a one time farm plate and there's just a lot of benefits to being a farm. So, um, but there is a gas station up there that's always hiring. They have a deli inside there. They have a, um, uh, a Cooper's place for food. That's the busiest food one in all um, all the Coopers that Ed Staub owns, um, that's the busiest one. There is multiple, um, companies out here that deal with farming, wells, um, uh, 
there is a well drilling company, Tom Search. He's always hiring somebody. Um, there's work galore out here. There's all kinds of work out here. So um, I just don't work for these people because I fight with them. <laughs> I fight with the farmers. I rag on them because they're sending all their hay. You know, a good chunk of this hay is going to China through the Dinsdales over here by the school. Probably 90% of this hay leaves this valley and goes to China. So I've been ripping the farmers behind since I've been here, telling them that they're sellouts and they're punks and they're, they're thugs and they're criminals and they should be not. I don't care how much money they make sending their, their hay to China. I struggle as a farmer out here. I raise hogs. I raise sheep. I raise goats. I raise pig. I raise, you know, I need feed. I raise rabbits. And if I have access problem getting access to feed and I live in a valley, see the number one alfalfa in the whole wide world is grown right here in this valley. Right here, you will not find a more nutrient dense rich or high nutrient dense rich alfalfa anywhere on the planet. People buy this alfalfa from all over the world. So maybe not all of it's going to China, but a big portion of it is going to China. So because these have people's have millions of dollars doesn't impress me. I call them out and tell them you're a tyrant. Why am I struggling to buy hay in this valley and feed when I raise animals? And because you guys all ship it out to other countries, you're sellouts. I don't care if you have millions of dollars, you're punks and you're sellouts. Your, your millions of dollars don't impress me. I have a family that's very wealthy. My family's all been in the movie industry. They got millions of dollars. I don't care about that. Your money doesn't mean anything to me. You're selling this people in this valley out. We have the most high nutrient dense alfalfa in the world. And why am I struggling to get feed out here as a farmer? <laughs> so I call them out as sellouts. And I've been calling them out since... Um, since I've been here, I call them out because um, they've got millions and millions of dollars, you know, um, just in tractors, not even the land, not their safe. These people are very wealthy farmers out here. Not all farmers are very wealthy. Actually, most farmers aren't wealthy. Most farmers just get by with feed costs and fuel costs and all that, but they got a racket going out here. You know what I'm saying? So... Um, and our water. So they didn't want people like me to come out to this valley and call them out. And so they said they were going to run me out of here. They were going to unalive me and come down my driveway. And they have, they've done that to people out here. They've run people off out of here. People get scared of them, get scared of their money and they leave. They can't make it. They get the cops harassing them like the cops harass me and they'll, they, they run out of here. So I, all these farmers told me 10 years ago, when I bought this property that I told him this town is going to grow up. It's not going to be big like Ben, but it's going to start growing quickly because this is just a cycle and you can't stop the cycle. The oldest clothing on the planet was found right here in my backyard. Multiple clothing. They just found an 18,000 year old camel tooth at that settlement in Riley, Oregon. That's I can spit and it'll, the wind will blow it right over there. Riley's just right, right up Wagon Tire Highway. So this place is biblical. And I knew that before I moved here. And I told them that this is one of, this is the oldest place in the Northern Hemisphere. And oh, you, no, it's not. No, you're, you're crazy. You're, you're, you know, this town will never grow. There's been 10 people just like you saying to come in here. This town was going to do it. Guess what? You're no different than the rest of them. We're going to run you out of here. Well, guess what? I'm still here 10 years later and everything I told these farmers that was going to happen has happened. They just didn't put the largest dollar general in the state of Oregon in my little township out here for no reason. Yes, the largest dollar general in the whole state is right here. So this town is growing tremendously. There's a lot of people who've come here and they absolutely love this valley. Um, it's very caught, very reasonably priced still at this point in time. It's not overly priced. People should have got out here when I first came out here. You know, that, that lot when I first came out here would have been about $15,000 to $20,000. Now it's forty-five. Now it's forty-five. 
You can buy a property on the other end of town. You can buy a property on the other end of town for under a thousand acre still to this day. I can get you property out here for under a thousand dollars an acre for probably a, a 10 or 20 acre parcel. In town, it's going to be a little bit more, obviously, because it's in the little town. But on the outskirts of town, out in the country area, we only got a little teeny tiny town. You blink, you'll miss it. It's not that big a town. But on the other side of town, where the largest set of sand dunes in 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 America or in the Americas in in the northern hemisphere, is right here in Christmas Valley, Oregon. People come out here to the sand dunes to ride these dunes instead of going to the coast. It's way crowded at the coast. There's tons of room out here to ride. Actually, since the COVID, people have been coming out here and they haven't stopped. I pointed this out to a lot of people. They're like, dude, I noticed this. It's crazy until you mentioned it and never even thought about it that way. But you're right. They have not stopped coming out here since the COVID. They even come in. They're out here right now. There's snow out in the dunes and they're still riding out there on the snow in the dunes. So there's a whole business right there. There's a gentleman who opened up a racetrack before you turn off to the dunes to pick up business. I could open a food cart and just bring it out to the dunes every day and probably make a good, decent living. So, uh, well, yeah, we have four seasons here. We, we get, you know, I mean, some of them are a little bit last year. It didn't not, not, not a very long fall, obviously, but, um, not too many people had a long fall last time either. It switched pretty quickly. So, um, it's been very mild out here. Um, this place was way more extreme when I moved here 10 years ago, it is mild out very, very mild. Like this last winter has been very mild. This morning was the first morning that I've seen in months in the teens, you know, all last winter, we were a little bit colder, but it still wasn't that, you know, we didn't get the snow. We got three times as much snow as we did last year. Last year, we got snow. It went away. We get a little snow. It went away. We get a little snow. It went away. It just didn't really ever get a bunch. And we haven't gotten a ton this year. You know, we got about six inches this time and it'll melt off here in a couple couple few days it's supposed to get warm here the kind of at the end of next week so um yeah so uh definitely things are changing you know things are shifting you know on, on this earth they're shifting dramatically things aren't staying the same as they as they were so i mean we had tornadoes last year in california dueling tornadoes in february and then later in the year we had tornadoes again this year in march in California, tornadoes in California? No, that's not a thing. So, but it is now. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think I, I think that um, no, we don't. I don't live in an area where I'm not quake. I live where the um, Vanessa. It's in my description. It's predestined for light with the dollar sign in front of it. If you want to help me, I appreciate it. You know, like I said, I'm going to get by this month. After I get by this month, guys, I'll be fine. If my wallet wasn't stolen and I didn't have all that bank account money taken out of my account, I wouldn't have the issue that I'm having right now. But um, obviously, I've been spending a lot of time on the Internet. You know, I've been on live for nine hours and 33 minutes right now. Putting my treasure up in heaven, not on this earth. But uh, as you can see, I love to share. I want to share. I'm hoping that... Um, We'll get a few people out here um, by spring and everybody will have a good life. They won't need to worry about dollars or cents. That's it's not necessary. You'll still, if you want to get a part-time job, full-time job, you can get a full-time job and still work this farm and probably still have a life out here. So don't need a full-time job unless you just got a lot of credit card debt or something, you know? Yes. Uh, I thought those were half outs. Be very careful when you're buying fractional silver, Elijah. That, and I'm not saying that that it's not possible, but there is a lot of fakes that are produced in that half ounce. So I do know you probably, if you bought it from a LCS, yes, and it has high premiums. Yep, you know, you know, what I'm saying just be careful, okay? Because sometimes the fractional silver, that's where they really like to. A lot of fakes in the fractional, unfortunately. I don't know why. Um, all over spot. Yeah, there is some bulk right there. The prices right now, 
So what? Are you going to care when it's a hundred? When it's a thousand times face, Elijah? You're not going to care that you paid twenty five times face, right? If it, when it's a thousand times face, you're not going to care. You know what I'm saying? So you got it. Just keep stacking. Just you're doing. You know how to do this. You've seen me do it. You've done it. You had your own five five pounds of silver already. So um, it's too bad your uncles are thieves and stole all your silver. So it is what it is. They'll pay the price for that someday. Yeah. Yeah, there's still there's still some new nismatic value. Yep, there's still some new nismatic value. And and he bought um those look like half ounce, not quarter ounce. I thought those were half ounces. Um some half ounce buffalo rounds. And um but fractional silver, man, that is the way to go. Um is that what you paid for the for the buffalo rounds? Was 20 times 25 times do they charge you times face? I wonder if they do that in some place. I never thought about that. They didn't charge you per ounce. But what did you pay over spot? Or quarter ounce rounds. Okay, they weren't. I thought I saw a half. I mean, silver's 25 bucks right now, 24 or something, right? So you paid 32. Um, spot is about three bucks right now, three to five bucks. So 8, 16, 32, 25 plus 4, 20. That's not bad. You're going to pay more for a fractional. Absolutely. But now instead of you bought fractional, you'd have what? 48, 48 quarter, right? 48 transactions instead of one. Instead of one transaction, right? That's one transaction. No, not 48, is it? Well, 14 dimes. What am I thinking? 14 dimes. So you'll have quarter, you'll have four. What am I thinking? You'll have four. You'll have four transactions instead of the one. That's brilliant. Even if you had to pay a little more for the premium, you're getting to break up your silver into four transactions. You don't put your eggs in one basket, right? <laughs> When silver gets really expensive, it's going to be a lot harder to spend this five ounce bar than it is this one ounce round, right? I'm going to probably have to buy something a lot bigger with this purchase, right? I'm probably going to have to sell this silver before the end of this month, even though I don't want to, to pay my land payments. But that's why I have it. It's, it's liquid, and I if I need to take it to the coin shop, I'm going to. I don't have no choice. I just don't have a choice. That's why I have it. This piece of silver someday could pay for every bit of gravel that I need on this property. I might, I could probably buy 50 loads of gravel with this someday. So I'm hoping that the Lord will help me provide and sell this generator that I've got over here. I don't want to sell it, but I don't want to sell my silver. I'd actually rather sell my generator now than I would sell the silver. Um, because I know silver is going to, it's already starting to catch up. Silver is the most undervalued asset on the planet. There's not a more undervalued. Silver was seen in at $50 an ounce before in 2012. For that round was over 50 bucks plus this plus the premium. Okay. In 1980, this went up to 50 bucks. Why is it sitting at $25 right now? That's ridiculous. Can you name any asset that's sitting at half of its all time high? Gold is right at its all-time high right now. It, it's hovering over the whole all-time high. So it's going to play catch-up. Gold always leads out first. Silver catches up, makes higher highs and lower lows every single time. So that means silver will have more. There's more money in silver right now than there is gold. Yeah, don't buy half dollars. Don't buy 40 cents right now. Stay away from that. If you can... Find them, don't throw them away or whatever if you find them. But that when you that you made a right decision there, Elijah, because they will. But think about when you melt that silver down. We've talked about this before off side of this platform. You know, like nickels, they just don't have enough silver in them. But when silver gets expensive, people aren't going to care about that forty percent silver. They'll they'll take all that forty percent. You guys, a. Uh, a half dollar from 1964 to 
to 1971 has 40% silver in it. Anything from 1964 or older has 90% silver in it. Like, like this U.S. Walking Liberty or Silver Eagle. This has 90% silver in it. This has 9.999% silver. Well, three nines, fine. This is 22 karat gold, if it was gold. 999 would be the equivalent of 22 carats. Four nines, fine, would be the equivalent of 24 carat, but in silver. They don't count it that way. I'm just going to try to give you guys an idea of what, what I'm saying. So what would... 40% B. Probably something like 10 carat, somewhere around there, I bet. Something like that. It'd be like 10 carat gold, right? So will it still have value? Yes. But when they have to take that coin and melt it down to get the silver out of it, you lose some of the silver anyways in that process by doing that. So melting it down, like your nickels, you have silver war nickels from 1942 to 1945, they're 40% silver but they're not very sought after because you have to take out all the other the metals out of it to get to the silver not profitable at this point in time to melt the to melt it down nice so i would recommend staying away from the 40 percent for now if it's all you can get your hands on it's silver 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 okay but um when there's a percentage of silver, silver in a coin, they have to melt all that off. And you're going to lose some of the silver when that happens. Yep, they don't deal in nickels. It's just not worth their time. See, exactly. Thank you, Ewok, proving that. Thank you, Lars. That's it's just not at this time. You guys, when silver's 50 bucks an ounce, they'll be buying all the nickels you got. <laughs> they'll buy every nickel you have. They'll want all your war nickels. You guys, I remember when people used to shun. Elijah, did you ever see me collect anything from 64 to 71? Anything that was 40% silver? Did I ever put anything 40% silver away? No. It was just not profitable with the melting, the smelting, melting it down. I went for bullion or 90%, right? I had a couple war nickels, but I didn't chase war nickels. I didn't chase halves, 64 to 71 halves. That's not going to matter, guys, when, when silver is 50 bucks an ounce. And once it reaches 50, it's off to the races. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's just not profitable. So, but now there's a little bit of a, an interest in silver. And I see some people looking at these halves because they're harder and harder to get access to the, um, to the 90 percenters you know as a matter of fact when's the last time you've seen a, a silver dollar when's the last time you got a 50 cent piece at the store when you know they're still in circulation they still make them every year but when's the last time you had one in your hand from the store do they give you a 50 cents and change most of the time they take them in it goes to the bank and they don't ever come back out of the um out of the cash register door so not a very big thing but once silver hits 50 bucks an ounce, 60, 70, 80, 100, 2, 300. And if a Bitcoin can be 69,000, you cannot tell me that there's no way that that can't be 69,000. Yes, that's the way to do it. I told you that. Just keep buying rosy dimes and your quarters that way now. Don't worry about the, the mercury dimes. They're nice. They're neat to look at. That's a mercury dime, guys. That's what a mercury dime looks like. But this is actually made into a one ounce piece. Remember the mercury dimes? They have that on the back and that on the front. You see that? So if you're looking at buying what is called fractional or constitutional silver or junk silver, nobody's calling it junk silver anymore, are they? When you got to pay 25 times face. I don't think it's junk silver anymore, but again, 
I if I would if I could buy any kind of silver right now, any kind of silver right now, I would buy constitutional silver. You can get 14 dimes for one ounce. 14 dimes. Oh, he's going back to the coin shop. You can get 14 dimes. 14 transactions. So I believe that constitutional silver or anything that's 1964 or older is the best buy, even though the premiums are high right now on them. I still think it's your best buy. Um, I wouldn't turn around from buying bullion. I think that the price of eagles right now are way too low. Way too low on eagles. This premium on this coin right here, when the premium on this was $10, the premium on this was $25. Look at that pink hue it's getting there. Woo, I love the... $10 spot over spot, $25 over spot. So this was about 30 bucks. 30 bucks, a little over 30, 32, 33, 34 when the premiums got a little high. This went up to 50. I've been in the silver game so long that I used to be able to buy these in the bin as this. In the in, in the bullion bins. Because if it was scratched or like this one, I've held on to it, I keep it in my pocket. It doesn't have that new numismatic value because it's not uncirculated, brilliant condition. I carry it around everywhere I go stick it in my pocket okay but if you copy this this is bullion this is 999 silver okay this is pure silver this is not a u.s minted coin this is a one dollar coin a silver eagle i could get one dollar for this at the store or it'd be the stupidest thing you could ever do is spend it for a dollar people do because they don't know the value on it not very often anymore but if I copy some people, why is the premium so expensive on those coins? Well, first, it comes from a mint. So it's legal tender to begin with. This, if you copy this coin right here, you'll probably go to jail for probably three years, maybe five years for, for copying and, and, and duplicating this coin. If it wasn't real silver, you get in trouble, you go to jail. You go to jail for probably three years, two to five years. You copy this one, you're going to go to federal prison. This is a U.S. currency. You cannot copy or exchange or deface or, well, you can deface it, but you, can, you can't you can face value change it. You can cut holes and circles, put on a necklace and fold it and bend it, but that's not defacing a coin. Defacing is changing the value of the coin. So... Copy this, go to jail for a couple years. Copy this, go to federal prison for probably 10 or 15 years. See why it has a higher premium? That doesn't make sense. Why do Silver Eagles have such a high premium? Uh, the feds will be on your butt if you try to copy this. The state will be on you if you copy this. State, federal. You understand why this costs more money now? <laughs> There we go. Dispersing Nate Waste knows exactly what I'm talking about. You're going to go to federal prison if you try to copy this. You're copying currency. You might as well just $100 bills. They don't tell you to do that, but that's what you're trying to do. Okay? So this coin right here, to me, is the best value right now on the market. I would still buy fractional silver, personally. This is not economic advice. I'm not an economic advisor. Seek your own economic advice. But I'm telling you what I would do because I've got 30 years in the game. I think these are way too cheap right now. $5 over spot when the spot price was $25 over spot. And these are like three bucks over spot. And these are only about $5 over spot right now. So yes, these are a little bit more than these. But I just told you why. And that's way too cheap. So I think $5 over spot is a steal on Silver Eagles. If you notice, I don't even have one of those new silver eagles. That's how long it's been since I've been able to purchase silver. <laughs> I don't even have a new silver eagle. And how many years have they been out? That's pretty sad, guys. I haven't been able to buy any silver in that long. But that's okay. It is what it is. Um, 
But U.S. currency, $1 coin, premium, a little bit higher, 90% silver, about a 2 to 3 maybe $4 premium over the spot price. And remember, when you're buying something at spot price, that's the paper price of silver, not the actual physical metal. So when you see it's $24 over spot or 24 bucks, 25 bucks, that's not for this coin. If you want to hold this physical piece in your hand, you're going to have to pay a premium for it. Now it used to just be a buck, just a dollar forever, guys. It was only a dollar over spot, maybe a buck 50 for these. I don't care what the premiums are. It doesn't even matter what the price of this metal is. Price is a tool of manipulation. You're not going to care if you pay $25 an ounce or $50 an ounce when it's $200 an ounce, are you? Are you? Oh, man, I, I can't believe I paid $50 an ounce for that when it was, you know, God, I no, you're not going to care at all what you paid for it when it's $300 an ounce. And I want to tell you, the idea is to never sell this back for money ever, 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 ever. Would you give them a IOU? A debt note for an actual real piece of money, that is money. Remember, they sold Christ for 30 pieces of silver. So, the idea is to never sell this back to a pawn shop or to your coin dealer. Your coin, you don't take this to pawn shops. You take this to where my son is headed to the coin shop. He's not going to the pawn shop, although you can get silver and gold at pawn shops. But they're going to charge you more or maybe less if you know there's pawn shops that don't keep up on the current spot price. And there's times you can go in and get a good deal from a pawn shop. But you have a very good chance of getting fake at a pawn shop. Probably not. They have testers. They have ways to test the coins. They're not stupid. They're in the business. Most pawn dealers are very smart, brilliant people who own the pawn shop. The backbone of our country for a long time. They give you a loan you can afford. If I take this into the pawn shop, they're not going to give me the price of, of what it is to sell it. How are they going to make a dime? How are they going to turn their light? How are they going to keep their lights on? Are they ever warm when you go into a pawn shop during the during the, the winter and nice and cool in the summer? It's because they're paying to heat that building and cool it. They got lights and cover costs or anything like that. So they're not pawn shops are the the drizzle, man. They are the best thing since sliced bread. A pawn shop's going to give you a loan for this where you can actually afford to go back and get it back. Aren't that nice of them? And everybody, oh my God, the pawn shops are not. Pawn shops are the, they're the driz. They're going to give you a loan that you can actually afford to pay back. If they gave you something so expensive, you, you wouldn't, why would you sell it to them? They couldn't turn around and sell a buck on it. So stop going into pawn shops, asking them for top dollar for everything, guys, and thinking that they're ripping you off. They're not ripping you off. They're giving you a chance to buy it back at a reduced rate. If you think about the value of what you owe, you know, own. And yeah, there's going to be a premium. Of course, they're giving you a loan, but they're giving you a loan that you can afford to pay back. So I love pawn shops because they're the backbone of this country. They've kept this country alive now for a long time. That and Hispanic people that go into the fields that go in and pick the food that you Americans are lazy and you are too good. And above that, they come in from out of countries and come here and make a good wage more than most of you Americans do, believe it or not, because that's too, too good for you to bend over and pick food. But Hispanic people are the backbone of this country and have been for decades. And pawn shops are the backbone of this country because they've been able to lend people and give them loans that they can actually afford to pay back. So stop getting on the people that have come into this country for the last 20 years. They came here and most of them got a job the minute they came here. They got a cell phone and started paying taxes more than you guys on your EBT cards. You lazy Americans, you don't want to do nothing. That These people, I've been in the business of selling food for 10 plus years. And in 10 years, I probably had maybe one or two Hispanic people try to pay me with a food card. An EBD card. And I had thousands of, of, of white and other Americans that pay me with an EBT card. So most of these people that you hate and you are running shade on have paid way more into this country than you have. They came here on the first day they went to work or second day. 
They got a cell phone and paid taxes on it. They got gas. They paid taxes on it. They went to the store and paid taxes. And you, you run shade on them. Now, I know these people are coming across the border now are completely different. Not everyone's bad. Not everyone's good. Actually, the numbers of people that are coming across the border now, it only takes like a small percentage to be nefarious and we're going to have a problem. But I'm trying to explain to you that the backbone of this country has been a spag people and the backbone of getting money to put in your pocket has been done by the pawn shops. So I have a much phileo for the pawn shops because they get a bad rap. But you can buy and I have bought silver from the pawn shops and sometimes they don't get up to the current price. That's raised up or lowered. Sometimes you say, hey, this is a little more expensive. A lot of times they'll fix it. Oh, hold on. Let me go check in here. Let me look. But sometimes if you go into a pawn shop and you know what you're looking for, you can go in there and they forget to raise the premium. The premium's got it, whatever. And they're sitting at a lower price. So pawn shops are a good way to buy silver and gold. Not often. But you don't ever want to sell your gold or silver to a pawn shop because they're not going to give you is nearly as much. My son just left, got off here, and he's going to his local coin shop, your LCS. Because they'll give you spot price. Spot price. Maybe a little bit over spot. During the during when these premiums got really high, I know that Andy Sheckman at Miles Franklin was paying $20 over spot for these. The premium was at $25. It had to be uncirculated condition, but... He was paying $20, almost 20, 19 bucks over spot for these. And as many as you could ship him, he would buy them from you. So I believe that if you, if you do right, that you can get from pawn shops. But if you're going to take to sell this back, that's why you need to establish a relationship with your local coin shop. So when you walk in there and you're like, oh my gosh, guys, I have to sell this. They're like, oh. All right, Tracy, well, we'll give you spot price for it. We're sorry, you know, but we'll give you spot price for it. You're not going to get spot price most of the time at your pawn shop. So you need to establish a relationship with your local coin dealer. So that God forbid, because like me, I might have to take this back to the coin shop and sell it. I'll probably get about 125 to 150 bucks for it. That sucks because if I have to take this back, I was planning on trading this for like 50 loads of gravel. At $250 a load. <laughs> Does that make sense? So this is liquid. You never want to sell this back to them. It, it's there if you need it. Right. That's some do. Some do. Yeah. So I'm hoping, and I'll let you know, guys, I've, I didn't get myself in a pickle. God put me in the pickle. I mean, I dropped my wallet, but I dropped my wallet and somebody picked it up and spent all my money. So I don't have my land payments this month. They were spent by somebody else. The dog food money, somebody spent it. They got my credit cards and drained both my account out of my cash app card and my credit card. Well, I'm glad I have some silver. So I'm glad I have some silver. Because now I can actually go if I need to. If this generator doesn't sell, I'm going to have to go to the local coin shop. And I'm going to have to. What are you doing, buddy? Are we getting up there with your sissy? So, But it's liquid. And if I need to, I'll sell it. And I'll probably get right at spot price from my coin dealer. They'll give me spot price for it. They won't do 90% because I've established a relationship with them for many years. So they won't do that to me. That's why I recommend that you, they could do that to somebody that doesn't have a relationship. Well, the pawn shops down here is doing 90%. So, you know, so that's why I have it, guys. Like I said, please, 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 Father, do not make me trade the silver in. I already had all my silver stolen. I don't have that much silver now. Please don't make me take. This is supposed to pay off my land. But I will take it to pay my land payments if I need to, guys. That's what it's there for, right? Sucks I won't get my 50 loads of gravel or whatever, 10 loads or 20 loads of gravel for it. Because the idea was never to buy this and trade it back for dollars. 
The idea is you trade this back for either gold, like somebody just said, trade it for gold when the ratios close, or trade it for a piece of land. This five ounce bar could very well in the next year or two buy a piece of property. When everybody wants silver and there's hardly, hardly any silver out because 2016 was peak silver and every year they make less silver than it's actually the demand for silver. So I don't know. <laughs> it's up to God. You know, like I said, I have 37 things now. I list five more things online. I have 37 things for sale online, but nothing is sold in two and a half months. Not one thing. I haven't gotten not one response because I know my, they shut my internet down for the overlay video. So it's my bad. I knew before I put that video out, they were going to crush me and shut me down electronically. And they've done the same thing here. I don't even know what my subscriber count is at right now, but there's been thousands of people that have come through this room. I doubt that I picked up another 10 or 15 subscribers in 10 hours. I was picking up a hundred a day, 200 in a day on this platform. But ever since I put out the water overlay video, no more. Actually, I'm starting to lose subscribers on this channel. I'm paying the price, but I don't care. I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep showing the water overlay app, and I'm going to keep trying. And God will provide if needed. He'll take care of it. Something will sell. I think I got another cash app. Somebody else gave me another cash app. So... Oh, three, eight. Oh, okay, cool. We moved up there a little bit. So we're picking up some subscribers. Cool, cool. Um, guys, it ain't about that either. I, I'm here for you guys. It isn't about the numbers. I don't care about that. I don't care about the numbers. It only helps. You know what I'm saying? It only helps people to get the message. So we can bring more people in and tell more people what's going on. People can do whatever they want from this information. So, um, Let's take a break. 10 hours is a long time to be streaming, guys. That's more. That's two hours of overtime, okay? two. I just worked two hours of overtime with you guys. I love you guys. I really do. I cannot thank you enough. You guys have given me a bunch of encouraging comments. And I know we've had a lot of riffraff come in here, and I've addressed the trolls here and there and fired a few of them in or out. But um, I thank you for your time and your ear. I'll, I'll come back on here a little bit. Let me take a break. I'll be going for 10 hours. Just get off this for a little bit do some research and I'll come back on. Okay. I'll come back on here. You guys wanted me to come back on. I'll come back on for the end of the night. We'll talk more about silver survival. We can play. What if you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's a long time on 10 and a half hours. So, but that's okay, guys. You, I love you guys. I appreciate it. I got nobody else. I mean, I could go out there and work. You see what I'm up against snow and stuff right now. So it's okay. I, I'll, I'm going to, I want to try to work with you guys right now. You know what I'm saying? I want to work with you guys. So um, I'll be back. Let me drop that real quick, the link. Um, get some questions together for me for the next stream. I, I'm not always good about answering every question. I, I'm, I'm flawed, guys. I'm a flawed man. I'm filthy rags. I'm donkey dung on the bottom that, the, that, that, that Christ rode in the donkey on. I, I'm not better or above anybody else. I I'm actually have a lot of issues, <laughs> you know, I, whatever. I'm kind of weird. Who do you know that's built a UFO? Some of the strange things I've done. But um, I love God's word, and I love sharing that with you. And I love that I have somebody that I can come into. You know, this morning I woke up, guys, and I was so upset at God again. I'm like, <sighs> alone again. <laughs> Another day at the farm with nobody out here, you know? God, why? All right, God, I'm not going to question you. I love you, Father. I'm sorry. I get weak, Father. You must be doing this for a reason. It hurts to be alone, though, Father. I, I want I want to share what I have. But okay, Father, I'll be patient. And um, like I said, I got up at 3 o'clock in the morning because I passed, you know, passed out a little early last night. I was just a little exhausted because I streamed all yesterday and I drank the coffee, guys. Sometimes when I drink coffee, it makes me pass out <laughs> at the end of the night. So it doesn't make me sleepy. I'm wired backwards. I drink coffee and I get sleepy. So um, I appreciate you guys being here for me for 10 hours because I can sit here and study, obviously. I've done a lot of studying or I can hang out with you guys, my family and not feel so alone and isolated. So I appreciate that. You do not know what you guys have given me. This channel is such a blessing. After that TikTok stream got taken down, guys, it was a long couple, you know, I waited about a month and a half. And after I tried to grow that channel up, I just couldn't get 
any traction over there. So, um, having this channel and having it grow as fast as it did in three weeks is a blessing. Yeah, well, we like the trolls, right? Uh, three, four, seven, and I haven't refreshed it since then. Cool, yeah. So I really haven't been able to get a whole lot of traction, guys. I've actually been looking at my viewer count. If you look at my viewer count, you can see it. <laughs> look at my analytics, and then it just, it just flattens out. So they've done taking, in, and actually I'm seeing some more numbers in here this time, which is cool. So obviously they've let up on the stream a little bit. It's been a long time since, you know, I've done 10, 15 streams and about the most that I've had is maybe 10 or 15 people. And and we've had over, there was over a hundred and something earlier in, in here inside of the, in, in the chat room. So, um, something we broke the, we broke the cycle here today. I don't know how we did it, but, um, I think it's my ranting guys. And I, if I bet you, if you watch this number, if I just start ranting, I don't talk about it. I just start ranting. That number will go up. Oh, see, there it goes. <laughs> see how that works? People want that. <laughs> so. Forbidden our horse. All right. So thank you, brothers and sisters. I love you guys. I thank you for your ears. You've made my life. You've made a difference in my life. Would you realize what you've done for me? You've made my isolation. I feel like God is torturing me sometimes, guys. I really feel like, God, you know, are you are you serious? You know, I, I, I'm a veteran. You, you put something out of its misery. It, if it's suffering, you know, you, you put it out of its misery. So I'm like, God, what are you doing here? You know, why are you, why, not why? I don't, you know, this is hard to deal with. Day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, hoping that somebody will come and nobody ever shows. My son is the only person that's ever showed up to this property, guys, and 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 helped me. Daniel came here for a couple of days, but he was a drifter, and he, he didn't, you know, one person in 10 years? Don't tell me I haven't tried. Like I said, for the last five years, I've been opened up all this property to come out here. Again, that's why I have five cabins out here. Three of them almost all the way built. The other one you know, all the material sitting there and lots of other material sitting on, you know what I'm saying? So I tried, I mean, when I opened up the TikTok, I literally threw myself at you. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey, don't, 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 don't. Uh, okay. Whatever. That's fine. That's fine. That's okay. Get him out of here. Get him up against the wall. So much love guys. If God is, if God has it and God wants me to take this silver into town and sell it and I don't get my gravel and I can't pay my land off with it because that's what it was for, was to pay off my land, I will, guys. I will because that's what it's for. I'm hoping to God because he controls my life. I have 37 things online. Tomorrow, I'm not going to come on here as early. Tomorrow, I've got to get and get that propane tank brought up to the front. I thought the generator would sell, guys. I have it up there for 699 bucks. It's like brand new Honda generator. The cheapest one online that I saw was 850 bucks used. I'm like way under the price that <laughs> it should have already sold. So I don't know why it's, you know, my Peter Wright anvil. It's at $6.99 a pound. You can't buy a Peter Wright anvil for any less than 10 to $12 a pound. I'm sitting at half the price. I haven't even got one hit on it. Not even one. Not even one hit on the generator. That's insane. So I know that I'm being electronically shut down. So. <laughs> um, what are insane prices? Hey, Tyler, don't, 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 don't void him yet. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I just wanted to say something too, but that's okay. I don't worry about it. Um, you guys are like, get him out of here. He supports Trump. Why do you support a guy that decorates his house with Satan? Are you serious? You're going to decorate? I'm going to decorate my house with Satan and call myself a Christian. You want to still vote for me? I'm running for pretendant in 2024. 
I'm going to decorate my house. I'm a Satanist, but I'm going to call myself a Christian. You still want to vote for me? I'm Donald Trump. So, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, those are okay. My prices are cheap, so I don't know what's going on. Again, you guys, if you look up a Peter Wright anvil, that's like the Lamborghini of anvils. And that's a 144-pound anvil out there. That's not a small anvil. That's a good size. They make bigger, but that's a good – anytime you see – Try to look up a Peter Ryan anvil right now. Peter Ryan by anvil right now. And I guarantee it's going to be 10 bucks a pound. 10 bucks a pound. <laughs> so um, I'm being electronically shut down, guys. I know for certain now um, it's been almost three months since I've sold anything. So um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's going to take God to, to help me out. But I feel um, I feel good knowing that God spoke to my heart. And he said, Tracy, take some of your assets and put them into some, um, put them into put something, take your paper and put it into an asset. So I, now I have my money secured in this asset and paper value has gone down. Paper has lost its value. It's just been worth less and less and less and less and less. So. I probably will just barely break even on my silver. With the premiums that I paid, I would probably just barely break even. But, oh well, if that's what it's there for, I bought it to pay off the land. I was just hoping that these three pieces, you know, maybe with some of the others that would pay the land off and not, you know. Again, I was hoping that this five-acre bar, this five-ounce bar, would pay for gravel for my property. You know what I'm saying? I'm hoping that this bar right here will stay in my possession. And if it doesn't, it's okay that I can pay and give this to the guy that does gravel up there. And when silver is not able to get it, because I don't believe we're too much further off from that time, it'll be unaffordable. Unaffordium. You guys have heard this before. Unaffordium. And then unobtainium, where you won't be able to get it. And that's when it's going to get quite expensive. Fear of missing out. That's when everybody's going to want it, guys. That's when I want to take this piece of silver right here. And my driveway is a wreck. And I live 80 acres in. You heard early on the stream, the guy was tearing up my driveway. Went out there, he tore up the driveway. They're going to take me an hour to fix what that guy did, turning around in my driveway. And he won't come back and fix it. He's not from here. So eventually someday I would be able to have gravel in my driveway and this piece of silver could pay for all of the gravel. That's right. I'm hoping to trade this five ounce bar for at least 15 to 20 gravel loads at about 200 to $250 a load. So I don't know. <laughs> it's going to be up to God, guys. I have seven days to come up with $475 now. That's why I put the, the thing up for... $699 because that would give me enough to make sure I have enough money for my phone bill. My insurance that was raised. I don't know why I just hit a new re renewal and maybe put 50 bucks in my pocket. I'll put $50 worth of gas in my car and I'll have no more money again, but at least I'll have all the land payments paid this month. So something's got to happen. <laughs> something's got to happen for me. So um, let's leave it at that. There it is. There's my links in the in dispersing weight. Just put them on there. If you can help me out, great. And if not, don't worry about it. I'll be back on here. Never required. I'll talk about it because I need it. If I didn't need it, I would not ask. And if I had it, I wouldn't ask. And if I wouldn't have got robbed, <laughs> I wouldn't be needing the money. So um, I am filing. I have a new credit card coming. Um, my bank um, gave me a credit uh so that's why I have the money sitting there now ready for the other land payment. Okay. That money that I, I got credit now I have with the cash app money that you guys have sent. I got a couple cash apps. I put that back into the account and now I'm 63 cents short. 63 cents short to be able to pay that five acres off that I can invite people to come out here. You want to come out here? I got a five acre parcel. No charge. Come on out. I'll put you on the five acres up by the highway if you don't want to be with me, if I'm too crazy for you. You want to be a little closer to me? 
I've got another parcel about three miles closer. That's a 20 acre, beautiful parcel. Been paying on that for a couple years. If you can stand living with me, I've got room for 20 of you guys out here. And I don't want any money from you. See? So I'm not asking for money, guys, like that. I would be willing to give. So I apologize that I have to ask. I'm just in a predicament, so I'll, I'll get myself out of it. Again, it's not like I don't have 37 things up on the, on the internet right now for sale. And it's worked for me the last 20 years. I'm just having difficulties because I've been putting out content that no other channel's putting out anywhere on the internet. Nowhere else on the internet you can find content on this channel that you will not find on Rumble, not on a TikTok, or not on another YouTube platform, not on any platform. So I paid the price, um, and I'm being literally martyred because of it. But it is what it is. I will never change it, and I apologize if it's burdened you guys in any way. I don't appreciate it. So don't let it burden you. Do not send me anything if you don't have everything you need. Because I have everything I need out here other than this land payments, you know, and I would have had it if I wouldn't have dropped my wallet. So things happen. And I'm sure I can probably call my guy uh, that I bought the land from because I have now 12 years of land payments that I paid on these two properties between that one up the road and this one that I've got, you know, 17 years of land payments into this. It's not like I haven't. I sit on here and just try to grift to pay my land payments. There's people who do this every month, guys. They make enough money to pay their bills every month just by grifting people. So, If you weren't actually talking about stuff that others weren't talking about, you'd be banned, man. They're on top of that stuff. No, you're in Cotton Eye Joe 420. You're 100% wrong. I encourage you to look at my federal overlay map on my TikTok platform and send me a link to any other channel. Send me a link to one other channel. Just one. Mr. Chicken. Find me one other link to the federal map with the overlay of the 100 to 400 year cycle or 100 to 400 foot ocean cycle of the raising. Find me one other chat, one other one. Any platform, Chicken. Any platform, I, I'll give you a challenge. My water overlay mat. How about this? No, not one other channel. So if you can, I encourage you to go ahead and send me a link. Put your money where your mouth is, chicken. 420. Put your money where your mouth is and don't just be talking out the side of your neck. Send me the link to whoever else is putting out the federal overlay map of the land that's been taken control of by the federal government, including the overlay map of the cycle between 100 to 400 feet. Give me one other channel. Drop it in the link. Send it to my platform. Post another video on your own channel. I'll go look at your own channel. Do you have any content on your channel, Chicken? You're not going to find anybody, chicken. I know that I'm the only one. I wouldn't say that if I was the only. It wasn't. This is the reason why everybody should not be able to stream live. Luc the love of Lucifer. Good job there, Bob. We know that you love Lucifer. We can see the love of Lucifer. You love laughing at people. Good for you. Laugh at people. The joke's on me, right? Laugh at others. The father sees what you're doing. I don't know why you've got timed out uniform, Unicorn Ninja. Uh, let's see if we can help this here. All right. I don't know. Let's see if we can fix that. So. All right. So I challenge every 51 of you to find the water overlay map and the federal land in America. And see if you can find one other TikTok channel, YouTube channel, or any other channel that mirrors what I'm doing. I don't care if they're just mirroring my video. Find another person that's mirrored because anybody else that's tried to mirror my video, because I encourage you not to, I say you can all you want. 
I'm not telling you you can't. You can remirror all of my, all of my content. I don't care. I don't even care if you give me credit. I don't care. I'm not one of those people that has to get the credit. I don't care. But if you mirror that video, you will have your channel shut down. So that's up to you, whether you mirror it or not. So I'm going to show you guys before I leave here to give you guys <coughs> what is getting my stream taken down. You want to see it? I'll show you. You want to see why I can't sell anything in two and a half months? Let me show you. That's why. And it isn't this that's got me in the heat with these uh, principalities, power, spiritual wickedness, the rulers of the darkness of this world. That's not the issue. Let me show you what the issue is. See, they don't care how much you know. You can know everything in the world, guys. They don't care about that. They care how much you care. There's a big difference. You can know everything in the world. That doesn't matter to them. Do you have any passion about what you're doing? Yeah, see, they don't care how much you know. They care how much you care. There's a big difference. Learn the difference. I've been doing this for decades. I got a couple decades of being online. So let me speed this up on this map, and I'll show you exactly why the government, why the police, why the feds there's feds out here where i live yes there are i've had people going the feds are around your house tracy you've seen them driving by i don't care they won't pull down my driveway see the water washes all the way up i already called the feds to try to come out here to deal with some of the issues that i'm having so um they won't come they won't come out here this is what's getting me in trouble see that overlay map you see the red underneath? You notice how they match each other. See that? That's what's getting me in trouble. This map right here. So there's where you can try to find a link to see if anybody else on the internet, one other channel is putting this out. Not one. Not one. I'm the only one as of this time that I've seen. And I've looked, guys. I've spent a ton of time looking for this because I researched this cycle. I'm sure it would come up. I've got hundreds of hours into this. Thousands of hours, actually, by the time I started this 30 years ago. So documenting this land that was overtaken by the government. Decades. So, that is the problem. Look at that edge right there. Right Look at all that. Perfect line up. Look at that. Look at Washington. Look at that line up there. Look at the hole. And a little different on the scale, but pretty close to what the land is because there are two different maps. But you can see that's what they bought. So all the rest of this. They don't have anything ocean. over here on no, the East Coast. Why? All this because it's all going to go underwater here. like it has Coast. before. Look at all that lines up right there. Time and memorial. Don't tell me they don't know that. That's what they're getting ready for, guys. All that red is... Why do you think they're shipping all these immigrants back here on the... We only get the all white. these states over here. Again, look at that down uh -huh. in California. They're looking at... They're sick people, man. Perfect. That lines up. Look at that. Look at like that putting a hand in a glove. I dare right. you to mirror this video. That is... You want to have your stuff taken down, mirror it. This is what they're getting ready for. We get the white. Well, tell me they don't know about Not this. Not that white this there, the white left. They moved the state Colorado, state capital. Come on, look at that edge, guys. Are you serious? Come on, guys. All right. That's the last shot of it for you. So. There's a shot of the U.S., so. Yep. Texas. Just one that I know of, because I research this every day. I go looking to see if there's anybody else that's putting this information out, and there's nobody else. Nobody else is putting this information out, guys. This is the vet that they're planning for. I am 98% certain. I'm going to show you what's going to cause this too. So I'm not just talking here. I've got lots and tons and tons and tons and decades of research, as I told you, into this particular event that I'm talking to you about. So what's going to cause this event? This. 
these four large gas giants. See that? That's the four large Jovian stars, the same alignment we were in in 79 AD. So I'm not predicting anything. This is going to happen again less than 240 some days from now. We are going to be in this alignment. And I believe this will cause the water to come up onto the land in waves, not a wave, but a wall back like labor pains come back stronger the first time it comes in you ain't going nowhere in the u.s you will be locked down where you are at you mark my words i'm not a prophet but if this does happen i have a pretty good understanding of what they're going to do they're going to lock you down the first time it comes up you're going to get locked down. Then it's going to drop back and it's going to come up higher. And they're going to freak out. Oh, oh, oh. and then a lot of you are going to pass. Because I believe by then it's going to make it up to like Indiana. First time I think it's going to come up and not even make it pass through the Carolinas. Then it's going to drop back. It's going to come past Carolinas all the way up to like India, Illinois, all that, that you know, the, the, the New Madrid, right up around to the New Madrid. It's going to pull back and it's going to come back higher. And then it's going to, you ain't moving anywhere by then. They will have already taken top-down control of this country. And then it's going to possibly make it way all the way to the Rockies, like it has before. It's even washed up higher than what I'm showing you. Even higher than what I'm showing you. I'm giving you what is called a mean, the average map, the mean map. This is the mean. It's come up higher than the Rockies before, and it's come up less. This is what you call an average or the mean. So that could be narrower in the white portion I'm showing you and wider. Narrow and wider. But why is it that the federal map that I show you matches exactly that? Somebody's got the same system, program system that I'm using, correct? They've got the same overlay maps. They've got the same means to pour put all the cycles together to form this mean map. It's like they know. They know. This is exactly what I'm telling you. There we go. Exactly. Exactly, David. It's happened before. Thank you. I'm not predicting something that hasn't happened before. I, I can tell you the water thing, that didn't happen the last time. Uh, that's as far as I think I can get. I mean, I might have the other map. I'd have to look on my TikTok here for down in Mexico. That's right. The guide stones. Exactly. So this is a mean. And, and, and don't you find it rather ironic that the map that I show you and then the mean map showing the average overlay is a is a perfect near perfect match. How's that a possibility? You think that's just by chance? Thank you. <laughs> there you go. So focused. There you go. Some of you guys are starting to get it. You see, this has happened before. I'm not trying to be some kind of prophet, now, make some kind of prediction. That's the not. <laughs> that East Coast is gone. You see, the water washes all the way up. East Coast is gone. Underwater. Both sides to it will wash back off place on the corner. It's not going to stay the on the land. It's not going to stay up there, guys. It's going to wash back off. Right now, they're sitting off our continents that you can go take scuba diving trips to go see them. They're between 100 and 400 feet underneath the water. So it's going to come up and drop back down. Between 400, 100 to 400 feet. That means we're going to have a lot more coastline after this event is over. See all that red land? That's government land. Okay. It's going to come back down. It's not going to stay up on the land, guys. That's not this cycle. We already saw that on the last cycle to come up. This cycle, it's going to go back down. But it's got to come up, wash into all the valleys, soak into the land, and then eventually it's going to drop down between 100 to 400 feet in this cycle. 
The last time we were pinned in in those gas giants, this didn't happen, guys. But our protection was at 100%. Brothers and sisters, this, we have... Um, This isn't a coincidence, guys. All the rest of this There's no way. There's the, why have they not bought any land or taken over any land over here. on the East Coast? On the East Coast. A little bit of the high line areas, but they don't want anything in the East Coast. Why? Why is the government not interested in, in overtaking land over here on the East Coast? Because they know this is going to happen. Why do you think they moved this to Colorado, uh, the capital, underneath the Denver International Airport? They're look at this line on the edge, right. guys. Look at how close that, that lines up. The bottom of California there. Look at how almost near perfect that lines up. Look at those two look bumps down there on the bottom. The All right. Yep, this is what that it is, is dispersing weight. I believe this is the judgment. Results. Come on. Look at that. You don't tell me they don't know that. Look at the top of that. Look at this edge. What getting ready for. Well, tell me they don't know about this. this look at this like little tip right down here. Right there. Look at that. They moved the state Colorado state capital. Look at this line down here. Of course, they took more over there in California. That's the last shot of it for you. There's a shot of the U.S. So just get your spiritual house in order, Michael Sims. Don't live in fear. I'm not trying to cause anybody to have fear by this. I'm telling you, this happened before in history. I'm not 100% sure if this is going to happen this time. But if we get pinned in, as I showed you, I'm trying to show you some solid evidence. I'm a prior police officer. I'm a prior traffic reconstructionist. I was certified as an investigator at the age of 19 years old. Okay. I know how to investigate. I know how to put together evidence. And I'm trying to show you the evidence that I have. Show you. That they know about this. There's no way they don't know about this. That's a near perfect match, guys. So the government is very aware of this event. And what I think is going to cause this event, because like all our celestial bodies, we have magnetism coming out of our star. See that? Those would be the magnetic looping fields. Each one of those has magnetic interlooping fields. And let me show you an issue or an image of an overlay that I did to try to show you when these four large gas giants, think about each one of those having those looping magnetic fields coming out of it. So here's the magnetism. See that? That's what it would look like. That's what all those magnetic fields would look like if you can't see them. So that's Saturn, that's Jupiter, that's Uranus, and that's Neptune. So it would be like we get pinned right here. In between this magnetism, you think our Earth's going to the 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 uh, temperatures and the weather and the wind and all that's going to stay the same? You're sadly mistaken. You do not understand how this celestial gas giants have these interlooping magnetic fields. And actually, in 79 A.D., I'm not predicting anything. In 79 A.D., this is the same exact celestial alignment that we were in. In 79 AD. So we're going back into this celestial alignment. The difference between last time that we were in this alignment is that our magnetic protection, our magnetic fields, were at 100%. We're at 100%. They have weakened by over 25% now. That's why the sun is hot white. The last three solar cycles have stepped down. Solar cycle 22, 23, and 24. We are in solar cycle 25 right now. So our atmosphere has shrunk down, which means we're closer to the sun, which has melted off that protection. That's why the sun is white. 
and not yellow anymore or, or even orange. It only gets orange when it gets close to the horizon. Have you noticed that? It's like it's always white because we have our atmosphere has shrunk and we've come down closer like in the 1800s. The last time we were in, a, in an ice age was the 1800s, not thousands of years ago. In the 1800s, our atmosphere, the, the um, magnetics of our Earth shrunk down, shrunk down. So see that? It's like a ball. It's actually more like an apple, if you think about it, huh? Like an apple. We're already in an ice age. We're 6,000 years into a 90,000 year cycle. The last three solar cycles have been cooling. So in 1800s, that, that ball shrunk down, shrunk down, shrunk down, which made it closer to the sun. If it's a big ball, it's a big ball. I can't get close to you, right? If I'm in the middle of this, now I'm in the middle of this. See how much closer I am to you? That's all that's happened, guys. This isn't rocket science. The atmosphere shrunk down. In the 1800s, we were in an ice age. In the 1800s. Not thousands of years ago. In the 1700s, we were in an ice age. Because our sun quit pumping out as much activity. And when it doesn't, heat expands. Solar flares pew, 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 expands our atmosphere. Our atmosphere has slowed down over the last three solar cycles. 12 years, 12 years, 12 years. That's 36, almost 40 years that the sun has been stepping down as our atmosphere has been shrinking. Just like in the 1800s. Our atmosphere shrunk down. We got closer to the sun. It made more cosmic solar radiation penetrate through our atmosphere. That's what the northern lights are. When you see those lights, that is that cosmic protons bombarding the magnetic protection, our magnetic protection, our magnetic field, making it through that magnetic field. Okay, to show you that something is very different, we have never had more than two Two, low latitude, like down in Texas and Arizona and Mexico, right? We've ever only had two ever in all of recorded history. This has been recorded as far back as we can go. There's only ever been two low latitude roar, which takes a massive X flare event, a massive, a massive X flare event, hitting us earth facing. Earth facing, it hit us. Earth facing, there we go. Thank you. Adapt 2030, the only other person covering this. Thank you, dispersing weight. It hit our atmosphere in 1859 and it caused our magnetics to start to wander in 1859. In 1900, the pole turned around, completely turned around, completely around, and started heading towards the east. From that point on, in 1900, the magnetics of this Earth, irregardless of the shape, does not change anything about what I'm telling you. The shape of the Earth has nothing to do with this information that I'm giving you. It won't change anything. Nothing. Because I know the flat Earth model, which is flawed. And I know the spinning ball model, which is flawed. They both have flaws. Both of them have flaws. I'm not spinning and, and corkscrewing. You can't corkscrew and spin me. I don't believe in space. So I give you an idea on what shape I think the Earth might be if you fly over a plane at. But I don't care what the shape of the Earth is. It has nothing to do with the effects. That's going to happen on this Earth. It doesn't matter. Actually, I can take the flat earth model and the globe earth model and make both of these work. Just like the flat earth model has a lot of validity to it. 
a lot more than the round spinning ball, but the spinning ball model at 23.5 degrees and the tilt, it, it's got a little bit of validity to it. So they both have some validity to it, but I don't believe in either models. I don't go. It says the earth cannot be moved from its foundation, period. The earth cannot be moved from its foundation. So I believe we live on a plane net, okay? A plane net. You can believe whatever shape you want of the earth. I don't care. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have anything to do with the effects that I'm showing you. I'm showing you the ball earth model. Do I believe in this model? No. Can I talk about it? Yes. Can I talk about the flat earth model? Absolutely. I know both models like the back of my hand or the back of my head. But I got to use the model that everybody's familiar with. Other people just lose their mind. Oh my God, you think the earth is flat? Dude? The earth was always flat until they discovered it was round. So for millions of years, it's been flat. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't care about the shape of the earth. It doesn't have anything to do with anything I'm showing you. It really doesn't have any effects on what's going to happen. So you can believe whatever shape that you want. It doesn't matter. We still have a magnetic field that protects our earth, irregardless of the shape. All these celestial bodies in the heaven have these magnetic fields, irregardless of the shape. So, this atmosphere is shrinking. In the 1800s, it shrunk down. We got more cosmic solar radiation penetrating our atmosphere. And it caused more water vapor, more cloud nucleation. It cites that cosmic solar radiation excites cloud nucleation. That water forming that forming that water vapor. No, it's hammering the magnetic field already. But yes, it's be, we're going to swing out in front of the sun on five of twenty five and be the only celestial body in front of the sun. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yep, uh, yep, eight of twenty one. So, you guys, in the eighteen hundreds, we had what was called the Maunder minimum, and then in the seventeen hundreds, we had the Dalton minimum. In the Maunder minimum. The atmosphere shrunk. It increased more cloud nucleation. We had more cloud cover. And in the 1800s, we had basketball size hail that literally leveled wooden cities, put them into the ground, turn them into splinters. Basketball size hail in the 1800, the size of a basketball. The earth also opened up. And we had what was called a planetary liquefaction event. Planetary liquefaction event. Where the inner earth, the water, the firmament below, waters above, waters below came up, up and squirted out onto the land. The waters below and the waters above, called the firmament. It's not called heaven in the book of Psalms. It's called the firmament, the waters above and the waters below. The water came up and we had mud volcanoes, not, not, not volcanism with magma and, and hot speed. Mud came out of the earth and spewed out like fountains. If you took a toothpaste tube and you opened up the cap of that and you rolled it and you spread that out, that would spew all out onto the land. That's exactly what happened on the 1800s. Squeezed literally 10, 20, 30 feet, thousands of miles covered with mud. It took almost 100 years to dig out from the 1800s. Right? You remember that? Anybody read their history? There's literally buildings where they knocked out this, you know, dug in and put a, a a window in the second floor or third floor. There are still places that are literally covered with thousands of miles of dirt, mud. Yep, that was in the 1800s because we were in what was called the Maunder Minimum and we were in a mini ice age. Something pressed on our Earth, the magnetics. 
something pressed on our shield and causing that water to come up. And it caused what is called a liquefaction event. I believe that's going to happen again, guys. I believe we're set to see that happen again. Something is going to push on our earth. Well, I just showed you what's going to push on our earth. Tartaria, this is it. This is what I'm talking about, DG. When the water goes back down, this is Tartaria. Stop with your spam about Palestine. Nobody cares about Palestine or, Ga or Israel or Gaza or none of that. They're all doing atrocities over there. So don't e both sides are wrong. Both sides are wrong. Both sides are wrong. So you're pushing one side and you're just as wrong as the other side. MAGA death. MAGA death. You guys are supporting it. Your country it is doing the same thing. So stop with your one-sided crap. You're both wrong. You're both wrong. Palestine's wrong. Gaza's wrong. Israel's wrong. So don't push that crap in here. You're both wrong. Now, I haven't been on for five hours. I've been on for 10 hours and 46 minutes and 21 seconds. <laughs> so what's going to cause this? This. Get ready. 10, 24, 24, guys. This is right around the corner. This is 230 some days away. So I think this is what's going to cause it. Something pushed on our Earth in the 1800s. I believe this will push on the magnetics of our Earth now. I already showed you guys the inner looping magnetic fields, what they would look like that you can't see. That's what they look like. You can't see them, but that doesn't mean that they're not there. See that? Boom. Remember I showed you all of them have that? All of them do. And then we're going to get stuck. Actually, I'm going to end it with this. This is the last thing I know. I keep saying I'm going to end it. They've known of this for thousands of years, guys. This happened same at the time of Christ. Three years later, the temple was destroyed. Three years later, Christ predicted the temple was destroyed. We're coming back into the same alignment again. Same alignment that we were in 79 AD. This is the same exact alignment that happened in 79 AD. Minus one degree of arc. 360 degrees. So it was 359 degrees. It's a perfect match. Hand and a glove. So we're going to go back into this celestial alignment. I'm not predicting anything. This is going to happen. This isn't a prediction. This will happen. What will happen, I don't know. I can tell you that back in 79 AD... This earth was got destroyed. Volcanism was increased. Vetasuba went off. Pompeii was covered in ashes. So this is, this is what will happen. I'm not making any prediction. I'm telling you this is what's going to happen. And I'm going to tell you that they're very aware of the cycles that we're in. I'm going to show you a map. I recommend you find this and you study this. That's right. There's nothing new under the sun. That's what the Bible says. Thank you. No, not, nothing's going to happen. It's already happening, Richard Chavez. It's already happening. We've already entered the sixth extinction event. We've already entered the 12,000-year cycle. We're already in the age of Aquarius. It's not, not going to happen. It's already happened. It's already happening. You just don't see it because you got your head somewhere else, up your fourth point of contact or something. So it's already happening. Tornadoes in California last year, twice, twice, twice. So I know you want to label me with some kind of mental disease, but you'll be wondering what's happening when you don't do anything. And I'll be the, they scoffed at Noah for 126 years. Go ahead, go ahead. And, and, and they called him crazy too. And then it flooded. And what side of the door are you going to be on? Yeah, I thought so. Door's going to slam in your face. Imagine the claw marks on the door. Your fingernails would be full of wood. Yep, your fingernails would be full of wood. <laughs> so, I'm going to show you one other image, and then I'm going to take a break, and I'll come back on in a little bit, guys. I appreciate it. Much love. 
They have known of these events for thousands of years. This is a map. This is a map. Each one of these is a celestial age. Like, this is the age of Leo. On the opposite end of Leo would be Aquarius. Leading up to coming around the celestial wheel from Aries to Pisces to Aquarius. See that? On the line. Every one of these that is marked is a cataclysmic. Look at here's the here's the the years that they happened. Here's the years that it's marked right here. Each one of these events 117,000 look at there's there's the event right there. There's the year pointing to the year. Each one of them is marked on the line. You see how they all have an arrow pointing to them? And this is a date. So what I'm trying to show you is that what these are is extinction events, cataclysmic civilization ending events. Every one of these events has happened on the line. I'm going to show you this map again and notice they don't happen in the yellow field. They happen on the line. On the line. On the line. On the line. Not in the gray. Not in the yellow. But on the line. On the line. We have entered the sixth extinction event. Right here. We're already in it. We've been in it for over four years now. We're already in this event. They have known about this for thousands of years. So we are right here right now. That's where you're at. Who, who in this world is going to show you where you're at celestially? I will. There's where we're at right now. And we hit what is called the 12,000-year extinction event. Back here was the Noah event. This is where we're at now. 6,000 years in the future. Right there. On the line. This, this happened on 12-21-2020. When Saturn, Saturn, Saturn conjuncted Jupiter which was known as the Great Conjunction on 12-21 of 2020. We entered the world's sixth extinction event. Guess what? Everything that's still here made it through the last five events. Really? We still got crickets and rabbits and zebras and bunnies and lions and chickens and potatoes. You guys... We got leeks and asparagus and artichokes and um, everything that made it through the last five is still here. Stop with your fear porn. This ain't about fear. This is about some of us are doing something about it because everything that made it through the last is still here. That's right. So extinction events aren't what you think. Oh, my God. This guy's talking about extinction. It's the end of the world. No. You've never studied extinctions, and it's quite obvious. I study extinctions. I've studied every extinction event. I look insane until the water starts, bam, and the door shuts in your face, huh? Enjoy that wood in your nails. Or in this case, enjoy that water in your lung. You can say what I look like, but it doesn't have anything to do with the price of eggs and chicken right now. So you'll not do anything about it, and you'll be the one that's actually trying to unalive somebody because you're a you're a crocker. You're a backside coming out of my rear end talker, Betty Crocker. That's right. That's what you are. You're just talking out of the backside of your – this is fact. I'm giving you facts. I'm showing you cycles. You want to you want to make an assumption about my mental stability? What are you, some kind of psychiatrist or something? You want to put me on the the uh, the Ritalin or or the the Trazodone? Oh, I get you want me to take up the roll of your sleever too, huh? You want me to take up the roll of your sleever? You're a drug dealer. Stop pushing your drug talk in here. 
you're going to try to accuse me of having some kind of mental disability. And then you're going to try to get me on some kind of psychotropic drug. You're a drug pusher, just like the government. That's what you are. You come in here and you accuse somebody of having a mental disability. And then you're going to want somebody like to put me on some kind of medication, right? You're a drug pusher. You are a drug pusher. Yes, you are, because that's exactly what these people do to people who are crazy. They put them, they say they're crazy and they put them all kinds of psychotropic drugs. So that's exactly what you're doing. So it does, I'm just feeding the trolls, guys, but I'm just saying it's it's silly. Look, they all come say the same thing. <laughs> they all say the same thing. Either are you gay? It's three things, guys. He's all look at everybody that comes in here is programmed. They're all programmed and they all say the same thing. Are you on drugs? Meth, dope, coke? Are you gay? That's the other thing, right? Are you gay? Programmed. You're zeros and ones. You you guys are zeros and ones. What's the other one do we get in here, huh? Yapping. What's this guy yapping about? What's this guy yapping about, huh? So go ahead and accuse me of having some kind of mental disability so you can push your psychotropic drugs. You sound just like the government and they're the biggest drug pushers on the planet. He, he, he worried about this guy down on the street corner selling a little baggie of some, but the biggest drug pushers on the planet is the government and you sound just like the government, you trolls, just so you know. You sound like the government because the government made legal to, you know, remember, it's OK to be, you know, it's OK. Hey, look, I got a walk in closet. Hey, I got a walk in closet. Well, come on down. <laughs> so. <laughs> it's funny, though, guys, do you see what I'm saying? I don't care about them. They don't mean we're not trying to change anybody. They all say the same thing. They all say the same thing. It's like they have been programmed. That's why I keep mentioning it to you so you keep seeing. I don't mention it nine times out of ten, but every once in a while I'll mention it so you can see. They have been programmed to say the same thing. I have a cure for cancer too, Allison Jackie. It's called cannabis. It doesn't cure all cancers, but it cures most cancers, okay? I'm a medicinal cannabis grower, and I've cured cancer myself with the medicine that I grow. Yes, there is a cure for cancer. It's called cannabis. It doesn't cure all cancers, but it does cure most cancers. So, yes, the government is a scam. So, if you want to see a troll, look, you'll see them. They come in and they say the same thing every single time. Same thing. That's all I'm trying to point out to you guys. I apologize that I feed them, but you can see. The same thing. They either advocate drug usage, some kind of psychotropic drug, or they bring up some kind of, I don't know what it is about. There's all these different um, L, B, A, G, D, Q, X, Y, double Z, N, R, 2, D, 2. I don't understand. They all say the same thing. So it leads me to believe that they must be that themselves. You know what I'm saying? They must have a preference for sausage or I, I don't, I'm sorry. I don't want, I don't eat pork. <laughs> I, I don't want any sausage in my mouth. I, I don't, I don't even want to try it. Okay. I don't want it in my mouth. So yeah, but cannabis cures cancer too, Jackie. There's no reason to uh, type in capital letters. Um, cannabis is God's medicine. Okay. And it's medicine. It's cannabis never killed anybody. So it's not a drug. I'm a prior police officer and a prior military police officer. I've never dealt with anybody who was stealing somebody from somebody or running over their dog or that's not a thing. So we get trolls in here. I just want to point out how programmed people are and their defiance is what they are. They're programmed to be defiant. They have to do the opposite. They have to. Just like a cop is like a crackhead. Somebody accusing me of being a crackhead. Look at all those white teeth. Oh, what do you know? Cops are like crackheads, but with ID. They need 
the ID. I got to have the ID. I need to see your ID. So that's what these people are like. They're like programmed. They have to do it. They have to do it. Cops got to see your ID. He's got to go hands on with you. He's going to tell you, you're going to respect my authority. This is exactly how these people. This is exactly how they act. Just like cops, you remind me of cops and I hate cops. I can't stand cops. So when I was in law enforcement, I'd get in trouble for busting cops. I was actually the cop that would arrest cops. Yeah, I was an investigator. That was my job. So cops didn't like me. Oh, no, they didn't because I was the cop that would arrest you. Because you didn't do your job. That's not my problem. You're supposed to do your job like the book says. Yeah, there is some kind of procedure in law enforcement, whether you understand or not. And they don't follow it. <laughs> they don't follow it. So it's unfortunate that we see these people come in here and they're just triggered just like cops. They've been programmed. A cop has been programmed to think you're enemy number one. I've been through the Highway Patrol Academy. I've been through traffic school. I've had more certification than most cops do right now. They don't hardly have any certification on how to identify mental illness, how to handle people with mental disabilities. I've been counsel law enforcement education and training. That's CLEAT certified in 48 states. CLEAT certified. Anybody's in law enforcement knows what that is. I've been CLEAT certified in how to handle and identify people with mental disabilities and mental illness. These cops don't get any training like that now. They don't even know I had to identify these on, let's say that I took medication and I don't take medicine. Let's say I'm on some kind of pills, psychotropic, because I'm crazy and they put me on trazodone or some stupid psychotropic drug like that. And my caretaker, my caretaker gave me the wrong pill. And now I'm acting a little strange because this isn't normally how my body works. And I got in my car or something I didn't know. And now I'm acting a little crazy. Right? They're going to dump a clip in you because you didn't listen. Because you didn't respect their authority. Because they're not looking to see if you have a mental disability. They don't care if you're somebody gave you the wrong medicine they are not even thinking about that all they want you to do is listen to them if not they're gonna put your hands on you and put you in shiny bracelets and throw you in a rape cage that's what they do that's exactly what these people do yeah 11 hours and three minutes so that's what these cops do in this day and age so you can't tell me that they have not been programmed to think that you are public enemy number one. I know because back when I was a cop, when I was a law enforcement officer, I couldn't search a woman. I couldn't search a woman. I had to call a female officer, backup officer, if I was going to have a woman. If I apprehended somebody place them in handcuffs. That means I've arrested them because I've arrested the wrist. You've been arrested if they put you in handcuffs. You're not detained. You've been arrested. They arrested your wrist. So after you've been arrested and you're a female, I couldn't search you. I had to wait and call a backup officer to search you. This is in the 90s. I'm kind of old. But officers used to be different back then. Correct? Yeah, they were tyrannical and still enforcing corporate law, but they were, they weren't these tyrants where they don't even know the laws that they're enforcing today. They just keep adding more and more and more and more laws to the books. Notice that? They don't take laws away. They just keep adding more and more and more and more to the books. 
So these cops don't know what they're enforcing. All they want to do is have you to respect your authority, right? No, you're going to respect my authority. And if you don't, I'm going to go hands on with you. I'll probably pull out my pew pew and dump a clip in you because something's wrong. That is law enforcement in America. You want to know what my definition of law enforcement in 2024 is? The definition of law enforcement in America in 2024 is. The reason why I pulled you over, sir, ma'am, is stop resisting. Does that sound like these cops today? Yeah, the reason why I pulled you over is stop resisting. Yeah, that's exactly how they act. So they're criminals. All cops are criminals. They enforce corporate letter law. And if you're ignorant enough to go by that law, then you're going to go be judged by that law, just so you know. Okay. So that's why I hate cops because every one of them is a tyrant and 99.9% .9 of them do not know how to do their job. They don't have near the certification that I have when I was in law enforcement because law enforcement officers used to be public servants. They would serve the public. They truly felt as if they were helping the community. That's not how cops are right now. Yeah. <laughs> But they arrest people resisting arrest and people don't even resist arrest. How many times anybody, somebody get resisting arrest charges or disorderly conduct and they didn't even do anything. So that's the problem with our law enforcement officers today. You are public enemy number one and they are afraid as hell of you. You know that? They are scared out of their wits. If you don't think so, look at how fast they pull that pew pew out. I got their hand on it. Well, I'm concerned about my safety. Uh, uh, I'm not concerned about your safety. Uh, what do you mean? You're the one that's armed. You're heavily armed. You got a, an AR in the back of your truck. You've got Kevlar vest back there. You're coming up to me, worried about me. You can see me. If I had something, I'd have to pull it out. And, and, and you got your sitting out and you're afraid of me. I think you're in the wrong light of work, buddy, ma'am, sir. If you're afraid of the public, I think that you're in the wrong line of work. If you cannot take a bullet for your country or your community, you're in the wrong line of work. Yep, and every one of these cops is scared out of their stinking minds about their own safety, aren't they? Well, I'm doing this for officer safety. Oh, yeah, that's the point. They don't know what you have. I don't care. It doesn't matter what you have. They shouldn't be scared of doing their job and pulling on breaking leather on everybody. And that's what they do. And they dump clips in people for not listening. People with hearing disabilities get unalived. Well, he reached for something in his pants. Deaf people, guys, get laid out flat dead because the cops because he didn't listen to me he didn't listen to me you don't have to listen to a cop and commit a crime you you don't even have to engage with the cop you don't you're contracting with him you don't have to you don't have to answer any questions you have what is called the fifth amendment And you don't have to answer any of these questions unless you've committed a crime. You're in the commission of committing a crime or you are going to commit a crime. You could tell the cops to pound sand. Go away, you tyrant. Get out of here. I don't answer questions. Leave me alone. Stop harassing me. Get your, you guys like a gang. You know what the definition is? A gang, you thug. A heavily armed group of thugs. All wearing the same color going around and harassing and extorting the general public. You look like a gang to me. Thin blue line. Hello, you're a gang. And you're a bunch of thugs. You go around and har harass and extort the general public. So I don't respect any of these cops, their failures, and they enforce capital letter law. Capital letter law. You hand them your license, it's written in capital letter. That's not who you are. If you say that's who you are, that's the law that you will be judged by. Correct? But you don't need a license to travel in America. 
You don't need a license. You don't need registration. If you're not engaged in commerce, and I have a commercial license, I have a CDL. You don't need a license in this country. The Supreme Court just ruled on that. Your Fourth Amendment right gives you the ability to travel freely, unabated, warrantless, or search or seizure. That's right. No, unless they have a, a warrant, they can't seize you. Your property, your person, your papers and effects that include your personal vehicle. And you don't need registration on your personal vehicle. On the front, on the back, you don't need that. That's not required to travel. The Constitution was just ruled on in, set, uh, in, in 23. The Supreme Court ruled that you have the right to freely travel in America. That's right. Unabated, warrantless search or seizure, you have the right to be in your secure in your houses, papers, persons, and effects. Houses, papers, persons, and effects. So you don't need a license to travel. You don't need a registration to travel. That's a Fourth Amendment right. Upheld by the Constitution. That's what the federal government is there to do, to protect your inalienable God-given rights. But you'll give them that license. I know. I tell them that, Sharon. I tell them that. I tell them that. Every single time they pull me over and harass me, I give them that same spiel. If you want to see me in action, go follow my TikTok channel and look at my last two videos. The one that got me taken down and the part one and two. Actually, it's the water overlay video and then it's the cops who pulled me over. There's a two-part section. They had already pulled me over a few days earlier and been harassing me and whatever. Just go watch the videos if you want to see me in action. So. No, I didn't get tickets, Tony82. Incorrect. You're wrong. Go watch my video, Tony82, you boot licker. You're a boot licker thinking, oh, I'm going to get a ticket if I don't lick the boot, if I don't respect their authority. No, I didn't get any tickets. None. The vehicle was not registered, not in my name. I didn't have plates on it. Didn't get any tickets. I drove away. I've been pulled over multiple times, actually three times. As I told him, you guys are harassing me. You already pulled me over now multiple times for the same thing. You're gang stalking me, you tyrants, you thugs, you, you, you jackboot thugs, you tyrants. I call them that to their face. I tell them you're like a crackhead, but with ID. I I tell them that, have you ever called a crackhead to their, a cop, a crackhead to their face? Have you ever said to a cop, are you an elected official? No? Well, then you're a public servant. You serve me. Stand down. Psst, I don't want to hear it. You serve me. Your job is to serve me. I pay your paycheck. Go watch my videos. That's exactly what I say to those cops. I don't answer questions. You're trampling on my rights. No. I tell them, no. You're not going to tell me, no. You're not going to trample my rights. I'm traveling in my vehicle. I don't need a license. Well, sir, Oregon state law says that you need a license. That's Oregon state law. You're, that's the state. I'm telling you about federal law. That supersedes state law. So you don't recognize the Constitution is what you're telling me, officer? You don't recognize that you took an oath to uphold the Constitution and you're not going to uphold the Fourth Amendment? The minute you trample on my rights, I will sue your bond. Go ahead. Force me to give you my ID. Accost me. You're already accosting me. You shouldn't even just stop me to begin with. You don't have the right to stop me if I don't have a plate on my vehicle. I'm not required to have a plate while traveling. That's what I tell the cops. You can't, well, we pulled you over because you don't have a license on the, I don't need a license. Well, you need a license to travel on Oregon State. No, I don't. I have a CDL. See this license right here? See this CDL? That's if I'm engaged in commerce for the corporation. And I'm just going to try to get my mail. 
I, I'm just traveling freely. I'm just going about my personal business. Let me go. Stop harassing me. You're accosting me. You can't. I cannot walk down the road and you can't stop me. You can't put your hands on the road if somebody's walking down the road. No, it's not illegal. It's just not required. It's not required. Under the Supreme Court ruled under the Constitution that under the Fourth Amendment, you have the right to be secure in your houses, papers, persons, and effects. Unabated, warrantless search or seizure. Period. So, something he did was illegal. Yeah, I got pulled over for not having a license on the front of my vehicle. Registration. That's not illegal. Devin, you're a liar. You don't know what you're talking about. You're a liar. I didn't break any laws. Liar. And the devil's an accuser. So, You just did. Oh, he must have done. Have you been jabbed? Have you been boosted? Did you take the roll up your sleever? Hooked on phonics work for me. So stand up for your rights, brothers and sisters, but be careful because these cops are dangerous. And if you assert your rights like I do, there's a good chance you'll be unalived. They love to dump clips in people. So be careful. But you know what I'm worried about? I'm worried about the fact that God says, do not think that I came to bring peace on this earth. I came to bring a sword, a sword of division that will divide a household. Where one believes and the other does not. I believe that God says we live by the sword. We die by the sword. That is the law. That is the law. So it you be judged by you cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve mammon and God at the same time. So when you lick that boot and you give them their license, uh, you give them your license, you're going by corporate letter law, capital letter law. That is your straw man. I'm not my straw man. I'm not a corporation. I'm a man to the land and soil. So you can't stop me unless I've committed a crime. I have the Fourth Amendment right to travel. I can get in an airplane and fly all over the place if I want to, and the FFA can't do anything to me if I'm not engaged in commerce for the corporation. I can get in an airplane and fly. Oh, no, you can't. You can't get in an airplane. you got to go by the FFA. You need a pilot's license. You don't need a license to travel, guys. You've never needed a license to travel ever in the history of the world. And that's what the Fourth Amendment is there for, to protect your God-given, whether you believe in God or not. The Supreme Court ruled and protected your God-given right. So if you, if you live by the sword, you'll be judged by the law that you go by. No, you don't want to do sovereign citizen. That's not, I'm not, did I say I was sovereign? I'm not sovereign. I never claim sovereignty. They have what is called sovereign immunity. And they lose that sovereign immunity the minute they trample your rights. Oh, they can lie to you. They, they get to, cops get to do all kinds of things, guys. But they cannot break and trample on your rights. So the minute they trample on their rights, they lose their sovereign immunity. And you can sue the county, city, or state that they work for. And you can sue their bond. You can sue their bond. Because they're sovereign. I'm not sovereign. Sovereign means you're above the law. I'm not above the law. I'm not claiming sovereignty. That's a good way to get yourself arrested. So don't claim sovereignty because you're claiming to be above the law. I'm not claiming to be above the law. I'm telling them exactly what the law is. So I'm a man of the land and soil. And the minute they pull me over and I say that I'm a man of the land and soil, they know what they're up against. Because I'm not my name written in capital letters. 
That's not who I am. I've renounced that man. He is the straw man for the corporation, and I'm not that man. I would never be admit to ever being in that. Even if they apprehended me and got me in custody, I would never admit to be in capital T R A C Y capital W E R N. That's not me. My name is Tracy. It starts with a T, a small R, a small A, a small C, and a small Y. Capital W, cap, or small E, small R, small N, small E, small R. My name is not written in all capital letters. I don't respect anybody who's going to try to enforce capital letter law on me because I'm not that man. I'm a man of the land. I came from the dirt. And I'll go back to the dirt, land and soil. I'll go back to the soil. So I am not sovereign. I am a man of the land and soil anywhere I go on this earth. It doesn't matter where I go. Do you understand? It doesn't matter where I go. I'm a man of the land and soil. You cannot trample on my rights. Capital letters is your, is your straw man. Notice that your birth certificate is written in capital letters. It's a blood contract. They stick your foot, your heel, prick and take your blood, a blood contract with the corporation called America. This is a corporation enlisted on the exchange as a corporation, America. I built everything out here without a permit. I've been here for 10 years. I built five buildings out here. They're not going to come out here. They know damn good and well what they're up against if they come out here. I've done running the code ordinance off out of here. I told him that he's going to get shot in the face. You can't enter somebody's property without a warrant. Did you hear? You have that under your Fourth Amendment right as well. Yeah, so nobody can come on your property unless they have a warrant. Code ordinance officer, no. Federal feds, no. No, the feds can't come on your property unless they have a warrant. So if they don't have a warrant, you can unalive them because they're an intruder under your Fourth Amendment. You can deem them an intruder. And as long as they're in the front and not the back, you'll win because nobody can enter your property without a warrant. So I, uh, I assert my rights where I'm at and the sheriff knows it and the state knows it and the county knows it. Everybody in the state knows what I've done out here. I'm not a pushover. I will not stand by and allow this community and this country to be walked on by these police. So every time I see them, I call them out. We just had a new deputy come over here, guys. Brand new deputy. Brand new deputy. That's the first time I ever seen him. He walked in the gas station. He went and got a hot dog. I immediately, the guy that I was sitting with, he waved to him like a bootlicker, right? Well, he's, he was sitting across. As soon as he walked up, I said, you know what's wrong with the sheriffs in this? He's got a sheriff on his badge. I said, they're a bunch of weak, weak men that don't even know how to do their job. I can't even get the elected sheriff to come out to my property to deal with these tyrants. Just like I had to do during the COVID, I tried to get them to stand up with this community and they stood down because they're failures. These cops are a bunch of failures. They did nothing for this community. I had to stand up for this community. I tried to get the elected sheriff to come out and stand with the businesses. And when he wouldn't, I did. I stood up for this community. I stood in the gap when the sheriff's office in this town would. So everybody in this, all these sheriffs of this town are a bunch of tyrants. And, and, and they need to turn in their badges and stand down. And the guy wouldn't even turn around and say anything to me, guys. He wouldn't even turn around and have a conversation with me. I said, these people are supposed to be public servants and all they do is go out and harass and extort the general public. They're a bunch of thugs and a bunch of gang members. He wouldn't even turn around and say anything to me. Hey, what are you talking about, sir? I'm new here. I'm a hero. I want to serve you. What do you mean? But we're not serving the public. What do you mean? I'll, I'll talk to the sheriff for you. I'll get it. He didn't even turn around. You know, he ain't never had nobody put that in his ear. 
Nobody's ever said to this new guy ever one time has he ever heard that he's a thug and it's a jackboot thug and he's a tyrant and that he's part of the sheriff's office that didn't do anything for this community and their failures and they need to stand down. And he wouldn't even turn around. He's the supposed law in this town. This is his first day in town, guys, in this country town that I live in. So he could have turned around. Sir, wait a minute. I just got here. What do you mean? Not all cops are bad. You just said there was no good cops anywhere in America, especially here in the in the town that I live in, right? The town. Sir, let me help you. What, what's going on? You need to talk to the sheriff. Let me hold on. Maybe we can arrange it. He wouldn't even turn around. He wouldn't even turn around and say anything to me. Oh, but you better believe if he pulled me. Oh, I need to see your license, sir. <laughs> I need to see your license, sir. <laughs> license? Uh, don't you remember Cheech and Chong? It's on the back of the bum roll. Oh, my driver's license? My name? Isn't it there on the license? <laughs> Recently retired Marine, 27 years, I come home to this. Yep, exactly. Thank you. I got to come home to this crap. I fought and I unalive women and children in other countries. Said I have to come home to a bunch of weak Americans that stand on the X and cover their face. Why do you keep asking for my address? Anybody can find me. My name is Tracy Werner. Just call the sheriff's office. It's not hard to find me. Call the district attorney. He knows who I am. I'm not hard to find. I have a I have a, a, a marker that's got like a hundred reflectors on it, so I can't be missed. Anybody who's anybody in this town knows who I am. And I don't have an address because I don't need an address. Why would I have an address? I don't need an address. I live off the grid. Why do I need an address? I'm not hard to find, though. If you want to come out here and try to cause me some issues, I'm in Silver Lake, Oregon. I live in Silver Lake, Oregon, off of Oil Dry Road. Kitty litter is what your old map says. I live at the icon of the valley. You cannot miss me. I sleep with my doors unlocked because the sheriff was going to come out and get me. And so was all the farmers. They were going to come get me and unalive me. You know that. I've been threatened. My life has been threatened out here for 10 years. I still leave the doors unlocked. So I live at the icon of the valley. If you look up Christmas Valley, there's a thing, it's called Table Rock. Actually in Silver Lake, I'll help you find your way here. It's in Silver Lake. It's got a flat rock. Find the very middle of that. Boom, and that's my driveway. I'll see you here. There's a there's a hundred reflectors on the pole. If you come at night, it'll light up like it's plugged into a generator. I'm not hiding from anybody. <laughs> so your threats and you're asking my address. I think you're trying to feel like I like I'm threatened. I don't have a physical address because I don't need a physical address. I don't need my address or my headdress, my postmarked postmark address headdress. <laughs> So your threats don't do nothing, okay? <laughs> I've sit there and told this a hundred times. Somebody could go back and watch my jet, my live streams and go, hey, this guy is, uh... no, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of you. I don't fear no man. I fear God. That's all I fear. I have no fear on this life like that, none. I have no fear of no man or no woman on this earth. I only fear the father that I'm not worthy and I haven't done this correctly and I might have to come back to this horrible, disgusting place and do this over again. Don't want to, gonna make sure I do it right the first time. I'm gonna martyr my life if I have to. I already am. So um, I'm not afraid. I, if I was afraid, I wouldn't have stood up against the sheriff. If I was afraid, I wouldn't have stood up against the governor. If I was afraid, I wouldn't call out these tyrants to their faces, right to their faces. 
And again, if you think that you doubt me at all, I would recommend that you go follow my TikTok channel and then you can see me in action when a law enforcement officer is actually talking to me. I call for the highest law enforcement officer in the land to come talk to me. And he walks up and he says, hey, how you doing, Tracy? Because he knows who I am. Remember, I called him out before the COVID. I called him out before the COVID and told him he was a tyrant and he would stand down when things got bad because I knew the COVID was coming. I had already done the research and I was trying to warn the sheriffs about what was coming, that pretty soon you're going to get calls and they're going to come to you because you're a supposed law in this town. But guess what? He stood down just like I told him that he would. Just like I told him that he would. I said, when these things happen, you got that little recorder on, right? Make sure you're recording this because I want this documented. You're going to stand down. You're going to stand down and you're going to tuck your tail between your legs and you're going to go home. And you're not going to serve or protect anybody in this community. I have told everybody and anybody that's anybody. I've been on the Chamber of Commerce for years. I told everybody in this town that you're a failure and you'll stand down. And that's exactly what he did during the COVID. Watch me get pulled over by a police officer and watch him walk up to my vehicle and watch him stand down when I confront him. Walks away from my vehicle. Doesn't want nothing to do with me. And when I left that traffic stop, I remind him and I had eight witnesses that day that watched me get pulled over for the third time. I told that same sheriff, I'm not the bad guy in this town. You just remember that. I stood up for the people of this town when you stood down. So I'm the law in this town. That's what I said to the sheriff out here, that I am the law. You see any fear in these eyes? Any fear in these eyes at all? I didn't think so. I only fear that I'm not worthy of the father, which I'm not. I'm filthy rags. And I'm probably going to have to come back and do it over again. Which I don't want to do. I don't want to come back here. Ever. So, I suggest that you start acting with a little bit of uh, intestinal fortitude. And stand upright, ten toe on your feet because I'd rather die talking and be taken out 10 toe standing up 10 toe than to lick a boot on my knees and be a slave. I refuse. I will not comply. And I stood up for your rights as an American citizen. I stood up for your rights when you wouldn't and it's okay. I got your back. Now I'm asking you to stand up peacefully. I'm not calling for violence. As a matter of fact, I promote the opposite of violence. I promote evolution. Go around the system. Evolve. Not like growing another thumb. Evolution. If enough people go around this current current situation, it dries up all on its own. It doesn't, nobody needs to throw any lead or metal at anybody we don't even need to fight with any but brothers we don't have to fight with each other at all that's what they want us to do is fight with each other problem reaction solution hegelian dialect they create a problem they know that the public will respond with an action and they come in with a pre-programmed solution to the problem they created it's called red team blue team democrat republican just as long as this one's in office to get you pissed off enough, they're going to put a red one in. Put this red one in long enough, you'll vote for the blue. It's back and forth and back and forth. So don't fall for this. Go around this system. Dorito it. Bud Light it. Stop participating in it. There you go. A water filter. Ten bucks. Check out the system. That's your first step that you can take. You can stick that in your pocket. Welcome to the fourth dimension. Yes, welcome to the fourth dimension. Get out of the box. The box is 3D, right? Get out of the box. Welcome to the fourth dimension. Some of us are not two, 
flat like a piece of oh one dimensional huh or even two but not even three but multi yes welcome to the new age some of us are very multi-dimensional not just like a piece of paper so i'm not linear you might have met somebody that says hey i'm from the past you might have met somebody that says yeah, i'm from the future but guess what i don't ever end i'm from both well sharon if you don't believe in reincarnation how are you going to get your new body sharon walker how are you going to get your new body christ said the heaven and earth perish but my word will never die right don't you get a body in the new world the meek will inherit the earth oh wait if you don't believe in reincarnation don't worry about it you'll just go to hell because you don't need a new body to go to hell and do you you don't need a new vessel do you oh wait you don't need that vessel you'll just eternally fall right into the place of no knowledge because that's what hell is by definition not what you think it's the place of no knowledge so if you inherit the earth well then you're gonna need a new body then aren't you to inherit the earth so i hope you believe in some kind of carnet see all the same just the same all the same 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 been programmed programmed there we go see programmed can't help it got to say the same thing gay stand down they're both wrong palestine's wrong israel's wrong we're not supposed to be fighting wars god says let vengeance be mine saith the lord both both of them are wrong both sides are wrong that's what I think about that situation. Both of them are wrong. Not either one of them are any less wrong than the other. So I don't support either side. They're both tyrants and they're both going in opposition of God's law. Because God said, let vengeance be mine, saith the Lord. And that's not what they're doing over there, are they? They're seeking vengeance. So they're an apostasy and God will judge them for the horrible atrocities that they're performing and probably judge me as well. I'm a veteran. So look, all of us, America, 800 military bases in uh, 180 countries. Tyrant, the money changers, America, the bad guy, America, the bad guy. America is the bad guy. America is not the good guy. If you live within these walls, you're like, what? Yep. Just get outside of these walls and ask somebody that's not from this country, and they'll tell you that America is the bad guy. The only people who think America is the good guy are the people who live in America. I encourage, you know anybody from outside of the country? You know anybody who lives outside of America? I encourage you to ask them, is America the good guy or the bad guy? So America is the bad guy. We're not the good guy. Well, we were at one point, but we're not anymore. We go around and police the world and extort countries for the resources and instill central banks and inflate their currency and rob their nations and make them pay for oil with the U.S. dollar through the SWIFT system and instill central banks. Not federal reserves, but central banks. So America is the bad guy. And America deserves everything it gets. Cool. There you go. You got it, Sharon. I just want you to cross your mind. You know, if you're going to go to the new world, you can't go with this one, right? This meat suit's got to go. If you go to hell, you don't really need a new body, do you? It's not, don't need it. But if you're going to go to the new body in the new earth and the new heaven you're going to have to need a new vessel so i believe in reincarnation absolutely because i couldn't incarnate into my new flesh as a king the heavens the ruling class the meek will inherit the earth that's an inherit a ruling over the earth that's what the meek will do they'll rule the earth 
because the heavens are the ruling class and the earth is the ruled. According to scripture, heavens is not some place in the sky. That's not what the heavens are. <laughs> too much television, too much Christianity, too much nonsense. But that is the firmament. Waters above and the waters below. Psalms 19, the, the firmament declares his handiwork. So the heavens are the ruling class and the earth is the ruled. So when I come back in my new body, if I'm going to be meek, then I will inherit the rule over this realm and the earth will be ruled by the heavens, just like the nation of Israel. No nation could come against the nation of Israel. No nation could come against the nation of Israel. Look at all the battles that they fought. The 7,000 man army that completely annihilated 120,000 man army. Look at all the different battles. So, heavens is the ruling class. The earth is the rule. Remember, there's two Enochs, DG. Two Enochs. Make sure you're reading both of them and know that you have different authors to those books, please. There's not just one Enoch. There are two Enochs. Just start Jack with one Jackie girl. Start with one word at a time for scripture. Get yourself a set of interlinear Bibles, just like this. This is a dual language Bible. It has both the Greek and the Hebrew. This is a four volume set. The Old and the New Testament. This is how you want to study. This has both the Hebrew. Let's pull one out here. Hebrew. And then the English. So if you're going to study something, you want to study it in its original text. The Old Testament was written in Hebrew. The New Testament was written in Greek. If you study out a book like this, each one has a number above it. Number above it. You can pull this number out and it's coded with the Strong's Concordance. I mean, that's going to tell you every single time that's written in Scripture. And then if you get your concordance out, that's a separate book. And your concordance, if it says hell and it's written 10 times in that book, it's going to have all that time that it's written in that. It's written there, 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 there. All in one book. It's kind of convenient for you. But that's cheating and I wouldn't do it that way. If you want to really actually learn where to start, then take and pull out one word at a time, and then you'll get what's called a lexicon, a dictionary, modern-day dictionary. In the Greek, it was a Greek lexicon, dictionary. In the Hebrew, it was a lexicon or dictionary, okay? And you want to take one word at a time. Don't try to read. I don't care what you know. You're going to probably have to relearn and go, oh, my gosh, I learned that wrong. <laughs> Been there, done that. 70% of what I learned, I had to relearn it. So if you'll take that one word out, and you'll define it in the lexicon, in the original text, you'll get the definition of it. Take that definition, take it to your concordance. All this is available online. You don't need to buy any of these books, but I recommend that you do, so you get a hard copy of this. Everything is on sale. You highly got it. So, you take this, right? And, and instead of you take the concordance, you take the concordance, and you figure out where that's 10 scriptures are. And then you go back and you actually read the text. You don't cheat. You can. You can read through all the 10 sentences. Okay. Or, do, 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 do. or you can go back. Okay. It says it here in Genesis. And then I would read not only the sentence that it's written in, that you get it from the concordance, that you read two or three sentences before that, two or three chapters if you can. And then two or three chapters after that. This is how you learn. This is how I was able to learn. This is how I was able to unlearn a lot of the stuff that I just didn't get right the first time. Oh my God, we're not even plugged in. Oh, I thought we were plugged in. Um, my battery's probably going to get pretty low here. So this is how you study. You need to study out of the canonized text, which means these have been canonized. This is an interlinear Bible means it's written in both Hebrew and in English. And the New Testament is written in Greek. Oh, this is this one. And then this is the Greek. Greek and the English. Okay? 
So that's how you study. I don't care if you don't know anything. If you have never even picked up a Bible ever once, scripture, word, and never read a thing, you'll probably actually be better off if you've never read anything. That way you won't have bad habits. And you won't have to go back and relearn a lot of the stuff that you learned improperly. Because it doesn't read like a book. Remember, we find Satan had already entered into the garden in the book of Genesis, right? Before Adam and Eve or man or woman was ever made. Correct? Make sense? No, I only read, I read all of it, but I study from the canonized. If it's not canonized, it has issues with definition. They don't match. That's why certain books were taken out of scripture. There were 22 books taken out of scripture. The very last book that they were trying to take out when they took out the book of Enoch was the book of Revelation, but they were unsuccessful at taking that out. So all of these texts that I'm showing you are canonized, which means you can take them to your lexicon and your Strong's Concordance or your Young's Concordance and the definitions all line up. There's no issues with definitions. If you study it, day and night, day and night for years and years and decades like I have. Sure, you can find some issues with it. But this is the closest thing to the original text that you're going to get. So sure, I read other scripture, but I make sure I'm reading the original text first and I'm reading the canonized text, okay? And then I know that I'm getting, and then I go read all the other stuff too. Absolutely, I read all of it. I've read the Quran, I've read... I have a massive library back here behind there. Here's a whole bunch of books right there that I study with. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's a dozen books sitting right there. So uh, this is the way you study. Okay. So if you don't know anything, that's probably better. It is because you don't have old habits that die hard and you won't have to relearn like I did about 70% of what I just didn't get right. So, um, again, it doesn't read like a book. You can't pick it. And that's where I read it. Oh, I'm going to start here with in the beginning in Genesis. Or, you know, if I pick up the New Testament, I'm going to start with Matthew. That's not how this reads. It doesn't read like that, okay? I'm going to prove it to you real quick that i got to go. Genesis. We see in the book of Genesis, we already see that Satan has entered into the garden, right? He fell like lightning to earth, remember? Is that, where do we see Satan enter in the garden? Where do we see Satan enter in the garden? Because it's not in the book of Genesis. We don't see it anywhere in the Old Testament. Right? We don't we don't see we don't see it anywhere in the Old Testament, do we? Correct? We see Satan enter in the garden in the book of Revelation. This book wasn't even written. This book wasn't even written. So you can't read it like a book, guys. And don't read it like a book. You need to study it. Put it on a timeline. Just pick out one word at a time and you don't need to know anything. And you guys, all you need to know is the gospel. I'm telling you, you don't need to know anything else. It's, it's nice to know. It's good to have it written on your heart. But you need to know the gospel of Jesus Christ. You need to know the New Testament. You need to know the laws that he fulfilled and the amendments he made to the law. And you'll be fine. That's all you need. The only thing you need is Jesus. The New Testament was the Testament, right? He made a new living will and Testament. So if you understand the gospel, you can just... It's not that I wouldn't keep studying because I always study day and I study, study, study. I'm always in a study mood, but you don't need to know all this other text. There's nothing in Enoch that you need to know. There's nothing in Jasher that I've seen that's so important that I, if I was that important, I would cover it. Two Enochs, Jasher, Lilith, all the lost books, the Dead Sea Scrolls. I've read all of them, but it doesn't. You need to know the gospel. Okay? 
That's what you should focus on first. Once you get the gospel down and you're living it, who shall ever come after me? Let them deny themselves, take up their cross daily. As soon as you're doing it every day and you never set it down and then you can get on, maybe you can come on and, and have a, 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 a discussion with me or maybe another brother in Christ or sister in Christ and hold your own out of these 66 books and you can say them in your sleep, <clears throat> then go ahead and read Enoch. Then go ahead and read the Quran. Go ahead and read all this other stuff. It make a lot more sense. A lot more sense if you have a Petra. Do not build your house on sinking sand. Build it on the rock. This is the rock. Now, I'll give this to you if this isn't something that I didn't study. Okay? So, please, pick out one word each time. No, not judge others, judge others with righteous judgment, spittoon. That's lollipop, cotton candy, Nimrod, Satan Jesus that you're speaking of. The other Jesus. You're speaking of the other Jesus. God says, judge lest shall be judge. Judge a man with righteous judgment, but do not condemn. So don't tell people not to judge people. That is blasphemy. That's that modern day other once a week, once a year, Jesus. We are to judge with righteous judgment. Don't go around telling people not to judge people. That is blasphemy and that is an op opposition. That would be Satan, the adversary to God. So don't tell people not to judge. Don't condemn a man or a woman. I didn't say condemn somebody. I said judge him with righteous judgment. Judge, this shall be judged. Judge how you want to be judged. Now you're judging me. You're a cotton candy gummy bear Christian spitting an apostasy. You're in opposition to God's word. So, you know, I'm judging you with righteous judgment. I didn't condemn you. I didn't throw you out of here yet. I will throw you out of here because I don't cast my pearls before swine. I don't keep company with vipers and I will not go with somebody who's anti-Christ because Christ's law says that we should judge a man with righteous judgment. So here's a lollipop sucker. Don't worry, dumb, dumb. Don't ask any questions. I know that sweet, easy lollipop. Jesus, you ain't ever asked any questions. If you knew this, you wouldn't be telling a man or a woman not to judge somebody. You would tell them that we are supposed to judge somebody with righteous judgment. So you're an antichrist because you're going up opposition of God's law. God's law tells us that we need to judge with righteous judgment, not don't judge people. You do the works of your father, the devil. You're, per, you're forwarding what Christ would tell you. You're forwarding his law, just like he said to the Pharisees. You're forwarding my law. Pervert. You're a perverting the law is what you're doing. You're, remember, he said, if you add to this book, even your own opinion will receive of all the plagues that are written in this book. And if you take even the smallest jot or tittle, this is the very last things he said to us. And that's what you've done. You're taking out what God told you and your name will be stricken or blotted out from that Lamb's book of life. So you are an antichrist at this point in time because you are going in an opposition. That's an apostasy. And that is a heresy to God. So don't go around telling people they can't judge somebody. That is in a that is anti-Christ. I encourage you to look up judgment and find out how many times I just name a couple. There are many others. Many others. I just gave you a couple. Well, I can sit there and keep giving you all. You need to do some of this homework for yourself. But don't go around telling people they can't judge people. That is Satan. That's the other Jesus, and that's the Jesus that you follow, obviously. And you were warned. All this negative is what turns people off. Guess what? The difficult path 
is the path that leads to eternal life. He told us we must go through much tribulation. We must endure to the end. We must, who shall ever come after me, let them deny themselves, take up their cross daily. You must be hated by the world. If you're loved by the world, you'd be hated by my father. See, you are an antichrist. You, you don't want anybody to suffer. You probably think God loves everybody, right? God loves everybody, right? Doom, 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 doom. I'm waiting. Because you are an antichrist by telling people not to judge somebody. He said, be not partakers in their unfruitful works of darkness, yet expose them. I'm shining the light on you. Because the, the apostle Paul warned us about people just like you. Did you know that there's two Jesuses in the Bible and that's the other one that you're talking about? Did you know there are two Jesuses in the Bible? Not getting anything. You must have been silent. So, brothers and sisters, the Apostle Paul warned us. Said they will come speaking another gospel that I did not speak or I, I did not preach or I did not teach, and they will come speaking another Jesus. Another Jesus and another gospel. That's the other Jesus. God loves everybody. God loves everybody. Rapture. Don't judge anybody. It's okay. God knows what's in my heart. I can celebrate birth dates. Apostasy. So he himself said, many will come in my name, saying 